Talmud, Mosque in ACHAPTER, I mission of the bearer of a bill of divorce get from a husband in foreign parts to the land of Israel. I is required to declare on presenting it to the wife in my presence. It was written and in my presence it was signed. Rabbi Gamaliel says this declaration is also required if he brings it from Rikamor from Hagar. R. Eliezer says even if he brings it from Farlim to let the sages, however, say that the declaration in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed is required only from one who brings a bill of divorce from foreign parts to the land of Israel or who takes it from the land of Israel to foreign parts. The bearer of such a document from one province to another in foreign parts is also required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed. Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says it is required even if he takes it from one governorship to another. Our Judah says foreign parts extend from Rikam. Eastwards Rikam being included from Ascalon, southwards Ascalon included and from Akko, northwards Akko included. Armeir however held that Akko counts as Eretz Israel in the matter of bills of divorce. The bearer of a bill of divorce from one place to another in the land of Israel is not required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed. If its validity is challenged it must be established through the signatures. Gemara what is the reason for this requirement? Rabbi says Talmud, Mosque and B it is because the Jews in foreign parts are for the most part ignorant of the rule of special intention. Rabbi says it is because it is not easy to find witnesses who can confirm the signatures. What difference does it make in practice? Which reason we adopt it does in the case where the get has been brought by two persons or again where it has been taken from one province to another in the land of Israel or again from one place to another in the same. Foreign country seeing that Rabbi's reason is that Jews abroad are ignorant of the rule of special intention. Why does he not require that the get should be brought by two bearers so as to bring this case into line with the general rule of the Torah regarding evidence? One witness is sufficient where the question at issue is a ritual prohibition, but presumably the rule that one witness is sufficient where the question at issue is a ritual prohibition applies, for instance, to the case of a peace. A fat of which we do not know whether it is permitted or forbidden, there being no prima facie ground for declaring it prohibited here. However, since there is prima facie ground for assuming the prohibition regarding a married woman, the question becomes one of prohibited sex relationship, and for disproving such a relationship, the evidence of two witnesses is required. Most of the Jews abroad are acquainted with the rule of special intention, and even if following the practice of our mayor, we Take account of the exceptions, it will make no difference for most of the scribes of the Beth didn't know the law, and it was the rabbis who on their own authority insisted on this declaration, and in this case Talmud, Mosque and on account of the danger of the woman becoming a deserted wife, those same rabbis made a concession by allowing one bearer to suffice. You call this a concession, it is rather a hardship since if you require that the get should be brought by two bearers, there is no danger of the husband coming and challenging it and getting it declared invalid, but if only one is required, he will be able to do so. No, you know what a master has told us on the question how many persons must be present when he the bearer gives the writ to her the wife. There was a difference of opinion between our Yohanan and our Hanan, one holding that at least two were required and the other that at least three, this being so the bearer will make sure of the husband's. Intentions from the first and the husband will not come and invalidate the get and bring himself into trouble later since Rabbi's reason is that it is not easy to find witnesses to confirm the signatures why does not he also require two bearers so as to bring this document into line with all others which may require such confirmation one witness is sufficient where the question at issue is a ritual prohibition but presumably the rule that one witness is sufficient where the question at issue is a ritual prohibition applies for instance to the case of a piece of fat of which we do not know whether it is permitted or forbidden there being no prima facie ground for declaring it prohibited here however since there is prima facie ground for assuming the prohibition regarding a married woman the question becomes one of prohibited sex relationship and for disproving such a relationship the evidence of two witnesses is required by rights no witnesses should be required for Confirming the signature on other documents either as may be inferred from the dictum of Rush Lakish that signatures of witnesses to a document are just as reliable as if their evidence had been sifted in the Beth Din it is the rabbis who on their own authority insisted on two witnesses for this and here on account of the danger of the woman becoming a deserted wife these same rabbis made a concession you call this a concession it is rather a hardship since if you require that the get should be brought by two bearers there is no danger of the husband coming and challenging it and getting it declared invalid but if only one is required he will be able to do so no you know what a certain master has told us on the question how many persons must be present when he gives her the get there was a difference of opinion between our Yohanan and our Hanan one holding that at least two were required and the other at least three this being so the bearer will make sure of it. Husband's intentions and the husband will not come and invalidate the get and bring himself into trouble later. Why did not Rabbi give the same reason that Rabbi gave? He will tell you does the Mishnah then require him to declare in my presence it was written in her name in my presence it was signed in her name and Rabbi he might retort that by rights the formula ought to run thus and the reason why it does not is because if you give the bearer too many words to say he will leave out some. As it is he may leave something out he might omit one word out of three he will hardly omit one word from two. Why did not Rabbi give the reason which Rabbi gave? He will tell you if this were the reason the Mishnah should require the bearer to declare simply in my presence it was signed and no more the fact that he has also to say in my presence it was written shows that special intention is required and Rabbi he might retort that by rights the formula should run thus but if it did it. Impression might be created that the confirmation of signatures to documents in general requires only one witness and rabbi he might rejoin that the two cases are not similar there the formula is we know this to be so and so signature here it is in my presence etc there a woman is to bart here a woman is not to bart there the party concerned is to bart here the party concerned is not to bart and rabbi he could rejoin that here also if the bearer says I know etc his word is accepted. And since this is so there is a danger of creating the impression that confirmation of signatures to documents in general requires only one witness according to rabbi as we have seen the reason for requiring the declaration is that Jews outside the land of Israel are not familiar with the rule of special intention assuming that this is so who is the authority that requires the get to be both written Talmud, Mosque and be and signed with special reference to that woman it cannot be armed here. For he requires only that it should be signed, but not that it should be written with this intention. As we learn, a get must not be written on something still attached to the soil. If it was written on something still attached to the soil, then torn off, signed, and given to the woman, it is valid. Nor again can it be our Eliezer. For as we know, our Eliezer requires that it should be written, but not necessarily that it should be signed with special intention. Nor can you maintain that after all, it is our Eliezer, and that in saying that special intention is not required, he means not required by the Torah. But he admits that it is required by the rabbis. This cannot be, for there are three kinds of get which the rabbis have declared invalid, though they are not invalid according to the Torah. And our Eliezer does not include among them one which has not been signed with special intention, as appears from the following mission. Three kinds of get are invalid, but if a woman marries on the strength of one. Of them the child is legitimate one if the husband wrote it with his own hand but it was attested by no witnesses a second if there are witnesses to it but no date a third if it has a date but the signature of only one witness these three kinds of get are invalid but if the woman remarries on the strength of one of them the child is legitimate our Eliezer says that even though it was not attested by witnesses at all so long as he gave it to her in the presence of witnesses it is valid and on the strength of it she may recover her cathedral from mortgage property since signatures of witnesses are required to get only as a safeguard are we to say then that after all our mayor is the authority and that he dispenses with special intention only as a requirement of the Torah but not as a requirement of the rabbis how can this be in view of what we have been told by our nom and that our mayor used to rule that even if the husband found to get ready written on a rubbish Talmud, Mosque, a and signed it and gave it to her it is valid nor can you say that this ruling means valid as far as the Torah is concerned for in that case our should have said not our mayor used to rule but it is a rule of the Torah after all we come back to the opinion that our Eliezer was the authority and we say that where he dispenses with the requirement of special intention is in the case where there are no witnesses at all but if the get is signed it must be signed with such intention this
To places within the ambit of the land of Israel, Rabbi Barhana said, I have myself seen that place and am able to state that the distance is the same as from Bikubi to Pumadive. Enough from the words of the Mishnah just quoted, we infer that the first Tano was of opinion that in these cases the declaration was not necessary. May we assume that the point of divergence between them is that one authority holds that the reason why the declaration is required is because Jews outside of it. Land of Israel are not familiar with the rule of special intention and he accepts the Jews of these places because they are familiar whereas the other authority holds that the reason why the declaration is required is because it is not easy to find witnesses to confirm the signatures and he includes the Jews of these places because here too it is not easy no rabbi can account for the difference in his way and rabbi in his way rabbi can account for it thus all the authorities are agreed. That the reason for requiring the declaration is because of the unfamiliarity of the Jews outside Eretz Israel with the rule of special intention and the point of divergence between them is that the first Tana is of opinion that in these places on account of their proximity to Eretz Israel the Jews are familiar with the rule whereas Rabbi Gamaliel held that this was so only in the case of places which lay within the ambit of Eretz Israel but not in those which merely adjoined it and are. Eliezer would not allow it to be so even in the case of places which lay within the ambit no distinction being made among places which belong to foreign parts Rob accounts for the difference thus all the authorities are agreed that the reason for requiring the declaration is because it is not easy to find witnesses to confirm the signatures and the point of divergence between them is that the first Tana is of opinion that in these places on account of their proximity to the land of Israel it is easy to find witnesses whereas Rabban Gamaliel held that this was so only in places which lie within the ambit of Eretz Israel but not in those which only adjoin it and our Eliezer would not allow it to be so even in places lying within the ambit as no distinction is to be made among places which belong to foreign parts our Mishnah says the sages say the declaration in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed is required only from one who brings a gift from foreign parts. And from one who takes it there we infer from this that in the opinion of the first Tana the bearer of a bill of divorce to foreign parts is not required to make the declaration may we assume that the point of divergence between the two authorities is that one holds that the reason why the declaration is required is because Jews in foreign parts are not familiar with the rule of special intention Talmud, Mosque and B and he accepts the bearer of a gift from Eretz Israel because there they are familiar whereas the other authority held the reason to be because it is not easy to find witnesses to confirm the signatures and this applies to foreign parts also no rabbi can account for the difference in his way and rabbi in his way rabbi explains thus both authorities are agreed that the reason for requiring the declaration is because of the unfamiliarity of the Jews outside Eretz Israel with the rule of special intention and where they diverge is on the question whether we extend the obligation properly meant for the bearer from foreign parts to the bearer to foreign parts one holding that we do make this extension the other that we do not rabbi explains thus both authorities agree that the reason for requiring the declaration is because it is not easy to find witnesses to confirm the signatures and the rabbis mentioned in the second clause merely made explicit what was in the mind of the first Tana. Our Mishnah says the bearer of a gift from one province to another in foreign parts is required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed from which we infer that if he takes it from one place to another in the same province in foreign parts he need not make the declaration this conforms with the view of rabbi but conflicts with that of rabbi does it not know you must not infer that if the gift is taken from one place to another in the same province in foreign parts the declaration is not required what you have to infer is that if it is taken from one province to another in the land of Israel, the declaration is not required, but this is stated distinctly in the following clause of the mission of the bearer of a gift from one place to another in the land of Israel is not required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed. If I had only that to go by, I should say that while this omission does not invalidate the get retroactively, it is not permissible in the first instance. Now I know that. This is also the case. The objection here raised is also stated in the following form. I infer that the bearer of a gift from one province to another in the land of Israel is not required to make the declaration. This is in conformity, is it not with the view of Rabbah, but conflicts with that of Rabbah. You must not infer that if it is taken from one province to another in the land of Israel, the declaration is not required. The proper inference to draw is that it is not required from the bearer. From one part to another of the same country in foreign parts what then from the bearer from one province to another in the land of Israel it is required and it would be sufficient for the Mishnah to say the bearer of a gift from one province to another without mentioning foreign parts the fact is that it is not necessary for the bearer from one province to another in the land of Israel either since on account of the festival pilgrimages to Jerusalem it is always possible to find witnesses. This may have been a good reason so long as the temple was standing but what of the time when there is no temple since there are Jewish law courts regularly established witnesses can always be found we have learned our Mishnah says Rabbi Simeon ben Gamaliel says even the bearer from one governorship to another and commenting on this our Isaac said that there was a certain city in Eretz Israel Asagio by name in which were two governors at variance with each other and that is why the Mishnah had to put in the clause from governorship to governorship now this ruling conforms with the view of Rabbah does it not but conflicts with that of Rabbah Rabbah accepts Rabbah's reason also where then does a difference arise between them in practice if the gift was brought by two bearers or if it was brought from one place to another in the same province in a foreign country we have learned where the bearer of a gift from foreign parts is not able to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed if the gift has been signed by witnesses its validity can be established through the signatures we were perplexed by the expression is unable to say Talmud, Mosque and shall we say it refers to a deaf mute but can a deaf mute be the bearer of a gift seeing that we learn all persons are qualified to be bearers of a gift except a deaf mute a lunatic and a minor and this difficulty was solved by our Joseph who said that we are dealing here with a case in which he gave it woman again while he was still in possession of his faculties but before he could say the formula was struck deaf and dumb now this conforms with the view of Rabbah does it not but conflicts with that of Rabbah this mission was formulated after the rule of special intention had become generally known if that is the case even if the bearer is able to repeat the formula what need is there for him to do so this was a precaution in case there is a return of the abuse if that is the case even if the bearer is not able to repeat the formula it should still be required for a man to be suddenly struck dumb is an exceptional occurrence and the rabbis did not take precautions against such exceptional cases is that so for a woman to be the bearer of her own get is very exceptional and yet we learn the wife can act as bearer of her own get to a specified beth din and she is equally required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed the reason for this is to avoid making any distinction between bearer and bearer if that is so the same rule should apply to the husband why then has it been taught if the husband brings the gift personally he is not required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed the reason why the rabbis insisted on this declaration in the first instance was to provide against the danger of the husband coming to challenge and invalidate the get in this case seeing that he brings it himself is it conceivable that he should raise objections against it come and here samuel put the following question to our not if the get is brought from foreign parts by two bearers are they required to declare in our presence it was written and in our presence it was signed or are they not and our not answered that they are not required because should they declare in our presence he divorced her would their word not be accepted this conforms does it not with the view of rabbi and conflicts with that of Rabbah this mission was formulated after the rule of special intention had become generally known if that is so even if there is only one bearer the declaration should not be required this was a precaution in case there is a recurrence of the abuse if that is so the same precaution should be taken when there are two bearers for a get to be brought by two persons is exceptional and the rabbis did not take precautions against exceptional cases is this so for a woman to be the bearer of her own get is very exceptional and yet we learn the wife can act as bearer of her own get but she is equally required to declare in my presence etc the reason for this is to avoid making any distinction between bearer and bearer if that is so the same rule should apply to the husband why then is it taught if the husband brings the get personally he is not required to declare in my presence etc the reason why the rabbis insisted on this declaration in the first instance was to Provide against the danger of the husband coming to challenge and invalidate the get in this case seeing that he
process of divorce easier and not more difficult. The reason why we allow the validity of the get to be established through its signatures is because she has remarried. We must read the passage. Thus, the get is valid if the signatures can be confirmed. And should you think that if she has remarried, we should be more strict and force her husband to put her away, we must bear in mind that the purpose of requiring this declaration is to make the process of divorce easier and not more difficult. The whole reason Talmud, Mosque and why it is required is as a precaution against the risk of the husband coming to challenge and invalidate the get. Seeing that here the first husband is raising no objection, shall we go out of our way to do so? An identical difference of opinion had already been recorded between our Yohanan and our Joshua Bili by one of whom held that the reason for requiring the declaration was because the Jews outside the land of Israel were not familiar with the rule of special intention and the other that it was because witnesses could not easily be found to confirm the signatures we may conclude that it was our Joshua B. Levi who gave the reason because they are not familiar with the rule of special intention from the following incident our Simeon B. Abba once brought a get before our Joshua B. Levi and said to him am I required to declare I was present when it was written and present when it was signed and he replied you need not make the declaration it was only required in former generations when the rule of special intention was not generally known but not in these times when the rule is known we may therefore conclude that it was our Joshua B. Levi who gave this reason was this a good ruling seeing that Rabbi accepts Rabbi's reason also and further that as we have said precaution should be taken in case there is a recurrence of the abuse there was another man with him although he is not mentioned in the passage quoted out of respect for our Simeon. It has been stated on the question how many persons must be present when the bearer of the get gives it to the wife. There was a difference of opinion between our Yohanan and our Hanan. One holding that a minimum of two were required and the other a minimum of three. It may be concluded that it was our Yohanan who held that two were sufficient. From the following incident, Rabin, son of Arhista, brought a get before our Yohanan, and the latter said to him, "Go and give it to her in the presence of two persons, and say to them, in my presence it was written, and in my presence it was signed." We may therefore conclude that our Yohanan held two to be sufficient. May we assume that the point on which our Yohanan and our Hanan diverge is that the one who held two persons to be sufficient considered the reason for requiring the declaration to be the general ignorance of the rule of special intention, while the one who insisted on three considered the reason to be the difficulty of finding witnesses can. This be so we have found that it is our Joshua who assigns as the reason ignorance of the rule of special intention and so it must be our Yohanan who assigns as the reason the difficulty of finding witnesses how then can it be our Yohanan who here says that two persons are sufficient moreover is it not a fact that Rabbi also accepts Rabbi's reason no the reason of the declaration is because we need witnesses who should be available to validate the get and the point at issue here is whether it is permitted to an agent to act as a witness and a witness as a judge the authority who says that two persons are sufficient holds that an agent may act as witness and a witness may act as judge whereas the one who insists on three holds that while an agent may act as witness a witness may not act as judge but has it not been laid down that in the case of evidence required only by the rabbis but not by the Torah a witness may act as judge no the real point at issue is this that one authority Held that since a woman is qualified to bring the get there is a danger if only two persons are required that we may rely upon her while the other held that everyone knows that a woman is not qualified to complete a Bethdin and therefore there is no danger it has been taught in agreement with our Yohanan if the bearer of a get from foreign parts gave it to the wife without declaring in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed if she marries again the second husband must put her away and a child born from the union is a mamzer this is the opinion of our Meir but the rabbis say that the child is not a mamzer what should be done to rectify matters the bearer should take the get back from the woman and then present it to her in the presence of two persons declaring at the same time in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed are we to suppose then that according to our Meir because the bearer failed in the first instance to make this Declaration the second husband has to put away the woman and the child is a mamzer yes our mayor and this is quite consistent for so our Hamna has told us in the name of Allah that our mayor used to affirm if any variation whatever is made in the procedure laid down by the sages for writs of divorce the second husband has to put the woman away and the child is a mamzer Barhide once desired to act as bearer of a get before doing so he consulted our Ahi who was a supervisor of writs of divorce said our Ahi to him you must watch the writing of every letter of the document he then consulted our Mi and RC who said to him this is not necessary and if you think to be on the safe side you must consider that by doing so you will be discrediting previous writs of divorce Rabbi Barhana once acted as bearer of a get of which half had been written in his presence and half not he consulted our Eliezer who told him that even if only one line of it had been written with special intention that was Sufficient Arashi said Talmud, Mosque and even if he only heard the scratching of the pen and the rustling of the sheet it is sufficient it has been taught in agreement with Arashi if a get is brought from foreign parts even if the bearer was downstairs while the scribe was upstairs or upstairs while the scribe was downstairs the get is valid or even if he was going in and out all day the get is valid now in the case where he is downstairs and the scribe is upstairs you may ask how can this be seen that the bearer cannot have seen him while writing obviously what is meant is that he for instance heard the scratching of the pen and the rustling of the sheet the master said even if he was going in and out all day the get is valid who is referred to by he shall I say it is the bearer hardly for if the get is valid even when he was in a different room and so did not see it at all is there any question that it is valid when he simply was going in and out of the same room Shall I say that it is the scribe surely this is self-evident because he leaves the room sometimes in the middle of writing is that any ground for declaring the get invalid it is not so self-evident it is necessary to state the case where he went out into the street and returned you might say that another man of the same name has come across him and commissioned him to write again now we know that this objection is not maintained it has been stated Babylonia has been declared by Rab to be in the same category with the land of Israel in respect of writs of divorce and by Samuel to be in the same category with foreign parts may we assume their point of divergence to be this that one of them held the reason for requiring the declaration to be that Jews outside the land of Israel are not familiar with the rule of special intention so that the Babylonians being familiar are in the same category with the Palestinians whereas the other held the reason to be the difficulty of finding witnesses to confirm the signatures and the same difficulty is found in Babylonia can you really presume this seeing that Rabbi also accepts Rabbi's reason no both Rabbi and Samuel agree that the gate requires confirmation Rabbi however is of opinion that since there are Talmudical colleges in Babylonia witnesses can always be found while Samuel is of opinion that the colleges are taken up with their studies it has also been stated that our Rabbi said in the name of Arhunah in Babylonia we have put ourselves on the same level as Eretz Israel in respect of bills of divorce from the time when Rabbi came to Babylon our Jeremiah raised an objection our Judah says foreign parts extend from Recom East towards Recom being included from Ascalon southward Ascalon being included and from Akko northwards Akko being included now Babylon is north of Eretz Israel as we learn from the verse of the scripture and the Lord said to me out of the north the evil shall break forth it is true that Mishnah continues our mayor says Akko counts as part of the land of Israel in the matter of bills of divorce but even our mayor only accepted Akko which is close to Eretz Israel but not Babylon which is remote our Jeremiah asked the question and he himself answered by saying that Babylon is an exception how far does Babylon extend our Papa says on this question there is the same difference of opinion in respect of bills of divorce as there is in respect of family descent our Joseph however says that the difference of opinion exists only in respect of family descent but in respect of bills of divorce all parties are agreed that Babylonia extends to the second boat of the floating bridge our Hista required the declaration to be made by the bearer of a gift from Tisiphone to Biardashir but not by one who brought it from Biardashir to Tisiphone may we presume that he considered the reason for requiring the declaration to be that Jews in foreign parts are not familiar with the rule of Special intention and that the people of Biar Eshir are familiar. How can you presume this seeing that Rabbi accepts Rabbi's reason also? But in point of fact, all authorities are agreed that confirmation of the get is required, and the reason of our is that as the people of Biar Eshir go to Tisiphon to market, the inhabitants of the latter
Whether he was required to declare in my presence, etc., said Ar Ishmael to him, My son, from where are you? He replied, Rabbi, I am from Farsai, Sai, whereupon Ar Ishmael said to him, It is necessary for you to declare that it was written and signed in your presence so that the woman should not require witnesses in case the husband raises objections. After the man left Farah, I came into Ar Ishmael and said to him, Is not Farsai, Sai within the ambit of the borderline of Eretz Israel and is it not near? To set Hori's that Akko is and does not the Mishnah tell us that Armeir held that Akko counts as Eretz Israel in matters of bills of divorce and even the rabbis differ from Armeir only in regard to Akko which is some distance away but not in regard to Farsai Sai which is near Ar Ishmael said to him say nothing my son say nothing now that the thing has been declared permissible let it remain so why should Arali I have thought otherwise seeing that Ar Ishmael also gave as a reason that the woman should not require witnesses Arali I had not been told of these concluding words Arabiath are sent to Arhista the following instruction the bearers of writs of divorce from their Babylon to hear Eretz Israel are not required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed may we presume that he was of opinion that the reason for requiring the declaration is because the Jews outside Palestine are not familiar with the rule of special intention while these the Babylonians are familiar can you really presume that seeing that Rabbi accepts Rabbi's reason no all agree that the reason is because we require someone who can confirm the signatures if necessary and in this case as there are always people going to and fro between Babylon and Eretz Israel witnesses can easily be found said our Joseph can it be maintained that our Abiathar is an authority who can be relied upon have we not moreover evidence to the contrary for it was he who sent a statement to Rabbi Judah running Jews who come from their Babylon to hear Eretz Israel fulfill in their own persons the words of the scripture they have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine and have drunk and he wrote the words from scripture without ruling lines under them although our Isaac has said that a quotation of two words from scripture may be written without lines but not of three in a very it was taught that three may be written without lines but not four said Abay to him because a man does not know this rule of our Isaac is he therefore not to be counted a great scholar if it were a rule established by logical deduction we might think so but it is purely a tradition and it is a tradition which Arabiathar had not heard nay more Arabiathar is the authority whose view was confirmed by his master in the following way commenting on the text and his concubine played the harlot against him Arabiathar said that the Levi found a fly with her and R. Jonathan said that he found a hair on her Arabiathar soon afterwards came across Elijah and said to him what is the Holy One blessed be he doing and he answered he is discussing the question of the concubine in Jabi what does he say said Elijah he says my son Abiathar says so and so and my son Jonathan says so and so said Arabiathar can there possibly be uncertainty in the mind of the heavenly one he replied both answers are the word of the living God he the Levi found a fly and Excuse it, he found a hair and did not excuse it. Rab Judah explained he found a fly in his food and a hair in loco concubitus. The fly was merely disgusting, but the hair was dangerous. Some say he found both in his food. The fly was not her fault. The hair was Arhista said a man should never terrorize his household. The concubine of Jabia was terrorized by her husband, and she was the cause of many thousands being slaughtered in Israel. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, if a man terrorizes his household, he will eventually commit the three sins of unchastity, bloodshedding, and desecration of the Sabbath. Rab Bibar Hannah said the three things which a man has to say to his household just before Sabbath commences have you set aside the tithe, have you placed the Arab like the lamp Talmud, mosque, and it should be said by him gently so that they should obey him readily. Rab Ashi said I was never taught that rule of Rab Bibar Hannah, but I observed it because my own sense told me to Arabu. Said a man should never terrorize his household, for there was a certain great man who terrorized his household, and in consequence they fed him with a thing to eat, which is a great sin. This was our Hannah be Gamaliel. Do you mean to say they actually fed him with it? Why, even the beasts of the righteous are not allowed by the Holy One, blessed be he to offend. How then shall the righteous themselves be allowed so to sin? Say they wanted to feed him, and what was it they set before him? A piece of flesh. Cut from an animal still living, Marakba sent for advice to our Eliezer, saying, Certain men are annoying me, and I am able to get them into trouble with the government. Shall I do so? He traced lines on which he wrote, quoting, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue, I will keep a curb upon my mouth while the wicked is before me. That is, he added, Although the wicked is before me, I will keep a curb on my mouth. Marakba again sent to him, saying, They are worrying me very much. And I cannot stand them. He replied with the quotation, Resign thyself unto the Lord and wait patiently, Hitholal, for him. That is to say, he added, Wait for the Lord and he will cast them down prostrate, Halalim, before they go to the Beth Hamadrash early morning and evening, and there will soon be an end of them. Our Eliezer had hardly spoken the words when Genova was placed in chains for execution. An inquiry was once addressed to Marakba, where does scripture tell us that it is forbidden in these times to sing at carousals? He sent back the following quotation written on lines, Rejoice not, O Israel, unto exaltation like the peoples, for thou hast gone astray from thy God. Should he not rather have sent the following, They shall not drink wine with music, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it from this verse. I should conclude that only musical instruments are forbidden, but not song. This I learned from the other verse, Arhuna be Nathan, ask Arashi, what is the point of it? Verse Kina and Diamond and Adada, he replied, The text is enumerating towns in the land of Israel. Said the other, Do I not know that the text is enumerating towns in the land of Israel? But I want to tell you that Argabiha from Biarjiza learned a lesson from these names. Whoever has cause for indignation, Kina against his neighbor, and yet holds his peace, Domem, he that abides for all eternity, Ad shall espouse his cause. Said the other, If that is so, the verse Siklik and Madmanai and Sansana should also convey a lesson. He replied, If Argabiha from Biarjiza were here, he would derive a lesson from it. Araha from Bihosi expounded it as follows, If a man has just cause of complaint against his neighbor for taking away his livelihood, Ziyakit Lejma, and yet holds his peace, Domem, he that abides in the bush, Shaknis, and will espouse his cause. The Exilarch said to Arhuna, On what ground is based the prohibition of garlands? He replied, This was imposed by the rabbis on. Their own authority, for so we have learned at the time of the invasion of Vespasian, they prohibited the wearing of garlands by bridegrooms and the beating of drums at weddings. Arhuna then got up to leave the room. Arhista thereupon said to him, The exilarch, there is scriptural warrant for it. Thus saith the Lord God, the mitre shall be removed, and the crown taken off. This shall be no more the same that which is low shall be exalted, and that which is high abased it may be asked. He continued, What the mitre has to do with the crown, it is to teach that when the mitre is worn by the high priest, ordinary persons can wear the crown, but when the mitre has been removed from the head of the high priest, the crown must be removed from the head of ordinary persons. At this point, Arhuna returned and found them still discussing the matter. He said, I swear to you that the prohibition was made by the rabbis on their own authority, but as your name is Hista, favor, so do your words find favor. Rabbana found Marsan of Arashi weaving a garland for his daughter. He said to him, Sir, do you not hold with the interpretation given above? Remove the mitre and take off the crown. He replied, The men have to follow the example of the high priest, but not the women. What is the meaning of the words in this passage? This not this Arari gave the following exposition sometimes in the name of RMI and sometimes in the name of RC when God said to Israel, Remove the mitre and take off the crown. The ministering angel said, Sovereign of the universe, is this for Israel who at Mount Sinai said, We will do before we will hear. Should not this be for Israel? Replied the Holy One, Blessed be he who have made low that which should be exalted and exalted that which should be low and placed an image in the sanctuary. RR also gave the following exposition sometimes in the name of RMI and sometimes in the name of RC. What is the meaning of the verse? Thus the Lord though they be in. Full strength and likewise many even so shall they be sheared off and he shall cross etc. If a man sees that his livelihood is barely sufficient for him he should give charity from it and all the more so if it is plentiful what is the meaning of the words even so they shall be sheared and he shall cross in the school of Arishmael it was taught whoever shears off part of his possessions and dispenses it in charity is delivered from the punishment of
Bet Goetha from Bethel to Shechem and on the south of Lebanon and our Papa pointed out that it means the east side of the highway. One Beretha teaches if a man brings a get by boat he is in the same category as if he brought it from place to place in Eretz Israel and another Beretha teaches that he is in the same category with one who brings it from place to place in foreign parts said our Jeremiah the contradiction can easily be explained the latter view is based on the ruling of R. Judah the former on that of the rabbis as we have learned plants grown in earth from foreign parts which is carried in a boat in Eretz Israel are subject to the obligations of tithe and sabbatical year our Judah says this is the case only if the boat touches bottom but if not the obligations do not apply Abay says that both authorities follow our Judah and there is no contradiction between them the one referring to a boat which does not touch bottom and the other to one which does set our Zeira. The case of a plant pot with a hole in the bottom resting on a stand may be variously decided according as we follow our Judah or the rabbis in this case said rabbi this is open to question possibly our Judah would say that actual contact with the soil was necessary to make the plant liable to tithe only in the case of a boat Talmud, mosque in a Talmud, mosque in a which is usually on the move but in the case of a pot which is motionless it is not necessary and again perhaps the rabbis would say that only in the boat is there this obligation even if it is not touching bottom since there is no air in between the boat and the bottom the water being reckoned as earth for purposes of contact but not in the case of the pot where the air underneath breaks its contact with the earth Arnaman B. Isaac said in regard to a boat on a river in Eretz Israel there is no difference of opinion between the authorities where the difference arises is in the case of a boat in the open sea as may be seen from the following what do we reckon as Eretz Israel and what do we reckon as foreign parts from the top of the mountains of Ammonon inwards is Eretz Israel and from the top of the mountains of Ammonon outwards is foreign parts for determining the status of the islands in the sea we imagine a line drawn from the mountains of Ammonon to the brook of Egypt all within the line belongs to Eretz Israel and all outside the line to foreign parts are Judah however holds that all islands Fronting the coast of Eretz Israel are reckoned as Eretz Israel according to the verse of scripture and for the western border ye shall have the great sea for a border this shall be your west border to determine the status of the islands on the border line we imagine a line drawn due west from Kapluria to the ocean and another from the brook of Egypt to the ocean all within these lines belong to Eretz Israel and all outside to foreign parts how do the rabbis expound the superfluous words? And for the border they say it is required to bring in the islands and our Judah he will rejoin that for the inclusion of the islands no special indication is required our Meir says Akko is in the same category as Eretz Israel etc. The following inquiry was propounded to our high B. Abba if a man sells his slave into Syria is he reckoned as selling him into foreign parts or not he replied you have learned it our Meir says Akko is in the same category as Eretz Israel in respect of bills of divorce in respect of bills of divorce that is but not in respect of slaves and if this is the case with Akko how much more so with Syria which is much further from Eretz Israel our rabbis have taught in three respects Syria is in the same category as Eretz Israel and in three others in the same category as foreign parts Nemonic of Borek earth is unclean like that of foreign parts and to sell a slave to Syria is like selling him to foreign parts and to get brought from Syria is reckoned as one Brought front foreign parts on the other hand it is in three respects like Eretz Israel it is subject to the obligations of tithe and sabbatical year like the land of Israel it is permissible for an Israelite to enter it in a state of ritual purity and a field bought in Syria Talmud, Moskid and B Talmud, Moskid and B is like one bought on the outskirts of Jerusalem our authority says that Syria is subject to the obligations of tithe and sabbatical year obviously he is of opinion that the conquest of an individual is a valid conquest he further says that it is permissible to enter Syria in a state of ritual purity how can this be seeing that you say that its earth is unclean what is meant is that he may enter it in a box chest or portable turret as has been taught if one enters the land of the Gentiles in a box chest or portable turret rabbi declares him to be unclean but our Jose son of our Judah does not and even rabbi makes this rule only for the land of the Gentiles it Soil and the air of which were proclaimed unclean by the rabbis, but in regard to Syria, they proclaimed only the soil unclean, but not the air. Our authority further says that a field bought in Syria is like one bought on the outskirts of Jerusalem. What rule of conduct can be based on this? Arshis hate says it means that a contract for selling it to a Jew can be drawn up even on Sabbath. What on Sabbath you know the dictum of Rabbah? He tells a non-Jew to do it. So here he tells a non-Jew to draw up the contract. And although there is a rabbinical prohibition against telling a non-Jew to do things on Sabbath, which we may not do ourselves, where it was a question of furthering the Jewish settlement of Eretz Israel, the rabbis did not apply the prohibition. Our rabbis have taught if a slave brings before the Beth Din his deed of manumission in which is written, "Your own person and my property are made over to you," he becomes ipso facto his own master, but not owner of the property. That Question was propounded. Suppose the document ran all my property is made over to you. What is the ruling of a set since the document makes him his own master? It makes him owner of the property. Also said Robert to him, I agree that he becomes his own master because in respect of himself, his document is on a PAR with the get of a wife, but he must not become owner of the property because in respect of the property, his get requires confirmation like any other document. Abe then corrected himself and said, since he does not become by means of his document the owner of the property, he does not become his own master. Either said Robert to him, I agree that he should not become owner of the property because in respect of the property, his document requires confirmation like any other document, but he should become his own master because in respect of himself, his document is on a PAR with the get of a wife. The fact of the matter is continued, Robert, that both with the one wording and the other he becomes his own master but not owner of the property said our Abba B. Matina to Rabba this ruling accords with the principle laid down by our Simeon that a single statement may receive two diverse applications for we have learned if a man assigns all his property to his slave the latter becomes ipso facto free but if he accepted a piece of land however small he does not become free our Simeon however holds Talmud, Moskid that in any case the slave becomes free unless he declares in writing all my property is left to so and so my slave except one ten thousandth part thereof but can Rabba then rule thus seeing that our Joseph B. Menumi said in the name of our Naman although our Jose commended our Simeon the Halacha follows our Meir for it has been taught when the discussion was reported to our Jose he applied to him our Meir the scriptural words he shall be kissed upon the lips that give the right answer but was this our Naman's opinion has not our Joseph B. Menumi said in the name of Arnaman if a man lying dangerously ill assigned all his possessions to his slave and then recovered he may retract the grant of the property but not the grant of freedom he may retract the grant of the property because it is a gift made on a deathbed he may not retract the grant of the freedom because the slave has already become known as a free man in fact said Arashi Arnaman's reason in the former case where he said that in practice Armeir was to be followed was because the document did not expressly sever the connection between the slave and his master and not because the same statement cannot receive two applications if its validity is challenged it must be established through the signatures challenged by how many shall I say by one person has not our Yohanan laid down that a challenge must come from two at least shall I say then two in that case there are two on each side and why should you give credence to one set rather than to the other the challenge meant is that of the husband Mishnah where the bearer of a get from foreign parts is not able to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed if the get has been signed by witnesses its validity can be established through its signatories writs of divorce and writs of emancipation are subject to the same rules when taken from the land of Israel to foreign parts or vice versa this being one of the points in which writs of divorce are on a PAR with writs of emancipation Gamara what is the meaning of the expression is not able to declare shall I say it means that the bearer is a deaf mute can a deaf mute and be the bearer of a get seeing that we have learned all persons are qualified to be bearers of a get except a deaf mute a lunatic and a minor our Joseph said here we are dealing with a case in which he gave the woman the get while he was still in possession of his faculties but before he could utter the formula was struck deaf and dumb writs of divorce and writs of Emancipation, etc. Our rabbis taught in three points writs of divorce are on a PAR with writs of emancipation. One is in the
More points of resemblance is there not for example this one if a man says give this gift to my wife and this writ of emancipation to my slave and he dies before they were given they should not be given after his death if however he said give a maid to so and so it should be given after his death the passage above was dealing only with points which do not apply to documents in general not with such as apply to all documents and this is such a point for Rabin sent the following message in the name of our Abba, be it known to you that our Eliezer sent to the diaspora in the name of our master the following instruction if a dying man said write down and give a maid to so and so and then die his words are not committed to writing nor is the gift made since perhaps he intended only to make the gift through the instrumentality of the document and a document does not confer possession after the death of the author but is there not the point of special intention in which Rits of divorce and of emancipation are on a PAR for Rabbah. Indeed, this raises no difficulty since it is identical with the point of bringing to and from Eretz Israel. But for Rabbah, it does raise a difficulty. And again, whether we accept Rabbah's view or Rabbah's, there is a law of Mehavar. The passage above reckoned only the flaws laid down by the rabbis on their own authority, not those deriving from the Torah. But the fact of originating in a Gentile court is a flaw in the get. According to the Torah, and yet this point is also reckoned above. We are dealing there with the case where there are witnesses to the delivery of the document, and the passage follows the opinion of our Eliezer, who said that it is the witnesses to the delivery of the get who really make it effective. Is that so? It says later in the passage, Arsimian says that these also writs of divorce signed by non-Jews are valid. And commenting on this, Arzera said that Arsimian was here following the. View of our Eliezer who said that the witnesses to the delivery of the get make it effective from which we gather that the first Tana was not of this opinion Talmud, Mosque and where he and the first Tana differed was in the case where the names are obviously even but what of the point about retracting which invalidates the get even according to the Torah and yet is reckoned in this passage the proper answer to the original question is that only those points are reckoned which did not apply to betrothals but not such as are found in connection with betrothals also but this very point of retracting applies to betrothals also we are dealing here with a case where the whole commission is to be carried out without the consent of the recipient this is possible in the case of divorces but not of betrothals mission and no document attested by the signature of a kudian is valid unless it is a writ of divorce or a writ of emancipation it is related that a writ of divorce was once brought before Rabban Gamaliel at Farah and its witnesses were Kutians and he declared it valid Gamari who is the Tana of our mission for it cannot be either the first Tana or our Eliezer or Rabban Simeon Ben Gamaliel in the following berry before it has been taught it is permissible to eat on Passover unleavened bread made by a Kutian and the eating of such bread satisfies the requirement of the Passover our Eliezer forbids the eating of such bread because the Samaritans are not familiar with the minutiae of the precepts Rabban Simeon Ben Gamaliel says that in all the precepts which the Kutians do observe they are much more particular than the Jews themselves whom now does our mission follow shall I say the first Tana in that case other documents also should be valid if attested by a Kutian shall I say our Eliezer in that case a writ of divorce should also be invalid shall I say Rabban Simeon Ben Gamaliel in that case if they observe the regulations of Documents and other documents attested by them should also be valid and if they do not observe these regulations then even a writ of divorce attested by them should not be valid and should you reply that in fact Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel is the authority and that our mission holds that the Kutians observe the regulations concerning writs of divorce and emancipation but not concerning other documents in that case why does the mission speak of one Kutian witness only the get should be equally valid even if there were two and if that were so why has our Eliezer said that a get of this kind has been declared valid only if there is not more than one Kutian signature to it the authority followed by our mission is in fact our Eliezer and it speaks of the case where an Israelite signs last Talmud, Mosque and before we assume in that case that if the Kutian were not a Haber the Israelite would not let him sign before him in that case why are not other documents also valid? Consequently, the truth is that we say he left room for someone senior to himself, but if that be so, cannot we say here too that he left room for someone senior to himself? Said our Papa, this proves that the witnesses to a get do not sign save in one another's presence. What is the reason for this? Our Ashi says that it is to prevent any infringement of the rule concerning all of you. The text above states our Eliezer said that a get of this kind has been declared valid only if there is not more than one Kutian signature to it. What does he teach us by the statement? Has not the mission already told us that no document attested by the signature of a Samaritan, etc.? If I had only the mission to go by, I should say that even with two Kutian signatures, the get is valid, and that the reason why one only is mentioned is to show that other documents are rendered invalid even by one Samaritan signature. Hence, our Eliezer's statement is necessary, but is a get with two Kutian signatures. Invalid does not the mission say it is related that a writ of divorce was brought before Rabban Gamaliel at Farah and its witnesses were Kutians and he declared it valid. Abbe says read its witness. Rabbi says it is quite correct that there were two and the fact is that Rabban Gamaliel differs from the first authority and there is an omission in the mission which should read as follows. Rabban Gamaliel declares a get valid with two Kutian signatures and it is actually related. That a get was brought before Rabban Gamaliel at Farah and its witnesses were Kutians and he declared it valid. Mission all documents which are accepted in heathen courts even if they that signed them were Gentiles are valid for Jewish courts except writs of divorce and of emancipation. Our Simeon says these also are valid. They were only pronounced to be invalid when drawn up by unauthorized persons. Gamara our mission lays down a comprehensive rule in which no distinction is made. Between a sale and a gift we can understand that the rule should apply to a sale because the purchaser requires the object of sale from the moment when he hands over the money in their presence and the document is a mere corroboration for if he did not hand over the money in their presence they would not take the risk of drawing up the document of sale for him but with a gift it is different through what does the recipient obtain possession through this document is it not and this document is a mere piece of clay said Samuel the law of the government is law or if you prefer I can reply instead of accept writs of divorce in the mission read accept documents like writs of divorce Arsimian says these also are valid etc how can this be seeing that to heathens the act of severance is not applicable said Arzera Arsimian here accepts the view of our Eliezer who said that the separation is actually affected by the witnesses to the delivery of the document but has not our said that our Eliezer used to admit that a get which in itself contained a flaw was invalid. We are dealing here Talmud, Mosque and A with signatures which are obviously those of heathens. Can you give some examples of names which are obviously those of heathens? Said our Papa, for instance, Hane and Abudna Bar Shiftai Bar Kidri Badi and Nakim Anuna. What then if the signatures are not obviously those of heathens? The document you will say is invalid if so, instead of going on to say they were only pronounced to be invalid when drawn up by unauthorized persons, our Simeon should draw a distinction between the signatures themselves and should continue. Thus, when I say they are valid, I mean when the names are obviously heathen, but otherwise they are invalid. This, in fact, is what he does mean, because when I say they are valid, I mean when the names are obviously heathen, but where they are not so, the document is on a PAR with one drawn up by unauthorized persons and is invalid, or if you like. I can reply that the last clause of the mission refers to monetary documents and the meaning is as follows monetary documents were not pronounced to be invalid save when they were drawn up by unauthorized persons it has been taught our Eliezer said in the name of our Jose thus did our Simeon say to the rabbis inside in our Akiba and the sages were agreed in reference to all documents entered in heathen courts that even if those that signed them were heathens they are valid including also writs of divorce and of emancipation they differed only in the case where they were drawn up by unauthorized persons our Akiba declaring all such documents to be valid and the sages declaring them all invalid save only writs of divorce and of emancipation Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says that these two are valid only in places where Jews are not allowed to sign documents but where Jews are allowed to sign documents they are not valid why does not Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel declare them invalid even in places where Jews are allowed to sign for fear lest they should come to be deemed valid even in places where they are not names may be confused but not places Rabbana had a mind to declare valid a document which had been drawn up in a gathering of Aramean said Raphram to him we learned distinctly courts Rabbana said a document drawn up
from foreign parts and attested by signatures even if the names are like those of heathens are valid because most Jews in foreign parts bear heathen names there the reason is as given because most Jews in foreign parts bear heathen names according to another version Resh Lakish put the question to Aryuhan on the lines of the Beritha just quoted and he answered him by quoting the second clause of the Beritha Mishnah if a man says give this writ of divorce to my wife and this bill of emancipation to my slave he is at liberty if he pleases to counter M A N D both instructions this is the ruling of our Mayor the sages however say that he may counter M A N D in the case of the get but not in that of the writ of emancipation on the principle that a benefit may be conferred on a man in his absence but a disability may be imposed on him only in his presence for if he does not want to maintain his slave he is not bound to do so but if he does not want to give maintenance to his wife he is Still round to do so said Armaheer to them does he not disqualify his slave from eating the priestly he offering by emancipat and him in the same way as he disqualifies his wife by divorcing her they replied the slave is disqualified because he is the priest's property Gamar Arhuna and our Isaac B. Joseph were sitting studying before our Jeremiah whilst our Jeremiah was sitting and dozing when Arhuna remarked that we learn from the ruling of the rabbis in our mission that if a man seizes the goods of a third party on behalf of a creditor he acquires them said our Isaac B. Joseph to him even if by doing so he causes loss to others he replied yes at this point our Jeremiah woke up and overheard them he said youngsters this is what our Yohanan said if a man seizes goods on behalf of a creditor when by so doing he causes loss to others he does not acquire if you ask how this can be reconciled with our mission the answer is that for a man to say give is equivalent to saying Acquire on behalf of Arhista says the case of the man who seizes goods on behalf of a creditor and by so doing causes loss to others admits of the same difference of opinion as we find between our Eliezer and the rabbis for we learned if a man garners the corner of his field and said this is for such and such a poor man he acquires it on his behalf the sages however say that he must give it to the first poor man that comes along said Amim our others say it was our Papa Talmud, Mosque Ine. Perhaps the two cases are not on all fours our Eliezer's reason therefore allowing the owner of the field to acquire on behalf of the poor man may be only because if he desires he can declare his field public property and so become himself a poor man and entitled to the gleanings and since he can acquire it for himself we can see that he can acquire it for his fellow whereas this reasoning does not apply to our present case and the rabbis reason in the case of the poor man may be only. That in the text it is written, Thou shalt not glean for the poor man, thou shalt not glean for the poor man, but here they would not apply the same principle. What lesson then does our Eliezer derive from these words? Thou shalt not glean for the poor. He sees in them an admonition to a poor man who himself owns a field in regard to his own gleanings, for if he chooses not to maintain his slave, etc., we understand from this. Do we not that a master can say to his slave, Work for me, but I will not support you? No, here we deal with the case in which the master says, Keep what you can earn as the equivalent of your maintenance. Similarly, in the case of the woman, we likewise must suppose that the husband says to her, Keep what you can earn as the equivalent of your maintenance. But if this is so, why in the case of the wife should he not be permitted to refuse to maintain her because she cannot earn enough for her keep, but a slave too may not be able to earn enough for his keep if a Slave's work is not worth the food he eats what do his master and mistress want him for come and here if a slave has fled to one of the cities of refuge his master is under no obligation to support him and moreover whatever he earns belongs to his master we understand from this do we not that a master can say to a slave work for me but I will not support you we are dealing here with the case in which the master said to him you may keep what you earn as the equivalent of your maintenance in that case why does it say that what he earns belongs to the master this applies to what he earns over and above his keep there is surely no need to tell us that there is because otherwise you might think that since the master does not give him anything when he does not earn he should not take anything from him when he does earn but now you know that this is not so but why should this rule apply specially to cities of refuge I might think that cities of refuge are an exception because the words that he might have used in connection with them are interpreted to mean that special provision must be made for one who is exiled there but now I know that they are no exception but now look at the continuation of the passage quoted but if a woman is exiled to a city of refuge her husband is under obligation to maintain her obviously this speaks of a case where the husband did not say to her you may keep your earnings etc because if he did why should he have to support her and since that is the case here then we presume that the first part of the passage also deals with the case in which the master did not say to the slave keep your earnings etc no the cases considered are those in which the master or husband did say so and the reason in the case of the wife is because she cannot keep herself but look at the further continuation of the passage if he says to her I allow you to keep your earnings in place of your maintenance he is within his rights this Shows does it not that the preceding clause deals with the case where he did not say so we interpret the last clause thus if she can earn sufficient for a living and he said to her keep your earnings in place of your maintenance he is within his rights what is the point of bringing in the case where she can earn sufficient for a living you might think that even so she should not go about to earn a living because as scripture says the honor of the king's daughter i.e. the Jewish woman lies at privacy but now you know that this is not so may we say that the same difference of opinion is found between the Tanaim mentioned in the following passage for it was taught Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says a slave can say to his master in a year of scarcity either maintain me or let me go free whereas the sages say that the master can do as he pleases shall we say that the point at issue between them is this that the one authority holds that a master can say to his slave work for me but I will not support you and the other holds that he cannot do you really think so in that case why does it say either maintain me or let me go free it should say either maintain me or let me keep my earnings in place of my maintenance and besides why should the rule apply specially to years of scarcity the fact is that the case put is one in which the master has said to the slave keep your earnings as the equivalent of your maintenance and in a year of scarcity he cannot earn enough in that case Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel holds that the slave can say to the master either maintain me or let me go free so that people may see me and have pity on me whereas the rabbis hold the view that those who pity free men pity also slaves come and your rabbi said if a man dedicates to the sanctuary the hands of his slave that slave may borrow money eat work and repay his loan with his earnings we may conclude from this may we not that the master can say to the slave work for me but I will not maintain you know the case contemplated here is one in which the master provides the slave with his keep if so why Talmud, Moskid and B does he borrow for his food he borrows for extras but the sanctuary can say to him just as you could do without extras hitherto so you can do without extras now the sanctuary itself prefers this so that its slave should be in good condition you say that he works and pays from his earnings how can he do the seeing that every penny as he earns it becomes sanctified he keeps on paying his earnings before the amount to a paratathus view that Rab's dictum refers to the case where the master provides the slave's keep is borne out by this other dictum of Rab if a man sanctifies the hands of his slave that same slave can go on working for his keep for if he does not work who will look after him if you say that the first dictum refers to the case where the master provides the slave's keep and that in consequence a master is not at liberty to say to his slave work for me but I shall not maintain you and that the latter dictum refers to a case where he does not provide for him all is plain but if you say that the first dictum refers to the case where the master does not provide the slave's keep and so we rule that he can say to the slave you must work for me etc what is the sense of saying in the second dictum if he does not work who will look after him let anyone who will look after him we conclude therefore that the ruling is that a master cannot say to his slave work for me but I shall not support you come and here are Yohanan says that if a man cuts off the hand of another man's slave he must make good to his master his loss of time and the cost of his medical attendance and the slave must live on charity we understand from this do we not that the master can say to the slave work for me but I shall not maintain you know here we are dealing with a case in which the master does provide the slave's keep if that is so why does it say that he must live on charity this refers to extras if that is so it should say not live on but be supported by we therefore conclude that the master can say to the slave you must work for me etc this proves that the master said he must make good to his master loss of time and the cost of his medical attendance what need is there to tell me this in the case of the loss of time which is obvious the loss of time is mentioned because the medical cost had to be
married to a priest and forfeits her maintenance in any case what did they mean by their question and what was the point of our mayor's remark if a priest's slave runs away etc what he said in effect was this you have refuted me in the matter of maintenance but what answer can you give in the matter of the terra if you should say that if the master likes he can throw the writ of emancipation to the slave and so disqualify him and therefore giving the writ to a bearer is not a Disadvantage to the slave I answer that the slave can prevent this by leaving him and running away Talmud, mosque in a scene and that a priest's slave who runs away and a priest's wife who floods her husband can still eat of the terima while this one who is emancipated cannot is it not a disadvantage to him to be emancipated this was a good rejoinder was it not said rather that is the point of the answer of the rabbis recorded in the mission because he is his property by which they meant to say that if the master wants like and take for Zeus from a non-priestly Israelite as the price of the slave and so disqualify him wherever he is let us grant that our mayor has made out his case with regard to the slave of a priest how does he make it out with regard to the slave of an ordinary Israelite said our Samuel son of our Isaac emancipation is a disadvantage to the slave because it disqualifies him from marrying a Gentile but woman on the contrary it is a benefit because it qualifies him to marry a free woman a slave prefers a common woman she allows him to take liberties she is at his beck and call she is not coy with him Mishnah if a man says give this get to my wife the steed of emancipation to my slave and dies before they are given they are not to be given after his death if he said give a to so and so and die the money should be given after his death Imara or Isaac B. Samuel B. Martha said in the name of Rab this money is only to be given if it has actually been put aside in a special place with what case are we dealing here shall I say the man was in health when he gave the instruction what difference does it make that the money is available seeing that the recipient has not yet performed the act of pulling and if he was on his deathbed why must the money have been put on one side even if it has not been put on one side it is to be given because the instruction of a man on his deathbed has the same force as a written document. Formally handed over our said we are in fact dealing here with the case of a man in health and our mission is in agreement with the following dictum enunciated by our who not in the name of Rabbi if a man says you owe me a man to give it to so and so if he said this in the presence of the third party the last name becomes legally entitled to it our papa said that we are indeed dealing here with the case of a man on his deathbed and the mission is in agreement with another dictum of Rabbi if a man on his deathbed says give a man to so and so out of my belongings if he said give this man it is to be given but if he said simply a man it is not to be given because perhaps he was thinking of a buried man the law is however that we do not suspect that anything is buried why did not our papa take the same view as our Zibet Talmud mosque and be our papa was of opinion that Rabbi's dictum was meant to apply equally whether the sum in question was a loan or a deposit why did not Arzib adopt the view of our Papa because the language of the Mishnah is not consistent with the theory that it speaks of a man on his deathbed. How do we make this out? Because it says if a man says give this get to my wife and the steed of emancipation to my slave and dies before they were given, they are not to be given after his death. The reason is that he died. Had he continued alive, they would have been given. And the reason why we say this is that he said give and not merely right. Had he not said give, they would not have to be given. Whereas in the case of a man on his deathbed, although he did not use the word give, the get is still to be given. As we learn from the following Mishnah, at first it was laid down that if a man was being led out in fetters to execution and said right again for my wife, the get was to be written and delivered. Later they laid down that the same rule applied to one who was leaving for a sea journey or joining a caravan across the desert. Our Simeon Chizuri said it also applies to a man lying dangerously ill to this Arashi Demert. How do we know he said that our mission adopts the view of our Simeon Chizuri? Perhaps it adopts the view of the rabbis. The text above stated Arhuna said in the name of Rabbi. If a man says you owe me a man to give it to so and so, if he said this in the presence of the third party, the last name becomes legally entitled to it. Commenting on this, Rabbi said this dictum of Rabbi appears to be sound where the money in question is a deposit, but not where it is alone. But by God, Rabbi said that it applies even where it is alone. It has also been stated that Samuel said in the name of Levi, if a man says you owe me some money, give it to so and so, if he said so in the presence of the third party, the last name becomes the legal owner. What is the reason of Mimar said the borrower in such cases regarded as having pledged himself at the time of borrowing the money to repay it either to the lender or to anyone coming on his behalf said our Ashi to Amimar but on your showing if the lender transferred the debt to children who had not yet been born when the loan was made they would not acquire possession for even according to our Meir who said that it is possible to transfer possession of things that do not yet exist the transference must be to something that is existing not to something that does not yet exist the truth is said our Ashi Talmud, Moss get into that for the sake of the benefit which the borrower derives from the difference in time of payment between the old debt and the new one he willingly pledges himself to the new creditor said Unamar the son of Arniamai to our Ashi if that is so what a people like those from the house of Barlaisha who force their debtors to pay at once do they not acquire possession in such a case as this and if you say they do then you apply different standards to different people the truth is said Marzitra that there are three laws which the rabbis have laid down arbitrarily without giving a reason one is this one a second is the one laid down by Rab Judah in the name of Samuel if a dying man assigns in writing all his property to his wife he only makes her a trustee for it the third is the one laid down by our Hananiah if a man celebrates the marriage of his son who is over age in a special house the son becomes the owner of the house Rab once said to our Ahabartala you have a cab of saffron of mine give it to so and so and I am telling you in his presence that I do not mean to change my mind are we to understand from this that if he had desired to change his mind he could have done so what Rab meant was that instructions such as these cannot be retracted but this has already been laid down by Rab since Arhuna said in the name of Rab if a man says to another you have a man of mine in your possession give it to so and so if he says this in the presence of the third party the latter becomes legal owner if I had only that dictum to go by I should suppose that this rule applies only to a big gift but that for a small one it is not necessary for the third party to be present now I know that this is not so some market gardeners who were in partnership once squared accounts with one another and found that one had five staters too much said the others to him in the presence of the owner of the land give it to the owner of the land and they duly acquired from him afterwards he reckoned up by himself and found that he had nothing over he went to consult Arnam and said the latter to him what can I do for you for one thing there is a rule laid down by Arnam in the name of Rab and for another thing they duly acquired from you said Rabba to him does this man say I am unwilling to pay what he pleases I do not owe the money whereupon Arnam and said if so possession has been transferred in error and in such a case the money must always be returned it has been stated if a man says to another take to so and so the mano which I owe him Rab says he continues to be responsible for it and he is not at liberty to retract the commission whereas Samuel says that since he is still responsible he is at liberty to retract may we presume that the point at issue between them is this that one authority was of opinion that take is equivalent to accept on behalf of and the other was of opinion that take is not equivalent to accept on behalf of no both are agreed that take is equivalent to accept on behalf of and the point at issue is this that one was of opinion that we make one ruling because of another and the other was of opinion that we do not it has been taught in agreement with Rab if a man says to another take to so and so the mano which I owe him give so and so the mano which I owe him take to so and so the mano which he has given me in trust give so and so the mano which he has given me in trust he remains responsible for the money yet if he wishes to retract the commission he is not at liberty to do so why should he not be able to retract in the case of trust money on the plea that the depositor does not desire his money to be in the hand of another party Arzara answered we assume that the sender in this case is known as a man who denies his obligations Arshiz had some money owing to him in Mahusa for some cloaks which he had sold there he said to our Joseph Pihama who was going there when you come back from there bring the money with you our Joseph went to them and they gave him the money they said to him give us acquittance at first he said yes but afterwards he excused himself when he returned Arshiz said to him you acted quite rightly not to make yourself a borrower who is the slave of the lender according to another version he said to him you acted quite rightly a borrower is the slave of the lender Arahi the son of our Josiah had a silver cup in Nihartia Talmud Mosque and B he
Yes, if that is so, he said, you acted rightly. If a man said to another, take a minute to so and so, and he went and looked for him, but did not find him alive. One bury the teaches he must return the money to the sender, and another bury the teaches he must give it to the ears of the man to whom it was sent. Shall we say that the point at issue between the two authorities is that one is of opinion that take is equivalent to accept on behalf of, and the other that it is not said are Abu Bimel. No, both are agreed that take is not equivalent to accept on behalf of, and there is no difference of opinion between them as the one speaks of a sender who is in health and the other of one who is on a deathbed. Arzibit said both speak of a sender who is on a deathbed, but the one has in mind the case where the recipient is alive at the time when the money was given to the bearer, and the other the case where he was not alive at the time. Our Papa says both speak of a case where the sender was in health, but the one had in mind the case where the recipient died while the sender was still alive, and the other the case where the sender died while the recipient was still alive. May we assert that the question whether take is equivalent to accept on behalf of is one on which there was a difference of opinion among the ten as it has been taught. If a man said to another, take a minute to so and so, and he went and looked for him and did not find him alive, he must return the money to. The sender, if the sender has also died, meanwhile, our Nathan and our Jacob say that he should return it to the ears of the sender, or as some say to the ears of the person to whom the money was sent, our Judah the prince said in the name of our Jacob, who said it in the name of our Meir, that it is a religious duty to carry out the wishes of the deceased. The sages say that the money should be divided while here in Babylon they say that the bearer should use his own discretion. Our Simeon the prince said, I had to deal with the case of this kind, and it was decided that the money should be returned to the ears of the sender. May we regard the point at issue here as being this that the first Tano was of opinion that take is not equivalent to accept on behalf of, and that our Nathan and our Jacob were of the same opinion, and also held that even where the sender has died in the meanwhile, we do not in this case say that it is a religious duty to carry out the wishes of the deceased that the some authorities. Held that take is equivalent to accept on behalf of that our Judah the prince speaking in the name of our Jacob who again spoke in the name of our Meir held that take is not equivalent to accept on behalf of only where the sender has died in the meanwhile we do say that it is a religious duty to carry out his wishes that the sages who say they should divide are in doubt as to which principles to adopt while here in Babylon other authorities think that the bearer can best estimate for himself and as for our Simeon the prince he simply desired to give an illustration no if the sender is in health all authorities are agreed that take is not equivalent to accept on behalf of here however we are dealing with the case where the sender is on a deathbed and the dispute here is analogous to the dispute between our Eliezer and the rabbis for we learned if a man divides his property among his heirs by word of mouth our Eliezer says that whether he is in health or dangerously ill immovable Property can be transferred to the new owners only by money payment by document or by act of possession and movable property only by pulling whereas the sages say that transference of ownership is affected in both cases by his mere word of mouth said the sages to him there is a case of the mother of the sons of Rokal who was ill and said let my brooch be given Talmud, Moss get an age of my daughter it is worth twelve mina and then she died and the sages carried out her instruction he replied. The sons of Rokal made their mother bury them the first tana in our passage holds with our Eliezer and our Nathan and our Jacob also hold with our Eliezer so much so that although the owner dies we do not say that it is a religious duty to carry out his wishes some authorities hold with the rabbis our Judah speaking in the name of our Jacob who himself spoke in the name of our Meir held with our Eliezer only where the sender had died in the meanwhile he applied the principle of carrying out the wishes. Of the deceased, the sages said the money should be divided because they were in doubt here in Babylon. They said that the bearer could best estimate for himself while our Simeon the prince merely desired to give an illustration. A question was asked in the Beth Hamid Rash was our Simeon the prince really a prince or did he speak in the name of the prince? Come and here our Joseph said that the Halacha follows the ruling of our Simeon the prince, but the question still remains whether he was a prince or only spoke in the name of a prince. Let it stand over the text above says our Jose said that the Halacha follows the ruling of our Simeon the prince, but is it not an established rule that the words of a man on his deathbed have the same force as if they were written and delivered? Our Joseph understands the Beretha to be speaking of the case where the sender was in good health, but our Simeon said it should be returned to the ears of the sender, though all are agreed it is a fixed rule that it is a religious duty to carry out the instructions of the deceased. Red return to the sender. C H A P T E R I I mission. If the bearer of a gift from foreign parts declares it was written in my presence, but not signed in my presence, or I T was signed in my presence, but not written in my presence, or the whole of it was written in my presence, but only one of the witnesses signed in my presence, or only half was written in my presence, though both witnesses signed in my presence. In all these cases, the get is invalid if one person declares it was written in my presence and another says it was signed in my presence. The get is invalid if two persons declare it was written in our presence and another says it was signed in my presence. It is invalid. Our Judah, however, declares it valid if one declares it was written in my presence and two say it was signed in our presence. It is valid. Gemara, why this repetition is it not all included in what we have already learned? The bearer of a get. From foreign parts is required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed if I had only that to go by I might think that though he is required to make this declaration yet if he omitted to do so the get is still valid now I know that this is not the case only half of it was written in my presence though both witnesses signed in my presence which half is referred to if you say the first half what of the dictum of our Eliezer that if only one line is written with special reference to the woman for whom it is intended the rest requires no such special intention Arashi therefore said that the second half is meant the whole was written in my presence but only one witness signed in my presence Arista said even if two other persons attest the signature of the second witness the get is still invalid what is the reason for this in regard to both signatures alike we must either insist on confirmation or follow the regulation of the rabbi's rabbi. Demurred strongly to this reasoning, is there anything he said which is declared valid on the word of one witness and invalid on the word of two? No, said Rabbah. What we must say is that even Talmud, Moskid, and B, if the bearer and another person confirm the signature of the second witness, the get is invalid because this might be taken as a precedent for the attestation of other documents, and in this way three quarters of a sum in dispute might be assigned on the word of one witness. Arashi strongly demurred to this reasoning, is there anything he said which, if stated by one person, is valid but becomes invalid if another joins with him? No, said Arashi. What we have to say is that even if the bearer says I myself am the second witness, the get is invalid because in regard to both signatures alike, we must either insist on confirmation or follow the regulation of the rabbis. We learned if he declares the whole was written in my presence, but only one witness signed in my presence. The Get is invalid. What now about the other witness? Do we presume that there is no one who attests his signature that cannot be for even where one person declares it was written in my presence and another says it was signed in my presence? In which case one testifies to the whole of the writing and the other to the whole of the signing. Even in that case, the get is invalid. How much more so than if only half of the signing is attested? No, this shows that the proper explanation is either that of Rabbah or of Arashi and that Arhistas is to be excluded and Arhistah he can rejoin on your theory. What need is there to specify the case of in my presence? It was written but not signed, etc. Obviously, the Mishnah was giving first a weaker and then a stronger instance. So here the Mishnah gives first a weaker and then a stronger instance. Arhistah said an embankment five handbreadths deep and a fence on it five handbreadths high are not reckoned together to form a single partition of ten. Handbreadths the whole of the ten must be contained either in the embankment or in the fence Miramar however in an exposition taught that an embankment of five handbreadths and a fence on it of five handbreadths are reckoned together and the law is that they are reckoned together ill inquired can the hands be half clean and half unclean or can they not be how is this question to be understood does it mean that two persons wash their hands from a rabiath regarding this we have already learned that a rabiath is sufficient for washing the hands of one person and even of two is the case then that he washes one hand at a time in regard to this two we have learned that if a man washes one hand by pouring water over it and the other by dipping it in a river the hands are clean is it then that he washes a half of his hand at a time regarding this it has been laid down in the school of Arjane that the hands cannot be
Down that if a person plunges the greater part of his body in water drawn through a pipe, or if three logs of such water are poured over the greater part of the body of a clean person, he is unclean. Our Jeremiah then propounded, suppose he plunges half of his body into such water and three logs of it fall on the other half, is he unclean? This question was left unanswered. Our Papa said it has been laid down that if a sick person had a seminal emission and nine calves of water are thrown over him, he is clean. Our Papa then asked if he dips half his body in water and water is thrown over the other half, is he clean? This question was also left unanswered. If one declares it was written in my presence and the other, etc., our Samuel B. Judah said in the name of our Yohan, and this rule applies only to the case where the gate was not brought by both as joint bearers, but if it is brought by both of them, Talmud, Mosque, and B, it is valid. We conclude that he was of opinion that if the gate was brought by two. Bearers from foreign parts they are not required to declare in our presence it was written and in our presence it was signed said Abay to him taking this view as correct let us look at the clause which follows if two say it was written in our presence and one says it was signed in my presence it is invalid our Judah however declares it to be valid the reason you say why the rabbis declare it invalid is because it was not brought by both of them as bearers are we to suppose then that if both of them did act as bearers the rabbis hold the get to be valid he replied that is so in the case then where both do not act as bearers of the get what is the ground of the difference between our Judah and the rabbis one authority the rabbis held that there is a risk of the procedure in the case of a get being taken as an example for allowing one witness to confirm signatures of documents in general and the other held that there is no such danger another version of the above passages as Follows our Samuel B. Judah said in the name of our Yohanan, even if both witnesses have acted as bearers of the get, it is invalid. We conclude that he was of opinion that if two persons act as joint bearers of the get from foreign parts, they are required to declare in our presence it was written and in our presence it was signed. Said Abay to him, accepting this view as correct, let us look at the next clause. If two say it was written in our presence and one says it was signed in my presence, it is invalid. Our Judah, however, declares it valid, then the rabbis declare it invalid, even if both have acted as bearers. He replied, That is so. What is the point at issue between our Judah and the rabbis? One authority, the rabbis was of opinion that the reason why the declaration is required is because the Jews outside Palestine are not familiar with the rule of special intention, and the other our Judah, because witnesses cannot easily be found to attest the signatures, may we infer from this that the Dispute between Rabbah and Rabbah goes back to the Tanaim. No Rabbah adopts the first version of the passage just quoted. Rabbah adopting the second can maintain that both authorities require the declaration on account of the rule of special intention. And here we are dealing with the period when this had become generally known. And the point at issue between our Judah and the Rabbis is whether there is a danger of a reversion to the former ignorance. One the Rabbis holding that there was such a danger and it was necessary to take precautions against it, and the other that it was not. But according to this, our Judah should join issue in the first clause. Also, this is in fact the case as has been stated. Ola said that our Judah differed from the Rabbis in the first case. Also, our Oshia raised an objection to Ola. It has been taught our Judah declares the get valid in this case and not in the other. Does he not mean by this he said to accept the case where one says it was written in my Presence and one says it was signed in my presence. No, he means to accept the case where one says it was signed in my presence but not written in my presence. I might think that since our Judah does not think it necessary to guard against the danger of a recurrence of the ignorance, so also he does not think it necessary to guard against the danger of confusing writs of divorce with other documents through allowing confirmation by one witness. Now I know that this is not the case. It has also been stated. Rab Judah said in the matter of a get which is brought by two bearers from foreign parts, we find a difference of opinion between our Judah and the rabbis. Rabbi B. Barhanna was once ill, and Rab Judah and Rabbi went to inquire how he was while with him. They put to him the question if two bearers bring a get from foreign parts, are they required to declare in our presence it was written and in our presence it was signed, or are they not required? He replied, they are not required for it. They were to say in our presence he divorced her would we not take their word at this point the Gulver came in Talmud, Mosque and A and took away their lap whereupon Rabbi Barhan ejaculated O all merciful one either in the shadow or in the shadow of the son of Esau this is as much as to say is it not that the Romans are better than the Persians how does this square with what our Haya taught what is the point of the verse God understood her way and he knew her place it means that the Holy One blessed be he knew that Israel would not be able to endure the persecution of the Romans so he drove them to Babylon there is no contradiction one dictum refers to the period before the Gulvers came to Babylon the other to the period subsequent to their coming if one says it was written in my presence and to say it was signed in our presence it is valid RMI said in the name of Yohan and this applies only to the case in which the get is produced by the witness to the writing as bearer since in that case there is the equivalent of two witnesses to the writing and two to the signing if however it is produced by the witnesses to the signing as bearers the get is invalid this would show would it not that he is of opinion that if two bearers bring a get from foreign parts they are required to declare it was written in our presence and signed in our presence said R.C. to him accepting this view look at the preceding clause if two say it was written in our presence and one says it was signed in my presence it is invalid our Judah however declares it valid do the rabbis declare it invalid even if the get is produced by both as bearers he replied that is so at another time R.C. found R.M.I. pouring over the Mishnah and saying that even if the get is produced by the witnesses to the signing as bearers it is valid this seemed to show that he was of opinion that if two bearers jointly brought a get from foreign parts they are not required to declare it was written in our presence and signed in our presence said R.C. to him if that is so what of the preceding clause if two say it was written in our presence and one says it was signed in my presence the get is invalid our Judah however declares it valid the reason why the rabbis declare it invalid is because the get is not produced by both as bearers if then it is produced by both as bearers do the rabbis declare it valid he replied that is so but said R.C. at another time you told me differently he said this is a peg which cannot be dislodged Mishnah if a get was written by day and signed on the same day written by night and signed on the same night written by night and signed on the day following it is valid if it was written by day and signed on the night following it is invalid our Simeon however declares it valid since our Simeon used to say that all documents written by day and signed on the following night are invalid except bills of divorce Gamar it has been stated why did the rabbis ordain that bills of divorce should be dated? Our Yohanan says lest the husband might shield his sister's daughter Rush said so that he should not sell the increment of his wife's property. Why did Rush not give the reason that Our Yohanan gave? He might argue Talmud, Mosque and be that adultery is exceptional. And why did Our Yohanan not give the reason that Rush gave? He was of opinion that the increment of the wife's property belongs to the husband until the get is actually delivered. On the theory of Rush we can understand why Our Simeon should declare valid a get signed on the following night. But on the theory of Our Yohanan, what is Our Simeon's reason for declaring such a get valid? Our Yohanan might answer that his theory is not meant to square with the view of Our Simeon, but with the view of the rabbis. On the theory of Our Yohanan, we understand why Our Simeon and the rabbis differ. But on the theory of Rush why should there? Be any difference between them they differ with regard to the increment that accrues between the time of writing the get and the time of signing it but have we not been told just the opposite with regard to our Yohanan and Rush where it has been stated from what point of time can the divorced woman begin to draw the increment or Yohanan says from the time when the get is written Rush says from the time when it is delivered reverse the name said Abay to our Joseph we have learned that three kinds of get are invalid but if a woman marries again on the strength of them and bears a child the child is legitimate this being so what could have the rabbis done with their regulation that the get should be dated they at least raise an initial bar against her marrying again suppose the husband cut off the date and gave it to her he replied we do not take precautions against the fraud of this kind suppose it is dated only by the septenate by the year by the month by the week he replied it is valid what could then have the rabbis done with their regulation it is a value where a question arises about the septenate before or the septenate after for if you say this is of no value I might retort even when the day is specified do we know whether the morning or the evening is meant what it does is to distinguish it from the day before and the day after so here by specifying the septenate we are
It has been taught in accordance with Rab and it has been taught in accordance with Samuel. It has been taught in accordance with Rab if a man sends a get to his wife and the bearer lingers on the road three months, she has to wait three months from the time the get is delivered to her, nor do we concern ourselves lest it should have become an old get because the husband has not been alone with her in the interval. It has been taught in accordance with Samuel if a man entrusts to a third party a get for his wife and says to him, Do not give it to her till three months have passed, she is at liberty to marry from the moment he has given it to her, nor do we concern ourselves lest it should have become an old get since he has not been alone with her in the interval. Our Kahana, our Papi, and our Ashi acted on the principle that the get is valid from the time of writing our Papi and our Huna, the son of our Joshua, that it is valid from the time of delivery. The law is that it is valid from the time of Writing it has been stated from what point does a Catholic marriage settlement fall under the law of the sabbatical year? Rab says from the moment when the woman takes part payment and converts the rest into a loan. Samuel says from the moment when she takes part payment, even though she does not convert the rest into a loan or converts the whole into a loan without taking part payment, it has been taught in accordance with Rab and it has been taught in accordance with Samuel. It has been taught in accordance with Rab. From what point does a Catholic fall under the law of the sabbatical year? From the moment when the woman takes part payment and converts the rest into a loan. If she takes part payment and does not convert the rest into a loan or converts it all into a loan and does not take part payment, it does not fall under the law of the sabbatical year. She must both take part payment and convert the rest into a loan. It has been taught in accordance with Samuel. Defines. For violation for wife slander and for seduction and a wife's catheter if converted into loans are subject to the law of the sabbatical year but otherwise are not subject from what point are they regarded as converted into loans from the time the case is brought into court Samuel said a catheter is on a PAR with a deed drawn up by the Bethdin just as a deed drawn up by Bethdin may be written by day and signed on the following night so a catheter may be written by day and signed on it. Following night the catheter of our high B-Rab was written by day and signed the following night Rab himself was present and made no objection are we to infer from this that he is of the same opinion as Samuel they were engaged on that matter during the whole of the interval and in such a case it is permissible as it has been taught our Eliezer son of Arzadik said this rule not to sign documents on the following night applies only where the parties concerned were not engaged on that matter. During the whole of the interval, but if they were so engaged, the document so signed is valid. Our Simeon declares it valid. Rabbi said, "What is Our Simeon's reason? He was of opinion that so soon as the husband makes up his mind to divorce the wife, he is not entitled anymore to the increment from her property." Rashi said, "Our Simeon declared to get valid only if it was signed on the night immediately following, but if it was not signed till ten days afterwards, it is not valid." Talmud, Moss. Hidden B. Since there is a possibility that he made it up with her in the interval, our Yohanan, however, says that even if it was signed ten days later, it is valid because if he had made it up with her, people would have got to know. It has been stated if a man said to ten persons, "Write a get for my wife," according to our Yohanan, two of them signed as witnesses, and the rest simply because he made it a condition. While according to Rashi, all of them signed as witnesses. How are we to understand this? Are we to suppose that he did not say to them all of you write this cannot be because we have learned if he says to ten persons write a get for my wife without saying all of you one writes and only two sign we suppose then that he used the words all of you what is the practical difference between our Yohanan and Reshlakish the practical difference arises where two of them signed on the same day and the rest ten days later according to the authority our Yohanan who said that the rest only signed because he made it a condition the get is valid but according to the authority who says that they all sign as witnesses the get is invalid or again there is a difference where for example one of the persons who signed it was found to be a relative or in some way disqualified from acting as witness according to the authority who said that the rest signed because he made it a condition the get is valid but according to the authority who says that they all sign as Witnesses, it is invalid if the relative or disqualified person signs first. Some say that the get is valid, and some that it is invalid. Some say it is valid because the person thus signing may be regarded as fulfilling the condition. Some say it is invalid because otherwise a precedent may be set for the signing of documents. In general, a certain man said to ten persons, "All of you write a get for my wife," and two signed on the same day. And the rest ten days later, the question of its validity came before our Joshua Ben Levi. He said, "Talmud, Moskid and A. Arsimian's authority is good enough to follow in an emergency, but did not Rashi say that Arsimian declared the get valid only if it was signed the night immediately following, but not if it was signed ten days later." On that point, here Joshua Ben Levi agreed with our Yohanan, but did not our Yohanan say that only two of them signed as witnesses, and the rest simply because he made it a condition. On that point, he. Agreed with Reshlakish Mishnah, the get may be written with any material, with Deo, with Sam, with Sikra, with Cumus, and with Kankantum, or with anything which is lasting, it may not be written with liquids, or with fruit juice, or with anything that is not lasting, the get may be written on anything, on an olive leaf, etc. He may write it on the horn of an ox, and give her the ox, or on the hand of a slave, and give her the slave. Our Jose the Galilean says, a get is not to be written on anything. Living or on food stuff, Deo, this is ink, Sam, this is paint, Sikra, Rabbi Barhana says its name is Decker to red paint, Cumus, this is gum, Kankantum, Rabbi Samuel says, this is blacking used by bootmakers, anything that is lasting, what do these words add to the list? They add the content of the following teaching, which our Hanan learned, if the get is written with the juice of one leaf, or gallnut juice, it is valid, our Hayat taught, if the get is written with lead with black pigment, or with coal it is valid it has been stated if a man goes over red paint writing with ink on Sabbath or Yohanan and Reshlakish both agree that he is punishable on two counts one for writing and one for effacing if he goes over ink with ink or red paint with red paint he is not punishable if he goes over ink with red paint some say he is punishable and some say he is not punishable some say he is punishable because he effaces the previous writing some say he is not punishable because he only spoils the previous writing Reshlakish inquired of our Yohanan if witnesses are unable to sign their names is it permissible to write the names for them in red paint and let them go over in ink does the upper writing count as writing or not he replied it does not count as writing but said he has not your honor taught us that in respect of Sabbath observance the upper writing is counted as writing he replied because we have a certain idea shall we base our practice upon it it has been stated if the witnesses are unable to sign their names, Rab says that incisions are made for them on the sheet which they fill in with ink, and Samuel says that a copy is made with lead with lead. How can this be seen that our high has taught that if the get is written with lead with black pigment or with coal, it is valid? There is no contradiction. The one case speaks of lead, the other of water in which lead has been soaked. Our Rab said that the copy is made with water in which round gallnuts have been soaked, but has not our Hanan taught that if the get is written with juice of one leaves or of gallnuts, it is valid? There is no contradiction. In the one case, the sheet has been prepared with gallnut juice, and the other not gallnut water does not show on gallnut water. Our Papa says that the copy may be made with spittle, and so our Papa actually showed Papa the cattle dealer. All this applies only to writs of divorce, but not to other documents for a man who actually did this with another. Document was ordered by Arkahana to be flogged Talmud, Mosque and B. It has been taught in accordance with Rab. If witnesses are unable to sign their names, incisions are made for them on the sheet which they fill in with ink. Said Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel, this applies only to writs of divorce, but in the case of writs of emancipation and other documents, if the witnesses are able to read and to sign, they sign, and if not, they do not sign. How does reading come in here? There is an omission which is to be supplied as follows. If the witnesses are unable to read, the document is read to them, and they sign, and if they are unable to sign, etc. Said Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel, this refers only to writs of divorce, but in the case of writs of emancipation and other documents, if they are able to read and sign, they sign, and if not, they do not sign. Said R. Eliezer, what is the reason of our Simeon for ruling so in order that the daughters of Israel may not become deserted wives? Rabbi said the Halachias. According to the ruling of our Simeon B. Gamaliel, our Gamda, however, said in the name of Rabbah that the Halachah is not according to his ruling, according to whose ruling then is it according to that of the rabbis was not
Writing has to be such that it cannot be altered without leaving a mark and here it is not so we speak of a sheet which has been treated with gallnuts but the rule is that the gist of the document has to be repeated in the last line and that is not the case here we speak of a case where it is repeated but when all is said and done what does the statement teach us that a document may be written in any language this we have already learned to forget is written in Hebrew and signed in Greek or written in Greek and signed in Hebrew it is valid if I had only that to go by I should say that this is the case only with writs of divorce but not with other documents now I know that this applies to other documents also Samuel said if a man gives his wife a blank sheet and says to her this is I get she is divorced because we consider it possible that he may have written it with gallnut water an objection was raised from the following if a man said to his wife here is your Get and she took it and threw it into the sea or the fire or destroyed it in any other way and if he then in turn said that it was a sham promissory note or an amada she is nonetheless divorced and he has no power to prevent her from remarrying is not the reason for this that there was some writing on the sheet so that if there was no writing she was not divorced when Samuel said she is divorced he meant only after we have tested the sheet with violet water if the letters come to light then obviously there was writing and if not then there is nothing in it and if the letters do come to light what of it, it is only now that they come to light Samuel also only said we consider it possible Rabbi said Amimar has told me that Miramar has laid down in the name of Ardini that the two persons in whose presence the get is delivered must write it. an objection was raised from the following passage if a man said to his wife here is your get and she took it and threw it into the See or the fire or destroyed it in some other way and if he then in turn said that it was a sham promissory note or an amada she is nonetheless divorced and he has no power to prevent her from remarrying now if you say that they, the witnesses to the delivery are required to read it can he possibly say this after they have read it the ruling is still necessary for the case in which after the witnesses have read it he takes it from them and puts it under his coat and takes it out again it might be argued in that case that he has changed it for some other document but now I know that this argument is of no avail a certain man threw a document to his wife and it fell between the jars afterwards a mezuzah was found there said our nominee mezuzah is not usually found among the jars this reasoning holds good if only one was found but if there were two or three we say that just as mezuzahs got there so a get may have got there and that the get itself was removed by mice a certain Man went to the synagogue and took a scroll of the law and gave it to his wife, saying, Here is the get said, Our Joseph, why should we take any notice of it? Shall we say that the get was written in gallnut water on the outside of the scroll? Gallnut water does not make any mark on a sheet treated with gallnut talmud, mosque in the water. Shall we say that the scroll is itself a get because of the portion it contains relating to cutting off? We require that it should be written for that woman. Specifically, which is not here the case, if you should plead that possibly he gave beforehand a fee to the scribe to write the passage in the scroll specifically for her, this also is unavailing since we require the insertion of his name and her name, the name of his town and the name of her town, which we do not find here. What does then our Joseph teach us here that gallnut water makes no writing on a sheet treated with gallnut water? Our Hista said, If it was written not expressly for a Certain woman and the writing was then gone over with a pen with specific reference to that woman. The same difference of opinion may arise as we find between our Judah and the rabbis, for it has been taught if a scribe copying a scroll of the law had to write in a certain place the tetragrammaton and intended to write instead the name Judah and by mistake left out the letter Dalet, thus actually writing the tetragrammaton, he may go over the letters with his pen and so sanctify the name. This is the opinion of our Judah, but the sages say that such a name is not of the choicest set. Our Ahabi Jacob, the analogy is not altogether sound, for perhaps the rabbis ruled thus in regard to the tetragrammaton on account of the maxim indicated in the words, This is my God, and I will beautify him. But here they would not object. Our Hista said, I am able to invalidate all the bills of divorce ever written, said Rabbi to him. How so is it because the scripture says, and he shall write, and in this case it is she. Who writes for him? Perhaps the rabbis declare him to be the owner of the money which she gives to the scribe. Is it because it is written and he shall give? And here he does not give her anything of any value. Perhaps the delivery of the get is referred to that this is so is proved by the instruction sent from Eretz Israel. If the get was written on something from which it is forbidden to derive any benefit, it is still valid. The text above stated the instruction was sent from Eretz Israel. If the get is written on something from which it is forbidden to derive a benefit, it is still valid. Our Ashi said we have also learned to the same effect. A get may be written on an olive leaf, but perhaps an olive leaf is different because although worth nothing in itself, it may yet be combined with other things to enhance the value of the whole. It has been taught. Rabbi said that if the get is written on something from which it is forbidden to derive a benefit, it is still valid. Levi went. About stating this ruling in the name of Rabbi and it was not approved, he then stated it in the name of the main body of the rabbis and it was approved from this. We may conclude that the law follows his ruling. Our rabbis have taught the scripture says and he shall write the writ of divorce, which implies that he is not to grave it from this. We would conclude that graving is not counted as writing this, however, seems to be in contradiction with the following a slave who produces a deed. Engraved on a tablet or a board is legally emancipated, but not if the writing is woven into a woman's headband or a piece of embroidery said in the name of our Eliezer. There is no contradiction. Graving is invalid if the letters are in relief, but valid if they are hollowed out. You say that if the letters are in relief, it is not valid. Does not this contradict the following? The writing on the high priest's plate was not sunken but projected like that on gold coins and is not the Inscription on golden area in relief it was like the inscription on golden area and yet not like it it was like it in the fact that it projected but it was unlike it because there in golden area the metal is hollowed round the letters but here in the high priest's plate the letters themselves were hollowed out Rubin inquired of Arashi does it stamp scrape out or does it force together he replied it makes a depression Rubin thereupon raised the following objection it has been taught the writing on the high priest's plate was not sunken but was in relief like the inscription on golden area now if a stamp makes a depression round the letters Talmud Mosque it and B it does not write and for the plate writing was required it was like the inscription on golden area and yet not like it it was like it in the fact that it stood out but not like it in the fact that there in the coin the pressure is applied on the same side as the inscription but here in the Plate it was from the other side. Rabbi inquired of Arnam and if a man writes a get on a plate of gold and says to his wife, Receive here with your get and receive here with your ketuba. What is the ruling? He replied, Both her get and her ketuba have been legally received by her. Rabbi thereupon raised an objection. We have been taught if a man says, Receive here with your get and the rest can go to your ketuba. The get has been legally received by her and the rest goes to the ketuba. Now the reason is that there is something over, but otherwise not. No, the same rule applies even if there is nothing over. And what the statement teaches us is that even if there is something over, if he tells her to take that in payment of her ketuba, she takes it. But if not, not for what reason? Because in that case, the rest is reckoned merely as the margin of the get. Our rabbis taught if a man says to his wife, Here is your get, but the sheet belongs to me. She is not divorced. But if he said, on condition that you return the sheet to me, she is divorced. Our papa inquired, suppose he says on condition that the space between the lines or between the words is to belong to me. What is the ruling? This question was left over, but cannot the question be decided from the fact that the divine law said a writ that is to say one writ and not two or three? The difficulty still remains in the case where it is all linked together. Rami Bihama propounded, suppose a slave is brought into court who is known to have belonged to the husband and a get is written on his hand and he comes before us as the slave of the wife. How are we to decide? Do we presume that the husband transferred the slave to the wife along with the get or do we argue that perhaps he went to her of his own accord? Said Rabbi, cannot the question be decided on the ground that the writing is such as to admit of falsification, but does not Rabbi's difficulty apply also to our mission which says that a get may be written on? The hand of a slave we understand that the mission presents no difficulty to Rabbi the mission was speaking of a case where the get was delivered before witnesses in accordance with the ruling of our Eliezer the difficulty however arises on the question of Rami Biham according to Rami Biham there is no difficulty as he is speaking of a case where the get was tattooed on the slave's hand if you take that line you can say that the mission also presents no difficulty as it was speaking of tattooing what then is the answ
Rabba said if a man writes a get for his wife and entrusts it to his slave and also writes a deed assigning the slave to her she becomes the legal owner of the slave and she is divorced by the get why should this be the slave is a moving courtyard and a moving courtyard cannot transfer ownership and should you reply that we speak of a slave who stands still has not Rabba laid down that things which do not transfer ownership when moving do not transfer it when standing or sitting the law however is that the get is valid if the slave is bound Rabba also said if a man wrote a get for his wife and put it in his courtyard and then wrote a deed assigning her the courtyard she becomes owner of the courtyard and is divorced by the get both of these statements of Rabba are necessary for if he had confined himself to the first statement about the slave I should have said that this applies strictly to a slave but in the case of a courtyard I should declare the get invalid so as not to say Precedent for a courtyard which comes into her possession subsequently and again if he had stated only the rule about a courtyard I should have said that this applies strictly to a courtyard but in the case of a slave I should debar one who is bound so as not to set a precedent for one who is not bound now I know that this is not so said of a let us see from what expression in the scripture do we infer the rule about a courtyard from the words her hand therefore just as if he gives the get into her hand the husband can divorce her with her consent or without her consent so if he places it in the courtyard he should be able to divorce her with her consent or without her consent but the gift of the courtyard can be made only with her consent and not against her will our shimai be ashi demurred to this objection there is he said the case of her appointing an agent to receive the get from the husband which appointment can be made only with her will but not against her will and yet the agent is duly authorized and Abbey rejoins the rule of agency is not derived from the term her hand the rule regarding agency is derived from the superfluous letter in the word we shall and he sent her or if you prefer I can reply that we find cases where an agent for receiving the get is also appointed without the consent of the wife since a father can accept the get for his daughter who is still a child without her consent on an olive leaf etc. We understand the ruling in the case of a get written on the hand of a slave Talmud, mosque and be because it is not possible to cut off the hand and give it to her but where it is written on the horn of an ox why need the ox be given to her let the husband cut it off and give it to her scripture says he shall write and give to her this means that the get must be on something which requires only to be written on and to be given to make it effective it excludes something like this which requires to be written on. To be cut off and to be given before it can become effective, our Jose the Galilean says, etc. What is the reason of our Jose the Galilean as it has been taught from the word Sephir? I understand that the husband must give the wife a book. How do I know that anything will serve the purpose because it says any writer that is to say any form of written document? If so, why does it specify book to show that just as a book is not animate and does not eat, so the document used for the get must be inanimate and not a thing which eats? What do the rabbis who allow the say to this? They can reply, if the text had written be Sephir in a book, your deduction would be correct, but as it writes Sephir, it refers only to the record Sephir of the circumstances. What do the rabbis make of the word we kathab and he shall write the required to deduce there from the rule that a woman is divorced by a written document and not by a money gift for you might think that her separation from her. Husband is to be affected in the same way as her union with him, just as the union was affected by a money payment. So also the separation. Now I know that this is not so. From whence then does our Jose derive this lesson from the words a writ of cutting off a written document affects the cutting separation and not anything else? What then do the rabbis make of these words? They deduce from them that for a get we require something which genuinely cuts off the husband from the wife as it has been taught. If a man says to his wife, Here is your get on condition that you never drink wine, that you never go to your father's house, this is no cutting off. But if he says on condition that you do not do so for thirty days, this is cutting off. Whence does our Jose derive this lesson from the fact that the text uses the word kiratuth when it might use the simpler form kareth? What do the rabbis make of this? They do not stress the difference between kiratuth and kareth mishnah get. Must not be written on something still attached to the soil. If, however, it was written on something still attached to the soil and then detached and signed and given to the wife, it is valid. Our Judah declares it invalid unless it is both written and signed on something not attached to the soil. Our Judah Bibathura says that a get must not be written on a sheet from which writing has been erased nor on Dipro because writing on it can be altered without being noticeable. The sages, however, declare such a get valid. Gemara, if it is written on something attached to the soil, does not the Mishnah say just before this that it must not be so written? Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, it may be so written if a place is left blank for the substantive part. The same statement was made by our Eliezer in the name of Aroshia. It may be so written if a place is left blank for the substantive part. The same statement was also made by Rabbi Barhan in the name of Aruhanan. It may be so written. If a place is left blank for the substantive part and our mission follows our Eliezer who says that it is the witnesses to delivery who make the get effective and it is to be interpreted as follows the formal part of the get must not be written on something attached to the soil lest one should come to write there on the substantive part also if however the formal part was written on something still attached to the soil and then detached and the substantive part was then filled in and the get given to her it is valid Resh Lakish however said our mission says distinctly and signed this shows that it follows the view of our mayor who said that the signatures of the witnesses make the get effective and it is to be interpreted as follows the substantive part must not be written on something still attached to the soil for fear lest the signatures should also be affixed to it while in that state if however the substantive part was so written and the get was then detached and Signed and given to her, it is valid if it is written on the surface of an earthenware flower pot with a hole at the bottom. It is valid because he can take the pot and give it to her. If it is written on a leaf inside a flower pot with a hole at the bottom, Abbe says it is valid, and Rabbe says it is not valid. Abbe says it is valid. Talmud, Mosque, and because he can take the whole pot and give it to her, Rabbe says it is not valid because if we declare it so, there is a danger lest he should pluck the leaf and give it to her. If a flower pot belongs to one person and the seeds in it to another, then if the owner of the pot sells the pot to the owner of the seeds, as soon as the latter pulls it into his possession, he becomes the legal owner. If, however, the owner of the seeds sells the seeds to the owner of the pot, the latter does not acquire possession of them till he performs some act of hezaka. If the pot and the seeds both belong to the same man and he sells them to another, the Letter as soon as he has performed hezaka on the seeds of so facto acquires possession of the pot this accords with the rule which we have learned movable property is transferred along with a movable property through money payment through deed of assignment and through hezaka if he performs hezaka on the pot he does not acquire possession even of the pot hezaka must be performed if at all on the seeds if the inside of the pot is in Eretz Yisrael but the leaves of the plant extend outside of Eretz Yisrael Abbe says that we go by the inside and Rabbi says that we go by the leaves if the plant has taken root all authorities agree that it is subject to tithe where they differ is when the plant has not taken root but is there no difference in the case where it has taken root have we not learned if two gardens adjoin one being higher than the other and vegetables grow on the slope between our mayor says they belong to the upper garden and our Judah to the lower the reason for the Difference in that case is stated in the Mishnah itself said our mayor if the owner of the upper garden wants to take away his earth there will be no vegetables to which our Judah rejoined if the owner of the lower one wants to fill in his garden to the level of the higher there would be no vegetables there but we may still question whether there is not a difference in the case where the plant has taken root seeing that it has been taught if part of a tree is in Eretz Yisrael and part of it outside then tithable and non tithable produce are mixed up in it this is the view of Rabbi Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel however holds that that part of its fruit which grows in the place liable to tithe is tithable and that part which grows in the place not liable to tithe is non tithable now here we speak do we not of a tree of which part of the branches are in Eretz Yisrael and part outside no we speak of one of which some of the roots are in Eretz Yisrael and some outside what then is the reason of Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel, he speaks of a case where a piece of hard stone separates the roots inside and outside. What is the reason of Rabbi? He holds that in spite of this, the saps mix again higher up. What is their difference in principle? One holds that the air mingles the saps, and the other holds that each side remains separate. Our Judah Bibathur says, etc. Our high BSC said in the name of Ola, there are three kinds of skins: Maza, Haifa,
In our Eliezer further said our Eliezer declared valid a document of this kind only if it was a git but no other documents in virtue of the scriptural verse and thou shalt put them in an earthenware vessel in order that they may stand many days are Yohanan however held that even other documents of this nature are valid but does not scripture say in order that they may stand that is merely a piece of good advice mission all persons are qualified to write a get even a deaf mute a lunatic and a minor a woman may write her own get and a man his own receipt for the kathuba since the document is made effective only by the signatures attached to it tomorrow how can a deaf mute etc be qualified to write seeing that they do not understand what they are doing and therefore will not write with special reference to the woman in question said are not Talmud, mosque and that they are permitted only if an adult is standing by them and telling them to write for such and such a purpose said are Nomin to him if that is so then if a heathen writes while a Jew stands by him a get ought still to be valid and should you say that this actually is so has it not been taught that a heathen is not qualified for this purpose a heathen will follow his own idea later our Nomin corrected himself saying what I said was all wrong for since the mission expressly disqualifies a heathen from being the bearer of a get we may infer that he is qualified to write one but is it not taught that he is disqualified that is in accordance with the view of our Eliezer who said that the witnesses to delivery make the get effective and consequently that it must be written with special intention and certainly the heathen will follow his own idea our Nomin said our mayor used to say that even if the get was found on a rubbish heap and was then signed and given to the wife it is valid robber raised an objection to this the scripture says he shall write for her which we interpret to mean Expressly for her name does not this refer to the actual writing of the get? No, it refers to the signing by the witnesses. Robert raised another objection. We have learned that any get that is not written expressly for the woman to be divorced is invalid. Read that is not signed expressly. He again raised an objection. It has been taught when he writes it is as if he writes it expressly for her name. Does not this mean that if he writes the substantive part for her name, it is reckoned as if he had written the formal part also for her name? No, what it means is that if he has it signed expressly for her name, it is as if he had written it also expressly for her name. Or if you prefer, I can answer that these teachings follow our Eliezer who says that the witnesses to delivery make the get effective. Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel that a deaf mute etc is qualified to write only if he leaves the formal part of blank. So too said Arhiga in the name of Ola, a deaf mute etc is qualified. To write only if he leaves the formal part of blank the mission thus follows our Eliezer Arzerika however said in the name of our Yohanan this is not Torah what does he mean by saying this is not Torah said our Abba here the mission makes known to us that there is no force in the ruling that the get should be written with special intention and it follows the view of our Meir who said that it is the signatures of the witnesses which make the get effective but did not Rabbi B. Barhana say in the name of our Yohanan that the mission follows Rabbi Eliezer to Amram report our Yohanan differently mission all persons are qualified to act as bearers of a get except a deaf mute a lunatic and a minor a blind man and even if after being entrusted with the get but before delivering it the minor became of age or the deaf mute recovered his speech or the blind person his sight or the lunatic his reason or the heathen became a proselyte the get is still invalid but if the bearer being originally of sound senses became a deaf mute and then recovered his speech or being with sight became blind and recovered his sight or being sane became insane and recovered his reason to get is valid the general principle is that any bearer who commences and finishes his mission in full possession of his mental faculties is qualified tomorrow we understand a deaf mute a lunatic and a minor being disqualified because they do not know what they are doing also a heathen because in any case he himself cannot release but why should a blind person be disqualified our she's hate says because he does not know from whom he takes a get and to whom he delivers it our joseph strongly demurred to this in that case he said how is it permitted to a blind man to associate with his wife or to any man to associate with their wives at night time is it not by recognizing the voice so here a blind person can recognize the voice no said our joseph the fact is that here we are speaking of a get brought from foreign parts the bearer of which has to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed and a blind man cannot say the said abbe to him if that is so then a person who becomes blind after receiving the get ought to be qualified and yet the mission states expressly that if being with sight he became blind and recovered his sight the get is valid which shows it is valid only if he recovered his sight but if he did not recover his sight that he is not qualified he is qualified even if he does not recover his sight since however the mission employed the formula or being sane he became insane and recovered his reason which was necessary in that case because the reason why it is valid is because he recovers his reason but if he does not recover it the get is not valid it uses a similar wording in the next clause being with sight he became blind and recovered his sight said our ashi there is an indication of this in it Language of the mission itself since it says this is the general principle any bearer who is in full possession of his mental faculties at the beginning and end of his mission is qualified and it does not say anyone who is qualified at the beginning and end of his mission this shows that what was said above about the bearer who becomes blind is correct a question was put to our MIA slave he made an agent on behalf of a woman to receive a writ of divorce from her husband he replied since the mission declares a heathen disqualified Talmud, Mosque and B we may infer that a slave is qualified RC said in the name of our Yohanan a slave cannot be appointed an agent by a woman to receive a get on her behalf from her husband because he does not come within the provisions of the Jewish law in regard to divorce and marriage our Eliezer strongly demurred to this your reason he said is that the slave cannot be an agent to do for another thing which he cannot do. For himself, this would imply that he can be an agent for a thing which he can do for himself. How does this square with the fact that a heathen or a Samaritan can give terimah for himself? As we have learned, if a heathen or a Samaritan gives terimah from his own produce, what is so given is genuine terimah. And yet we also learn in another place, if a heathen gives terimah from the produce of an Israelite, even with the latter's permission, what is so given is not regarded as terimah. The reason is, is it not that Scripture says you also shall give your heath offering? And we take the superfluous word also to indicate that just as you are Israelites, so your agents must be Israelites in the school of our They replied, No, the proper inference from the word also is just as you are sons of the covenant, so must your agents be sons of the covenant. Our high Abba said in the name of our Yohanan, a slave cannot he made an agent by a woman to receive a get on her behalf from her husband because he does not come within the provisions of the Jewish law in regard to divorce and marriage and this in spite of the fact that we have a teaching if a man says to his female slave you are a slave but your child is free if she was pregnant at the time she acquires freedom for it the child what is the point of quoting if she was pregnant she acquires freedom for it when our Samuel B. Judah came from Palestine he said our Yohanan said two things one was the dictum regarding a get quoted above the other was this it seems a reasonable view that a slave can receive a writ of emancipation on behalf of another slave from the master of that slave but not from his own master and if someone should whisper in your ear that there is a halacha laid down which contradicts this is if she was pregnant she acquires freedom for it reply to him that two great authorities in their generation are Zara and our Samuel B. Isaac explained the matter one said that this teaching follows the opinion of Rabbi who said that if a man emancipates the half of his slave the slave acquires freedom in regard to the one half and the other said in further explanation that the reason of Rabbi for applying this to the present case is that he looks upon the embryo as part of the mother and therefore the master in freeing the child as it were made her owner of one of her own limbs mission even the woman whose word is not accepted as evidence if they say the husband of a certain woman is dead are accepted as bearers of her get namely her mother-in-law her mother-in-law's daughter her husband's other wife her husband's brother's wife and her husband's daughter why is a get different from a report of death because the writing affords proof a woman may be the bearer of her own get only she is required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed tomorrow how can you say the scene that it has been taught just as these women's word is not accepted as evidence that her husband is dead so they are not accepted as bearers of her get our joseph replied there is no contradiction the one rule is for eretz israel the other for outside eretz israel in eretz israel where we do not rely upon her word such a woman is permitted to bring the get outside eretz israel where we should have to rely upon her word she is not permitted to bring it said away to him on the contrary the opposite is more reasonable in eretz
The rule refers to outside of Eretz Yisrael or as she said our mission also bears out this view since it says the wife herself may bring her get only she is required to say etc. which shows that it refers to outside Eretz Yisrael does then our Joseph take the earlier clause in the mission and the later one to refer to Eretz Yisrael and the middle one to outside Eretz Yisrael yes he refers the earlier and later clauses to Eretz Yisrael and the middle clause to outside on what does he base this? View about the middle one because the mission says why is a get different from the report of death because the writing affords proof and it does not say the writing and the declaration afford proof the wife herself may act as bearer etc. is not the wife divorced as soon as the get comes into her hand our said this rule is for the case where he says to her you will not be divorced by this get except in the presence of such and such a beth but all the same when she comes there she is divorced in fact said Arhuna Bimano in the name of Araha the son of R.I.K. the rule is for the case where he says to her when you come there put it on the ground and take it up again if so he as much as says to her take your get from the floor and has not Rabba laid down that if he says take your get from the floor it is no divorce no the rule applies to the case where he said to her be my agent for taking the get till you come there and when you come there be your own agent for receiving it and take it but in this case the agent cannot return to report to the sender he says to her be my agent for taking the get till you come there and when you come there appoint an agent for receiving it this is all very well on the view that a woman may appoint an agent to receive her get from the agent of her husband but on the view that a woman may not appoint an agent to receive her get from the agent of her husband what is to be said what is the reason for the letter View that it shows a contempt for the husband and in this case the husband is evidently not particular this is a valid answer according to the view that such a proceeding is forbidden because it shows a contempt for the husband but on the view that the reason is because of the resemblance of this agent to a courtyard which comes into her possession subsequently what are we to say he says to her be my agent for taking the get till you come there and when you come there appoint another agent for taking it and later receive your get from him or if you prefer I can say that he says to her be my agent for taking it till you come there and when you come there declare in presence of the Bethdin in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed and then make the Bethdin an agent for receiving and they will give it to you chapteri I mission any bill of divorce which is not written expressly for the woman for whom it is intended is invalid for Instance if a man passing through the street hears the voice of a scribe dictating so and so divorces so and so from such and such a place and he says that is my name and that is the name of my wife it is not a valid document to divorce his wife with moreover if he wrote a get to divorce his wife and changed his mind and a fellow townsman met him and said to him my name is the same as yours and my wife's name the same as your wife's it is not valid for the second one to divorce his wife. With Talmud, Moskid and be moreover if he had two wives with the same name and wrote a get with which to divorce the elder he must not use it to divorce the younger moreover if he said to the scribe right and I will divorce whichever I choose it is not valid to divorce there with either tomorrow the second clause of the mission puts the case where he wrote a get to divorce his wife and changed his mind what then is the case put in the first clause our papa said we are dealing there with scribes. Practicing to write bills of divorce are as she said the language of the mission bears this out since it says dictating and not reading which shows that our papa is right what is the point of the word moreover the school of our Ishmael taught not only is a get invalid that has not been written for purposes of divorce but for practice but also one that has been written for purposes of divorce but not of this man's wife and not only is this one invalid that has not been written for the purposes of his divorce but even the other one that has been written for the purposes of his divorce is invalid and not only is this one invalid which has not been written for divorcing this wife but even the other one which has been written for divorcing this wife is invalid what is the reason if the scripture had written he shall give a writ of divorce into her hand I should say that this excludes the first case mentioned above where the get is not written for the purpose of affecting a Divorce, but that if a husband writes a get to divorce his wife and then changes his mind, seeing that the document is meant to effect a divorce, I should say it is valid. Therefore, the divine law says, and he write, and if it had merely said, and he write, I should have said that this excludes a case where he does not write the get for her. But if he has two wives and writes for one or other of them, in which case he does in a way write for her, I should say that it is valid. Therefore, the text says for her that is to say for her name. Why then is the last case specified to show that there is no such thing as a retrospective decision? If he wrote a get with which to divorce the elder, he must not use it to divorce the younger. It is the younger only whom he must not divorce with it, but he may divorce with it. The elder Rabbah said this means to say that if there are two men named Joseph B. Simeon living in a town, either can claim from a third party on the strength of a bond written in his. Name said, obey to him on your reasoning from the first clause of the Mishnah, which says that if a man says to another, My name is the same as yours, and takes a get from him, he may not use it to divorce his wife. I understand that it is the second only who may not use it, but the first may. But how can this be seen that it is laid down in reference to the case of two men named Joseph B. Simeon that a third party cannot claim against either of them on the strength of the bond? The truth is that, in regard to the latter kind of get written by one man and used by another, we say it is valid if used by the first only if there are witnesses to the delivery of the Mishnah following our Eliezer. So too, in regard to the former kind of get where the two wives have the same name, the get is valid if given to the one for whom it was written only if there are witnesses to the delivery of the Mishnah following our Eliezer. Rabbah said, All the kinds of get mentioned in our Mishnah disqualify the woman. Named in them from living with her husband if he is a priest except the first Samuel said that the first also disqualifies Samuel applies here the principle which he had elsewhere laid down that wherever the rabbis have declared to get invalid it does not affect divorce but it does disqualify the wife of the priest from living with him and wherever they have declared Ahaliza invalid it does not release the sister-in-law but it does disqualify her from marrying any of the brothers-in-law. In the West they said in the name of our Eliezer if the Ahaliza was performed with the left hand or by night it does not release the woman but it does disqualify her Talmud, Moskid and A if it was performed to a minor or with a sock it does not release the woman but neither does it disqualify her Zeir I said none of the kinds of get mentioned disqualify the woman from living with her husband if a priest save the last so did Rab also lay down none of these disqualify save the last R. Yohanan however said that even the last does not disqualify our Yohanan follows the principle he has enunciated elsewhere since R.C. said in the name of our Yohanan if two brothers divide an inheritance they are reckoned as having purchased each his share from the other and each restores his share to the other at the jubilee and both statements of our Yohanan are necessary for if I had only the statement about the get to go by I should say that in that case there can be no retrospective decision. As to which wife he meant because we require the get to be written for her namely for the name of the woman concerned but there in the case of an estate the all merciful said that it is a sale which has to be returned at the jubilee but not an inheritance or a gift if again I had only the statement regarding the field to go by I might say that he takes the stricter line or again that he thinks the property should revert to its original state but here in the case of a get this does. Not apply hence both statements were necessary our I put a question to Rab Judah if a man said to a scribe right a get for whichever of my wives shall go out of doors first what is the ruling he replied we have learned moreover if he said to the scribe right and I will divorce whichever I choose it is not valid to divorce there with either we infer from this that there is no such thing as a retrospective decision our I raised an objection against this from the following passage if a man says to his sons I am going to kill the paschal lamb for whichever of you will first enter Jerusalem as soon as the first of them enters with his head and the greater part of his body he becomes entitled to his portion and makes his brothers entitled to their portions along with him he replied Hashai my son what has the paschal lamb to do with bills of divorce in this connection it has been recorded that our Yohanan said that the reason is to make them eager to perform it. Mizwak this is also indicated by the language of the passage itself which states as soon as the first has entered with his head and the greater part of his body he becomes entitled to his portion and makes his brothers entitled to theirs along with him if now you say that the father mentally reckoned them all as of his company from the first this is intelligible but if you say that he did not so reckon them can they be counted in after the lamb is killed have we not learned persons can be counted into a company and withdraw until the lamb is killed but not after it has also been taught to the same effect it happened once that the daughters came before
He can say two logs which I intend to set aside from each hundred are to be the priests do ten logs the first tithe and nine logs the second tithe Talmud, Mosque and B and he then begins to drink from it at once this is the ruling of Armadir Arjuda and Arhosea and Arsimian however prohibit him from doing so that according to Arjuda we do decide retrospectively where he leaves the choice to others is shown by the following mission before we learn what is the status of the woman who has received a conditional gift from a sick husband during those days between the giving of the get and his death Arjuda says that she is a married woman in every respect and yet when the husband dies the get takes effect our measure she has said further to Rabba there is also Arsimian who holds that when the man keeps the choice in his own hands we do not decide retrospectively but when he leaves the choice to others he holds that we do that according to Arsimian we do not decide retrospectively. When he keeps the choice in his own hands is shown by the teaching just quoted that according to him where he leaves the choice to others we do so decide is shown by the following teaching if a man says to a woman I betroth thee by means of this intercourse on condition that thy father consents even if the father does not consent she is betrothed Arsimian be Judah said in the name of Arsimian that if the father consents she is betrothed Talmud, Mosque and if not she is not. Betrothed Rabbah answered him both according to Arjuna and according to Arsimian it makes no difference whether he keeps the choice in his own hands or leaves it to another in either case we do decide retrospectively there in the case of the Kutian wine however the reason for their prohibiting is as given in the mission quoted they said to Armeir do you not admit that if the wine skin should burst and the wine be spilled the man would be found to have drunk wine which had not been freed. For ordinary use he answered them wait till it does burst mission if a scribe writes out formulas of bills of divorce he must leave blank spaces for the name of the man and the name of the woman and the date if he writes formulas of bonds of indebtedness he must leave blank spaces for the name of the lender the name of the borrower the amount lent and the date if he writes forms of contracts of sale he must leave blank spaces for the name of the vendor the name of the purchaser the purchase money the property and the date to prevent hardship Arjuna declares all such formulas invalid even if the blanks have been left our Eliezer declares all of them valid if the blanks have been left except writs of divorce because scripture says he shall write for her which means expressly for her Gemara Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the scribe must also leave space for the words you are permitted to marry any man and the mission follows our Eliezer who said that the Witnesses to delivery make the get effective and the get must consequently be written expressly for the woman concerned and it was necessary for Samuel to tell us here that the mission follows our Eliezer although he has already twice told us so for if he had only told us so on the first occasion I might think that the reason why we interpret that mission is so as to make it agree with our Eliezer is to reconcile the contradiction between the first statement of the mission a get must not be written etc and the second if it was written on something attached to the soil it is valid but all the same in connection with the next mission where it also says that a get is made effective only by the signatures attached to it I might think that the mission is there following our mayor who said that the witnesses to the signatures make the get effective unless Samuel told us the contrary if again Samuel had only told us there that the mission follows our Eliezer I might think that that is because there also it is possible to interpret the mission in this way but here in speaking of the scribe who writes out formulas since the last ruling given is that of our Eliezer I should say that the first ruling if a scribe writes our formulas of bills of divorce etc is not that of our Eliezer therefore Samuel had to tell us this also to prevent hardship hardship to whom our Jonathan said hardship to the scribe the mission following our Eliezer who said that the witnesses to delivery make the get effective by rights therefore it should not be permitted to write beforehand even the formula of the get but to make matters easier for the scribes the rabbis allowed it Arjuna declared them all invalid he forbade the formulas for fear that the substantive part might also be written in and he forbade the scribes to write the formulas of bonds of indebtedness for fear that they might also write the formulas of bills of divorce our Eliezer declared all of them Valid except bills of divorce he forbade the formulas for fear that the substantive part might also be written but he did not forbid the writing of bonds out of fear that it might lead to the writing of bills of divorce because scripture says he shall write for her do not the words for her in the text refer to the substantive part of the get explain our Eliezer's reason thus because it is written he shall write for her which means expressly for her therefore we forbid the writing of it. Form for fear it may lead to the writing of the substantive part Talmud, Mosque and B does not our Eliezer here contradict himself to Tanaim report our Eliezer differently our Shabbat I said in the name of our Hezekiah the words to prevent hardship mean to prevent quarreling the mission following our Meir who said that the signatures of the witnesses make the get effective and by rights it should be permitted to the scribe to write beforehand even the substantive part but in that case it might happen that a woman might hear a scribe reading over what he had written and she might think that her husband had told him to write and so fall out with him or his said in the name of Abami it is for the relief of deserted wives some say that this interpretation follows our mayor and some say that it follows our Eliezer some say it follows our mayor who held that the witnesses to the signatures make the get effective and therefore by rights it is permissible to put in beforehand even the substantive part of the get only it may happen sometimes that a husband falls out with his wife and in a passion throws her the get and then makes her remain a deserted wife some again say it follows our Eliezer who held that the witnesses to delivery make the get effective and therefore by rights even the formula of the get should not be written beforehand only it may happen sometimes that the man wants to go abroad and does not find a scribe ready and so he leaves her without giving her the get and thus makes her a deserted wife if he is lost and for the date the mission makes no distinction between a get which dissolves a marriage and a get which dissolves a betrothal in the case of a get which dissolves a marriage this is a proper regulation whether on the view that the date is required to prevent a man shielding his sister's daughter or on the view that it is required on account of the use of in a get which dissolves a betrothal however the regulation certainly is reasonable on the view that the date is required to prevent a man shielding his sister's daughter but on the view that it is required on account of the use of does the law of use of apply to a betrothed woman Aram Rome said I heard a certain remark from Allah who said it is to safeguard the interest of the child and I did not know what he meant I discovered it however when I came across the following statement if a man says right a get for my fiance I will divorce her with it after I marry her it is no get and commenting on this Ullah said what is the reason because people may say that her get came before her child so here the date has to be put in lest people should say that her get came before her child Arzara said in the name of our Abba Bishila who said it in the name of our Hamna the elder who had it from our Abba Ahaba who had it from Rab the Halacha follows the ruling of our Eliezer Rab designated our Eliezer the happiest of the wise men does then it Halacha follow him in regard to other documents also has not our Papi said in the name of Rabba if an authentication of the Beth Din is written before the witnesses have testified to their signatures it is invalid the reason is that it seems to contain a falsehood so here the documents seem to contain a falsehood this is no objection as shown by the statement of our Naman who said our Meir used to say that even if a man found a get on a rubbish heap and had it signed and delivered to the wife it is valid and even the rabbis do not differ from our mayor save in regard to writs of divorce which have to be written with special intention but not in regard to other documents since R.C. said in the name of our Yohanan if a man gives a bond for a loan and repays the loan on the same day he may not use the same bond for another loan because the obligation contained in it is already cancelled the reason is that the obligation contained in it is cancelled but the fact that it may appear to contain a falsehood is of no concern Talmud, Mosque and Amishnah if the bearer of a get loses it on the way if he finds it again immediately it is valid and if not it is not valid if he finds it in a or in a Deluskama or if he recognizes it, it is valid Gemara is there not a contradiction between this mission and the following if a man finds bills of divorcement of wives or of emancipation of slaves or wills or deeds of gift or receipts he should not deliver them for I say that after they were written the writer changed his mind and decided not to give them I infer from this do and not that if he had said give them they are to be given even if a long interval had elapsed rabbi replied there is no difficulty here in our mission the reference is to a place where caravans pass frequently there the other to a place where caravans do not frequently pass and even in a place where caravans frequently pass the get is invalid only if there are presumed to be two men named Simon ben Joseph in the same
Say it was found in the place where flax was soaked and although there were two persons of the same name known to be in the place he ordered it to be returned because it was not a place where caravans passed frequently some again say that it was the place where flax was sold and there were not two persons of the same name known to be there though caravans did pass frequently are zero pointed to a contradiction between the mission and the following barrier and also resolved it we learn here if the bearer of a get loses it on the way and finds it again immediately it is valid and if not it is not valid this seems to contradict the following if a man finds a bill of divorce in the street if the husband acknowledges it he should deliver it to the woman but if the husband does not acknowledge it he should give it neither to one nor to the other it says here at any rate Talmud, must get and be that when the husband acknowledges it he should give it to the woman even if a long time has Elapsed Arzera answered himself by saying that in the Mishnah here we speak of a place where caravans pass frequently and there the other passage of a place where caravans do not pass frequently some adding quoting the answer of Arzera and even the Mishnah says it should not be delivered only if there are presumed to be two men of the same name which is the view of Rabbi some again report Arzera as having said even though there are not presumed etc he should not deliver and so as differing from Rabbi we can understand why Rabbi did not raise the difficulty in the form in which it was raised by Arzera he thought there was more force in opposing one Mishnah to another but why did not Arzera raise it in the form in which it was raised by Rabbi Arzera might answer does the other Mishnah state if the husband has said give it is to be given even after the lapse of some time possibly what it means is that if he has said give it is given only in the recognized way I Immediately our Jeremiah said the get is delivered after a lapse of time only if for instance the witnesses say we have never signed more than one get in the name of Joseph and Simeon if that is so what does the mission tell us you might think that we still do not declare the get valid for fear that the name may happen to be the same and the witnesses may happen to be the same now we know that we disregard this possibility our Ashi said the get is delivered after a lapse of time only if the bearer can say there is a hole at the side of such and such a letter which is a precise distinguishing mark and that is provided he says at the side of such and such a letter which is a precise distinguishing mark and not simply a hole our Ashi ruled thus because he was not certain if the rule about distinguishing marks is derived from the Torah or was laid down by the rabbis on their own authority Rabbi Bibar handle lost to get in the Beth Hamid Rashi said to the Beth Din if you want a Distinguishing mark I can give one and if you want me to recognize it by sight I can do so they gave it back to him he said I do not know if they gave it back because I was able to give a distinguishing mark and they thought that the rule about such marks was derived from the Torah or because I was able to recognize it by sight and for this only a Talmudical student would be trusted but not any ordinary person and if not it is not valid our rabbis have taught what is it that we call not. Immediately our Nathan says if he has allowed an interval to elapse long enough for a caravan to pass by and encamp our Simeon B. Eliezer says it is called immediately so long as someone stands there and sees that no one passes there some say that no one has stopped their rabbi says if he waits long enough for the get to be written our Isaac says long enough to read it according to others to write and to read it even if a considerable time did elapse if there are precise distinguishing marks. They are taken as evidence, e.g., if the bearer says that there is a hole at the side of such and such a letter, the general characteristics of the get, however, are no evidence, e.g., if he said that it was long or short, if the bearer found it tied up in a purse, a bag, or a ring, Talmud, mosque, in, or among his clothes, even after a considerable time it is valid, it has been stated, Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, the Halachat is that the found get is valid if no one has stopped there, whereas Rabbi Barhana said the Halachat is that it is valid if no one has passed by there, why does not Rab Judah say that the Halachat follows this master, and Rabbi Barhana say that it follows the other master, because there is another reading which reverses the names in the Hafasa or a what is a Hafasa, Rabbi Barhana says a small pouch, what is a Deluskama, the kind of box used by old men, Mishnah, if when the bearer of a get left the husband was an old man or Sikhi. Should yet deliver it to the wife on the presumption that he is still alive. If the daughter of an ordinary Israelite is married to a priest and her husband goes abroad, she goes on eating of the teramah on the presumption that he is still alive. If a man sends a sin offering from abroad, it is sacrificed on the altar on the presumption that he is still alive. Imara Rabbah said this mission speaks only of an old man who has not reached the years of strength and of a man who is just ill because most invalids recover, but not if he has attained years of strength or was in a dying condition because most persons in a dying condition die against this opinion. I may raise the following objection if when the bearer left the husband was old, even a hundred years old, he yet gives it to the wife on the presumption that he is alive. This is a refutation. I might, however, still answer that if a man reaches such an age, he is altogether exceptional. I pointed out to Rabbah contradiction. We learn if when the bearer left the husband was old or sick, he should yet deliver it to the wife on the presumption that he is still alive. This seems to contradict the following barrier. If a priest said to his wife, Here is I get to come into force an hour before my death, she is forbidden to eat the priestly dues immediately. He replied, Do you compare Terima with bills of divorce to Terima? There is an alternative, but to the get there is no alternative. Why not oppose two statements regarding Terima itself? For we learn here if the daughter of an ordinary Israelite is married to a priest and her husband goes abroad, she goes on eating the Terima dues on the presumption that he is still alive. Does not this contradict the following barrier? If a priest says to his non priestly wife, Here is I get to come into force an hour before my death, she is forbidden to eat the Terima immediately. Are at the son of our Isaac answered there, the case is different because he prohibited her. To himself one hour before his death our papa strongly demurred to the saying how do you know that he will die first perhaps she will die first in fact said Abay the solution of the contradiction is that the one passage follows our mayor who disregards the chance of dying and the other follows our Judah who takes this chance into account as we have learned if a man buys wine from the Kutians he can say two logs which I intend to set aside are to be reckoned as Terima on 110 logs as first tithe and nine logs as second tithe and then begin to drink at once this is the view of our mayor our Judah our Jose and our Simeon forbid him to do this Rabba said Talmud, Mosque and be we disregard the chance of his having died but take into account the chance that he may die said our Abay Matina to Rabba what of the wine skin in the case of the Terima the chance of which breaking is like the chance that the man may die and yet the authorities differ in regard to it said our Judah from Discarda. A wine skin is different because it can be handed over to someone to keep our measure. She has strongly objected to the saying your security himself requires a security. In fact, said Rabbi, the chance that he has died, we do not take into account whether we take into account the chance that he may die is a question on which ten aim differ if a person sends a sin offering from abroad, etc. But is not laying on of hands required. Our Joseph replied that the mission refers to an offering sent by a woman. Our Papa said that it refers to the sin offering of a bird. All three clauses in the mission are necessary for if the rule that the person in question is presumed to be alive were stated merely in regard to a get. I should say the reason is because there is no alternative, but in the case of Terima where there is an alternative, it does not apply. And if the rule had been stated with regard to Terima, I should say that the reason is because sometimes there is no alternative, but in the case of it. Sin offering of the bird I should say that as there is a doubt whether the person who sent it is still alive we should not take the risk of bringing profane things into the temple court hence all three clauses are necessary mission three statements were made by our Eliezer B. Parada before the sages who formally approved of them he said that people in a besieged town people in a ship storm tossed at sea and a man who has been brought to court to be tried for his life are presumed to be alive so long as they are not known to be dead people however in a besieged town which has been captured or in a ship which has been lost at sea or a man who has been led out to execution are presumed to be either alive or dead according to whichever view entails the greater rigor hence the daughter of an ordinary Israelite who has married a priest or the daughter of a priest who has married an ordinary Israelite may not eat of the terima if the husband has disappeared in this way. Gemara R. Joseph said this rule with regard to a man led out to execution applies only to Israelite courts but in the case of a heathen court once he is condemned to execution there is no question that he is executed said Abay to him do not the heathen court sometimes take a bribe he replied if they do it is only before the writ is signed with the
The report comes from an Israelite court. They do allow the wife to marry again. The passage quoted means really died and really put to death. And as for your question, why in such a case, if the report comes from a heathen court, is she not allowed to marry again, seeing that it is a recognized principle with us that the word of a heathen speaking without ulterior motive is to be accepted? The answer is that this applies only to a matter in which they themselves have not participated, but where the matter is one in which they themselves have participated, they are prone to indulge in falsehood. The following is another version of the above passage. Our Joseph said this rule applies only to heathen courts, Talmud, Mosque, but in the case of an Israelite court, once it condemns him to execution, he is executed, said Abbe to him in an Israelite court. Also, it is possible that some circumstance may be found in his favor after his condemnation. Such a circumstance happens before. The sentence is pronounced after the sentence is pronounced. It does not happen. May we say that this view is supported by the following? Whenever two persons come forward and say we testify against so and so that he was condemned to death in such and such a death in so and so and so and so being witnesses against him, such a man has to be put to death. Perhaps a condemned man who has escaped is different. Come and here if he heard a report from an Israelite court that so and so died or was put to death, they allow his wife to marry again. If however the report came from a heathen court that he died or was put to death, they do not allow his wife to marry again. Now what is meant here by died and put to death? Shall I say these terms are to be taken literally? Then why in the case of a heathen court is the wife not allowed to marry again, seeing that it is a recognized principle that the word of a heathen speaking without ulterior motive is to be accepted in questions relating to marriage? I must therefore understand the words died and put to death in the sense of taken out to die or to be put to death and yet it states that if the report comes from an Israelite court they do allow the wife to marry again the passage means really died and really put to death and as for your question why in such a case if the report comes from a heathen court is she not allowed to marry again seeing that it is a recognized principle with us that the word of a heathen speaking without ulterior motive is to be accepted the answer is that this applies only to a matter in which the heathen has not participated but where the matter is one in which they have themselves participated he is prone to indulge in falsehood mission if the bearer of a get in Eretz Yisrael falls ill he can send it on by another if however the husband said to him take for me such and such an article from her he may not send it to get on by another since the husband may not want his pledge to be in the hand of another Gemara Arkahana said we have learned specifically if he falls ill cannot I see that for myself unless Arkahana had pointed this out you might think that the same rule applies even if he does not fall ill and that the Mishnah merely mentioned a usual case hence he tells us that this is not so how am I to understand the Mishnah if the husband said to the bearer simply take this get then surely even if he did not fall ill he can send it on by another if however the husband said you take this then even if he did fall ill he cannot send it on by another and if the Mishnah follows our Simeon be Gamaliel then even if he fell ill although the husband merely said take he cannot send it on by another as it has been taught if a man said take this get to my wife the bearer can send it on by another if he said you take this get to my wife the bearer cannot send it on by another our Simeon be Gamaliel said in either case one agent cannot appoint another of you like I can answer that he said take for even this formula authorizes the bearer to send it on by another only if he falls ill or if you like I can say that he said you take for only where he falls ill it is different and if you like I can say that the mission is in agreement with our Simeon B. Gamaliel only where the bearer falls ill it is different we learned if the bearer of a get in Eretz Yisrael falls ill he can send it on by another does not this contradict the following for we learned if a man says to two persons give a get to my wife or to three persons write a get and give it to my wife they are to write and give it which implies does it not that they themselves are to write it but not an agent of theirs have a replied there the reason is that they should not put the husband to shame but here the husband is not particular Rabbi said the reason there is that he only gave them verbal instructions and verbal instructions cannot be transmitted to an agent does any Difference arise in practice between the two. It does in the case of a gift. Their difference being in principle the same as that between Rab and Samuel. Rab holding that a gift is not on all fours with a get and Samuel holding that it is. If the husband said to him, "Take for me such and such an article from her Rish Lakish," said your Rabbi meant merely to teach us that the borrower may not lend the article he has borrowed further, nor may the hire hire it out further. Said are you handed to him this? Even school children know what we should say is that sometimes if the bearer did send a get on by another bearer, the get itself is no get because he puts himself in the same position as the bearer who was told by the husband not to divorce the wife except in the lower room, and he divorced her in the upper room, or who was told not to divorce her except with the right hand, and he divorced her with the left. Now both authorities are agreed that where she goes out to meet him, the second bearer. And gives him the article and then takes from him the get. It is a perfectly valid get where they differ is in the case where the husband said to the bearer Talmud, Moskid and B take the article from her and then give her the get and he went and gave her the get and then took from her the article. In such a case, Ariel Hanan declares the get invalid even if delivered by the first bearer himself and all the more if by his agent, whereas Resh Lakish declares it valid even if delivered by the agent and all the more so if by the first bearer himself. Mishnah, if the bearer of a get from foreign parts falls ill, he goes before Bethdin and appoints an agent and sends him on with the get declaring before them in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed. The last agent is not required to make this declaration. He merely declares I am the messenger of the Bethdin Gemara. The rabbi said to Abami, the son of Arabab, inquire of Arabab, can the agent of the original? Bearer appoint a further agent or not you replied you have no need to ask this for since it says in the mission of the last agent and not the second you may conclude that he may appoint another agent what you should ask however is whether when he appoints an agent he does so before a Bethdin or even without a Bethdin they said to him we have no need to ask this since the mission says he says I am the messenger of the Bethdin Arnam and B. Isaac reported the discussion thus the rabbi said to Abami the son of Arabah inquire of Arabah when the agent of the original bearer appoints a second agent does he do so before the Bethdin or even without the Bethdin he replied you ought to ask first whether he can appoint a second agent at all they said this we have no need to ask since the mission speaks of the last agent which shows that the second bearer can appoint a third what however we want to know is whether he must do so before the Bethdin or whether he does not need the Beth. Then he said to them this also you need not ask since it says he says I am the messenger of the Bethdin Rabbi said a bearer in Eretz Israel can appoint any number of further bearers without needing any Bethdin Arashi said if the first one dies they all cease to function Mar son of Arashi said the statement of my father dates from his youth if the husband dies is there any substance left in them from whom do they all derive their status from the husband as long as the husband is alive they are all agents if the husband dies they all cease to be agents a certain man wanted to send to get to his wife the messenger said to him I do not know her so the husband said to him go and give it to Abu Menumi who knows her and he will go and give it to her the man took the get but did not find Abu Menumi in town he found Arabah and Arhan and Papa and Ar Isaac Napaha sitting as a Bethdin with our Safra also present they said to him transmit your commission to us so that when our Abu Menumi comes, we can give him the get and he can go and give it to the woman, said Arsafar to them, but this man has not been made an agent for effecting the divorce. They were non plus, said Rabbi Arsafar tripped up three ordained rabbis. Arashi, however, said, How did he trip them up? Did the husband say to the man, Abu Menumi shall deliver the get and not you? According to another version, Rabbi said, Arsafar thinks he has tripped up, but he is mistaken. Three ordained rabbis, said Arashi. Where is the mistake? What did the husband say to the bearer? Abu Menumi shall give it and not you. A certain man sent to get to his wife, telling the bearer not to give it to her till thirty days had passed. Before the thirty days had passed, the man found he could not carry out the commission. He therefore consulted Rabbi, said, Rabbi, why is a bearer who falls ill allowed to appoint another bearer because he is prevented by circumstances from carrying out his commission? This man also is. Prevented by circumstances from carrying out his commission, so he said to the man, Transmit your commission to us so that after thirty days we can appoint a bearer who will give a get to the wife, said the rabbis to Rabba, but he is not at this moment commissioned to effect the divorce. He replied, Since he can divorce her after thirty days, he is practically now an
Original agent or not in his presence, he himself decided the matter, saying they can do so either in his presence or not. A message was sent from their Eretz Yisrael, they may do so either in his presence or not in his presence. A certain man once said, This shall be a get if I do not come within thirty days. He did come but could not get across the river, so he cried out, See, I have come, see, I have come. Samuel said, This is no coming. A certain man said to the Beth Din, If I do not make it up with her in thirty days, it will be a get. He went and tried to make up with her, but she would not be reconciled, said our Joseph. Has he offered her a bag of gold coins and yet not been able to appease her? According to another version, our Joseph said, Must he offer her a bag of gold coins? He has done his best to make it up with her, but she would not be reconciled. The latter version fits in with the view that in the matter of a get allowance is made for circumstances over which one has no control and the former with the view that no such allowance is made Mishnah if a man lends money to a priest or a Levite or a poor man on condition that he can recoup himself from their dues he may do so in the presumption that they are still alive and he does not take into account the chance that the priest or the Levite may have died or the poor man may have become rich if he knows that they have died he must obtain the permission of the heirs if he made the loan in the presence of the Beth he need not obtain permission from the heirs Gemara can he do this even if the dues have not come into the hands of those who are entitled to them Rav said the Mishnah speaks of priests and Levites with whom he is familiar Samuel says he conveys possession to them through a third party Ola said this ruling is based on the view of our Jose who said that in many places possession is reckoned to have been acquired though strictly speaking it has not been acquired the reason why all the Authorities do not concur with Rav is because the mission does not mention the man's acquaintance. The reason why all do not concur with Samuel is because the mission does not mention transferring possession. The reason why all do not concur with Ola is because we do not base a ruling on the opinion of an individual rabbi or rabbis have taught if a man lends money to a priest or a Levite or a poor man on condition that he may recoup himself from their dues, he may do so in the presumption that they are still alive, he may stipulate with them to get the benefit of a lower market price, and this is not reckoned as taking interest. The seventh year does not release it if he desires to retract, he is not permitted to do so if he gave up all hope of recovering, but afterwards found that he could recover, he does not appropriate any dues in payment of the debt because dues are not set aside from that which has been given up as lost. The master says he may stipulate to get it. Benefit of a lower market price. Surely this is self-evident. He informs us that even though he did not stipulate this expressly, he is reckoned as having done so. This is not reckoned as interest. Why so? Since when he has nothing, he does not give. When he has something and gives less, this is not counted as interest. The seventh year does not release it because we do not apply here the verse. He shall not press if he desires to retract. He is not permitted. Our Papa said this rule applies only to the owner of the priest. But if the priest wants to retract, he may, as we have learned, if he the purchaser has given him the seller money but has not yet pulled into his possession the produce, he can retract. If the owner has given up all hope of recovering, he does not appropriate any dues because dues are not set aside from that which has been given up as lost. Is not this obvious? It required to be stated for the case where the corn was in stock before it was blighted. You might think that. In that case the corn is counted as something of value now I know that this is not so it has been taught our Eliezer B. Jacob says if a man lends a priest or a Levite money in the presence of the Beth Din and they die before repaying he sets aside dues for them as belonging to the whole tribe and recovers therefrom if he lent to a poor man before the Beth Din and he died he sets aside dues for him as belonging to the poor of Israel and recovers therefrom Ara he said as belonging to all. The poor what is the practical difference between them Talmud, Mosque and beware there are Kuti and poor if the poor man became rich he does not set aside dues for him and that man becomes possessor of what he has why did the rabbi safeguard the lender in the case of the poor man dying and not in the case of his becoming rich it is a common thing for people to die but not to become rich our Papa said this is borne out by the common saying if you hear that your neighbor has died believe. It if you hear that he has become rich, do not believe it. If he dies, he must obtain permission from the heirs. It has been taught. Rabbi says, heirs that have inherited are there any heirs that do not inherit? Are you and explained it to me? Heirs that inherit land, but not money. Are Jonathan said, if he left a mere needleful of land, the other can recoup himself only to the extent of a needleful. And if he left an axle, the other can recoup himself to the extent of an axle. Are you and said, even if he only left a needleful, he can recoup himself to the extent of an axle. As in the incident of the small field of Abay, our rabbis have taught if an Israelite says to a Levite, I have set aside a tithe for you, he need not be concerned about the priest's due and the tithe. If, however, he said, I have set aside a core as tithe for you, he has to concern himself about the priest's due and the tithe. What does all this mean? Abay said, it means as if an Israelite said to a Levite, I have set aside tithe. For you and here is money for it he has no need to worry lest the Levite should have made that produce the priestly due on produce received by him from elsewhere if however he said I have set aside a core of tithe for you and here is the money for it he has to worry lest the Levite should have already made it the priestly due on tithe from elsewhere are we then dealing with rogues who take money and make it the produce priestly due on tithe from elsewhere in fact said our Meshachia the son of our the Baritha means this if the Israelite said to the son of a deceased Levite I have set aside tithe for your father and here is the money for it he need not worry lest the father had made it priestly due on tithe from elsewhere if however he said I have set aside a core of tithe for your father and here is the money he has to worry lest the father had made it priestly due on tithe from elsewhere can we then suspect Abram of setting aside the priestly due from produce in another Place in fact said our Ashi it means as if a son of a deceased Israelite says to a Levite my father told me before his death that he had set aside tithe for you or for your father he the Levite has to worry about the priest's due in it since as the quantity is indefinite the owner's father may not have made it available for ordinary use by setting aside the priestly due in it if however he says I have a core of tithe set aside for you or for your father there is no need to worry lest the priestly due is still contained in it since as the quantity is definite he may be sure that the owner made it right before his death but has the owner the right to set aside the terima from the Levite's tithe yes such is the ruling of Abba Eliezer Begamel as it has been taught Abba Eliezer Begamel as it is written and your heave offering shall be reckoned to you Talmud Mosque in the Talmud Mosque in the scripture speaks of two heave offerings one the great terima and the other the terimah from the Levite's tithe just as the great terimah is set aside by estimate and by intention so the terimah of the tithe is set aside by estimate and by intention and just as the owner has the right to set aside the great terimah so he has the right to set aside the terimah of the tithe mission if a man sets aside produce with the idea of reckoning it as terimah and tithe or money with the idea of reckoning it as second tithe he can go on so reckoning in the presumption that they are still existing if they are lost he has to provide against the risk for 24 hours this is the ruling of our Eliezer B. Shamu our Judah says wine so set aside has to be examined at three seasons of the year when the east wind begins to blow at the end of the feast of tabernacles when the berries first appear on the vine and when the juice begins to form in the grapes tomorrow what is meant by for 24 hours our Yohanan says the 24 hours before his examining our Eliezer B. Antigonus says in the name of our Eliezer son of our Jane Talmud, Mosque and be the 24 hours from his setting aside we learned if they are lost he provides against the risk for 24 hours if this means 24 hours from his last examination the expression is intelligible but if it means 24 hours from the setting aside it should say not for 24 hours but up to 24 hours should it not this is a difficulty this is the ruling of our Eliezer B. Shamu A.R. Eliezer B. Pedaf says our Eliezer's colleagues did not concur with him as we have learned if a ritual bath was measured and found to be too small all the purifications that have been made in it whether it is in a private or a public place are retrospectively ineffective cannot I see for myself that they do not concur but for our Eliezer I might think that retrospectively means for 24 hours back now I know that this is not so our Judah says at three seasons of the year etc. A when the east wind blows at the conclusion of the festival in the cycle of Tishri it has been taught our Judah says produce is sold at three seasons of the year before sowing time at sowing time and shortly before Passover wine is also sold at three seas
What they were discussing they replied we were talking about the winds he sent to them thus said Arhan and Biraba in the name of Rab four winds blow every day and the north wind blows with all of them for were it not so the world would not be able to exist for a moment the south wind is the most violent of all and were it not that the son of the hawk keeps it back it would devastate the whole world for so it says doth the hawk soar by thy wisdom and stretch her wings towards the south Rabba and Ar. Naman B. Isaac were once sitting together when Arnaman B. Jacob passed by in a gilt carriage and wearing a purple cloak Rabba went to meet him but Arnaman B. Isaac did not stir for he said perhaps it is one of the court of the Exilarch and Rabba needs him but I do not when he saw Arnaman B. Jacob approaching he bared his arm and said the south wind is blowing Rabba said thus said Rabbi woman bears prematurely when this wind blows Samuel said even pearls in the sea rot away are Yohan and said even. The seed in a woman's womb putrefies said Arnaman B. Isaac all these three rabbis derived their statements from the same verse of scripture as though he be fruitful among his brethren and east wind shall come the breath of the Lord coming up from the wilderness and his spring shall become dry and his fountain shall be dried up he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels the spring is the source of a woman the fountain shall be dried up refers to the seed in a woman's womb the treasure. Of all pleasant vessels is the pearl in the sea. Rabbi said, "This one comes from Surah, where they examine the scripture minutely. What is the meaning of the words? Though he be fruitful, Yafri among his brethren. Rabbi said, even Talmud, moss hidden in the pin in the handle of the plow becomes loose. Rafi or Joseph said, even a pig in a wall becomes loose. Arahabi Jacob said, even a cane in a wicker basket becomes slack. C H A P T E R I B Mishnah. If a man after dispatching a get to his wife meets the bearer or sends a messenger after him and says to him, the get which I have given to you is cancelled, then it is cancelled. If the husband meets the wife before the bearer or sends a messenger to her and says, the get I have sent to you is cancelled, then it is cancelled. Once, however, the get has reached her hand, he cannot cancel it. In former times, a man was allowed to bring together a Beth in wherever he was and cancel the get. Rabbi Gamaliel the elder, however, laid down a rule that this should. Not be done so as to prevent abuses. Gamara the Mishnah does not say meets him, but simply meets that is to say even accidentally. And we do not say in that case that he merely desires to annoy his wife or sends a messenger after him, etc. Why state this? You might think that the commission given to the second has no more force than that given to the first, and therefore should not counter M A N D. Now I know that this is not so. If he meets his wife before the bearer, etc. Why state this? You might think that although we rejected above the idea that he desires to annoy his wife, this is only when he says to the bearer that the get is cancelled. But if he says so to the wife herself, he certainly does mean merely to annoy her. Now I know that this is not so. Or sends a messenger to her. Why state this? You might think that while he would not put himself out merely to annoy her, yet if he sends a messenger to whose trouble he is indifferent, he certainly desires merely to annoy her now. I know that this is not so once the get has reached her hand he cannot cancel it is not the self-evident it required to be stated in view of the case where he made efforts from the very first to cancel it you might think that in this case subsequent events prove him to have actually annulled the get now I know that this is not so our rabbis have taught if he says it is cancelled Betel I don't want it his words take effect if he said it is invalid it is no get his words are of no effect this means to say does it not that the expression Betel is equivalent to let it be cancelled how can this be seeing that Rabbi Abu has said in the name of Arshis hate or according to others Rabbi Abu has said if the recipient of a gift says after it has come into his possession this gift is to be cancelled let it be cancelled I don't want it his words are of no effect but if he said it is cancelled Betel it is no gift his words have effect this shows does it not that Betel means Cancelled from the outset, Abbe replied the expression Betel Talmud, Mosque and B has two meanings it means cancelled already and it means will be cancelled if used either of a get or of a gift it is used in the sense most effective for the purpose Abbe said we have it on authority that the bearer of a gift is on the same footing as the bearer of a get the outcome of this principle is that the expression take has not the same force as take on behalf of Rabbana found Arnam and B Isaac leaning against the bolt of the door and revolving the question what of the expression Betel this was left unanswered Arshis hate said or according to others it has been laid down in the very day if a man said this get shall not avail shall not release the woman shall not part shall not dismiss shall not divorce let it be a pot's hurt let it be like a pot's hurt his words take effect if he said it does not avail it does not free it does not part it does not dismiss it does not divorce it is a pot's hurt it is like a pot's hurt, his words are of no effect. The question was raised, What of the expression, Behold, it is a pot's hurt. Rabbana said to Araha, the son of Rabbah, or according to others, Araha, the son of Rabbah said to Arashi, How does this differ from the expression, Behold, it is sanctified, Behold, it is common property. Can the man afterwards use the same get to divorce with or not? Arnaman says that he may use it again to divorce with Arshis. Hate says he may not. The law is according to the ruling of Ar. Naman is that so has it not been laid down that the law in the case of a betrothed woman is according to the ruling of Ar Yohanan, who said that she may retract. Are the two cases parallel? There it is a case of words merely on each occasion. One set of words comes and cancels another here, even granted that the husband cancels the commission of the bearer, he surely does not cancel the get itself in former times, etc. It has been stated how many must be present at the canceling, Arnaman says. Two Arshis hate says three Arshis hate says three because the Mishnah speaks of a Bethdin Arnaman says two because two are also called a Bethdin said Arnaman what is my ground for saying this because we have learned he says I hand over in the presence of you Talmud, Moskid and so and so and so and so the judges in such and such a place and Arshis hate he may rejoin his attendant to reckon them out like a peddler selling his wares said Arnaman again what is my ground for saying so. Because we have learned and the judges sign below or the witnesses are not the judges here placed on the PAR with the witnesses so that just as two witnesses suffice so two judges suffice and Arshis hate he can reply is this an argument judges and witnesses each follow their own rule and if you ask why the Mishnah mentions both witnesses and judges it is to teach us that it makes no difference if they were the document as judges and then sign as witnesses or if they were the document as Witnesses and then sign as judges to prevent abuses. What is referred to Ar Yohanan said to prevent illegitimacy. Rush Lakish said to prevent what desertion Ar Yohanan said to prevent illegitimacy. For he held with Ar Naman who said that the get could be cancelled before Beth Din of two. The proceedings of two are not generally known, so she not having heard and not knowing that the get is cancelled might go and marry again and bear illegitimate children. Rush Lakish said to prevent wife desertion. For he again held with Ar who said that he has to cancel it before Beth Din of three. The proceedings of three are generally known, so she hearing and knowing that the get was cancelled would remain unmarried. And we have therefore to save her from being a deserted wife. Our rabbis have taught if the husband did cancel the get before Beth Din, it is cancelled. This is the ruling of Rabbi Rabin Simeon B. Gamaliel, however, says that he can neither cancel it nor add any. Additional conditions since if so what becomes of the authority of the Beth Din and is it possible then that where a get is according to the written law cancelled we should to save the authority of the Beth Din declare it valid and so allow a married woman to marry another yes when a man betrothes a woman he does so under the conditions laid down by the rabbis and in this case the rabbis and all his betrothal said Rabbanu to Arashi this is quite right if the husband had originally betrothed his wife with money but if he had betrothed her by the act of marriage what can we say the rabbis declared the act of marriage to be retrospectively non-marital our rabbis have taught if a man said to ten persons right a get for my wife he can counter M A N D the order to each of them separately this is the ruling of Rabbi Rabin Simeon B Gamaliel however says that he can only counter M A N D the order when they are together what is the point at issue between them the point at issue is whether a part of an evidence has been nullified the whole of it is nullified rabbi was of opinion that if part of an evidence has been nullified talmud mosque it and be the whole of it is not nullified if therefore those who have not heard the order countermanded go and write the get and give it to her their action is quite proper rabbin simeon b gamaliel was of opinion that if part of an evidence is nullified the whole is nullified if therefore those who do not know that the order is countermanded go
with witnesses to the taking of the get this opinion is borne out by the conclusion of the passage quoted if he told each of them separately in the first instance he can counter ma and d to them separately for if you say that it speaks of witnesses to the taking of the get this is intelligible but if you say that it speaks of the witnesses to the writing of the get how can these be joined together if they were at first separate has not the master said their separate evidences are not combined to form a whole they must both see the event together this however is not conclusive since perhaps the teaching quoted follows the view of our Joshua B. Korha or Samuel B. Judah said I have heard our Abba give rulings on both these points one following Rabbi and the other following Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel but I do not know which one follows Rabbi and which Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel said our Joseph we are able to throw light on this for when our Dimi came from Palestine he reported to us that Rabbi once in an actual case decided according to the ruling of the sages and our part of the son of our Eliezer B. Parta and the grandson of the great our Parta said to him if that is so what authority do you leave to the Beth Din and Rabbi thereupon reversed his decision and followed the ruling of our Simeon B. Gamaliel and since the ruling in this case follows Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel in the other it follows Rabbi our Josiah from Mishah was also of opinion that the ruling in one case followed the opinion of Rabbi and in the other of Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel for Rabbi B. Barhanna said we were sitting five elders before our Josiah from Mishah and a certain man came before him whom he compelled to give a get against his will and he said to them the witnesses after compelling him go and conceal yourselves from him and write her the get now if you assume that he ruled according to the opinion of Rabbi if they did conceal themselves what difference did it make this shows that in this point he Followed Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel, but should you assume further that in the other point also he held with Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel, we can ask why should they have hidden themselves? It would have been sufficient if they had separated the shows that he held with Rabbi in regard to one point and with Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel in regard to the other. Rabbi, however, said in the name of Arnaman that the Halacha follows Rabbi in both points, but does not Arnaman hold that the authority of the Beth Din must be upheld? Did not Arnaman say in the name of Samuel Talmud, Moskid and a orphan's underage desire to divide the property left to them by their father? The Beth Din appoints for each of them a guardian who sees that he obtains a fair share when they grow up. However, they are able to object, and did not Arnaman speaking in his own name hold that they are not at liberty to object because if they are what becomes of the authority of the Beth Din, the question there was one of money. Here it is one of a forbidden act, it'll be real sent to get to his wife. The bearer went and found her weaving. He said to her, Here is your get. She said to him, Go away now at any rate and come again tomorrow. He went back to him and told him, Whereupon he exclaimed, Blessed be he who is good and does good. Abbe said, Blessed is he who is good and does good. And the get itself is not cancelled. And Rabbah said, Blessed is he who is good and does good. And the get is cancelled. What is the point at issue? Between them, the point at issue is the revealing of intention in respect of a get. Abbe holds that the revealing of intention in respect of a get makes a difference. And Rabbah held that it makes no difference. Said Rabbah, What makes me take this view? Because Arshis hate compelled a man to consent to give a get. And the man said afterwards to the witnesses, I heard Arshis hate say to you, Let the get be cancelled. And Arshis hate forced him to give another get. And did Arshis hate then ask Abbe cancel? Other man's bills of divorce, in fact, the man himself cancelled it, and the reason why he used these words was on account of his Arshesh his beetle said, Abbe, what makes me take my view? Because Rabjuda once forced the son in law of our Jeremiah Bira to give his wife again, and he cancelled it, whereupon he forced him again, he cancelled it again, and he again forced him to give it, and he said to the witnesses, Stuff grass into your ears and write it now if you assume that the revealing of intention makes a difference in a get, do they not see him running after them? And Rabbi, he will reply that they may think the reason why he ran after them was to tell them to make sure to give it to her so that he could put an end to his trouble, said Abbe, further, what makes me take this view? Because there was a man who said to the witnesses, If I do not come within thirty days, this shall be a get. He came on the thirtieth day but could not get across the river, and he called to them, See that I have come see that I have come and Samuel said that this was no coming and Rabbi he can rejoin in that case did he want to and all the get what he wanted was but to fulfill his condition and his condition was not fulfilled a certain man said on writing a get for his betrothed if I do not marry her within thirty days this shall be a get when the thirtieth day came he said see I am busy making the preparations now why should we have any doubts about the validity of the get if because the man was forcibly prevented from marrying force measure is no plea in regard to a get if again because he revealed his intention of annulling it on this point there is a difference of opinion between Abbe and Rabbi a certain man said on writing a get for his betrothed if I do not marry by the first day of Adar this will be a get when the first of Adar came he said I meant the first of seven now should we have any doubts about the validity of the get if because he was forcibly prevented force Measure does not invalidate a get it because he revealed his intention on this point. There is a difference of opinion between Abbe and Rabbi. The law follows Naman and the law follows Naman and the law Talmud. Moskid and B follows Naman. Mishnah originally the husband was allowed to give him the get an adopted name of himself or of his wife or an adopted town of himself or of his wife. Rabbi Gamaliel the elder made a regulation that he should write the man so and so or by whatever names he is known the woman so and so or by whatever name she is known to prevent abuses. Gamar Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Jews from overseas sent to Rabbi Gamaliel the following inquiry if a man comes here from Eretz Israel whose name is Joseph but who is known here as Yohanan or whose name is Yohanan but who is known here as Joseph how is he to divorce his wife? Rabbi Gamaliel thereupon made a regulation that they should write and the get the man so and so or by whatever names he is. Known the woman so and so or by whatever name she is known to prevent abuses. Arashi said this is necessary only if the man is known to have two or more names. Said our Abba to Arashi, Armari and our Eliezer concur with you in this. It has been taught in agreement with Arashi. If a man has two wives, one in Judea and the other in Galilee, and he has two names by one of which he is known in Judea and by the other in Galilee, and if he divorces his wife in Judea under the name which he bears in Judea and his wife in Galilee under the name which he bears in Galilee, the divorce is not effective. It does not become so until he divorces his wife in Judea under the name he bears in Judea with the addition of the name he bears in Galilee, and his wife in Galilee under the name he bears in Galilee with the addition of the name he bears in Judea. If however he goes away to another place and gives a divorce under one of the names only, the divorce is effective. But did you not just say with the addition of? The name he bears in Galilee this shows that the one rule applies where he is known to have more than one name and the other rule applies where he is not known to have more than one name there was a woman who was known to most people as Miriam but to a few as Sarah and the Nehardians ruled that in a get she should be referred to as Miriam or any other name by which she may be called and not Sarah or any other name by which she may be called Mishnah a widow has by rights no power to recover her kathubah from the property of orphans save on taking an oath but they, the rabbis refrained from imposing an oath on her Rabbi Gamaliel the elder thereupon made a regulation that she should take any vow which the orphans chose to impose on her and so recover her kathubah and similarly witnesses signed their names to a get to prevent abuses Hillel the elder also instituted the principle to prevent abuses Gamara why is this rule about an oath laid down with reference to a widow Seeing that it applies to everybody since it is an established rule that one who seeks to recover payment from the property of orphans cannot recover save on taking an oath there is a special reason for the mention of a widow for it might occur to you to say that Talmud, Moskid and in order to render marriage more attractive the rabbis made a concession in her case we are told therefore that this is not so that the rabbis refrained from imposing an oath under what was the reason of this refusal shall we say it is to be found in the incident reported by Arkahana or according to others by Rab Judah in the name of Rab is that in a year of scarcity a certain man deposited a dinar of gold with a widow who put it in a jar of flour subsequently she baked the flour and gave the loaf to a poor man in course of time the owner of the dinar came and said to her give me back my dinar and she said to him may death seize upon one of my sons if I have derived any benefit for myself. From your dinar and not many days passed so it was stated before
imposed on her this dictum of Rab is in conformity with his expressed view for Rab would not enforce payment of a Kathuba to a widow. Why did he not make her take a vow and so let her recover in the time of Rab vows were not treated lightly? A certain woman appealed to Arhu not to enforce payment of her Kathuba. He said to her, What can I do for you? Seeing that Rab would not enforce payment of a Kathuba to a widow, she said to him, Is not the only reason the fear that perhaps I have already received part of my Kathuba by the Lord of hosts. I swear that I have not received a penny from my Kathuba. Said Arhu, Rab would admit that we enforce payment where the widow takes the oath spontaneously. A certain woman appealed to Rab, a son of Arhu, not to enforce payment of her Kathuba. He said to her, What can I do for you? Seeing that Rab would not enforce payment of a Kathuba, and my father also would not enforce payment of a Kathuba to a widow, she said to him, At least grant me. Maintenance, he replied, You are not entitled to maintenance either since Rab Judah has said in the name of Samuel, if a woman claims her Kathuba in the Beth, then she has no claim to maintenance. She said to him, Turn his seat upside down, he gives me the worst of both authorities. They turned his seat over and put it straight again, but even so, he did not escape an illness. Rab Judah said to our Jeremiah Bira, I impose a vow on her in the Beth din and administer an oath to her outside the Beth din and see that the report reaches my ears since I desire to make this a precedent. The text above stated, Arzara said in the name of Samuel, This rule applies only to a widow, but to a divorced woman, an oath is administered cannot then a divorced woman recover her Kathuba on merely taking a vow. It was not a communication sent from there saying that so and so, the daughter of so and so, received a gift from the hand of Ahabi Hedia, who is also known as Ayumari, and took a vow binding herself to abstain. From all produce whatsoever, if she should be found to have received of her Kathuba anything besides a blanket, a book of the Psalms, a copy of Job, and a copy of Proverbs, much worn Talmud, Moskit, and B, and we valued them at five mana when she presents herself to you, empower her to collect the rest. Our Ashi said the get in that case was one given by a brother in law Rabban Gamaliel, the elder made a regulation that she should take a vow, etc. Arhuna said this rule applies only if she is not married. Again, but if she is married, she cannot take the vow. What is the reason why she cannot take it if she is married? Because her husband may annul it, even if she is not married, cannot the husband annul it? When she marries again, a husband cannot annul vows taken previously to his marriage with her, but is there not a possibility that she may apply to a sage and obtain release from him? Arhuna held that the particulars of the vow must be stated to the sage Arnam and held that even after the second. Marriage she may take the vow but if she is married there is no question that the husband can annul the vow the vow must be taken by her in the presence of a company an objection against Arhuna's ruling was raised from the following if she has married again she may recover her Kathuba provided she has taken a vow does not this mean if she takes a vow now no it means if she has taken a vow before the second marriage but has it not been taught if she marries again she can take a vow and recover her Kathuba there is a difference on this point between Tanaim since there is an authority who holds that a vow which has been taken in the presence of a company can be annulled and there is an authority who holds that it cannot be annulled the question was raised in the academy is it necessary to state the particulars of the vow on seeking annulment or is it not necessary Arnam and said that it is not necessary our papa said that it is necessary Arnam and said that it is not Necessary because if you say that it is it may happen that the applicant will not state the case fully and the sage will act on what he has been told our papa said it is necessary to prevent forbidden things being done we have learned if a priest marries a woman whom he should not he is disqualified from participating in the temple service until he vows to have no benefit from his wife and in this connection it was taught he can take the vow and participate in the service and give it divorce when he descends now if you say that it is not necessary to state particulars of the vow is there not a possibility that he may apply to a sage and obtain release Talmud, Moskit and we assume that the vow is taken by him in the presence of a company this is a valid reason for one who holds that a vow which has been taken in the presence of a company cannot be annulled but what are we to say to one who holds that it can be annulled we must say that the vow is imposed on it Authority of the company for Amimar has said the law is that even according to those who hold that a vow made in the presence of a company cannot be annulled one made on the authority of a company cannot be annulled this however is the case only with a vow relating to some optional action but if it interferes with a religious duty it can be annulled the case in point is that of the teacher of children whom Araha bound by a vow on the authority of a company to give up teaching because he maltreated the children but Rabban reinstated him because no other teacher could be found as thorough as he was witnesses sign a get to prevent abuses is this rule only to prevent abuses it derives from the scripture does it not since it is written and subscribe the deeds and seal them Rabbi said all the same this reason is necessary on the view of our Eliezer who said that the witnesses to delivery make the get effective the rabbis nevertheless ordained that there should be witnesses to Sign as well to prevent abuses since sometimes the witnesses to delivery may die or go abroad. Our Joseph said you may even say that this reason is necessary on the view of our Meir and what they ordained was that the witnesses should subscribe their names in full to prevent abuses as it has been taught at first the witness used simply to write I so and so subscribe as witness if then his writing could be found on other documents the get was valid but if not it was invalid said Rabban. Gamaliel a most important regulation was laid down by the rabbis that the witnesses should write their names in full in a get to prevent abuses but is not a mark enough did not rap sign by drawing a fish and our by drawing a palm branch are his with a samak our hashai with an iron and rabbi son of our by drawing a sail the rabbis are different because their marks are well known how did they make these signs known to begin with on letters Hillel instituted the principle we have. Learned elsewhere a principle prevents the remission of debts in the sabbatical year. This is one of the regulations made by Hillel the elder for he saw that people were unwilling to lend money to one another and disregarded the precept laid down in the Torah beware that there he not a base thought in thine heart saying etc. He therefore decided to institute the principle. The text of the principle is as follows I hand over to you so and so the judges in such and such a place my bond so that I may be able to recover any money owing to me from so and so at any time I shall desire and the principle was to be signed by the judges or witnesses but is it possible that where according to the Torah the seventh year releases Hillel should ordain that it should not release a base that he was dealing with the sabbatical year in our time and he went on the principle laid down by Rabbi as it has been taught Rabbi says it is written now this is the matter of the release every creditor shall release. The text indicates here two kinds of release one the release of land and the other the release of money when the release of land is in operation the release of money is to be operative and when the release of land is not operative the release of money is not to be operative Talmud, Moskid and B the rabbis however ordained that it should be operative in order to keep alive the memory of the sabbatical year and when Hillel saw that people refrained from lending money to one another he decided to institute the principle but is it possible that where according to the Torah the seventh year does not release the rabbis should ordain that it does release Abbe replied it is a case of sit still and do nothing Rabbi however replied the rabbis have power to expropriate for the benefit of the public for our Isaac has said how do we know that the rabbis have power to expropriate because it says and that whosoever came not within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of the captivity. Our Eliezer said we derive it from here. These are the inheritances which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers' houses etc. Now why is the word fathers here put next to heads to show that just as fathers transmit to their children whatever property they wish so the heads transmit to the public whatever they wish. The question was raised when Hillel instituted it. Prospol did he institute it for his own generation only or for future generations also what is the practical bearing of this question in case we should desire to abolish it if you say that Hillel instituted the principle only for his own generation then we may abolish it but if for future generations also this would not be easy since one Beth cannot annul the decisions of another unless it surpasses it in wisdom and in numbers what then is the answer come and here since Samuel has said we do not make out a principle save either in the Beth of Surah or in the Beth of Nihardia now if you assume that Hillel instituted the principle for all generations then it should be made out in any Beth perhaps when Hillel instituted it for all generations he meant it to be issued by a Beth like his
Our rabbis taught they who suffer insults and ill of him but do not inflict them who hear themselves reviled and do not answer back who perform religious precepts from love and rejoice in chastisement of such the scripture says and they that love him are like the sun when he goeth forth in his might what is the meaning of the word prospol are his da says prosbuli you booty talmud, mosket and abuli means the rich as it is written and I will break the pride of your power and our Joseph explained these. Are the bulaath in Judah booty means the poor as it is written thou shalt surely lend him sufficient rabba asked a certain foreigner what is the meaning of prospol he replied the poor of the matter rab Judah said in the name of Samuel orphans do not require a prospol so too Rami Biham learned orphans do not require a prospol because Rabban Gamaliel and his Beth Din are the parents of orphans we have learned elsewhere a prospol is not made out unless the debtor has some land if he has none it. Creditor can present him with a spot from his own how much is a spot our high B as she said in the name of Rabbi Ben Estak of a carob is enough Rab Judah said even if he only lends him a space sufficient for his stove and of an approachable may be made out on the strength of it is this so has not Hillel learned approachable may be made out only if the debtor has a flower pot with a hole in it that is if it has a hole approachable may be made out but otherwise not now why should this be seen that the place it occupies belongs to the debtor this rule applies only where the pot rests on some sticks our Ashi would transfer to the debtor the trunk of a date tree and then write approachable for the creditor the rabbis of the academy of our Ashi used to transfer their debts to one another our Jonathan transferred his debt to our high B Abba, do I require anything more he asked him you do not he replied our rabbis taught if the debtor has no land but one who is security for him has land approachable may be Made out for him if neither he nor his security has land but a man who owes him money has land approachable may be made out for him this is based on the ruling of our Nathan as it has been taught our Nathan says if a man lends another a mina and this one lends to a third how do we know that the Beth can take from the last named and give to the first creditor because it says and he shall give it unto him in respect of whom he has been guilty we have learned elsewhere the seventh year brings release from a debt whether contracted with a bond or without a bond both Rab and Samuel explained that with a bond here means that the debtor has given a lien on his property for the debt and without a bond means that he has given no lien a for she arrive and does the seventh year release from a debt contracted verbally are Yohanan and our Simeon Belakish however explained that with a bond means a bond that does not contain a lien clause and without a bond means a debt contracted verbally a bond which Secures a lien, however, is not cancelled. It has been taught in agreement with our Yohanan and our Simeon B. Lakish. A bond for a debt is cancelled by the seventh year, but if it contains a lien clause, it is not cancelled. It has further been taught if the debtor has specified a certain field to the lender as security for his loans, it is not cancelled. Nay, more, even if he writes only all my property is security and guarantee for you, it is not cancelled. A relative of RC had a bond containing a lien clause. He came before RC and said to him, Is this cancelled by the seventh year or not? He replied, It is not cancelled. He left him and went to our Yohanan and asked the same question. Our Yohanan replied, It is cancelled. RC went to our Yohanan and asked him, Is it cancelled or not cancelled? He replied, It is cancelled. But you yourself once said that such a bond is not cancelled. He replied, Because we have an opinion of our own different from what we have learned. Are we to act on it? Said R.C. But there is a very in support of your opinion. He replied, Perhaps that follows Beth Shammai, who said that a bond which is perfectly in order is like one which has already been put into operation. We have learned elsewhere if a man lends another money on a pledge or if he hands his bonds to the Beth Din, the debts are not cancelled by the seventh year that this should be so. In the latter case, we understand because it is a Beth Din which seizes the debtor's property. But why should it be so in the case of a loan given on a pledge? Robert replied, Because the lender is already in possession of it. Said Abbe to him, If that is so, suppose a man lends another money and lives in his courtyard, in which case he is also in possession, is the debt in this case do not cancel. He replied, The pledge is different because the holder becomes also its owner, according to the dictum of our Isaac, who said, How do we know that a creditor becomes the owner of a pledge given for the debt? Because it says, and it shall be righteousness unto thee if he is not the owner, what righteousness is there in restoring the pledge? Hence we learn that a creditor becomes owner of the pledge. We have learned elsewhere, Talmud, Moskit, and B. If a man repays another money which he owes him in the seventh year, the other should say to him, I remit it. If the debtor then says all the same, take it, he may take it from him. This rule is based on the text. Now this is the word of the release, Rabbi said. The creditor may tie him up till he says so. Abbe raised an objection from the following when the debtor offers him the money, he should not say, This is in payment of my debt, but it is my money, and I make you a present of it. Rabbi replied, Yes, he ties him up until he says so. Abbe Martha, who was the same as Abbe Menumi, was pressed by Rabbi for repayment of money he had lent him, he brought it to him in the seventh year. Rabbi said, I remit it, so he took it and went away, Abbe. Afterwards found Rabbi looking sad, he said to him, Why are you sad? He told him what had happened. So Abbe went to Abba and said to him, Did you offer money to Rabbi? I did, he said, and what did he say to you? I remit it, and did you say to him, Even so take it? He replied, I did not Abbe thereupon said to him, If you had said to him all the same, take it, he would have taken it now at any rate, go and offer it to him, and say all the same, take it. He went and offered it to him, saying all the same, take it. He took it from him and said, This rabbinical student did have the sense to see this from the beginning. Rabbi Judah said, In the name of Arnaman, we take a man's word. If he says, I had a principle and lost it, what is the reason? Since the rabbis have instituted a principle, a man would not, as we say, leave on one side permitted food and eat forbidden. When such a man came before Rabbi, he said to him, Have you had a principle and lost it? This is a case for opening thy mouth for the dumb we have learned in. Opposition to this similarly if a creditor produces a bond for a debt without a principle he cannot recover payment there is a difference on this point between Tanaim since it has been taught if a man produces a bond for a debt after the seventh year he must show a principle with it the sages however say that this is not necessary mission should a non-Jewish slave of a Jew be carried off by robbers and ransomed by a third party if he is ransomed as a slave he goes back to slavery but if he is ransomed as a free man he does not go back to slavery Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says that in either case he goes back to slavery Gamar with what case are we here dealing shall we say that the ransom was effected before the owner of the slave had given up hopes of recovering him if so even if he is ransomed as a free man why should he not go back to slavery shall we say that it was after the owner had given up hopes of recovering him and even if he is ransomed as a slave why should he go back to slavery? Abbe said the case indeed is one in which the master has not yet given up hopes. If then he is ransomed as a slave, he goes back to slavery to his first master. If he is ransomed as a free man, he is no longer enslaved either to the first master or to the second to the second because he ransomed him as a free man to the first. Because if people know that he is to go back to slavery, perhaps they will refrain from ransoming him. Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says in either case he goes back to slavery since he holds that as it is a religious duty to ransom free men, so it is a religious duty to ransom slaves. Rabbi said that the case dealt with is indeed where the owner has given up hopes of recovery. If then he is ransomed as a slave, he becomes enslaved to the second master. If he is ransomed as a free man, he becomes enslaved neither to the first master nor to the second, not to the second because he ransomed him as a free man and not to the first. Either because he has given up hopes of recovering him, Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says, in either case he goes back to slavery, adopting in this the view also held by Hezekiah, who said, Why was it laid down that in either case he should go back to slavery so that slaves should not go and throw themselves into the hands of robber bands and so liberate themselves from their masters? An objection was raised against Rabbi from the following Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel said to them, Just as it is a religious duty to redeem free men, so it is a religious duty to redeem slaves. Now, if we adopt the view of Abbe that the case dealt with is where the owner has not yet given up hope of recovery, we understand why Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel said, Just as etc., but on the view of Rabbi that the case is one where the owner has given up hope, why just as Rabbi Simeon's reason is the dictum of Hezekiah to which Rabbi can reply, Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel was not certain to what the rabbis
purchased but not by Azaka or Papa said the territory of Ammon and Moab became purified for acquisition by the Israelites through the occupation of Sihon we have satisfied ourselves that a heathen can acquire a heathen by act of possession how do we know that a heathen can acquire an Israelite in the same way from the text and he took some of them captive our shaman B. Abba said in the name of our Yohanan a slave who escapes from prison becomes a free man and what is more his master may be compelled to make out a deed of emancipation for him we have learned Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says in either case he returns to slavery and Rabbi B. Barhana has stated in the name of our Yohanan that wherever Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel records a statement in our mission of the Halajah is in accordance with him except in the matters of the surety of Sidon and the latter proof now on the view of Abbe that the mission speaks of the case where the master has not yet given up hope of recovering. There is no conflict between the two statements of our Yohanan since he makes the latter refer to the period before the master has given up hope and the former to the period after he has given up hope but on the view of Rabbi that the latter also refers to the period after the master has given up hope there is a conflict is there not between the two statements of our Yohanan Rabbi can reply what is our Simeon's reason the statement of Hezekiah that the slave may give himself up to raiders but this does not apply to one who escapes seeing that he risks his life to do so is it likely that he will throw himself into the hands of raiders a female slave of Mar Samuel was carried off by raiders some Israelites ransomed her as a slave and sent her to him along with a message saying we hold with Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel but even if you hold with the rabbis you may accept her because we have ransomed her as a slave they thought that he had not yet given up hope of Recovering her, but this was not correct as he had given up hope of recovering her, and Samuel not only refrained from making her a slave again, but he did not even require her to obtain a deed of emancipation. In this, he followed his own maxim that if a man declares his slave common property, he becomes a free man and does not require a deed of emancipation, since it says every man's servant that is bought for money does this mean the servant of a man and not of a woman. No, it means that a slave over whom his master still has control is called a slave, but a slave over whom his master has no control is not called a slave. A female slave of Arab Abizitra was carried off by raiders. A certain heathen from Tarman ransomed her in order to marry her. They sent a message to him, Arabah, saying, If you wish to act well, send her a deed of emancipation. What was the point of this message if they were able to redeem her? Why did they want a deed of emancipation if they were not able to ransom her of? What good would a deed of emancipation be? The fact was that it was possible to ransom her, and if he sent them a deed of emancipation, they would club together and find the money to ransom her. Or if you like, I can say that they were not at first able to ransom her, but if the master would send her a deed of emancipation, she would go down in the esteem of the heathen, and he would consent to her ransom. But has not a master said that the heathen like the cattle of Israel better than their own? Wives, this is their real sentiment, but they think it beneath their dignity to show it. There was a certain female slave in Pamadiah who was used by men for immoral purposes. Abbe said, were it not that Rab Judah has said in the name of Samuel that whoever emancipates his heathen slave breaks a positive precept, I would compel her master to make out a deed of emancipation for her. Robin said, in such a case, Rab Judah would agree that this is proper in order to check immorality and would not. Abbe act in the same way to prevent immorality, seeing that our Hannah B. Katna has reported in the name of our Isaac that the master of a certain woman who was half slave and half free Talmud, Moskid and B was compelled by the Beth to emancipate her. The reason being is our Naman B. Isaac stated that they used her for immoral purposes. Can you compare the two cases in this latter case? The woman, if not emancipated, is not qualified to marry either a slave or a free man. In the other case, it is possible for the master to appoint her his slave and he will look after her. The text above stated Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, whoever emancipates his heathen slave breaks a positive precept since it is written, they shall be your bondmen forever. An objection was raised against this from the following. On one occasion, our Elizer came into the synagogue and did not find the quorum of ten there, and he immediately emancipated his slave to make up the ten where a religious duty has to. Be performed the rule does not apply our rabbis taught they shall be your bondmen forever this is optional such as the opinion of our Ishmael our Akiva however holds that it is an obligation now perhaps our Eliezer held with the one who says that it is optional do not imagine such a thing since it has been taught distinctly our Eliezer says that it is obligatory rabbis said for these three offenses men become impoverished for emancipating their heathen slaves for inspecting their property on Sabbath and for taking their main Sabbath meal at the hour when the discourse is given in the Beth Hamid Rash for so our high Abba related in the name of our Yohanan that there were two families in Jerusalem one of which used to take its main meal on Sabbath at the hour of the discourse and the other on the eve of Sabbath and both of them became extinct rabbis said in the name of Rabbi if a man sanctifies his slave he becomes a free man what is the reason because he does not sanctify his body nor does he say that he is sanctified in respect of his money value? What he must mean, therefore, is that he is to become a member of the holy people. Our Joseph, however, reported Rabbi saying, if a man declares his slave common property, he becomes a free man. The one who applies this rule where the slave is sanctified would apply it all the more where he is declared common property, but he who applies it where the slave is declared common property would not necessarily apply it where he is sanctified. Because the master may have been referring to his money value, the question was asked, does a slave who is thus liberated require a deed of emancipation or not come? And here our high B. Abin said in the name of Rab, both the one and the other become free men and they require deeds of emancipation. Rabbi said, I raise an objection against my own statement from the following if a man sanctifies his property and some slaves are included in it, the treasurers of the sanctuary are not allowed to. Emancipate them, but they must sell them to others, and these others are allowed to emancipate them. Rabbi says, My view is that the slave can pay his own purchase price and liberate himself because the treasurer in that case, as it were, sells him to himself. Do you seek to confute Rab from the Mishnah? Rab is himself considered a tana and is allowed to differ. Come and hear an objection to Rabbi, notwithstanding no devoted thing, whether of men, etc., shall be redeemed. These are his Canaanite men servants and maid servants. We are presuming in this case that he says, I vow their money value. If that is so, cannot I say the same in the other case also? If that were so, what of the words the treasurers are not allowed to liberate them? Why are the treasurers mentioned? And further, but they can sell them to others, and these others are allowed to liberate them. Why are others mentioned? And again, Rabbi says, My view is that he may pay his own purchase price and so liberate himself. Because the treasurer in that case as it were sells him to himself now if only his money value is devoted what is the point of the words because as it were he sells him to himself come and here if a man sanctifies his slave he the slave may go on supporting himself from his own labor because only his money value has been sanctified Talmud, Moskid and whose opinion is this it is the opinion of our mayor who holds that when a man says a thing he must mean something by it that this view is probably correct is shown by the succeeding clause similarly if a man sanctifies himself he maintains himself from his own labor since he has sanctified only his money value now if you say that this follows our mayor there is no difficulty but if you say it follows the rabbis we can indeed understand the rule in reference to the slave because he has a purchase price but has the man himself a purchase price may we say that the same difference is found between Tanaim in the following passage if a man sanctifies his slave then making use of him does not constitute me Isla trespass Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says use of his hair constitutes trespass now is not the point at issue between the two authorities this that one holds that the slave is sanctified and the other that he is not do you really think so why then the expressions constitutes trespass and does not constitute trespass it should be he is sanctified and he is not sanctified no both hold that he is sanctified and it point at issue here is that the one puts him in the same class with fixed property and the other with movable property if that is so while they differ with regard to his hair should they not differ with regard to his whole body the truth is both hold that a slave is in the same category as fixed property and they differ here in respect of his hair which is ready for cutting the one holding that such hair is regarded as already cut and the other that it is not shall we say that the difference between these tanaim is the same as the difference between these other tanaim as we have learned our mayor says there are certain things which both are and are not in the same category as fixed property but the sages do not agree with him for instance if a man says I entrusted to you ten vines laden
Emancipation in this Aryohan would be consistent since Ola said in the name of Aryohan if a man declares his slave common property he becomes a free man but he requires a deed of emancipation the text above stated Ola said in the name of Aryohan if a man declares his slave common property he becomes a free man but requires a deed of emancipation our Abba raised the following objection against Ola if a proselyte dies without heirs and Israelites sees his property if there are slaves included in it whether grown up or not grown up they become their own masters as free men Abbasal however says that the grown UPS become their own masters as free men but the minors become the property of whoever first seizes them now who has written a deed of emancipation for these Ola replied this rabbi seems to imagine that people do not study the law but what after all is the reason why the slaves require no deed of emancipation Arnaman replied Ola was of opinion that the slave of a proselyte comes under the same rule as his wife just as his wife is liberated after his death without a get so his slave is liberated without a deed of emancipation but if that is so the same rule should apply to an Israelite scripture says and ye shall make them Canaanite slaves an inheritance for your children after you to hold for a possession if that is the case then if a man declares his slave common property and then dies the slave should also not require a deed of emancipation. How is it then that Amimar has said that if a man declares his slave common property and then dies nothing can be done for the slave the saying of Amimar is indeed a difficulty our Jacob B.E.D. said in the name of our Joshua B.E.D. the Halacha follows Abbasal our Zerah asked our Jacob B.E.D. Talmud, Moskid and B. did you actually hear this from our Joshua or do you infer it from something he said infer it from what he replied from the following statement of our Joshua B.E.D. they put it. Following question to Rabbi if a man says I give up hope of recovering my slave so and so what is the status of the latter Rabbi said to them in my view he has no remedy save through a deed of emancipation referring to this Aryohan and said what was Rabbi's reason he laid stress on the occurrence of the word to her in the scripture in connection both with a slave and a wife and drew the lesson that just as a woman requires a document to get to enable her to marry so does a slave who has been declared public property now continued our Zerah I assume that you draw from Rabbi's statement the inference that just as a woman is released by the deed from a ritual prohibition and not a monetary obligation so the slave is one who is released from a ritual prohibition and not from a monetary obligation our Jacob replied suppose I have only made an inference what difference does it make you replied on the contrary you can draw just the opposite inference just as a woman can be either a grown up or a child, so the slave can be either a grown up or a child. Our Jacob then said to him, I heard it distinctly from our Joshua Bili by our high B Abba, however, said in the name of our Yohanan that the Halacha does not follow Abba. Saul said, Our Zerah to our high B Abba, did you actually hear this from our Yohanan, or do you infer it from something you heard? Infer it from what he said from the following statement of our Joshua Bili by the following question was put to Rabbi of a man. Says, I give up hope of recovering my slave, so and so what is the status of the latter? Rabbi said to them, In my view, he has no remedy save through a deed of emancipation, referring to this. Our Yohanan said, What was Rabbi's reason? He laid stress on the occurrence in the scripture of the words to her in connection both with a slave and with a wife, drawing the lesson that just as a divorced wife requires a document to enable her to marry, so does a slave who has been declared public property. Now continued our Zerah I assume that you draw from Rabbi's statement the inference that just as a wife may be either grown up or not grown up so the slave may be either grown up or not grown up our high replied suppose I have only made an inference what difference does it make you replied on the contrary you can draw just the opposite inference just as a woman is released from a ritual prohibition and not a monetary obligation so the slave is one who is released from a ritual prohibition and not a monetary obligation our high then said I heard it distinctly from our Yohan and the master said Rabbi said to them in my view he has no remedy save through a deed of emancipation but has it not been taught Rabbi says the slave can also offer his own purchase price and so liberate himself because the treasurer of the sanctuary as it were sells him to himself what he meant was this a liberated slave can become unable to marry either by ransoming himself or by obtaining a deed of emancipation and in this case the ownership has ceased Rabbi thus rejects the view of the following ten it has been taught namely our Simeon says in the name of our Akiba may we presume that money payment completes her emancipation in the same way as a deed completes her emancipation this cannot be since it says and she be not at all redeemed the keywords of the whole section are because she was not free this shows that a document completes her emancipation but not a money payment. Rami Bihama said in the name of our Naman that the Halashah in this matter follows our Simeon and our Joseph Bihama said in the name of our Yohanan that the Halashah does not follow our Simeon our Naman B. Isaac once came across Rabbi B. Shield as he was standing at the entrance of the synagogue and said to him does the Halashah follow our Simeon or does it not he replied I say that it does not but the rabbis who have come from Mahuza report that our Zerah said in the name of our Naman that it does what I was in Surah I came across our high B. Abin and said to him tell me now what were the essential facts of the case he said to me there was a certain female slave whose master was at the point of death so she came crying to him and saying how long am I to go on being a slave he thereupon took his cap and threw it to her saying go and acquire this and acquire yourself with it the case was brought before Arnaman and he said his action was null and void those who were present thought that Arnaman's reason for his decision was that the Halacha follows our Simeon but this is not correct his reason was that the man used an article belonging to the transfer our Samuel B. A. I said in the name of Arham none of the elder who said it in the name of our Isaac B. Ashian who said it in the name of Arhuna who said it in the name of Arham none of the Halacha follows our Simeon this however is not correct the Halacha does not follow our Simeon our Zerah said in the name of Arhanan who said it in the name of our Ashi. Rabbi said if a slave marries a free woman in the presence of his master Talmud, Moskid and he automatically becomes a free man said are you hand to him are you really sure of that what I have learned is if a man writes a deed of betrothal for his female slave our mayor says that she becomes betrothed and the sages say that she is not betrothed the explanation is similar to that given by Rabbi son of Arshila who said in an analogous case when his master puts the phylacteries on him so here the slave becomes free when the master actually gives him a wife but is it possible that there can be an action involving a breach of the law which a man would not allow to be done on behalf of his slave but would perform on his own behalf our and B. Isaac said we are assuming here that in giving her the deed of betrothal he says become free with this and be betrothed with this our mayor held that this expression be betrothed includes emancipation and the rabbis held that it does not include Emancipation our Joshua B. Levi said if a servant puts on phylacteries in the presence of his master he becomes a free man an objection was raised if his master borrows money from his slave or if his master appoints him administrator of his affairs or if he puts on phylacteries in the presence of his master or if he reads three verses in his presence in the synagogue he does not thereby become a free man Rabbi son of Arshila explained that our Joshua B. Levi was speaking of the case where his master himself put the phylacteries on him when Ardini came from Palestine he reported the following ruling in the name of our Yohanan if a man went on the point of death says I do not want my female slave so and so to be used as a slave after my death the heirs can be compelled to make out for her a deed of emancipation our MI and RC expostulated with him saying do you not admit that her children will be slaves when our Samuel B. Judah came he said in the name of our Yohanan if a man went on the point of death says my female slave so and so has given me great satisfaction let something be done to satisfy her the ears may be compelled to satisfy her the reason is that it is a religious duty to carry out the wishes of the deceased Amimar said if a man declares his slave common property nothing can be done for the slave why so because he no longer possesses his body but he is still bound by the prohibition and this he cannot transfer to him said Arashi to Amimar but has not Allah said in the name of Aryohanan and Arhai Abin in the name of Rab in either case he becomes a free man and requires a deed of emancipation he replied he requires one but nothing can be done for him according to another version Amimar said if a man declares his slave common property and then dies nothing can be done for the slave why so because he no longer owns his body but he is still bound by the prohibition and this he cannot bequeath to his son said Arashi to Amimar but when Ardini came he reported a ruling of Aryohanan which conflicts with this Ardini statement was erroneous where he r
A child is fond of money we shall therefore appoint for him a guardian Talmud, Moskitan B and the slave will rattle some points before the child and the guardian will write out a deed of emancipation for the slave in his name our rabbis have taught if a man says I have made my slave so and so free he is hereby declared free I declare him free then he becomes a free man if he says I shall make him free rabbi says that he acquires possession of himself but the sages say that he does. Not our Yohanan explained that in every case we suppose a deed to have been made out our rabbis have taught if a man says I have given such and such a field to so and so it is presented to so and so I declare it to be his then it is his if he says I shall give it to so and so our mayor says that he acquires ownership of it but the sages say that he does not acquire ownership our Yohanan explained that in every case we suppose a deed to have been given our rabbis have taught if a man says I have made my slave so and so free and the slave says you have not freed me we take into account the possibility that he has presented him a deed of emancipation through a third party if however the master says I have written and given to him and he says he has not written for me nor given to me this is a case where the admission of the litigant is worth the evidence of a hundred witnesses if a man says I have given such and such a field to so and so and the latter says he has not given it to me we take into account the possibility that he may have presented it to him through a third party if he says I have written a deed and presented it to him and the other says he has not written nor presented to me then in that case the admission of the litigant is worth the evidence of a hundred witnesses in such a case who is entitled to the produce are his as the donor is entitled to the produce whereas rabbis says that the produce is entrusted to a third party there is no conflict between it. Two rulings the one applies to the father the other to the son mission if a man makes his slave security for a debt to another man and he emancipates him in strict justice the slave is not liable for anything but to prevent abuses his master is compelled to emancipate him and he gives a bond for his purchase price Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says that he does not give a bond but he emancipates him Gamar if a man makes his slave security for a debt and he emancipates him who emancipates him Rab says his first master in strict justice the slave is then not liable for anything to his second master according to the dictum of Rabbah that sanctification love and emancipation release from a creditor's lien to prevent abuses however that is to say for fear lest he should find him in the street Talmud, Mosque in A and say to him you are my slave his second master is compelled to emancipate him the slave giving him a bond for his purchase price R. Simeon B. Gamaliel says that it is not it. Slave, but the one who emancipates him who has to give a bond in regard to what point do the two authorities join issue in regard to the person who injures an object pledged as security to another one holding that he is liable to make it good and the other that he is not liable. It has also been stated elsewhere on the question of the man who injures an object which has been pledged as security to another. We find a difference of opinion between our Simeon B. Gamaliel and the Rabbi Zola. Explains as follows who emancipates him, his second master in strict justice. The slave is still not liable for the performance of religious precepts incumbent on free men only to prevent abuses. However, since he has been reported to be free, his first master is compelled to liberate him and he the servant gives him a bond for his purchase price. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel says that he does not give the bond, but the one who emancipates him gives the bond on what point do the two authorities join? Issue on the question of damage which is not recognizable the one holding that in the eye of the law this is genuine damage and the other that it is not why did not Ola accept the explanation of Rab he will say to you can you call the second his master why did not Rab adopt the explanation of Ola he will say to you do you call the second the one who emancipates him it has been stated if a man makes a field of his security for a debt to another and it is flooded by a river am I shaper? N A S says in the name of our Yohanan that he cannot recover his debt from the remaining property of the debtor the father of Samuel however says that he can recover from the remainder of his property said Arnaman B Isaac because he is am I shaper N A he makes pronouncements which are not commendable but we must explain his reported ruling to refer to the case where the debtor has said to the creditor you shall not be able to recover save from this it has been taught to the same effect if a Man makes a field of his security for a debt to another and it is flooded by a river the creditor may recover from the remainder of his property if however he said to him you shall not be able to recover save from this he cannot recover from the remainder of his property another buried the taught if a man makes his field security for a debt to his creditor or for a woman's cathu but they may recover from the remainder of his property our Simeon B. Gamaliel however says that while a creditor may so recover a woman cannot recover from the remainder because it is not seemly for a woman to keep on coming to court mission one who is half a slave and half free works for his master and for himself alternate days this was the ruling of Beth Hillel Beth Sham I said you have made matters right for the master but not for the slave it is impossible for him to marry a female slave because he is already half free Talmud Mosque and BIT is impossible for him to marry a free woman because he is Half a slave shall he then remain unmarried but was not the world only made to be populated as it says he created it not a waste he formed it to be inhabited to prevent abuses therefore his master is compelled to liberate him and he gives him a bond for half his purchase price Beth Hillel thereupon retracted their opinion and ruled like Beth Shammai Gemara our rabbis taught if a man emancipates half his slave rabbi says that the latter becomes his own master to that extent and the rabbis say that he does not rabbi says the dispute between them relates only to the case where the master has made out a deed of emancipation rabbi holds since it says and she be not at all redeemed nor freedom given her we apply the same rule to a deed as to money just as with money the slave can acquire either the half or the whole of himself so with a deed he can acquire either the half or the whole of himself the rabbis however base their ruling on the occurrence of the word to her in Connection both with a female slave and with a divorced wife just as a wife cannot be divorced by half so a slave cannot acquire himself by halves with money however both agree that he can so acquire himself may we say that the point at issue between the rabbi and the rabbis is this that where a ruling may be based either on an analogy or a gazerish while one holds that preference is to be given to the analogy and the latter to the gazerish while no both agree that preference is to be given to the gazerish while but there is a special reason for not doing so here because the validity of the gazerish while may be questioned thus this rule may well apply to a woman since she cannot be liberated by money but how infer from her to a slave who is liberated by money our joseph said that the dispute between rabbi and the rabbis is where the half emancipation is made for money payment rabbi holds that the words redeeming she is not redeemed indicate that she is half Redeemed but not wholly redeemed whereas the rabbis hold that the Torah was here using an ordinary form of speech where however the half emancipation is made by a deed both according to our Joseph agree that the slave does not acquire that half of himself an objection was raised from the following if a man emancipates half his slave with a deed rabbi says that the slave acquires that half of himself while the rabbis say that he does not acquire it is not this a refutation of our Joseph. It is and I infer from this very that rabbi and the rabbis differ only where the emancipation is affected by a deed but where it is affected by money payment they do not differ in which case there will be a double refutation of our Joseph our Joseph may reply what the Beritha shows is that they differ in regard to a deed and this applies also to money payment and the reason why their difference is mentioned only in regard to a deed is to show to what lengths rabbi is prepared to go but why should not their difference be mentioned with reference to money payment to show to what lengths the rabbis are prepared to go it prefers to note the strength of this conviction where it leads to a permission come and here and redeemed I might take this to mean entirely redeemed therefore it says she was not redeemed if she was not redeemed I might think it means not at all therefore it says and redeemed how then do we explain she is redeemed and yet not redeemed with money or with the equivalent of money I only know so far that this is the case with money payment how do know that it is so with a deed it says and redeemed she was not redeemed nor was her freedom given to her and in another place it says and he shall write for her a bill of divorcement just as there the woman is liberated by a deed so here I only know so far that a half emancipation can be affected by money or a full one by a deed how do I know that a half emancipation can be affected by a deed Says and redeemed she be not redeemed or her freedom be not given to her the deed is here put on the same footing as money payment once I conclude that just as with money either a half or a full emancipation can be affected so with the deed now there is no difficulty here if we accept the view of our Joseph after he was refuted this very that agrees with rabbi but on the view of rabbi we must say that the first half agrees with all and the
not differ even where the master parts with the whole has not one authority taught if a man assigns in writing his property to two of his slaves they acquire ownership and emancipate one another while it has been taught by another if a man says all my property is made over to my slave so and so and so and so they do not acquire ownership even of themselves now are we not to say that the one authority concurs with rabbi and the other with the rabbis no both concur with the rabbis only the one refers to the case where the man assigned the whole of his property to both slaves while the other refers to the case where he says half to one and half to the other but the second clause goes on if he says half to one and half to the other they do not acquire ownership does not this show that the first clause refers to the case where he says the whole the second clause explains the first thus they do not acquire ownership even of themselves when is this so if for instance he says half to one and half to the other the supposition is reasonable since if we assume the first clause to refer to the case where he says the whole seeing that where he says the whole they do not acquire ownership is it necessary to tell us that they do not do so where he says half and half this is not a conclusive argument it may be that the second clause was put in to make clear the reference in the first lest you might think that the first clause refers to where he said half to one and half to the other leaving us to infer that where he said the whole they acquire ownership he adds in the second clause where he says half and half which shows that the first clause speaks of the case where he says the whole and even so they do not acquire ownership or if you like I can say that there is no contradiction as the one authority is speaking of one document and the other of two documents if he is speaking of one document what is the point of half to one and half to the other even if he said let each take the whole they do not acquire ownership this in fact is what he does say is what he means is they do not acquire even themselves when do we say this when he makes out only one deed if however he makes out two deeds they do acquire ownership and if he says half to one and half to the other even with two deeds they do not acquire ownership if you like again I can say that there is no contradiction in the one case the two Deeds are given at one and the same time in the other case one after the other if that is so I can understand why the second does not acquire ownership because the first has already become his owner but why does not the first acquire both himself and the other no the best solutions are those which were given first Arashi said the case is different there because he calls him my slave said Raphram to Arashi perhaps he means who were my slaves have we not learned if a man assigns in writing all his property to his slave the latter becomes free if he accepts a piece of land however small he does not become free Arsimian says he becomes free in all cases unless the master says the whole of my property is assigned to my slave so and so except one ten thousand part thereof now the reason for this is that he added these words otherwise he would be free but it may be asked why seeing that he calls him my slave obviously he means who was hitherto my slave so here he means who were Hitherto my slaves if a slave who is half emancipated is gored by an ox if it is on the day on which he belongs to the master the compensation goes to the master if on the day when he belongs to himself it goes to himself if that is so then on his master's day he should be allowed to marry a slave woman and on his own day a free woman we do not apply this principle where a religious prohibition is involved come and here if an ox kills one who is half a slave and half free the owner gives half the fine to his master Talmud, mosque and be and half the ransom to his heirs why should this be so let us say that on his master's day the money goes to his master and on his own day to himself the case is different here because the principle is consumed what sort of case is it then in which the principle is not consumed if for instance the ox wounded him on his hand causing it to shrivel but so that it will eventually be healed this answer is satisfactory if we accept the view of Abbe who said that he is compensated in such circumstances both for the larger incapacitation and the smaller incapacitation but on the view of Rabbah who said that he is only compensated for his incapacitation from day to day it may be objected that we are dealing with an ox and an ox makes the master liable only for payment of damage if you like I can say that this rule applies only when the blow is given by a man and if you like I can say that the passage above is only an expression of opinion and it is one with which Rabbah does not hold the question was raised if an emancipated slave has not yet received his deed of emancipation is a fine to be paid for him or not if he is killed by a goring ox thirty shekels of silver he shall give to his master said the all merciful and this man is not his master or do I say that since the slave is still short of a deed of emancipation we do call him a master come and here if an ox kills one who is half a slave and half Free the owner gives half the fine to the master and half the ransom to the slave's heirs now this is so is it not on the basis even of the later teaching no only on the basis of the earlier teaching come and here if a man knocks out a tooth of his slave and also blinds him of an eye the slave is liberated on account of the tooth and receives compensation for the eye if now you say that a fine must be paid for him and the fine belongs to his master seeing that when others injure him they pay. The master when the master himself injures him is he to pay to the slave perhaps this passage agrees with the authority who says that he does not need a deed of emancipation since it has been taught for all these maimings a slave is liberated he requires however a deed of emancipation from his master our mayor says he does not require one our Eliezer says he does require one our Tarfon says he does not require one our Akiba says he does require one those who determine the issue in the presence of the sages say the opinion of our Tarfan is to be preferred in the case of a tooth and an eye because the Torah itself conferred on him his freedom in this case but the opinion of our Akiva in the case of the other members because the liberation in that case is a fine imposed by the sages on the master of fine you call it they deduce it from the text of the scripture let us say therefore because it is a deduction of the sages the question was raised if a liberated slave of a priest is still short of a deed of emancipation may he eat terima or not the all merciful has laid down that terima may be eaten by one who is the purchase of his the priest's money and this one is no longer the purchase of his money or perhaps since he is short of a deed of emancipation do we still call him the purchase of his money come and here our measure she has said if the child of a priestess has become interchanged with the child of her female slave both may eat terima and must take their Portion together from the threshing floor when the changelings grow up they emancipate one another are these two cases parallel in the latter case should Elijah come and declare one of them to be a slave we should call him the purchase of his money but in the other case he is not the purchase of his money at all the question was raised if a man sells his slave in respect of the fine only he sold or not sold the question is pertinent whether we adopt the view of our mayor or whether we adopt that of the rabbis it is a question for our mayor since we may say that when our mayor laid down that a man can transfer something which does not yet exist he was thinking for instance of the fruit of a day tree which is expected to come into existence later but in this case who can tell if the slave will actually be gored and even if he is gored how can we tell that the owner of the ox will pay Talmud, mosque it and perhaps he will confess and release himself it is also a question for the rabbis since we may say that when the rabbi said that a man cannot transfer something which does not yet exist they were thinking for instance of the fruit of a day tree which at this moment at any rate does not exist but in this case the ox exists and the slave exists what is the answer our abba said come and here such as are born in his house what is the point of these words if the purchase of his money can he tear him how much more so one born in the house if that were so I should say just as the purchase of his money must be one who has a money value so the one born in his house must have a money value how then should I know that even one who has no money value may eat the terima because it says such as are born in the house in all circumstances I might still maintain that one who is born in the house may eat whether he has a money value or not but the purchase of his money may eat only if he has a money value but if he has no money value he may not eat therefore it says that Purchase of his money and one born in his house just as one born in the house may eat whether he has a money value or not so the purchase of his money may eat whether he has a money value or not now if you say that a slave who is sold by his master in respect of the fine only is actually sold the question can be asked is there a slave who is not worth selling for his fine yes there is the one who has not long to live but he is still capable of waiting on him we suppose him also to be loathsome more covered with boils the question was raised if one who is half a slave and half free affiance is a free woman how do we decide should you point out that if a son of Israel says to a daughter of Israel be affiance to half of me she is affianced I may reply that this is so because she is qualified for the whole of him but this one is not qualified for the whole of him if again you point out that when an Israelite affiance is half a woman she is not affianced I may reply that this is so because he left something over from his acquisition but the slave leaves nothing over from his acquisition what are we to say come in here if an ox kills one who is half a slave and half free the owner gives
woman she is not a fine so if a woman who is half a slave and half free is a fine she is not really betrothed said Arhista to him are the two cases similar in the one a man leaves something over from his acquisition and the other he leaves nothing over from his acquisition Rabbi son of Arhuna thereupon called upon a public orator who discoursed as follows the stumbling block is under thy hand a man does not fully understand the words of the Torah until he has come to grief over them. Although they have said that if a man finds his half a woman she is not a fine yet if one who is half a slave and half free is a fine her betrothal is a genuine one what is the reason for the difference in the one case he leaves something over from his acquisition in the other case he leaves nothing over from his acquisition Arshis hate however said just as if a man finds his half a woman she is not a fine so if a woman who is half a slave and half free is a fine her betrothal is no genuine one if someone should whisper to you the teaching who is the designated bond woman the one who being half bond woman and half free is betrothed to a Hebrew slave which shows that she is capable of being betrothed say to him go to our Ishmael who says that the Torah here speaks of a Canaanitish bond woman who is betrothed to a Hebrew slave now is a Canaanitish bond woman capable of being betrothed we say therefore that by betrothed our Ishmael means allocated so here too betrothed means Allocated Arista said if a woman half slave and half free is a fine to Reuben and then emancipated and then a fine to Simeon and both of them Reuben and Simeon die she may contract a Levi right marriage with Levi Talmud, Moskit and B and we do not place her in the category of the widow of two husbands for whichever way you take it if the offensing of Reuben was effective then the offensing of Simeon was not effective and if the offensing of Simeon was effective then the offensing of Reuben was not effective it has been stated if a woman who is half slave and half free was a fine to Reuben and then emancipated and became a fine to Simeon our Joseph said in the name of Arnaman that by means of the emancipation the offensing of the first is nullified whereas our Zara said in the name of Arnaman that it was consummated said our Zara my view is the more probable since it is written they shall not be put to death for she has not freed which implies that if she has been Free there to be put to death said Abbe to him and on the view of the Tana of the school of our Ishmael who said that the verse speaks of a Canaanitish bond woman who is a fine to a Hebrew slave are we to say that in this case also if she has been freed there to be put to death what of course you have to assume in that case is that after she was freed she became a fine again here too then we speak of a case where she was freed and became a fine again Arhuna B. Katna said there was an actual case of a woman who was half slave and half free whose master they compelled to liberate her whose authority did they follow that of our Yohanan B. Broca who said in reference to both of the men and women the verse says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply etc. said Arnam and B. Isaac this is not so the reason was that they used her for immoral purposes Mishnah if a man sells his slave to a heathen or outside the land of Israel he gains his Freedom Gemara our rabbis have taught if a man sells his slave to a heathen he gains his freedom but he still requires a deed of emancipation from his first master said Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel this is the rule if he did not make out a deed of O.N.I. if however he made out a deed of O.N.I. for him this constitutes his emancipation what is meant by O.N.I. Arshis hate said if he writes in it to this effect this if you run away from him I have no claim on you our rabbis taught if a man borrows money from a heathen giving a slave as pledge so soon as the heathen has fixed to him his nemesis he gains his freedom if he escapes what is meant by his nemesis Arhuna B. Judah said it means his caller Arshis hate raised an objection against this explanation from the following Medias tenants and hereditary Medias and a heathen who has mortgaged his field to an Israelite even though he did fix to him a nemesis are not liable to tithe if now you assume that nemesis means a chain can a chain be applied to a field no said Arshis hate what it means is a time limit then the time limit has two opposite effects there is no contradiction in the one case of the slave we suppose the period to have terminated and the other not in the case of a slave whose period has expired do we need to be told that he gains his freedom no both refer to the case where the period has not expired and still there is no contradiction since in the one case the body is transferred and in the other only the increment. Talmud, Moskid and or if you like I can say that it refers to the case where he borrowed on condition that he should pledge and he did not pledge our rabbis taught if he even seizes the slave of a Jew on account of money owing to him or if he is taken by the Sakarakon he does not become free if he escapes is this really the rule if he is seized on account of debt if so it would seem to conflict with the following if the king's officer sees the corn in a man's granary if it is on. Account of a debt due from him, he must give tithe for it. But if it is on account of an parath, he is not under obligation to give tithe. There, the case is different because they confer some advantage on him. Come and your rab said, if a man sells his slave to a heathen parhan, he becomes free if he escapes there. The reason is that he ought to have persuaded him to take something else, and he did not do so. The text above stated, rab said that if a man sells his slave to a heathen parhan, he becomes free. What was he to do? He should have persuaded him to take something else, and he did not do so. Our Jeremiah raised the question: Suppose he sold him for thirty days, how do we decide? Come and your rab said, if a man sells his slave to a heathen parhan, he becomes free. That refers to a heathen parhan who is not likely to return if he sells him for all purposes except for work. How do we decide if he sells him for all purposes save where a breach of the Jewish law is involved? How do? We decide if he sells him for work at all times save on Sabbaths and festivals. How do we decide if he sells him to a resident alien or not observant Israelite? How do we decide if to a Kutian? How do we decide one of these questions at any rate may be definitely answered a resident alien is on the same footing as a heathen as for a Kutian and a non-observant Israelite. Some say he is on the same footing as a heathen and some that he is on the same footing as an Israelite. A question was asked of RMI if a slave throws himself into the hands of bandits and his master is unable to procure his return through the agency either of an Israelite or Gentile court is he at liberty to receive payment for him if offered said our Jeremiah to our Zerah to go outside and look through your notes he went out looked and found that it was taught if a man sells his house in the land of Israel to a heathen the money paid for it is forbidden if however a heathen forcibly takes a House of an Israelite and the latter is unable to recover it either in a heathen or a Jewish court he may accept payment for it and he may make out a deed for it and present it in heathen court since this is like rescuing money from their hands but perhaps this applies only to a house because since a man cannot do without a house he will not be induced to sell it but since a man can do without a slave shall we say that if we make this rule he may be induced to sell or am I sent back? Answer from me am I son of Nathan the rule is issued to all Israel that if a slave throws himself into the hands of bandits and his master is unable to recover him either in a Jewish or a heathen court his master is permitted to accept payment for him and he may make out a deed and present it in heathen courts because this is like rescuing money from their hands or Joshua believe I said if a man sells his slave to a heathen he can be penalized by having to ransom him for as much as a hundred. Times his value is the expression 100 here used exactly or loosely come in here since Resh Lakish has said if a man sells an ox to a heathen he can be penalized by having to ransom it for as much as 10 times its value perhaps the rule for a slave is different because every day he is kept away from religious observances according to another version our Joshua believe I said if a man sells his slave to a heathen he may be penalized by having to ransom him for as much as 10 times its value is. The expression 10 here used exactly or loosely come in here since Resh Lakish has said if a man sells an ox to a heathen he can be penalized by having to ransom it for as much as 100 times its value the rule for a slave is different because he is not restored to him the reason then why in the case of an animal the penalty is so high is because it is returned to him if so the excess penalty should be the bare value of the animal in fact the real reason is that for a man to sell a Slave is unusual and the rabbis did not prescribe for unusual cases our Jeremiah inquired of R.C. if a man sells his slave and then dies is there ground for penalizing his son after him it is true you can point to the rule that if a priest mutilates the ear of a firstling and then dies his son is penalized after him but this may be because he has broken a rule based on the Torah whereas here we are dealing with the rule of the rabbis Talmud, Moskit and B. if again you point to the rule that if a man prepares to do work during the half festival and then dies his son is not penalized after him the reason may be because he did not actually do anything forbidden what do we
Instance, if the master says, I have sold my slave so and so to so and so an Antiochian, he does not become free. If he says to an Antiochian in Antioch, he does become free. But has it not been taught if a man says, I have sold him to an Antiochian, he becomes free. But if he says to an Antiochian living in Lydda, he does not become free. There is no contradiction in the one case. We suppose he has a house in Eretz Israel and the other that he has only a place of stay in Eretz Israel. Our Jeremiah put it. Question, if a Babylonian Jew marries a woman from Eretz Israel and she brings him in male and female slaves and his intention is to return to Babylon, what is the rule? We have to ask this whether we accept the view that the husband has the right or whether we accept the view that the wife has the right. We have to ask it on the view that the wife has the right. Shall we say that since she has the right, they are regarded as hers or perhaps since they are made over to him as far as the Increment is concerned they are regarded as his the question has equally to be asked on the view that the husband has the right seeing that he has the right are they to be regarded as his or since he does not acquire the body are they still regarded as hers this must stand over our above said our Yohan and taught me if a servant accompanies his master to Syria and his master sells him there he becomes free but our high teaches that he loses his right there is no contradiction in the one case we presume that his master intended to return in the other that he did not intend to return as it has been taught a slave must leave Eretz Israel with his master for Syria must leave you say assuredly he need not leave seeing that we have learned not all may take out what you mean is if a slave accompanies his master from Eretz Israel to Syria and his master sells him there if it was his master's intention to return he is compelled to emancipate him but if it was not his intention to return he is not compelled Arain and said I was told by Mar Samuel two things one in relation to this point and one in relation to the statement if a man sells his field in the Jubilee Yerab says that it is sold but must be immediately returned whereas Samuel says that it is not sold in the first instance in one case he said the purchase money is returned and in the other case it is not returned and I do not know which is which said our Joseph let us see since it is stated in the Beretha that if a man sells his slave abroad he becomes free and requires a deed of emancipation from his second master we infer that the second master became his legal owner and that the purchase money is not to be returned and therefore that when Samuel said in the other case of the field that the field is not sold in the first instance the money is returned Talmud, Moskid and Rabbanan however was not acquainted with this Beretha and as to Samuel's dictum how could he infer from it that the field not being Sold the money was to be returned perhaps though the field was not sold the money was to be regarded as a gift on the analogy of a man who finds his sister in regard to which it has been stated if a man finds his sister Rab says that the betrothal money is to be returned while Samuel says that it is to be regarded as a gift said Abbe to our Joseph why should you want us to penalize the purchaser let us penalize the vendor he replied it is not the mouse that is the thief but the hole. If there were no mouse he retorted how should the hole come by it is only reasonable that where the forbidden stuff is found there we should impose the penalty a certain slave escaped from abroad to Eretz Israel and was pursued by his master the latter eventually came before RMI who said to him let him make you out a bond for his value and you must make out a deed of emancipation for him otherwise I will make you forfeit him in accordance with the view of Arahi son of our Josiah for it. Has been taught it is written they shall not dwell in thy land lest they make thee sin against me etc. Shall I say that the text speaks of a heathen who has undertaken not to practice idolatry this cannot be because it is written thou shalt not deliver unto his master a servant which is escaped from his master unto thee what is to be done with him he shall dwell with thee etc. Our Josiah found it difficult to accept this explanation because instead of from his master it should be from his father therefore our Josiah explained the verse to speak of a man who sells his slave abroad Arahi son of our Josiah in turn found it difficult to accept this explanation because instead of which is escaped unto thee it should be which is escaped from thee Arahi son of our Josiah therefore explained the verse to speak of a slave who escapes from abroad to Eretz Israel another very the taught thou shalt not deliver unto his master a servant rabbi says that the verse is speaking of a man who buys a Slave on the understanding that he will emancipate him how are we to understand this Arnaman B. Isaac said he makes out a deed in these terms when I buy you you shall be regarded as having been your own master retrospectively from now a slave of Arhistas escaped to the Kutians he sent word to them that they should return him they quoted to him in return the verse thou shalt not deliver unto his master a servant he quoted to them in return so thou shalt do with his ass and so thou shalt do with his garment and so shalt thou do with every lost thing of thy brothers but they retorted it is written thou shalt not deliver unto his master a servant he sent to them to say that refers to a slave who escapes from abroad to Eretz Israel as explained by Arahi son of Arjosai why did he quote to them the interpretation of Arahi son of Arjosai and not rather that of Rabbi because this accords more with the literal meaning of the verse have a lost an ass among Kutians he sent to them Saying send it back to me they sent to him saying give us a mark of identification he sent word to them that its belly was white they sent him backward were you not no money we would not send it to you have not all asses white bellies mishnah captives should not be redeemed for more than their value to prevent abuses captives should not be helped to escape to prevent abuses rabbin simeon begamaliel says that the reason is to prevent the ill treatment of fellow captives Gamara the question was raised does this prevention of abuses relate to the burden which may be imposed on the community or to the possibility that the activities of the bandits may be stimulated come and here levi bidarga ransomed his daughter for 13,000 denarii of gold said Abbe, but are you sure that he acted with the consent of the sages perhaps he acted against the will of the sages captives should not be helped to escape to prevent abuses rabbin simeon begamaliel says the reason is to prevent it Ill treatment of fellow captives, what practical difference does it make? Which reason we adopt the difference arises where there is only one captive. The daughters of Arnaman used to stir a cauldron with their hands when it was boiling hot. Our Eilish was puzzled about it. It is written, he said, One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. And here are the daughters of Arnaman. A misfortune happened to them, and they were carried away captive. And he also with them. One day a man was sitting next to him who understood the language of birds. A raven came and called to him, and our Eilish said to him, What does it say? It says, He replied, Eilish, run away, Eilish, run away. He said, The raven is a false bird, and I do not trust it. Then a dove came and called. He again asked, What does it say? It says, The man replied, Eilish, run away, Eilish, run away. He said, Eilish, the community of Israel is likened to a dove. This shows that a miracle will be performed for me. He then said, to himself I will go and see the daughters of Arnam and if they have retained their virtue I will bring them back said he to himself women talk over their business in the privy he overheard them saying these men are our husbands just as the Nehardians were our husbands let us tell our captors to remove us to a distance from here so that our husbands may not come and hear where we are and ransom us our Eilish then rose and fled along with the other man a miracle was performed for him and he got across the river but the other man was caught and put to death when the daughters of Arnam came back he said they stirred the cauldron by which craft mission and either should scrolls of the lawful actories and Mazuzoth be bought from heathens at more than their value Talmud, Moskid and B to prevent abuses Gamara Arbutia said to Arashi the mission says that they must not be bought at more than their value but presumably they may be bought at their value this would show that a scroll of the law which is found in the possession of a heathen may be read perhaps it can be bought to be stored away Arnaman said we have it on tradition that a scroll of the law which has been written by a man should be burnt and one written by a heathen should be stored away one that is found in the possession of a man should be stored away one that is found in the possession of a heathen according to some should be stored away and according to others may be read with regard to a scroll of the law which has been written by a heathen it has been taught by one authority that it should be burnt and it has been taught by another authority that it should be stored away and it has been taught by another authority that it may be read there is however no contradiction the view that it should be burnt follows our Eliezer who said that the intention of the heathen is normally idolatrous the view that it should be stored away follows the tenor of the following passage for our Hamdan, the son of Rabba of Pashrini learned that a scroll of the lawful actories and Mazuzoth written by a man and informer, even a slave, a woman, a minor, a Kutian, and an irreligious Jew are disqualified since it says, And thou shalt bid them, and thou shalt write them, which indicates that those who are subject to
To his old religion out of fear our rabbis taught the price offered may exceed their value to the extent of a trope. How much is a trope? Our she's hate says an aster an Arab woman brought a bag of phylacteries to Abbe let me have them. He said at a couple of dates for a pair she became furious and took them and threw them into the river said Abbe I should not have made them look so cheap to her as all that Mishnah if a man divorces his wife because of ill fame he must not remarry her if. Because she makes a vow he must not remarry her our Judah says if he divorces her for vows which she made publicly he may not remarry her but if for vows which she did not make publicly he may remarry her our Meir says if he divorces her for a vow which requires the investigation of a sage he may not remarry her but if for one which does not require the investigation of a sage he may remarry her our Eliezer says that one was only forbidden on account of the other our Jose son of our Judah said a case. Happened in sudden of a man who said to his wife Konam if I do not divorce you and he did divorce her and the sages permitted him to remarry her all this to prevent abuses Gemara our Joseph B. Menumi said in the name of Arnav and the rule that he must not remarry her applies only if he says to her I am divorcing you on account of your evil name Talmud, Moskid and A I am divorcing you on account of your vow his view was that the reason why he must not remarry her was to prevent him making mischief subsequently if he uses these words to her he can make mischief for her but if not he cannot make mischief for her some there are who report our Joseph B. Menumi said in the name of Arnav and he has to say to her understand that I am divorcing you on account of your evil name I am divorcing you on account of your vowing his view was that the reason why he must not remarry her is to prevent the daughters of Israel from becoming dissolute or too prone to vows hence he is required to Address her thus there is a teaching in support of the first version and a teaching in support of the second version it has been taught in support of the first version our Meir says why has it been laid down that if a man divorces his wife on account of ill fame or on account of a vow he must not remarry her for fear that she may go and marry another and then it may be discovered that the charge against her was unfounded and he will say had I known this was the case I would not have divorced her. Even for a hundred minutes and so the get becomes retrospective why void and her children from the second husband illegitimate therefore they say to him when he comes to give the divorce know that a man who divorces his wife on account of ill fame must not remarry her or if he divorces her on account of a vow he must not remarry her it has been taught in support of the second version our Eliezer son of our Jose says why has it been laid down that if a man divorces his wife on account of a Scandal he should not remarry her or on account of a vow that he should not remarry her in order that the daughters of Israel should not become dissolute or too prone to vows therefore they tell him say to her understand that I am divorcing you on account of your ill fame I am divorcing you on account of a vow our Judah says if he divorces her for vows which she made publicly he may not remarry her but if for a vow which she did not make publicly he may remarry her our Joshua B. Levi said what is the reason of our Judah for holding that a vow made publicly may not be annulled because the scripture says and the children of Israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them and what do the rabbis make of this verse they replied did the oath there become binding upon them at all since they the Gibeonites said we are come from a far country whereas they had not come from one the oath was never binding and the reason why the Israelites did not slay them was because this would have impaired the sanctity of God's name how many form a public our nomin says three our Isaac says ten our nomin says three interpreting days to mean two and many three our Isaac says ten because the scripture calls ten a congregation our Meir says every vow that requires etc it has been taught our Eliezer says a vow requiring investigation was made a ground for prohibition only on account of a vow which does not require investigation what is the point at issue between our Meir and our Eliezer our Meir held that a man does not mind the indignity of his wife appearing in a beth din whereas our Eliezer held that a man is averse to subjecting his wife to the indignity of appearing in a beth din our Jose son of our Judah said a case happened in sudden etc what has preceded that this should be given as an illustration there is a lacuna and the mission should run thus these rules apply only in the case where the wife vowed but if he vowed he may remarry and our Jose son of our Judah just a case which happened in sudden of a man who said to his wife Konam if I shall not divorce you and he did divorce her and the sages permitted him to remarry her to prevent abuses Talmud, Moskid and be Talmud, Moskid and be what Konam was there here Arhuna said we suppose he said every species of produce shall be forbidden to me if I do not divorce you and they permitted him to remarry her this surely is self-evident you might think that we should prohibit him on account of it. Dictum of our Nathan as it has been taught our Nathan says to make a vow is like building a high place and to keep it is like bringing an offering thereon therefore we are told that this is not so to prevent abuses what prevention of abuses is there here Arshis hate said that the words refer to the earlier clauses of the Mishnah Rabbin said that they refer indeed to the last clause and the meaning is there was no ground for forbidding this on the score of preventing abuses Mishnah if a man. Divorces his wife because he finds her to be incapable of bearing our Judah says he may not remarry her but the sages say that he may remarry her if she marries again and has children from the second husband and then demands her kefu the settlement from the first our Judah says he can say to her the less you say the better Gemara this would seem to show that our Judah takes into account the possibility of mischief making and the rabbis do not take it into account but we have found the opposite. Opinions ascribed to them as we have learned if a man divorces his wife on account of ill fame or on account of a vow she has made he must not remarry her our Judah says if the vow was made publicly he may not remarry her but if it was not made publicly he may remarry her this seems to show that the rabbis take account of the possibility of mischief making and our Judah does not take account of it Samuel said reverse the names but since the mission goes on to say if she marries again and has Children from the second husband and then demands her kefu the settlement from the first our Judah says that he can say to her the less you say the better we can conclude that our Judah does take into account the possibility of mischief making reverse the names here also Abbe said there is no need to reverse since our Judah in that case concurs both with our Meir and with our Eliezer in the case of a vow which requires the investigation of a sage he concurs with our Eliezer and in the case of a vow which does not require investigation he concurs with our Meir Rabbi said is there a contradiction between the statements of our Judah and no contradiction between the statements of the rabbis no said Rabbi between the statements of our Judah there is no contradiction as has been explained between the statements of the rabbis there is also no contradiction for who are the sages here our Meir who said that we require the condition to be duplicated and here we are dealing with a case where he did not Duplicate his condition mission if a man sells himself and his children to a heathen he is not to be redeemed his children however are to be redeemed after the death of their father Gemara R.C. said this rule applies only if he sold himself a second and a third time certain Jews of Bimiks borrowed money from heathens and when they were unable to pay the latter seized them for slaves they appealed to Arunah who said what can I do seeing that we have learned if a man sells himself and his children to a heathen he is not to be redeemed our Abba thereupon said to him you have taught us master that this applies only if he has so sold himself a second and a third time Arunah replied these men do this habitually a certain man sold himself to the Lydians and then appealed to RMI saying Talmud, Moskid and redeem me so he said we have learned if a man sells himself and his children to a heathen he is not to be redeemed but his children are to be redeemed after the death of their Father to prevent their going astray all the more so than here where there is a danger of their being killed the rabbi said to R.C. this man is a non-observant Israelite who has been seen eating non-Jewish meat he said to them possibly he did so because he wanted meat and could get no other they said there have been times when he had the choice of permitted and forbidden meat and he left the former and took the latter he thereupon said to the man be off they will not let me ransom you rush. Lakish once sold himself to the Lydians he took with him a bag with a stone in it because he said it is a known fact that on the last day they grant any request of the man they are about to kill in order that he may forgive them his murder on the last day they said to him what would you like he replied I want you to let me tie your arms and seat you in a row and give each one of you a blow and a half with my bottle he bound them and seated them and gave each of them a blow with his bag which Stunned him one of them ground his teeth at him are you laughing at me he said I have still half a bag left for you so he killed them all and made off as he was once seated on the ground eating and drinking his daughter said don't you want something to recline on he replied daughter my belly is my cushion at his death he left a cab of saffron and he
corn of the heathen and the other holds that we interpret it to mean the storing and not the storing of the heathen. Rabbi said, "Whence do I derive my view? Because we have learned gleanings for gotten sheep and produce of the corner belonging to a heathen are subject to tithe unless he has declared them common property. How are we to understand this? Are we to say that the field belongs to an Israelite and the produce has been gathered by a heathen? If so, what is the meaning of unless he declared them common property? Seeing that they are already such, we must therefore say that the field belongs to a heathen and an Israelite has gathered the produce. And the reason why he has to give no tithe from them is because he declared them common property. But otherwise, he would be liable. This is not conclusive. I may still hold that the field spoken of belongs to an Israelite and that a heathen has gathered the produce. And as for your argument that it is already declared common property, granted." That it is such in the eyes of the Israelite, is it such in the eyes of the heathen? Come and here, if an Israelite bought a field from a heathen before the produce was a third grown and sold it back to him, after it was a third grown, it is subject to tithe because it was so already before he sold it back. The reason is, is it not because it was so already, but otherwise it would not be subject. We are dealing here with a field in Syria, and the author of this dictum took the view that the annexation of an individual is not legally counted as annexation. Come and here, if an Israelite and a heathen buy a field in partnership, Talmud, Moskid, and Betebel, and Hullen are inextricably mixed up in it. This is the view of Rabbi Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says that the part belonging to the heathen is exempt from tithe, and the part belonging to the Israelite is subject to it. Now, are we not to say that the extent of their difference consists in this, that the one authority our Simeon holds? That a distinction can be made retrospectively, while the other holds that no distinction can be made retrospectively. But both are agreed that a heathen can own land in the land of Israel so fully as to release it from the obligation of tithe. Here too, we are dealing with land in Syria, and our Simeon took the view that the annexation of an individual is not legally regarded as annexation. Our high Abin said, "Come and here, if one sells his field to a heathen, he must buy from him the first fruits, and take them to Jerusalem to prevent abuses. That is to say, the reason is to prevent abuses. But the Torah itself does not prescribe this." Our Ashi replied, "There were two regulations. At first, they, the sellers of the fields used to bring the first fruits as enjoined in the Torah. When the sages saw that they made the recital over them and still sold fields, being under the impression that the fields still retained their holiness, they ordained that the first fruits should not be brought when. They saw that those who were short of money still sold and the fields remained in the hands of the heathen they ordained that they should be brought it has been stated if a man sells his field in respect of the produce only Aryohan and says that the purchaser brings the first fruits and makes the recital over them while Reshlakish says that he brings them but makes no recital Aryohan and who says that he brings and recites is of the opinion that the possession of the increment is equivalent to possession of the parent body while Reshlakish who says that he brings without reciting is of opinion that the possession of the increment is not equivalent to the possession of the parent body Aryohan and raised an objection against Reshlakish from the following and thou shalt rejoice in all the good which the Lord hath given to thee and to thy house this teaches that a man brings the first fruits of his wife and makes the recital Reshlakish rejoined there is a special reason there because the text says his house according to another report, Reshlakish raised an objection against Aryohan and by quoting to him and to thy house this shows that a man brings the first fruits of his wife and makes the recital. This continued Reshlakish is the rule in the case of the wife because the text says and to thy house but in other cases not Aryohan and replied I derive my reason also from the same verse he then raised an objection from the following if while he was on the road. Bringing the first fruits of his wife he heard that his wife had died he brings them and makes the recital which means I take it that if she did not die he does not make the recital no he replied the rule is the same even if she did not die but it had to be stated also in regard to the case of her dying for this reason it might have occurred to us that in this case we should as a precaution prohibit the husband from reciting on account of the ruling of our Jose Bihana who laid down. That if a man gathered his grapes and commissioned another man to bring them to Jerusalem and the person commissioned died on the way he himself brings them but does not make the recital because it says and thou shalt take and thou shalt bring which implies that the taking and the bringing must be performed by the same person we are therefore told that we do not take this precaution are you and Reshlakish are you true to their own principles as stated elsewhere if a man sells his field Talmud, Moskidan in the period when the law of the Jubilee is in force are you and says that he brings the first fruits and makes the recital while Reshlakish says that he brings them without making the recital are you and who says that he brings them and makes the recital takes the view that the possession of the increment is equivalent to the possession of the parent body while Reshlakish who says that he brings without making the recital takes the view that the possession of it Increment is not equivalent to the possession of the parent body. It was necessary to state the difference between Aryohanan and Reshlakish in both cases, for if it had been stated only in the latter case, I might have said that Reshlakish rules as he does there because when the purchaser buys the field, he actually has in mind only the produce, but in the other case where he has in mind the land itself, I might think that he agrees with Aryohanan. If again I had only the other case, I might think that there only Aryohanan rules in this way, but in this case he agrees with Reshlakish, hence both had to be stated. Come and here, if a man buys a tree and the soil under it, he brings the first fruits from it and makes the recital. We are speaking here of the period when the Jubilee is not observed. Come and here, if a man buys two trees in another man's field, he brings the first fruits but does not make the recital, which implies that if he buys three, he does make the recital there too. We speak of the period when the Jubilee is not observed now, however, that Arhista has stated that the controversy between Aryohanan and Reshlakish refers only to the period of the second Jubilee, but in the period of the first Jubilee, both agree that he the purchaser had to bring and recite since they still could not rely on the fields being returned. There is no difficulty. The one Aryohanan speaks of the first Jubilee and the other of the second Jubilee, shall we say that we find in the following passage the same difference between Tanaim. How do we know that if a man buys a field from his father and then sanctifies it and his father subsequently dies, it is reckoned as a field of possession because scripture says, and if he sanctifies a field which he hath bought which is not of the field of his possession, he shall give thine estimation to signifies a field which is not capable of becoming a field of possession, and we therefore accept from this rule such a one. As this which is capable of becoming a field of his possession, this is the opinion of our Judah and our Simeon. Our Meir says, From where do we know that if a man buys a field from his father and his father dies and he then subsequently sanctifies the field, it is reckoned as a field of his possession, because it says, If he sanctifies a field which he hath bought which is not of the field of his possession, this signifies a field which is not a field of possession, and we therefore accept from this. Rule such a one as this which is now a field of his possession. Now our Judah and our Simeon, while agreeing that in the case where his father died and then he sanctified the field, it is reckoned a field of possession, do not require a text to indicate this is not then the point at issue between them. This our Meir held that the possession of the increment is equivalent to the possession of the parent body, and in this case, therefore, on the death of his father, he does not inherit anything and Therefore, if his father died and he sanctified it, subsequently a text is necessary to indicate that it is a field of his possession. Whereas our Judah and our Simeon held that the possession of the increment is not equivalent to the possession of the parent body, and in this case, on the death of his father, he does inherit the field. And therefore, if he sanctifies it after the death of his father, no text is necessary to indicate that it is a field of his possession. And where a text is required is to indicate that it is a field of his possession, even when he sanctified it before the death of his father. Our Nam and B Isaac said all the same. I may still maintain that in general, our Judah and our Simeon held that the possession of the increment is equivalent to the possession of the parent body. But in this case, our Judah and our Simeon found a text which they interpreted to the contrary effect. The divine law they said might have written if he sanctifies a field which he has bought, which is not. His possession what is the force of the words which is not of the field of his possession it signifies one which is not capable of becoming the field of his possession and we accept from the rule one that is capable of becoming the field of his possession our Joseph said had Aryohan and not maintained that the possession of the increment is not equivalent to the possession of the parent body he would not have had a leg to stand on in the Beth Hamid Rash for R.C. said in the name of R. Jonathan that if brothers divide an inhe
Even if they are only lowest grade land payment from orphans can be recovered only from lowest grade land indemnification for produce consumed and for the betterment of property during wrongful tenure and payment for the maintenance by a man's heirs of his widow and daughters is not enforced from mortgage property to prevent abuses. A finder of a lost article cannot be required to take an oath to prevent abuses. Gamara compensation property of the best quality is this only an ordinance to prevent abuses. It derives from the scripture as it is written the best of his field and the best of his vineyard he shall pay. Of a reply the statement holds good only if we take the view of our Ishmael who said that according to the Torah the assessment is made on the property of the claimant of damage. We are then told here that to prevent abuses we make the assessment on the property of the defendant. What statement of our Ishmael is referred to as it has been taught the best of his field and the best of his vineyard he shall pay that is to say the best of the field of the claimant and the best of the vineyard of the claimant so our Ishmael our Akiva said the whole purpose of the text is to allow compensation for damage to be recovered from the best property of the defendant and all the more so in the case of the sanctuary now according to our Ishmael if a man's beast ate the vegetables from a rich bed he naturally repays the value of a rich bed but if it ate from a poor bed is he to repay the value of a rich one our EDB Abin said we are dealing here with a case where it ate one bed out of a number and we do not know whether it was a rich one or a poor one in this case he repays the value of the best said Rabba seeing that if where we know that it ate a poor one he repays only the value of a poor one here where we do not know is he to pay the value of a rich one does not the onus property fall on the claimant Arahavi Jacob therefore suggested Talmud Moss. Given that the case here considered is one where the best of the claimant is equal in quality to the worst of the defendant, in which case our Ishmael held that we assess on the land of the claimant, whereas our Akiva held that we assess on the land of the defendant. What is our Ishmael's reason? The word field occurs both in the earlier and the later clause, just as in the earlier clause it refers to the field of the claimant, so in the later it refers to the field of the claimant. Our Akiva on the other hand held that the words from the best of his field he shall make restitution mean from the best of him who makes restitution. What does our Ishmael say to this? He says that the Gazerisha has its lesson and the text has its lesson. The lesson of the Gazerisha is what we have said. The lesson of the text is that if the defendant has high grade and low grade land and his low grade land is not equal to the best of the claimant, he pays him from the best. Our Akiva says the whole purpose. Of the text is to allow compensation for damage to be recovered from the best property of the defendant and all the more so in the case of the sanctuary what is the meaning of all the more so in the case of the sanctuary are we to say that this rule applies where our ox has scored the ox of the sanctuary this cannot be because the divine law says if one man's ox hurt the ox of one's neighbor but not an ox of the sanctuary shall we say then that what is meant is that if a man says I take upon myself to give a mina for the repair of the temple the treasurer can come and collect it from the best of his land surely he is in no better position than a creditor and a creditor has a right to collect only from the medium property and should you contend that our Akiva holds that a creditor can collect from the best like a claimant for damages we may still object how can you draw an analogy from a private creditor who is at an advantage in that he can claim compensation for damages to the sanctuary which has no right ever to claim compensation for damages I may still say that these words refer to the case where our ox gored the ox of the sanctuary for our Akiva held the same view as our Simeon Bimanesia as it has been taught our Simeon Bimanesia says if an ox of the sanctuary gores an ox of a layman there is no liability but if the ox of a layman gores an ox of the sanctuary whether it was Tam or Muad the owner has to pay compensation in full if that is the case why should you say that our Akiva and our Ishmael differ as to what is to be done when the best of the claimant is equal to the worst of the defendant perhaps in that case both agree that we assess on the land of the claimant and their dispute here is the same as that between our Simeon Bimanesia and the rabbis our Akiva adopting the same view as our Simeon Bimanesia and our Ishmael adopting the view of the rabbis if that were the case why should our Akiva have said the whole purpose of the text etc and again what means all the more so in the case of the sanctuary and besides Arashi has told us Talmud, Moskid and B it has been taught expressly from the best of his field and the best of his vineyard he shall make restitution this means the best of the field of the claimant and the best of the vineyard of the claimant so our Ishmael our Akiba however says it means the best of the field of the defendant and the best of the vineyard of the defendant Rabbin has said we may maintain after all that the Mishnah follows our Akiba who said that according to the Torah we assess on the land of the defendant and it also follows here our Simeon whose custom it was to expound the reasons of scriptural injunctions and its later clause gives the reason for the earlier thus why is compensation for damage assessed on the best property to prevent abuses as it has been taught our Simeon said why was it laid down that compensation for damages should be paid out of the best land as a deterrent to those who plunder or Take by violence so that a man should say to himself why should I plunder or take by violence seeing that tomorrow the Beth Din will come down on my property and take my best field basing themselves on what is written in the Torah from the best of his field and the best of his vineyard he shall make restitution for that reason they laid down that compensation for damages should be assessed on the best land why did they lay down that a creditor should recover only from medium land so that a man on seeing his neighbor possessed of a fine field or a fine house should not be tempted to say I will induce him to borrow money of me so that I can get them on account of my debt for this reason they laid down that a creditor should recover only from medium land but if that is so he should be allowed to recover only from the lowest grade this would be closing the door in the face of borrowers a woman's cathuba can be collected only from land of the poorest quality so our Judah Armeir however Says from medium land also our Simeon said why did they lay down that a woman's kathuba is to be collected from poor land because a woman wants to be married more than a man wants to marry another explanation is that a woman is put away whether she will or not but a man puts her away only if he wants to how is this another explanation what it means is should you say that just as when the husband divorces the wife the rabbis provided that she should obtain a kathuba from him so when she leaves him they should provide for him a kathuba from her then I would point out that a woman is divorced whether she wants to be or not but a man divorces only if he wants to since he can always keep her waiting for a get a woman's kathuba only from land of the poorest quality marzitra the son of our and said this is the rule only where the kathuba is recovered from the orphans but from the husband himself it can be demanded out of medium property if the mission refers to orphans why does it specify a woman's kathuba seeing that the same applies to all payments as we have learned payments from orphans can be recovered only from lowest grade land are we not therefore obliged to say that the mission is referring to the husband himself in point of fact it is to the orphans and there was a reason for specifying a woman's kathuba for I might have thought that the rabbis granted her a concession in order that she might look more favorably on suitors we are therefore told that this is not so Rabbi said come and here our mayor says a woman's kathuba can also be collected from medium quality land from whom shall I say from the orphans does our mayor then not accept the rule which we have learned payment from orphans can be recovered only from the lowest grade we must say therefore that he means from the husband himself from which we can infer that in the opinion of the rabbis payment can be claimed even from the husband only in poor land no our mayor indeed also Refer to orphans and there is a special reason why in his opinion a woman's kathuba should be collected even from their medium land namely to make her favorably disposed to suitors have they said come and your compensation for damage is paid out of property of the best quality a creditor out of land of medium quality and a woman's kathuba out of land of the poorest quality collected from whom shall we say from orphans if so why only the woman's kathuba from the poorest land why not all the claims of others as well are ahabi jacob said we are dealing here with a case where a man became surety for compensation for damage due from his son for his son's debt and for his daughter-in-law's kathuba each item then follows its own rule compensation and debts which are usually paid in the lifetime of the person responsible are paid in this case also as though in the lifetime of the person responsible the woman's kathuba which is usually paid after the death of the person responsible and by whom by the orphans is paid in this case as after the death of the person responsible but cannot this rule be derived from the fact that a surety for a kathuba is not responsible for its payment we speak of a kabbalah go between this solves the problem for one who holds that a kabbalah is responsible even though the borr
has effects. The reason is that he performs a pious action and he does not cause the woman any loss. Rabbanah said, Let us look at the basis of our regulation. It is that more than a man desires to marry, the woman desires to be married. Now, if you suppose that the mission refers to orphans when it says that the woman collects from the poorest land, and the reason would be that they are orphans, is this not a refutation of Marzitra? It is Marzitra, the son of Arnaman, said in the name of Arnaman. If a claim is made from orphans on the strength of a bond given by their father, even though the best land is mentioned in it, payment can be recovered only from the worst. Abbe said the proof of this is that although a creditor has ordinarily the right to collect from medium land from orphans, he can recover only from the worst land. Said Rabbi Juhim, is this really so? According to scriptural law, a creditor can claim only from the worst land as laid down by Olaf Rola said the Torah has enacted that a creditor should collect from the worst land, for it says, Thou shalt stand without and the man, etc. What would a man naturally bring out in such a case as least valuable articles? Why then did the rabbi say that a creditor should collect from medium property so as not to place obstacles in the way of borrowers where orphans are concerned? However, they left the law as it was laid down in the Torah, but here, since according to the Torah, he can claim from the best land, I should. Say that from orphans also he can claim from the best land how can Rabba maintain the seeing that Abram of Hosey learned claims on orphans can be recovered only from their poorest land even if these are in compensation for damage and the law that compensation for damage can be claimed from the best is of the Torah we are presuming here that the best of the claimant was only equal to the worst of the defendant and are following our Ishmael who said that the law of the Torah is that we should assess on the property of the claimant but to prevent abuses the rabbis ordained that the assessment should be made on the property of the defendant and where orphans were concerned the rabbis left the law as laid down in the Torah still did not our Eliezer the Nabatean state that payment recoverable from the property of orphans can be claimed only from their worst land even if it is the best now what is meant by the words even if it is the best does it not mean even if the best is Stipulated in the bond, know what is meant by the best here is the strips of the best, even as mentioned also by Rabba. For Rabba said, if the damage was done to the worst land, the claimant recovers from the best. If to the strips of the best, he recovers from the medium where orphans, however, were concerned. The rabbis left the law is laid down in the Torah. Payment from orphans can be recovered only from the poorest land. Our Ahad boy BM, I asked, are the orphans spoken of your minors or are grown UPS also? Included that is to say, were the rabbis here taking a measure for the protection of orphans, in which case they meant it to apply only to minor orphans but not to grown UPS, or was there reason that a lender does not ordinarily take into account the risk of the debtor dying and leaving his property to his orphans so that there is no question of placing obstacles in the way of borrowers and consequently the regulation applies to grown UPS also come and hear what Abbe the elder stated this. That the orphans spoken of here mean grown UPS and a fortiori the rule applies to minors but perhaps the statement was made in connection with the administering of an oath because a grown-up is also like a child in relation to his father's affairs and this is not the rule for payment out of lowest grade land the law however is Talmud, Mosque it and be that the orphans spoken of are grown UPS and the rule applies a fortiori to minors whether in connection with an oath or with payment out of the worst land payment cannot be recovered from mortgage property when there are free assets available. Arahat boy BMI asked what is the rule in the case of a gift? Are we to say that this regulation was made for the protection of purchasers against loss and it therefore does not apply to a gift where there is no question of loss to purchasers or do we say this even in the case of a gift for if the recipient did not derive some benefit from it it would not have been given to him and therefore his loss is on the same footing as the loss of the purchaser in reply Markashi saw the son of Arhista said to Arashi come and here if a dying man says give 200 zoos to so and so 300 to so and so and 400 to so and so we do not say that one who is mentioned earlier in the deed has a superior title to one who is mentioned later consequently if a bond is produced against the donor after his death the claimant can collect from all of them if however he said give to 100 zoos to so and so and then to so and so and then to so and so we do say that whoever is mentioned earlier in the deed has a better title consequently if a bond is produced against the donor the claimant collects first from the last recipient if he has not enough he comes on to the one before him and if he has not enough to the one before him and even though so it would appear the first was given medium land and the last poor land the claimant has to collect from the poor before the Medium this shows does it not that the rabbis meant their regulation to apply to a gift also not necessarily as we may here be speaking of the payment of debts and not of a gift but the man said give he meant given payment of my debt if so we can see whose bond is prior we assume there is no bond but the passage quoted says whoever is mentioned earlier in the deed this means the deed containing his instructions or if you like I can say the reference is also to a gift and still there is no difficulty since the words he collects from the last mean only the last of the three is the ultimate loser or if you like again I can say that the gifts of all were equal indemnification for produce consumed cannot be enforced etc what is the reason said in the name of Rush because these were not mentioned in the deed of sale said our Abadula, but what of the maintenance of a woman and her daughters which is taken as written and yet the mission states that it is not enforceable, he replied. The regulation was so framed from the outset they are taken as written so far as concerns free assets, but not so far as concerns property on which there is a lien. RC also stated in the name of Aryohanan that the reason is because they were not mentioned in the deed set R0 to RC, but what of the maintenance of wife and daughters, which also is taken as written, and yet the mission states that it is not enforceable, he replied. The regulation was so framed from the outset they are taken as written where free assets are concerned, but not where there is a lien on the property. Arhanan, however, said the reason is because they are not of a definite amount. The question was raised in order that a debt may be enforceable from property on which there is a lien. Does Arhanan require that it should be both definite and written down? Talmud, Mosque, or is it sufficient that it should be definite even without being written down? Come and hear it. Has been stated if a man dies and leaves two daughters and a son, and if the first daughter took her tenth of the property before the son died, but the second had not time to take her tenth before the son died, or Yohanan says that the second has forfeited her tenth. Our Hannah remarked to him the rabbis went even further than this by laying down that payment may be enforced for marriage provision, though not for maintenance. And how can you say then that the second forfeits her tenth now? Marriage provision is a definite sum, but it is not written down, and we see that our Hannah says that it is enforceable. There is a special reason in the case of marriage provision it gets talked about, and therefore it is as good as written. Our Hunabi Mano raised an objection from the following if both husbands died, the daughters are maintained from free assets, but she is maintained also from mortgage property because she is in the position of a creditor. We presume that in this case. There was a formal transfer if that is the case then the daughters also should draw on mortgage property we presume that the transfer was made on behalf of the one but not of the others on what ground do you decide thus because the daughter of his wife who was already born at the time of the transfer can benefit from the transfer but his own daughter who was not yet born at the time of the transfer cannot benefit from it but are we not to assume that both had already been born at the time of the transfer and if you ask how can this be I answer supposing he had divorced her and then taken her back no what we must say is that his own daughter who is entitled to maintenance on the strength of the stipulation of the Beth Din derives no benefit from the transfer whereas his wife's daughter who is not entitled to maintenance on the strength of the stipulation of the Beth Din does derive benefit from the transfer is then his own daughter to be in an inferior position no sense his Daughter is entitled to maintenance on the strength of the stipulation of the Beth Din. We presume that at his death he gave her a purse of money. Come and hear our Nathan says when does this rule about consumable produce etc. apply when the purchase of the second preceded the betterment of the first. But if the betterment of the first preceded the purchase of the second the former can recover from property on which there is a lien. We see therefore that the reason is because he did not improve the field first and not because the produce is not mentioned in the deed or is not a definite sum. This is a point on which Tanaim also differed as it has been taught indemnification for produce consumed and for betterment of land and outlay for maintenance of widow and daughters cannot be enforced from property on which there is a lien to prevent abuses since they are not written in any deed. Our Jose said what prevention of abuses is there here seeing that they are not defin
of his own plea the sages however say that he is on the same footing as one who restores a lost article and he is exempt from an oath but does our Elizabeth B. Jacob not hold that one who restores a lost article is exempt perhaps that he speaks of a case where the claim is made by a minor does any weight attach to the claim of a minor seeing that we have learned an oath is not administered on the claim of a deaf mute and idiot or a minor by minor our Elizabeth means here a grown up and the reason why he calls him minor is because in respect of the affairs of his father he is no better than a minor if that is the case why does he say on account of his own plea it is the plea of someone else he means the plea of someone else and his own admission but all charges can be called the plea of someone else and his own admission the truth is that they are Elizabeth and the rabbis differ over the point raised by rabbi for rabbi said why did the Torah lay down that one who admits part of the charge Against him should take an oath that he is not liable for the rest. The presumption is that a man will not be brazen enough in the presence of his creditor to deny a debt outright. Now this man would like to deny the whole, and the reason why he does not deny the whole is because he is not brazen enough. On the other hand, he would also like to admit the whole, and the reason why he does not do so is to gain time as he thinks to himself, When I have money, I will pay him the all merciful. Therefore, said impose an oath on him so that he will admit the whole. Now our Eliezer was of opinion that whether he is dealing with the lender himself or with his son, the debtor would not be brazen enough to deny the debt outright, and therefore in neither case is he like one who restores a lost article. The rabbis, however, were of opinion that he would not be brazen enough to deny the debt to the creditor himself, but he would to his son, hence since he is not so brazen, he is regarded as one restoring. A lost article Talmud, mosque in a mission, a orphan's board with a householder or if their father appointed a guardian for them it is his duty to tie their produce. A guardian who was appointed by the father of the orphans is required to take an oath when they come of age but if he was appointed by the Beth Din he need not take an oath. Abbas says that the rule is the reverse Gemara. A contradiction was pointed out between this mission and the following thus he also shall offer. That means to say you and not partners, you and not medias, you and not guardians, you and not one who tithes from property, not his own. Our history replied there is no contradiction in the one case the produce referred to is meant for consumption and the other for storing. So it has been taught guardians set aside terima and tithe from the produce of their wards which is meant for consumption and not for storing. They can also sell on their behalf cattle slaves male and female houses fields and Vineyards in order to purchase food with the money but not to put it aside they can also sell for them produce wine oil and flour to purchase other food with the money but not to set it aside they can make for them a lulab and willow a sukkah and fringes and anything else involving a defined outlay this includes a chauffeur and they can buy for them a scroll of the law phylacteries and mezuzah and anything involving a defined outlay which includes a meal they cannot however undertake on their behalf to give charity or to redeem captives or to do anything involving an unspecified outlay which includes comforting mourners guardians are not allowed to enter into lawsuits concerning the property of orphans or to entail obligations on it or to secure benefit for it why can they not secure benefit it means to entail obligations for the purpose of procuring benefits for the property of orphans the guardians are not at liberty to sell a distant field of their wards in order to Redeem one that is nearby or to sell in a bad year with the idea of redeeming in a good one since there is a risk that the crops may be struck with blight. The guardians are not at liberty to sell fields and buy slaves with the proceeds but they can sell slaves and buy fields with the proceeds. Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says that they may not even sell slaves and buy fields since there is a risk that they will not be left in peaceable possession. The guardians are not empowered to emancipate slaves. They may however sell them to others who can emancipate them. Rabbi says I maintain that the slave may pay his own purchase money and become free since then the owner as it were sells him to himself. The guardian must give an account of his guardianship at its close. Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel however says that this is not necessary. Women slaves and minors should not be made guardians if however the father of the orphans chooses to appoint one he is at liberty to do so. There was a certain Guardian in the neighborhood of Armeir who was selling land and buying slaves with the proceeds, but Armeir forbade him. A voice said to him in a dream, I want to destroy and will you build even so? However, he paid no heed, saying, Dreams are of no effect either one way or the other. There were two men who, being egged on by Satan, quarreled with one another. Every Friday afternoon, Armeir once came to that place and stopped them from quarreling their Friday afternoons when he had finally made peace. Between them, he heard Satan say, Alas for this man whom Armeir has driven from his house. A certain guardian in the neighborhood of Arjashu Abili by was selling land and buying cattle with the proceeds. The rabbi said nothing to him, being of the same mind as our Jose, as it has been taught. Our Jose said, All my life I have never called my wife my wife, nor my ox my ox, but my wife my house and my ox my field. Certain orphans who boarded with an old woman had a cow which she took and sold their relatives. Appealed to Arnam and saying what business had she to sell it he said to them we learned if orphans board with the householder but they said the cow is now worth more than she sold it for he replied it has become more valuable in the possession of the purchaser but they said they have not yet received the money if so he replied we can apply the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi following Samuel for Arhanel Abi Edi said in the name of Samuel that the property of orphans is on the same footing as that of the sanctuary and is not transferred save on the payment of money the wine of Rabbanach bought the orphan was pulled by purchasers who bought it at four zoos the cast the price of wine subsequently rose so that it was worth six zoos the case was brought before Arnam and who said here the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi applies for Arhanel Abi Edi said in the name of Samuel that the property of orphans is on the same footing as that of the sanctuary and is not transferred save through money payment if Purchasers have pulled the produce of orphans without paying and the price subsequently rises the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi applies if the price falls and surely a layman should not be more privileged than the sanctuary if vendors have sold produce to orphans by pulling and the price subsequently rose then we say that the layman should not be more privileged than the sanctuary if the price falls the students were inclined to think that here the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi would apply but our Shisha the son of Aridi said to them this would be detrimental to them since they may one day require produce and no one will sell to them unless they pay money down if the orphans give money for produce without taking delivery and the price subsequently falls then we say that a layman should not be more privileged than the sanctuary if it rises the students were inclined to think that the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi would apply but our Shisha Bedi said to them this might be detrimental to them Talmud, Moskid and B. Since the sellers would be able to say to them your wheat has been burnt in the storehouse if purchasers have given money to orphans for produce and the price rises before delivery has been made then we say that the layman should not be more privileged than the sanctuary if the price falls then the students thought that here the rule of Arhanel Abi Edi would apply but Arshisha the son of Aridi said to them this might be detrimental to them for they might sometimes want money and no one would give them before they delivered the produce Arashi said I and Arkahan assigned as witnesses to the deed of sale of the mother of the orphans EIRA who sold some land in order to pay the poll tax without giving public notice for the Nihardians have ruled that to raise money for the poll tax for food and for burial land may be sold without public notice Amrum the Dyer was the guardian of some orphans the relatives came to Arnam and complained that he was buying clothes for himself from the property of the orphans he said he dresses so in order to command more respect but they said he eats and drinks out of their money as he is not a man of means I would suggest he replied that he had a valuable fine but they said he is spoiling their property he said bring evidence that he is spoiling it and I will remove him for our our colleague said in the name of Rabbi the guardian spoils the orphans property we remove him for it has been stated if a guardian spoils the property Arhuna says in the name of Rabbi that we remove him while the school of Arshila say that we do not remove him the law however is that we remove him a guardian who was appointed by the father of the orphans is required to take an oath what is the reason if he were not to derive some benefit from this he would not become a guardian and he will not be deterred by the requirement of an oath if however the Beth didn't appointed him he is not required to take an oath it Reason is that he assumes the office only to oblige the Beth Din and if an oath is to be imposed on him he would refuse. Abbas says that the rule is the reverse. What is the reason if the Beth Din appoint him he is to take an oath because for the sake of the benefit he derives
One who says it means mixing not accept the view that it means making a libation he will tell you the latter offense involves a heavier penalty what does the other say to this even as our Jeremiah for our Jeremiah said that he robber requires possession from the moment he lifts the wine from the ground whereas he does not become liable to capital punishment until he actually pours out the wine why does the one who says that it means making a libation not accept the view that it means mixing he will tell you mixing wine Talmud Moskidan is practically the same as mixing Jeremiah what says the other to this he says that the penalty for this is of the nature of a fine and we do not base rules for imposing fines on mere inference but those who hold that the imposition of fines can be based on mere inference why do they require all the items to be specified they are all necessary for if the mission had mentioned only one who renders footsteps unclean then supposing it Food was terima I would say that the reason why compensation has to be made is because he spoils it completely and if the food was not sacred because it is forbidden to cause uncleanness to non-sacred food in Eretz Israel but one who mixes ordinary food with terima I should say need not make compensation again if one who mixes ordinary food with terima had been mentioned I should say the reason is because this is a common occurrence but in the case of one who renders foodstuffs unclean which is not a common occurrence I should say the rule does not apply if again both one who renders unclean and one who mixes had been specified I should say the reason with them for requiring compensation is that no heavier penalty is involved but I should not apply this rule to one who makes a libation where a heavier penalty is involved therefore we are told that we apply here the principle of our Jeremiah but if we accept the teaching learned by the father of our Abin, at first they said the one who renders unclean and the one who makes a libation but later they added also the one who mixes why do I require all the items they are still necessary for if only the one who renders unclean had been mentioned I should have said that the reason is because no greater penalty is involved but I should not have applied the rule to one who makes a libation where a greater penalty is involved if again the one who makes a libation had been mentioned I should have said this was because the stuff is spoiled entirely but I should not have applied the rule to one who renders unclean where the stuff is not spoiled entirely if again these two had been mentioned I should say the reason is because the loss involved is considerable but I should not apply the rule to one who mixes where the loss involved is small hence all were necessary as said the rule of the Torah is that one who commits these offenses whether inadvertently or deliberately is liable to pay compensation the reason is that damage of which there is no visible sign is legally accounted as damage why then did the rabbis lay down that if one does these things inadvertently he is not liable so that they should tell the victims if that is the reason then one who does these things presumptuously should also be quit how can you think so seeing that he deliberately tries to injure him will he not certainly tell him or Yohanan said that the rule of the Torah is that whether one commits these offenses innocently or deliberately he is not liable the reason being that damage of which there is no visible sign is not legally accounted damage why then did the rabbis ordain that one who does them presumptuously is liable so that it should not become a common thing for a man to go and render unclean the footsteps of his neighbor and say I have no liability we have learned if priests render the sacrifice pickle in the sanctuary if they did so presumptuously they are liable to make compensation and in Connection there with it was taught to prevent abuses. Now, if you hold that damage which is not visible is legally accounted damage, then it should say if they did so innocently, they are not liable to prevent abuses. This, in fact, is what is meant if they act presumptuously, they are liable. From which we infer that if they acted innocently, they are not liable to prevent abuses. Our Eliezer raised the following as an objection: If one does work with the waters of purification and with the heifer of purification, he is exempt before the earthly court, but liable before the heavenly court. Now, if you maintain that damage which is invisible is legally accounted as damage, then he should be liable also before the earthly court. He raised the objection, and he himself answered it. Thus, the work referred to in the case of the heifer was that he brought it into the stall with the intention of letting it suck and then threshing with it. In the case of the water, the work referred to was that he. Balanced weights against it, but has not Rabbah said that water of purification Talmud, Moskid and B Talmud, Moskid and B against which weights have been balanced is not disqualified. There is no contradiction. The one Rabbah speaks of weighing against the water, the other of weighing in it. When he weighs in it, he is doing work with it, and if damage which is intangible is legally accounted damage, he should be punishable. Also, in a human court, we must say, therefore, that both speak of weighing against the water, and still there is no contradiction. The one our Eliezer speaks of where he forgot for the moment that it was water of purification, and the other of where he did not forget. Our Papa raised an objection from the following if a man robbed another of a coin which afterwards was withdrawn from circulation or terima which became unclean or leaven, and the Passover intervened, he can say to him, Here is your property, take it now if you say that damage of which there is no visible. Sign is legally accounted as damage. This man is a robber and ought to pay the value in full. This is a refutation. May we say that Tanaim also differ on this point? For it was taught if one defile another's footsteps or mixes terima with them or pours a libation from his wine, whether inadvertently or deliberately, he is liable to make compensation. So our Meir Arjuna says if inadvertently he is not liable, if deliberately he is liable, is not the point at issue between them. This that the one authority holds that damage of which there is no visible sign is legally accounted damage, while the other holds that it is not legally accounted damage. Arnam and B. Isaac said both agree that damage of which there is no visible sign is not legally accounted damage. And here the point at issue between them is whether the inadvertent act should be penalized on account of the presumptuous one. One holding that the innocent act is penalized on account of the presumptuous one, and the other that. It is not so penal as the contradiction was now pointed out between two statements of Armadir and also between two statements of Arjuda for it has been taught if one cooks food on Sabbath if by inadvertence he may eat it but if deliberately he may not so Armadir Arjuda says if it was cooked inadvertently he may eat it after the expiration of Sabbath but if deliberately he may never eat it or Yohan and Hasandler says if it was cooked inadvertently it may be eaten after the expiration of it. Sabbath by others but not by the one who cooked it if deliberately it may never be eaten either by him or by others one statement of Armadir seems to contradict another and one statement of Arjuda seems to contradict another between the two statements of Armadir there is no contradiction where he imposes a fine is for innocently breaking a regulation of the rabbis but not for breaking a rule of the Torah but pouring a libation is forbidden by the Torah and yet he imposes a fine for doing so. Innocently, this is because of the special seriousness of the sin of idolatry between the statements of Arjuna. There is no contradiction where he imposes no fine is for breaking a rule of the rabbis, but for breaking a rule of the Torah, he imposes a fine, but pouring a libation is forbidden by the Torah, and he imposes no fine for doing so because of the seriousness of the sin of idolatry. People keep clear of it, but even in respect of rules of the Torah, one statement of Armadir was contrasted with another, for it has been taught if a man plants a tree on Sabbath, if inadvertently he may keep it, but if deliberately it must be uprooted. If in the sabbatical year, however, whether he plants it inadvertently or deliberately, it must be uprooted. This is the ruling of Armadir. Arjuna says in the sabbatical year, if inadvertently he may keep it, but if deliberately he must uproot it, if planted on Sabbath, whether inadvertently or deliberately he must uproot it while you are looking for. Contradictions why not point one out in the statement itself see now the one planting on Sabbath and the other planting in the sabbatical year are both forbidden by the Torah why then should there be a difference between them but the reason for that you must say is as was taught said Armadir why do I say that if he plants inadvertently on Sabbath he may keep it and if deliberately he must uproot it whereas if he plants in the sabbatical year whether inadvertently or deliberately he must uproot it because Israel reckon from the sabbatical year Talmud, Moskidim but they do not reckon from Sabbath an alternative reason is that Israel are suspect with regard to the sabbatical year but not with regard to Sabbath why give an alternative reason what he meant was this should you object that it sometimes happens that the thirtieth day before the new year of the sabbatical year falls on Sabbath so that if he plants on that day he has a year before the new year but otherwise not that I give you an alternative reason that Israel are suspect with regard to the sabbatical year but not with regard to Sabbath between the statements of Arjuna there is also no contradiction since in the district of Arjuna the sabbatical year was regarded as very important for when a certain man there called after another you are a stranger and your mother was a stranger he retorted
Semechus said in the name of Armaeur that if he repaid without knowing this is accounted a full restitution but if deliberately it is not accounted a full restitution whereas the sages say that in either case it is full restitution but he has still to pay him clean non-sacred food on this Arahasan of Rik said that Armaeur and the sages differ here on the question whether the innocent act should be penalized on account of the presumptuous Armaeur holding that the innocent act is not penalized on account of the presumptuous one and the sages holding that it is as this reasoning sound here the man wants to pay and shall we get up and find him come and here if the blood of a sacrifice has become unclean and was yet sprinkled on the altar if it was done without knowing then the sacrifice has been accepted for the bringer of the sacrifice but if deliberately the sacrifice has not been accepted Armaeur can reply is there any comparison there the man really desires to make Atonement and shall we get up and penalize him come and here if a man separates tithe on Sabbath if inadvertently the food may be eaten but if deliberately it may not be eaten is there any comparison there the man is trying to do his duty and shall we get up and penalize him come and here if a man dips vessels on Sabbath if inadvertently they may be used but if deliberately they may not be used is there any comparison there the man is desirous of purifying his vessels and shall we get up and find him a contradiction was also pointed out between two statements of our Judah with regard to rules of the rabbis for it has been taught Talmud, Moskid and B if these nuts of uncircumcision fell among others and were then broken whether the act was done inadvertently or deliberately they are not merged in the mass this is the ruling of our Meir and our Judah our Jose and our Simeon however say that if it was done inadvertently they are merged but if deliberately they are not now here is a case where according to the rule of the Torah the forbidden element loses its identity if its proportion is not more than 1 to 2 and it is the rabbis who decreed that the proportion must be less than 1 to 200 and yet our Judah imposes the line in the case of innocent transgression our Judah there is influenced by the special consideration that without this penalty the offender may act with guile a contradiction was also pointed out between two statements of our Jose for we have learned if a sapling of uncircumcision or of the mixed plants of the vineyard becomes mixed up with other saplings its fruit should not be gathered but if gathered it becomes merged in 201 times the quantity of permitted fruit provided however that the gathering was not done with that purpose in view our Jose says even if it was gathered deliberately it is merged in 201 times its own quantity this is no difficulty since with reference to this it has been Recorded Rabbah said the presumption is that a man does not make his whole vineyard forbidden for the sake of a single sapling so too when Rabin came from Palestine he said in the name of Aryohan and the presumption is that a man will not make his whole vineyard forbidden for the sake of a single sapling Mishnah priests who made the flesh in the sanctuary pickle if they did so deliberately are liable to pay compensation tomorrow our rabbis taught if a man is helping another to prepare ritually clean things and he says to him the clean things that I have prepared with you have been defiled or if he is helping him with sacrifices and he says to him the sacrifices with which I have been helping you have been rendered pickle his word is taken if however he says the clean things which I was assisting you to prepare on such and such a day have become unclean or the sacrifices with which I was assisting you on such and such a day have been rendered pickle his word is not taken wisely Rule different in the first case from that of the second Abbe replied so long as it is in his power to do again what he says he has done his word is taken Rab said where we do not believe is if for instance he came across him and said nothing to him and then came across him again and told him a certain man said to another the clean things which I helped you to prepare on such and such a day have become unclean he applied to RMI who said to him according to the strict letter of the law. You need not believe him or as he observed to him Rabbi this is what you say but our Yohanan has distinctly said in the name of our Jose what can I do seeing that the Torah has declared him credible where has it declared him credible our Isaac Bebus and replied the proof is from the high priest on the day of atonement since if he says that his sacrifice was pickle we believe him now how do we know that he made it pickle when he was doing the service seeing that it is written and there shall be no Man in the tent of meeting the reason must therefore be that he is credible but perhaps this is because we heard him make it pickle if he were not credible we could not believe him even if we heard him since he might have said this after performing the ceremony but perhaps it means that we saw him through the pispas this is indeed a difficulty a certain man appeared before our MI and said to him in a scroll of the law which I have written for so and so I have not written the names of God. With proper intention he asked him who has the scroll he replied the purchaser whereupon he said to him your word is good to deprive you of your fee but it is not good to spoil a scroll of the law said our Jeremiah to him granted that he has lost his fee for the names is he to lose it for the whole of the scroll he replied yes because a scroll in which the names of God have not been written with proper intention is not worth anything but cannot he go over them with a pen and so sanctify them. What authority would allow this not we would say our Judah for we have learned suppose the scribe had to write the tetragrammaton and he intended instead to write Yehuda Judah and he made a mistake and left out the Daleth he can go over it with a pen and sanctify it so our Judah the sages however say that this name is not of the best you may even say that he is in accord with our Judah for our Judah would allow this only in the case of one mention of the name but not throughout a whole scroll. Because it would make it look bizarre a certain man came before our Rabbah saying I have written a scroll of the law for so and so but did not prepare the parchments for the purpose he asked him who has the scroll he replied the purchaser he said to him since your word is good to deprive you of your fee it is also good to spoil the scroll Talmud, Moskid and what is the difference between this case and that of our MI in that case it might be argued that the scribe mistakenly adopted the view. Of our Jeremiah, but here since he stakes the whole of his fee and yet comes and tells, we presume that he is telling the truth. Mission our Yohanan Bigajada testified that a deaf mute girl who has been given in marriage by her father can be put away with a get and that a minor orphan daughter of a lay Israelite married to a priest can eat of a terima and that if she dies, her husband inherits her and that if a beam which has been wrongfully appropriated is built into a palace, restitution for it may be made in money so as not to put obstacles in the way of penitence and that a sin offering which has been wrongfully obtained so long as this is not known to many makes expiation to prevent loss to the altar. Gemara Rabbah said from the testimony of our Yohanan Bigajada, we learned that if a man said to the witnesses to the get, see this get which I am about to give to her, my wife, and then he said to his wife, take this bond, the divorce is valid for did not our Yohanan Bigajada affirm that the Consent of the wife is not necessary so here we do not require her knowledge surely this is obvious it required to he stated because you might have thought that his saying to her take this bond rendered the get void robber therefore teaches us that if he had meant to annul it he would have said so to the witnesses and the reason why he spoke so to the wife was because he was ashamed to call it to get that a minor orphan daughter of a lay Israelite a deaf mute woman however according to this cannot eat what is the reason as a precaution against a deaf mute priest giving a deaf mute woman terima to eat and suppose she does she would only be like a child eating forbidden meat it is a precaution against the possibility of a deaf mute priest giving terima to a wife in possession of her faculties but allow him at least to give her terima which is such only by the rule of the rabbis this is a precaution against the risk of her eating terima which is such according to the Torah and that if a beam wrongfully appropriated has been built into a palace the rabbis taught if a man wrongfully takes a beam and builds it into a palace Beth Shammai say that he must demolish the whole palace and restore the beam to its owner Beth Hillel however say that the latter can claim only the money value of the beam so as not to place obstacles in the way of penitence that a sin offering which has been wrongfully obtained will said according to the rule of the Torah whether the fact is generally known or not the offering does not make expiation the reason being that renunciation does not of itself confer ownership on the robber why then was it laid down that if the fact is not known the offering is expiatory so that the priests should not be grieved said the rabbis to Allah but our mission says to prevent loss to the altar he replied to them when the priests are grieved the altar is not attended to Rab Judah however said according to the rule of the Torah whether the fact of its having been wrongfully acquired is known or not known the offering is expiatory the reason being that renunciation does of itself confer ownership on the robber Talmud, Moskid and B.Y. then was it laid down that if the fact is known it is not expiatory in order that people should not say that the altar is fed from the proceeds of robbery if we accept Allah's view we quite understand why the
Fivefold and with reference to this it was taught if after dedication he should kill the animal outside the precincts his penalty is Kareth. Now if you say that renunciation does not of itself confer ownership on the robber how does Kareth come in? Arshezbi replied it means the Kareth decreed by the rabbis they laughed at him is there such a thing they said as Kareth decreed by the rabbis said robber to them when a great man has said something do not laugh at him he means Kareth which comes to him through their regulation for it was the rabbis who declared it to be in his possession so that he might be liable for it robber further said what I should like to know is this when the rabbis declared him to be the owner did they mean this to apply from the time of stealing or from the time of sanctifying what practical difference does it make it makes a difference in respect of the fleece and the young one is the Lord, then answered his own question saying it is reasonable to Suppose that it is from the time that he sanctified them so that a sinner should not profit from his offense mission there was no Sakaricon in Judea for those killed in war as from the termination of the slaughter of the war there has been Sakaricon there how does this rule apply if a man buys a field from the Sakaricon and then buys it again from the original owner his purchase is void but if he buys it first from the original owner and then from the Sakaricon it is valid if a man buys a piece of a married woman's property from the husband and then buys it again from the wife the purchase is void but if he buys it first from the wife and then from the husband it is valid this was the ruling of the first mission of the succeeding Beth Din however laid down that if a man buys property from the Sakaricon he had to give the original owner a quarter of the value THS however is only the case when the original owner is not in a position to buy it himself but if he is he has a Right a preemption rabbi assembled the Beth Din and they decided by vote that if the property had been in the hands of the Sakaricon twelve months whosoever first purchased it acquired the title but he had to give a quarter of the price to the original owner Gemara if there was no Sakaricon for those killed in the war is it possible that there should have been after the termination of the war Rab Judah said it means that the rule of Sakaricon was not applied for RC has stated that the Roman government issued three successive decrees the first was that whoever did not kill a Jew on finding him should himself be put to death the second was that whoever killed a Jew should pay for Zeus the last was that whoever killed a Jew should himself be put to death hence in the first two periods the Jew being in danger of his life would determine to transfer his property to the Sakaricon but in the last period he would say to himself let him take it today tomorrow I will sue him for it or Yohanan said what is illustrative of the verse happy is the man that feareth always but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief the destruction of Jerusalem came through a Kamza and the Bar Kamza the destruction of Tur Malka came through a Kakhetah and the destruction of Bethar came through the shaft of a letter the destruction of Jerusalem came through a Kamza and the Bar Kamza in this way a certain man had a friend Kamza and an enemy Bar Kamza he once made a party and said to his servant go and bring Kamza the man went and brought Bar Kamza when the man who gave the party found him there he said see you tell tales about me what are you doing here get out said the other since I am here let me stay and I will pay you for whatever I eat and drink Talmud Mosque and he said I won't then let me give you half the cost of the party no said the other then let me pay for the whole party he still said no and he took him by the hand and put him out said the other since the rabbis were sitting there and did not stop him this shows that they agreed with him I will go and inform against them to the government he went and said to the emperor the Jews are rebelling against you he said how can I tell he said to him send them an offering and see whether they will offer it on the altar so he sent with him a fine calf while on the way he made a blemish on its upper lip or as some say on the white of its eye in a place where we Jews counted a blemish but they do not the rabbis were inclined to offer it in order not to offend the government said our Zechariah be to them people will say that blemished animals are offered on the altar they then proposed to kill Bar so that he should not go and inform against them but our Zechariah be said to them is one who makes a blemish on consecrated animals to be put to death our Yohanan thereupon remarked through the scrupulousness of our Zechariah be our house has been destroyed our Temple burnt and we ourselves exiled from our land. He the emperor sent against the Nero the Caesar as he was coming. He shot an arrow towards the east and it fell in Jerusalem. He then shot one towards the west and it again fell in Jerusalem. He shot towards all four points of the compass and each time it fell in Jerusalem. He said to a certain boy, Repeat to me the last verse of scripture you have learned. He said, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. He said, The Holy One, blessed be he, desires to lay waste his house and to lay the blame on me. So he ran away and became a proselyte and our mayor was descended from him. He then sent against them Vespasian the Caesar who came and besieged Jerusalem for three years. There were in it three men of great wealth, Nachman, Begorian, Ben Kalbishavo, and Ben Sitzes Hakseth. Nachman, Begorian was so called because the sun continued shining for his sake. Ben Kalbishavo was so called because one would go into his house. Hungry as a dog, Caleb, and come out full of the abend, Sitsis Hakseth was so called because his fringes, Sitsis, used to trail on cushions. Keseth, others say he derived the name from the fact that his seed ties was among those of the nobility of Rome. One of these said to the people of Jerusalem, I will keep them in wheat, and Barley a second said, I will keep them in wine oil, and Saul the third said, I will keep them in wood. The rabbis considered the offer of wood the most generous since Arhista used to hand all his keys to his servants, say that of the wood for Arhista used to say, A storehouse of wheat requires sixty stores of wood for fuel. These men were in a position to keep the city for twenty one years. The Berean I were then in the city. The rabbis said to them, Let us go out and make peace with them. The Romans they would not let them, but on the contrary said, Let us go out and fight them. The rabbis said, You will not succeed. They then rose up and burnt the stores of wheat. And Barley so that a famine ensued Martha the daughter of Boethias was one of the richest women in Jerusalem she sent her man servant out saying go and bring me some fine flour by the time he went it was sold out he came and told her there is no fine flour but there is white flour she then said to him go and bring me some by the time he went he found the white flour sold out he came and told her there is no white flour but there is dark flour she said to him go and bring me some by the time he went it was sold out he returned and said to her there is no dark flour but there is barley flour she said go and bring me some by the time he went this was also sold out she had taken off her shoes but she said I will go out and see if I can find anything to eat some dung stuck to her foot and she died Rabbi Yohanan Bezakai applied to her the verse the tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground some report that she ate a fig left by Arzotic and became sick and died for Arzotic observed fast for forty years in order that Jerusalem might not be destroyed and he became so thin that when he ate anything the food could be seen as it passed through his throat when he wanted to restore himself they used to bring him a fig and he used to suck the juice and throw the rest away when Martha was about to die she brought out all her gold and silver and threw it in the street saying what is the good of this to me thus giving effect to the verse they shall cast their silver in the streets Abbasikra the head of the Berean I in Jerusalem was the son of the sister of Rabbi Yohanan Bezakai the latter sent to him saying come to visit me privately when he came he said to him how long are you going to carry on in this way and kill all the people with starvation he replied what can I do if I say a word to them they will kill me he said devise some plan for me to escape perhaps I shall be able to save a little he said to him pretend to be ill and let everyone come to inquire about you bring something evil smelling and put it by you so that they will say you are dead let then your disciples get under your bed but no other so that they shall not notice that you are still light since they know that a living being is lighter than a corpse he did so and our Eliezer went under the beer from one side and our Joshua from the other when they reached the door some men wanted to put a lance through the beer he said to them shall the Romans say they have pierced their master they wanted to give it a push he said to them shall they say that they pushed their master they opened a town gate for him and he got out when he reached the Romans he said peace to you O king peace to you O king he Vespasian said your life is forfeit on two counts one because I am not a king and you call me king and again if I am a king why did you not come to me before now he replied as for your saying that you are not a king Talmud Mosque and be in truth you are a king since if you were not a king Jerusalem would not be delivered into your hand as it is written and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one mighty one is an epithet applied only to a king as it is written and their mighty one shall be of themselves etc and Lebanon refers to the
said to him, Let them the Jews off this time. He, however, thought that so much he would not grant, and so even a little would not be saved. How did the physicians heal Arzadok the first day? They let him drink water in which bran had been soaked on the next day, water in which there had been coarse meal on the next day, water in which there had been flour, so that his stomach expanded little by little. This patient sent Titus, who said, Where is their God, the rock in whom they trusted? This was a wicked. Titus, who blasphemed and insulted heaven, what did he do? He took a harlot by the hand and entered the Holy of Holies and spread out a scroll of the law and committed a sin on it. He then took a sword and slashed the curtain, miraculously blood spurted out, and he thought that he had slain himself, as it says, Thine adversaries have roared in the midst of thine assembly. They have set up their ensigns for signs. Abahain and said, Who is a mighty one like unto the Oya, who is like the mighty in self? Restraint that thou didst hear the blaspheming and insults of that wicked man and keep silent in the school of our Ishmael. It was taught who is like the among the gods, Elim, who is like the among the dumb ones. Elamim Titus further took the curtain and shaped it like a basket and brought all the vessels of the sanctuary and put them in it and then put them on board ship to go and triumph with them in the city as it says, and with all I saw the wicked buried and they that come to the grave end. They that had done right went away from the holy place and were forgotten in the city. Red not Kabarim buried, but Kabuzim collected red not Vaish Teku and were forgotten, but Vaish Debehu and triumphed. Some say that Kabarim can be retained because even things that were buried were disclosed to them. A gale sprang up at sea which threatened to wreck him. He said, Apparently, the power of the God of these people is only over water. When Pharaoh came, he drowned him in water. When Sisera came, he drowned him in water. He is also trying to drown me in water. If he is really mighty, let him come up on the dry land and fight with me. A voice went forth from heaven saying, Sinner, son of sinner, descendant of Esau, the sinner, I have a tiny creature in my world called a gnat. Why is it called a tiny creature? Because it has an orifice for taking in, but not for excreting. Go up on the dry land and make war with it. When he landed, the gnat came and entered his nose and it knocked against his brain for. Seven years one day as he was passing a blacksmith had heard the noise of the hammer and stopped he said I see there is a remedy so every day they brought a blacksmith who hammered before him if he was a non-Jew they gave him four Zeus if he was a Jew they said it is enough that you see the suffering of your enemy this went on for thirty days but then the creature got used to it it has been taught our Phineas Biruba said I was in company with the notables of Rome and when he died they split open his skull and found there something like a sparrow two cells in weight eight and it taught like a young doe two pounds in weight Abbe said we have it on record that its beak was of brass and its claws of iron when he died he said burn me and scatter my ashes over the seven seas so that the god of the Jews should not find me and bring me to trial Uncle son of Colonicos was the son of Titus's sister he had a mind to convert himself to Judaism he went and raised Titus from the dead by magical arts. And asked him who was most in repute in the other world, he replied, Israel, what then he said about joining them. He said, Their observances are burdensome, and you will not be able to carry them out. Go and attack them in that world, and you will be at the top as it is written, her adversaries are become the head, etc. Whoever harasses Israel becomes head. He asked him, Talmud, Mosque, and what is your punishment in the other world? He replied, What decree for myself? Every day my ashes are collected. And sentence is passed on me, and I am burnt, and my ashes are scattered over the seven seas. He then went and raised Balaam by incantations. He asked him who is in repute in the other world. He replied, Israel, what then he said about joining them? He replied, Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. He then asked, What is your punishment? He replied, With boiling hot semen. He then went and raised by incantations the sinners of Israel. He asked him who is in repute in the other world they replied Israel what about joining them they replied seek their welfare seek not their harm whoever touches them touches the apple of his eye he said what is your punishment they replied with boiling hot excrement since a master has said whoever mocks at the words of the sages is punished with boiling hot excrement observe the difference between the sinners of Israel and the prophets of the other nations who worship idols it has been taught note from this incident how serious a thing it is to put a man to shame for God is caused the cause of Barkhamza and destroyed his house and burnt his temple through a cock and a hen tur Malka was destroyed how it was the custom that when a bride and bridegroom were being escorted a cock and a hen were carried before them as if to say be fruitful and multiply like fowls one day a band of Roman soldiers passed by and took the animals from them so the Jews fell on them and beat them so they went and reported to the emperor that the Jews were rebelling and he marched against them. There came against them one Bardarama who was able to jump a mile and slaughtered them. The emperor took his crown and placed it on the ground, saying, Sovereign of all the world, may it please thee not to deliver me and my kingdom into the hands of one man. Bardarama was tripped up by his own utterance as he said, Hast not thou, O God, cast us off, and thou goest not forth, O God, with our hosts. But David also said, Thus David wondered if it could be so. He went into a privy and a snake came and he dropped his gut from fright and died. The emperor said, Since a miracle has been wrought for me, I will let them off this time. So he left them alone and went away. They began to dance about and eat and drink and they lit so many lamps that the impress of a seal could be discerned by their light a mile away from the place. Said the emperor, Are the Jews making merry over me? And he again invaded them. Or said, Three hundred thousand men with drawn swords. Went into Tur Malka and slaughtered for three days and three nights while on the other side dancing and feasting was going on and one did not know about the other. The Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and hath not pitted when Rabin came. He said in the name of our Yohanan, these are the sixty thousand myriads of cities which King Jene had in the king's mountain for our Judah. Said in the name of our sea, King Jene had sixty myriads of cities in the king's mountain and in Egypt. Then was a population as large as that of the Exodus, save in three of them which had double as many. These were Farbish, Farshalim, and Fardikre. The first was called Farbish Evil Village because they never gave hospitality to visitors. The second was called Farshalim because they made their living from Shalim. Watercrest, Fardikre, village of males, according to our Yohanan, was so called because women used to bear males first and finally a girl and then no more. Love. Said I have seen that place and it would not hold even sixty myriads of reeds. A certain men said to our Hannah, you tell a lot of lies. He replied, Palestine is called land of the deer, just as the skin of the hind cannot hold its flesh, so the land of Israel, when it is inhabited, can find room, but when it is not inhabited, it contracts once when our men be Helkia and our Helkia Bitobia and our Hunabihai were sitting together. They said, If anyone knows anything about Farsikania of Egypt, let him say. One of them thereupon said once a betrothed couple from there were carried off by heathens who married them to one another. The woman said, I beg of you not to touch me as I have no kethuba from you. So he did not touch her till his dying day when he died. She said, Mourn for this man who has kept his passions in check more than Joseph, because Joseph was exposed to temptation only a short time, but this man every day Joseph was not in one bed with the woman, but this man was in Joseph's case. She was not his wife, but here she was the next and began and said on one occasion forty bushels of coin were selling for a dinar and the number went down one and they investigated and found that a man and his son had had intercourse with a betrothed maiden on the day of atonement so they brought them to the Beth Din and they stoned them and the original price was restored the third and began and said there was a man who wanted to divorce his wife but hesitated because she had a big marriage settlement he accordingly invited his friends and gave them a good feast and made them drunk and put them all in one bed he then brought the white of an egg and scattered it among them and brought witnesses and appealed to the Beth Din there was a certain elder there of the disciples of Shammai the elder named Baba Bibuta who said this is what I have been taught by Shammai the elder that the white of an egg contracts when brought near the fire but semen becomes faint from the fire they tested it and found that it was so, and they brought the man to the Beth Din and flogged him and made him pay her Kethuba said Abbe to our Joseph, since they were so virtuous, why were they punished? He replied, Because they did not mourn for Jerusalem, as it is written, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn over her through the shaft of a litter Bethar was destroyed. It was the custom when a boy was born to plant a cedar tree, and when a girl was born to plant a pine tree, and when they married, the tree was cut down, and a canopy made of
The blood of Zechariah bubbling up warm and asked what it was. They said it is the blood of the sacrifices which has been poured there. He had some blood brought, but it was different from the other. He then said to them, If you tell me the truth well and good, but if not, I will tear your flesh with combs of iron. They said, What can we say to you? There was a prophet among us who used to reprove us for our irreligion, and we rose up against him and killed him, and for many years his blood has not rested. He said to them, I will appease him. He brought the great Sanhedrin and the small Sanhedrin and killed them over him, but the blood did not cease. He then slaughtered young men and women, but the blood did not cease. He brought school children and slaughtered them over it, but the blood did not cease. So he said, Zechariah, Zechariah, I have slain the best of them. Do you want me to destroy them all? When he said this to him, it stopped straight. Wayne Abizarad felt remorse. He said to himself, If such is a penalty for slaying one soul what will happen to me who have slain such multitudes so he fled away and sent a deed to his house disposing of his effects and became a convert Atan taught Naaman was a resident alien Nebuzaradan was a righteous proselyte descendants of Haman learned the Torah in Benaburak descendants of Sisera taught children in Jerusalem descendants of Sennacherib gave public expositions of the Torah who were these Shemiah and Abtalian Nebuzaradan fulfilled what is written I have set her blood upon the bare rock that it should not be covered the voice is the voice of Jacob and the hands are the hands of Esau the voice here refers to the cry caused by the emperor Hadrian who killed in Alexandria of Egypt sixty myriads on sixty myriads twice as many as went forth from Egypt the voice of Jacob this is the cry caused by the emperor Vespasian who killed in the city of Bethar four hundred thousand myriads or as some say four thousand myriads the hands are the Hands of Esau, this is the government of Rome which has destroyed our house and burnt our temple and driven us out of our land. Another explanation is as follows The voice is the voice of Jacob. No prayer is effective unless the seed of Jacob has a part in it. The hands are the hands of Esau. No war is successful unless the seed of Esau has a share in it. This is what our Eliezer said Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. This means thou shalt be protected from the heated contest of it. Tongue Rab Judah said in the name of Rab what is meant by the verse by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down, yet we wept when we remembered Zion. This indicates that the Holy One blessed be he showed David the destruction both of the first temple and of the second temple of the first temple as it is written by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat, yet we wept of the second temple as it is written Remember, O Lord, against the children of Edom the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even unto. The foundation thereof Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel or it may be RMI or as some say it was taught in a very on one occasion four hundred boys and girls were carried off for immoral purposes they divined what they were wanted for and said to themselves if we drown in the sea we shall attain the life of the future world the eldest among them expounded the verse the Lord said I will bring again from Bashan I will bring again from the depths of the sea I will bring again from Bashan from between the lion's teeth I will bring again from the depths of the sea those who drowned in the sea when the girls heard this they all leaped into the sea the boys then drew the moral for themselves saying if these for whom this is natural act so shall not we for whom it is unnatural they also leaped into the sea of them the text says yet for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter Rab Judah however said that this refers to the woman and her seven Sons they brought the first before the emperor and said to him serve the idol he said to them it is written in the law I am the Lord thy God so they led him away and killed him they then brought the second before the emperor and said to him serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah thou shalt have no other gods before me so they led him away and killed him they then brought the next and said to him serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah he that sacrifices unto the gods save unto the Lord only shall be utterly destroyed so they led him away and killed him they then brought the next before the emperor saying serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah thou shalt not bow down to any other god so they led him away and killed him they then brought another and said to him serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one so they led him away and killed him they then brought the next and said to him serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah know therefore this day and lay it to thine heart that the Lord he is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath there is none else so they led him away and killed him they brought the next and said to him serve the idol he replied it is written in the Torah thou hast avouched the Lord this day and the Lord hath avouched thee this day we have long ago sworn to the Holy One blessed be he that we will not exchange him for any other God and he also has sworn to us that he will not change us for any other people the emperor said I will throw down my seal before you and you can stoop down and pick it up so that they will say of you that you have conformed to the desire of the king he replied fie on thee Caesar fie on thee Caesar if thine own honor is so important how much more the honor of the Holy One blessed be he they were leading him away to kill him when his mother said give him to me that I may kiss him a little she said to him my son go and say to your father Abraham thou didst bind one son to the altar but I have bound seven altars and she also went up onto a roof and threw herself down and was killed a voice thereupon came forth from heaven saying a joyful mother of children our Joshua believe I said the verse yet for thy sake we are killed all the day long can be applied to circumcision which has been appointed for the eighth day our Simeon believe said it can be applied to the students of the Torah who demonstrate the rules of Sheshadah on themselves for Rabbah said a man can practice anything on himself except Sheshadah and something else our Naman B. Isaac said that it can be applied to the students who kill themselves for the words of the Torah in accordance with the saying of our Simeon Belakish for our Simeon Belakish said the words of the Torah abide only with one who kills himself for them as it says this is the Torah when a man shall die in the tent etc Rabbi B. Barhana said in the name of Ar Yohanan 40 Seahs Talmud, mosque and of phylactery boxes were found on the heads of the victims of Bethar Arjani son of Ar Ishmael said there were three chests each containing 40 Seahs in a berita it was taught 40 chests each of three Seahs there is however no contradiction the one was referring to the phylactery of the head the other to that of the Armara said four calves of brain were found on one stone Ola said nine calves are Kahana or some say Sheila Bimari said where do we find this in the scripture in the verse O daughter of Babylon that are to be destroyed happy shall he be that rewardeth thee happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the rocket is written the precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold what is meant by comparable to fine gold shall I say it means that they were covered with gold this can hardly be seen that in the school of Ar Sheila it was stated that two state weights of fine gold came down into the World one of which went to Rome and the other to the rest of the world know what it means is that they used to eclipse fine gold with their beauty before that the notables of the Romans used to keep an amulet set in a ring in front of them when they had sexual intercourse but now they brought Israelites and tied them to the foot of the bed one man asked another where is that written in the scripture he replied also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law said the other how far am I from that place he replied a little page and a half said the other if I had got so far I should not have wanted you Rab Judah reported Samuel as saying in the name of Rabban Simeon be Gamaliel what is signified by the verse mine I affected my soul because of all the daughters of my city there were four hundred synagogues in the city of Bethar and in every one were four hundred teachers of children and each one had under him four hundred pupils and when the enemy Entered there they pierced them with their staves and when the enemy prevailed and captured them they wrapped them in their scrolls and burnt them with fire our rabbis have taught our Joshua Behan and I once happened to go to the great city of Rome and he was told there that there was in the prison a child with beautiful eyes and face and curly locks he went and stood at the doorway of the prison and said who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers the child answered is it not the Lord he against whom we have sent and in whose ways they would not walk neither were they obedient unto his law he said I feel sure that this one will be a teacher in Israel I swear that I will not push from here before I ransom him whatever price may be demanded it is reported that he did not leave the spot before he had ransomed him at a high figure nor did many days pass before he became a teacher in Israel who was he, he was our Ishmael be Elisha Rab Judah said in the name of Rab it is related that the son and the daughter of Arishmael be Elisha were carried off and sold to two masters some time after the two met together and one said I have a slave the most beautiful in the world the other said I have a female
and rolled in the dust saying sovereign of the universe if thou hast not pity on us why hast thou not pity on the sanctity of thy name for her Jeremiah utters lamentation saying O daughter of my people gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes make thee mourning as for an only son for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us it does not say upon thee but upon us the spoiler is come if one may say so upon me and upon thee Rab Judah said in the name of Rab what is signified by the verse and they oppress a man and his house even a man and his heritage a certain man once conceived a desire for the wife of his master he being a carpenter's apprentice once his master wanted to borrow some money from him he said to him send your wife to me and I will lend her the money so he sent his wife to him and she stayed three days with him he then went to him before her where is my wife whom I sent to you he asked he replied I sent her away at once but I heard that the youngsters played with her on the road what shall I do he said if you listen to my advice he replied divorce her but he said she has a large marriage settlement said the other I will lend you money to give her for her ketubah so he went and divorced her and the other went and married her when the time for payment arrived and he was not able to pay him he said come and work off your debt with me so they used to sit and eat and drink while he waited on them and tears used to fall from his eyes and drop into their cups. From that hour the doom was sealed some however say that it was for two weeks in one light if a man buys from the Sakaricon etc. Rab said this holds good only where he the original owner said to him merely go take possession and acquire ownership if however he gave him a written deed he does acquire title Samuel said even with a written deed he does not acquire title unless he expressly makes himself responsible Talmud, Mosque and B it has been taught in agreement with Samuel R. Simeon B. Eliezer says if a man buys a married woman's property from the wife and then buys it again from the husband his purchase is effective but if he first buys from the husband and then from the wife the purchase is invalid unless she expressly makes herself responsible are we to say that the CONF Utes Rabs Rab can answer you what is meant by making herself responsible giving a written deed our rabbis have taught if a man bought property from the Sakaricon and had the use of it for three years in the presence of the original owner and then sold it to another the original owner has no claim against the second purchaser how are we to understand this if the second purchaser pleads he bought it from you the rule would be the same in the case of the first purchaser if he does plead he bought it from you then the rule does not apply to the second either Arshis hate said we do in fact assume that he does not advance this plea and yet the rule applies because in a case like this we the Beth didn't suggest a plea to the heir and suggest a plea to the purchaser whereas the first if he pleads of his own accord can acquire a title but otherwise not our rabbis have taught if he even seizes the land of an Israelite on account of a debt or of an Anperith this rule of Sakaricon does not apply to it and land seized on account of Anperith must remain in his hands 12 months but you just said that the rule of Sakaricon does not apply to it what he means is land. Bought from the Sakaricon itself must remain in his hands 12 months or Joseph said I have authority for saying that there is no Anperith in Babylonia but we see that there is you should say the law of Anperith does not apply in Babylonia why so since there is a court and yet the victim does not go and complain we presume that he has waived his claim son of Riyala took a field from the owners of a certain stretch on condition of paying the tax on it he paid in advance the money. For three years the first owners eventually came back and said to him you paid the tax for the first year and have had the produce now we will pay and I will have the produce they appealed to our papa who was minded to make him out a warrant against the owners of the stretch are who not the son of our Joshua however said to our papa this will mean applying the law of Sakaricon no said are who not the son of our Joshua he has risked his money and lost this was the first mission of the succeeding Beth didn't rule that one who buys from the Sakaricon should give the original owner a quarter rap said this means either a quarter in land or a quarter in money Samuel said it means a quarter in land which is equivalent to a third of the money what is the ground of their difference one Samuel holds that he buys the land for a quarter less than its value and the other that he buys the land for a fifth less than its value an objection was raised this was the first mission of the succeeding Beth didn't lay down that one who purchases from the Sakaricon gives to the original owner a fourth the latter having his choice of taking the payment either in land or in money when is this the case so long as he is not himself in a position to buy but if the original owner is in a position to buy he has the right of preemption rabbi assembled the Beth Din and they decided by vote that if the property had been in the hands of the Sakaricon 12 months the first comer had the right to purchase but he had to give it. Original owner either a fourth in land or a fourth in money Arashi replied that teaching applies after the money has come into his hands Rab said Talmud, Mosque and I was in that assembly of rabbi and my vote was taken first how could this be seeing that we have learned in taking decisions on money matters and cases of cleanness and uncleanness they commence from the principle of those present in capital cases they commence from the side rabbi the son of rabbi or as some say are Hillel. The son of Arwala said the voting at the court of rabbi was different as in all cases it commenced from the side rabbi the son of rabbi or as some say are Hillel. the son of Arwala also said between Moses and rabbi we do not find one who was supreme both in Torah and in worldly affairs is that so was there not Joshua there was Eliezer with him but there was Eliezer there was Phinehas with him but there was Phinehas there were the elders with him but there was Saul there was Samuel. With him, but Samuel died before Saul. We mean supreme all his life. But there was David. There was Iari the Jerite with him. But he died before David. We mean supreme all his life. But there was Solomon. There was Shimei ben Gerah with him. But he killed him. We mean all his life. But there was Hezekiah. There was Shebna with him. But he was killed. We mean all his life. But there was Ezra. There was Nehemiah son of Hashelia with him. Or Ahas son of Rabbah said, I too say that between Rabbi and Arashi there was no one who was supreme both in Torah and in worldly affairs. Is that so? Was there not Unabi Nathan with him? We do not count Unabi Nathan because he used to defer to Arashi Mishnah. A deaf mute can hold conversation by means of gestures. Ben Bethera says that he may also do so by means of lip motions where the transaction concerns Moab bless the purchase or sale effected by young children in Moab bless is valid. Gemara Arnaman said the difference between Ben Bethera and it. Rabbis is only on the question of movables but where again is concerned both agree that gestures must be used surely this is obvious Ben Bathura says distinctly mobile you might take this to mean where movable also are concerned hence we are told that this is not so the purchase or sale affected by young children in mobile what is the youngest age at which they can do so our Judah pointed out to our Isaac his son about six or seven our Kahana said about seven or eight in a very it was taught about nine or ten there is no contradiction each child varies according to his intelligence what is the reason why this is allowed in the case of movables our Abba B. Jacob said in the name of our Yohanan in order that they may procure ordinary necessities and he said to him that was over the Melta who bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal what is Melta our Abba B. Jacob said in the name of our Yohanan something which is drawn out thin by fingering them while we know are. Dimi came from Palestine, he said in the name of Aryohan and Bonia, son of Nadia, sent to Rabbi Sibni and Homes and Salsa and Melmala. The Sibni and Homes folded tip into the size of a nut and a half, the Salsa and Melmala into the size of a pistachio nut and a half. What is Melmala? Something which fingering draws out thin up to what point can advantage be taken of their mistake? Arjona said in the name of Arzera up to a sixth, as with a grown up Abbe inquired what of the gift of such. A one Aryamar replied, His gift is no gift. Mar the son of Arashi, however, said that it is a valid gift. The members of the academy communicated the statement to our Mordecai with the names reversed. He replied, Go and tell the son of the master that this does not correspond with the facts, as the master was once standing with one foot on the ground and one on the steps. We asked him what of his gift, and he answered us, His gift is a valid gift, no matter whether made when he is ill or when he is well. Whether it is a big gift or a small one, Mishnah, the following rules were laid down in the interest of peace. A priest is called up first to read the law, and after him a Levite, and then a lay Israelite in the interest of peace. An ERUB is placed in the room where it has always been placed in the interest of peace. Talmud, Mosque, and be the pit which is nearest the head of the water course is filled from it first in the interest of peace. The taking of beasts, birds, and fishes from snares set by others is reckoned as a kind of robbery in the interest of peace. Our Jose says that it is actual
and proceedings in every matter involving sanctification to open proceedings to say grace first and to choose his portion first set of a to our Joseph is this rule only a rabbinical one in the interest of peace it derives from the Torah he answered it does derive from the Torah but its object is to maintain peace but the whole of the law is also for the purpose of promoting peace as it is written her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace no set of a we have to Understand it in the light of what was said by the master as it has been taught two persons wait for one another with the dish but if there are three they need not wait the one who breaks bread helps himself to the dish first but if he wishes to pay respect to his teacher or to a superior he may do so commenting on this the master said this applies only to the table but not to the synagogue since their such deference might lead to quarreling our said what you have said about the synagogue is true only on sabbaths and festivals when there is a large congregation but not on mondays and thursdays is that so did not our as cohen even on sabbaths and festivals our was different since even our mi and rc who were the most distinguished kohanim of eretz israel paid deference to him abe said we assume the rule to be that if there is no cohen there the arrangement no longer holds abe further said we have it on tradition that if there is no levi there Cohen reads in his places that so has not our Yohanan said that one Cohen should not read after another because this might cast a suspicion on the first and one Levite should not read after another because this might cast a suspicion on both what we meant was that the same Cohen should read in the place of the Levite why just in the case of the Levites should there be a reflection on both of them because you say people will say that one or other of them is not a Levite if one Cohen reads after another they will also say that one of them is not a Cohen we assume that it is known that the father of the second was a Cohen but in the same way we may say that it is known that the father of the second Levite was a Levite they might say that he the father married a bastard or a Nethin and disqualified his offspring in the same way they might say that the father of the second priest married a divorced woman or a and disqualified his offspring in any case if he were Suspect what he read as Levi and who would suspect him those who remain in the synagogue they see that he counts as one of the seven it must be then those who go out of synagogue the Galilean sent to inquire of our elbow after them the Cohen and Levi Talmud, Moskid and who are to be called up he did not know what to reply so he went and asked our Isaac Napaha who said to him after them are called up the scholars who are appointed Parnasim of the community and after them scholars who are qualified to be appointed Parnasim of the community and after them the sons of scholars whose fathers had been appointed Parnasim of the community and after them heads of synagogues and members of the general public the Galilean sent to inquire of our elbow is it permissible to read separate Hamashin of each book of the Torah in the synagogue in public he did not know what to answer so he inquired in the Beth Hamid Rash they settled the question in the light of what our Samuel Binamani had said. In the name of our Yohanan that a scroll of the law which is short of one flap may not be read from this however is not conclusive in that case something essential was lacking in this case nothing essential is lacking Rabbah and our Joseph both concurred in ruling that separate Humashin should not be read from out of respect for the congregation Rabbah and our Joseph also concurred in ruling that a scroll containing only the half errors should not be read from on Sabbath what is the reason because it is not proper to write sections of the Prophet separately Marsan of Arashi said it is forbidden also to carry them on Sabbath for the reason that they are not fitting to be read from this however is not correct it is permitted to carry them and it is permitted to read from them for our Yohanan and our Simeon Belakish used to look through a book of Agata on Sabbath now Agata is not meant to be written down we say however that since this cannot be dispensed with when it is a time to work for the Lord they break thy Torah here too since it cannot be dispensed with we say when it is a time to work for the Lord they break the law of A. Ask Rabbah is it permitted to write out a scroll containing a passage for a child to learn from this is a problem alike for one who holds that the Torah was transmitted to Moses scroll by scroll and for one who holds that the Torah was transmitted entire it is a problem for one who holds that the Torah was transmitted scroll by scroll since it was transmitted scroll by scroll may we also write separate scrolls or do we say that since it has all been joined together it must remain so it is equally a problem for one who holds that the Torah was transmitted entire since it was transmitted entire is it improper to write separate scrolls or do we say that since we cannot dispense with this we do write them you replied we do not write what is the reason because we do not write he then raised an objection she also made a tablet of gold on which was written the section of the Soda our Simeon Belakish had already explained in the name of Arjane only the first letters of each word were written there he then raised the following objection as he writes he looks at the tablet and writes what is written in the tablet read he writes according to what is written in the tablet he then raised the following objection as he writes he looks at the tablet and writes what is written in the tablet if one lay if one did not lie what is meant is that it was written irregularly on this point Tanaim differ as we were taught a scroll should not be written for a child to learn from if however it is the intention of the writer to complete it he may do so our Judah says he may write from Bereshit to the story of the generation of the flood or in the priest's law of two and it came to pass on the eighth day our Yohanan said in the name of our Bada, the Torah was transmitted in separate scrolls as it says then said I am come in the role of the book it is written of Nir Simeon Belakish said the Torah was transmitted entire as it says take this book of the law what does the other make of this verse take etc this refers to the time after it had been joined together and what does the other Reshlakish make of the verse in the role of the book written of me that is to indicate that the whole Torah is called a role as it is written and he said unto me what seest thou and I answered I see a flying role or perhaps it is called role for the reason given by our Levi since our Levi said eight sections were given forth on the day on which the tabernacle was set up there the section of the priests the section of the levites the section of the unclean the section of the sending of the unclean out of the camp the section commencing after the death Talmud Mosque and be the section dealing with the drinking of wine by priests the section of the lights of the candlestick and the section of the red heifer are Eliezer said the greater portion of the Torah is contained in the written law and only the smaller portion was transmitted orally as it says though I wrote for him the major portion of the precepts of my law they were counted a strange thing our Yohanan on the other hand said that the greater part was transmitted orally and only the smaller part is contained in the written law as it says for by the mouth of these words but what does he make of the words though I write for him the major portion of my law this is a rhetorical question should I have written for him the major portion of my law even now is it not accounted a strange thing for him and what does the other make of the words for by the mouth of these words that implies that they are difficult to master our Judah Binamani the public orator of our Simeon Belakish discourse as follows it is written right that these words and it is written for according to the mouth of these words what are we to make of this it means the words which are written thou art not at liberty to say by heart and the words transmitted orally thou art not at liberty to recite from writing a tana of the school of our Ishmael taught it is written these these thou mayest write but thou mayest not write halashah you had and said God made a covenant with Israel only for the sake of that which was transmitted orally as it says for by the mouth of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel and ERUB should be placed in the room where it has always been placed in the interest of peace what is the precise reason shall we say it is out of respect for the owner of the room and one of the shofar which at first was in the house of Rab Judah and later in that of Rabbah and then in the house of our Joseph and then in the house of Abay and finally in the house of Rabbah the real reason is so as not to excite suspicion the pit which is nearest the head of the water course it has been stated where fields adjoin the river Rab says that the owners lower down have the right to draw off water first while Samuel says that the owners higher up have the right to draw off water first so long as the water is allowed to flow both agree that no problem arises where they differ is on the question of damming for the purpose of watering Samuel says that those above can draw off water first for they can say we are nearer to the source while Rab holds that those below can draw off first for they can say the river should be allowed to take its natural course we have learned the pit which is nearest to the head of the water course may be filled from it first in the interest of peace Samuel explained this on behalf of Rab to refer to a water course which passes close to a man's pit if so what is the point of the remark you might think that the others can say to him close up the mouth of your pit so as to take in water only in due proportion we are therefore told that this is not so our Hunabi Tehilafa said seeing that the law has not been determined one way or the other each must fend for himself or Shimai B. Ashi presented
Anything found by a deaf mutant idiot or a minor R. Jose says that this is actual robbery. Arista says R. Jose means actual robbery. According to the rabbis, what then is the practical effect of R. Jose's ruling that the article can be recovered by process of law if the poor man is gleaning the top of an olive tree to take the fruit beneath him? Matana taught if the poor man had gathered the fruit and placed it on the ground with his hands to take it as actual robbery. Arcahano was once going to Hazel when he saw a man throwing sticks at a tree and bringing dates down. So he went and picked up some and ate them. Said the other to him, See, sir, that I have thrown them down with my own hands. He said to him, You are from the same place as R. Josiah. And he applied to him the verse, The righteous man is the foundation of the world. The poor of the heathen are not prevented from gathering gleanings, forgotten sheep, and the corner of the field to avoid ill feeling. Our rabbis have taught we. Support the poor of the heathen along with the poor of Israel and visit the sick of the heathen along with the sick of Israel and bury the poor of the heathen along with the dead of Israel in the interest of peace mission a woman may lend to another who is suspected of not observing the sabbatical year a fan or a seed or a handmill or a stove but she should not sit or grind with her the wife of a haber may lend to the wife of an amhirez a fan or a seed and may winnow and grind and sift with her but once she has poured water over the flower she should not touch anything with her because it is not right to assist those who commit a transgression all these rules were laid down only in the interest of peace heathens may be assisted in the sabbatical year but not Israelites and greeting may be given to them in the interest of peace tomorrow why is the rule in the first case different from that in the second Abbe said most amhirez separate their tithes Rabbi said we are Speaking here of the Amhirez specified by our Mayor and the cleanness and uncleanness recognized only by the rabbis as it has been taught who is an Amhirez one who does not insist on eating ordinary food in a ritually clean condition so our Mayor the sages however say it is one who does not tithe its produce but since it says in the later clause of the Mishnah once she has poured water over the flower she should not touch anything with her does not this show that the earlier clause is not. Speaking of cleanness and uncleanness both the earlier and the later clause speak of cleanness and uncleanness the former however of the uncleanness of ordinary food and the latter of that of Behala the following was a distinct contradiction Talmud, Moskid and B it is allowed to grind corn and to deposit it with those who eat produce of the sabbatical year and those who eat their produce in uncleanness but not for those who eat the produce of the sabbatical year and for those who eat their produce in uncleanness have a replied we are dealing there with a priest who is suspected of eating terima in uncleanness the uncleanness there being of a kind recognized by the Torah if that is so how could the food be entrusted to him would not that contradict the following terima may be entrusted to an Israelite amhirez but not to a priest amhirez because he might take liberties with it early said we are speaking here of producing an earthenware vessel with a close fitting cover but is there not a danger that his wife might move it while Nidar Jeremiah replied even so there is no contradiction in the one case we speak of produce which has become capable of receiving uncleanness in the other of produce which is not so capable a further contradiction was raised if a man takes wheat to a miller who is a kutian or a heathen it is presumed to remain in its original condition as regards tithe or sabbatical produce but not as regards uncleanness what reputation is there here have you not just explained that the reference is to produce which has not been rendered capable of receiving uncleanness what then was the point of the question because the questioner wanted to adduce another contradiction as follows you have just said it is presumed to have remained in its original condition as regards tithe and sabbatical year that is to say we have no fear of its having been changed this seems to contradict the following if a man gives produce to his mother-in-law the wife of an amhirez he tithes what he gives to her and what he takes back from her because she is suspected of changing anything that becomes spoiled there the reason is as was stated our judah said she is anxious for the well-being of her daughter and she is ashamed for her son-in-law but in general are we not afraid of food being changed have we not learned if a student gives produce to the mistress of his boarding house he tithes what he gives to her and what he takes back from her because she is likely to change it there she finds an excuse for herself saying let the student eat hot and I will eat cold and still we ask in general are we not afraid has it not been taught the wife of a haber can grind along with the wife of an amhirez when she is ritually unclean but not when she is ritually clean our simeon b eliezer says even when she is ritually unclean she should not grind with her because the other talmud moskidan is likely to give her something which she may put in her mouth seeing now that she the wife of the amhirez is capable of stealing will she not also exchange our joseph said there too she finds an excuse for stealing by saying the ox eats of his threshing our jose b hameshalem testified in the name of our yohan and his brother who had it from our eliezer b his that hell is not to be set aside by a baker haber for an amhirez in ritual purity but the baker can make his ordinary dough in ritual purity and Take from it enough for a hell and put it in a double basket or on a tray and when the Amhirez comes he can take both and the baker need not be afraid that any harm will ensue again all oppressors who are Kabarim should not set aside terima from his olives in ritual purity but they can prepare his olives in ritual purity and take from them sufficient for terima and put it in the vessels of a haber and when the Amhirez comes he can take both of them and the others need not fear. Lest harm should ensue now what is the reason for these concessions are Yohanan said to enable the baker and the olive presser to earn a livelihood and both statements were necessary for if I had been given only the one about the baker I might have said that the reason why the concession was made in his case is because he does not earn much and that this does not apply to an olive presser who gets a good wage and again if I had been given only the statement about the olive presser I might. Have said that the reason is because he has not constant employment and that this does not apply to a baker who has constant employment hence both were necessary the master said above he takes from it enough for a hell and puts it in an inverted basket or on a tray and when the amhirez comes he can take both and the other need not be afraid but he surely ought to be afraid that he has touched it we suppose that we say to him mind you don't touch it or it will become feeble again but he must be afraid that he will not listen to him seeing that his whole object is to keep it right will he not then listen to him the master said above he can take from it sufficient for terima and put it in the vessels of a haber and when the amhirez comes he can take both and the other need not fear but surely he ought to be afraid lest he has touched it in the other case it is true we can find a reason why he should not because it has some distinguishing mark but here what distinguishing Mark is there that he puts it in a vessel made of baked or of stone or of earth if that is so why does it say in vessels of a haber those of an amhirez would do as well that in fact is what is meant vessels of an amhirez which a haber can also use assistance may be given to heathens in the sabbatical year assistance may be given to them as not our dimi bishishna said in the name of rabbit is not right to hold with heathens in the sabbatical year nor to give a double greeting to heathens it is quite correct what is meant is just to say to the majukas our juda used to say to the majukas our shishate used to say to the mishart nor to give double greeting to heathens our hista used to give them greeting first our kahana used to say peace to you sir greeting may be given to them in the interest of peace seeing that we may encourage them at their work do we need to be told that we may give them greeting our yeba said the rule had to be stated only for their feast days for it has been taught a man should not enter the house of a heathen on his feast day nor give him greeting should he meet him in the street he should greet him in a mumbling tone and with downcast head as Arhuna and Arhista were once sitting together Jenna began to pass by said one to the other let us rise before him since he is a learned man the other replied shall we rise before one who is quarrelsome at this point he came up to them and said peace to you kings peace to you kings they said to him whence do you learn that the rabbis are called kings he replied because it is written by me wisdom kings reign they then said and whence do you learn that double greeting is to be given to kings he replied from what Rab Judah said in the name of Rab how do we know that double greeting should be given to a king because it says then the spirit came upon Amasai who was chief of the thirty etc they said to him would you care for abide with us he replied thus said Rab Judah in the name of Rab it is forbidden to a man to taste anything until he has given food to his beast as it says first and I will give grass in thy field for thy cattle and then thou shalt eat and be full Talmud, Moskid and B-C-H-A-P-T-E-R-B I mission if a man says to another receive this get on behalf of my wife or convey this get to my wife if he desires to retract before the wife receives it he may do so if a woman says to a man receive my get on my behalf and
competent to make him an agent for receiving the get therefore even if the get reached her hand it would not be valid and we are therefore told that in saying receive he also implied and convey we learned if a woman says receive a get on my behalf if he desires to retract he is not at liberty to do so does not this apply equally whether the husband on handing the get used the expression of receiving or of conveying no only if he said receive come and here consequently if the husband said to him i am not agreeable that you should receive it on her behalf but here convey it and give it to her then if he desires to retract he may do so the reason is is it not that he says i am not agreeable but if he does not say i am not agreeable then if he desires to retract he may not do so which would show that convey is equivalent to take possession perhaps we should read here you or it goes without saying that a man may be an agent for conveying the get seeing that a husband may himself Convey a get to his wife. A woman may similarly be an agent for receiving, seeing that a woman receives a get from the hand of her husband. What of a man becoming agent for receiving and a woman agent for conveying? Come and here, if a man says receive this get on behalf of my wife or convey this get to my wife, if he desires to retract, he may do so. If a woman says receive my get on my behalf, if he desires to retract, he may not do so. Does not this mean where there is the same agent for both, which would show that the one who is qualified for conveying is also qualified for receiving? No, we speak of two agents. Come and here, consequently, if the husband said to him, I am not agreeable that you should receive it on her behalf, but convey it and give it to her, then if he desires to retract, he may do so. Now here he says this to the same agent as she appointed, and this shows that he is qualified to receive as to convey. We can conclude from this that a man is qualified to receive as is also. Natural since a father may receive a get on behalf of his minor daughter whether a woman may become an agent for conveying is still a question Armari said come and here even the women whose word cannot be taken if they report her husband to be dead can be trusted to bring her her get and there they are agents for conveying or as she said we could infer the same from the last clause of that mission which runs a woman herself may bring her get only she is required to declare in my presence it was written and in my presence it was signed and we explained this to mean that she conveyed it it has been stated if a woman says to her agent bring me my get and he says to the husband your wife said to me receive my get on my behalf and the husband said here you are as she said in such a case Arnaman said in the name of Rabbi Abab who had it from Rab that even when the get reached her hand it would not be valid from this we should conclude that the husband was relying on his it. Agent's word since if he was relying on the wife's word she would at any rate be divorced when the get reached her hand said Arashi is that so Talmud, Mosque and A I grant you that if the statement had been in the reverse form thus if the wife said receive my get on my behalf and he said your wife told me to bring it and the husband says here you are as she said and if Arnaman had said in the name of Rabbi Abba in the name Rab once the get comes into his hand she is divorced then I could infer that he relies upon her word or again if he had said once the get reaches her hand she is divorced I could have inferred that the husband relies upon the agent's word as it is however the reason why the get is not valid is because the agent completely nullified his agency by saying I am willing to be an agent for receiving and not for conveying Arhuna Bihai said in refutation of Arnaman come and here if a man says receive this get on behalf of my wife or convey this get. To my wife if he desires to retract he may do so the reason why the get is not effective is that he desires to do so if he does not and lets the get reach her the get is valid now why should this be seeing that the husband is not competent to appoint an agent for receiving the get the reason must be because we say that once he has made up his mind to divorce her he says to himself let her be divorced in any way possible so here also since he made up his mind to divorce her he says to himself let her be divorced in any way possible are the two cases comparable in that case of the mission a man knows that he cannot appoint an agent for receiving the get and decides to give it to the agent for the purpose of conveying but here he gives it under a misapprehension Rabbi said come and here if a girl under age said receive my get on my behalf it is not effective until it reaches her hand now at any rate according to this when it reaches her hand she is divorced and yet why should this be seen that the husband did not make him an agent for conveying we say however that since the husband made up his mind to divorce her he says to himself let her be divorced in any way possible so here since he made up his mind to divorce her he says let her be divorced in any way possible but are these two cases comparable there a man knows that a minor cannot appoint an agent and therefore he decides to give it to the agent for the purpose of being conveyed on his own behalf. But here he gives it under a misapprehension come and here if a woman says to an agent bring me my get and the agent says to the husband your wife told me to receive her get for her or if the wife says receive my get for me and he says your wife told me to bring her get and the husband says to him convey and give it to her take possession on her behalf and receive on her behalf if he desires to retract he may do so but once the get reaches her hand she is divorced now does not hear the Husband saying receive correspond to the agent saying receive and the husband saying convey to the agent saying convey no receive corresponds to bring and convey to receive if receive corresponds to bring then if the husband relies on the wife's word the get should be effective as soon as it comes into the agent's hand and since this is not so it shows that he relies on his word how can you say so in that case he says to him here you are as she said in this case does he say here you are as she said our rabbis taught if a woman says to an agent receive my get for me and he says to the husband your wife told me to receive her get for her and the husband says convey it and give it to her take possession of it on her behalf or receive it on her behalf if he desires to retract he is not at liberty to do so our Nathan says if he says convey and give it to her he can retract but if he says take possession of it and receive it for her he cannot retract rabbi says if he uses any of these formulas he cannot retract but if he says I am not agreeable that you should receive for her but convey it and give it to her then if he desires to retract he may do so does not rabbi merely repeat the first tana if you like I can say that he did so because he desired to add the clause about not being agreeable or if you like I can say that the repetition is meant to inform us that the first tana is rabbi the question was raised according to our Nathan is here you are equivalent to take possession or not come and here if a man says receive this get on behalf of my wife or convey this get to my wife if he desires to retract he may do so if a woman says receive a get on my behalf if he desires to retract he is not at liberty to do so Talmud Mosque and B does not this mean if he said here you are the opinion recorded being that of our Nathan no it means if he said convey the opinion recorded being that of rabbi come and here consequently if the husband said I am not agreeable that you should receive it for her but convey it and give it to her then if he desires to retract he may do so now the reason why he may retract is because he said I am not agreeable etc and if he did not say so he may not retract does not this mean after he says here you are the opinion recorded being that of our Nathan no it means even after he says convey the opinion recorded being that of rabbi come and here if a man says convey this get to my wife if he desires to retract he may do so but if he says here is this get for my wife if he desires to retract he may not do so what authority do you find for the view that if the husband says convey he is at liberty to retract our Nathan and he lays down that if the husband says here you are he is not at liberty to retract this proves conclusively that here you are is according to our Nathan equivalent to take possession it has been stated if the wife says receive my get for me and the agent says to the husband your wife Told me to receive her get for her and the husband says convey and give it to her. Our Abba said in the name of Arhuna who had it from Rab that he becomes both her agent and his agent and in case of need she must perform Eliza. This would seem to show that Rab was in doubt whether convey is equivalent to take possession or not. Yet how can this be seeing that it has been stated if a man says take this mana to so and so to whom I owe it. Rab says that he is responsible for it till it is delivered and he cannot retract. There is still a doubt but in that case the doubt concerns the ownership of money and Rab takes the more lenient view. In this case it concerns a religious offense and he takes the more stringent view. Rab said a woman cannot appoint an agent to receive her get from the agent of her husband. Arhanana however said that a woman may appoint an agent to receive her get from the agent of her husband. What is Rab's reason if you like I can say to avoid showing. Contempt for the husband and if you like I can say because of the resemblance of the agent to a courtyard which comes into her possession subsequently what difference does it make in practice which reason we adopt the difference arises in the case where she had appointed her agent first a certain man sent to get to his wife and the bearer found her needing flour he said to her here is your get she replied you take it Arnam and thereupon said if I knew that our Hananah is right I
have discharged their commission Rabbah strongly demurred to the saying did the husband say to them write out a piece of clay and give it to her no said Rabbah this is not so but in truth if the witnesses had written a proper get and it had been lost before being given to her then we should say that they had discharged their commission Arnaman strongly demurred to the saying did he say write it and put it in your bag the fact is said Arnaman that the get can be written and given a hundred times till it comes right Rabbah inquired of Arnaman if a man said to the witnesses write the get and give it to a bearer how do we decide have they been discharged or did he merely want to save them trouble Rabbah asked Arashi suppose he adds the words and let him take it what do we say these questions can stand over our Simeon B. Gamaliel said even if the wife says merely take for me and he does so he is not at liberty to retract our rabbis taught take for me carry for me keep for me are all equivalent to receive mission. A woman who says to an agent receive my get for me requires two sets of witnesses, two witnesses to say in our presence she told him and two to say in our presence he received the get and tore it. It is immaterial if the first set are identical with the last Talmud, Mosque Eden, or if there was one man in the first set and one in the second and the same man joined with both of them. Gemara it has been stated if the husband says I gave you the get in deposit and the depository says you gave it to me to divorce your wife with which is to be believed. Arhuna said the husband's word is to be taken. Arhista said the depository's word is to be taken. Arhuna said the husband's word is to be taken because if he had meant to give it to him for divorcing the wife he would have given it to the wife herself. Arhista said the depository's word is to be taken because we see that the husband trusted him or ever raised an objection against Arhuna. From the following, the admission of the litigant is equivalent to the testimony of a hundred witnesses, and the depository is more credible than either litigant. If, for instance, one says one thing and one another, the depository's word is to be taken. Money is different because the claim to it can be waived, but it is taught in the passage cited, and so with given this refers to money given, but it is taught in the passage cited, and so with Shadaroth were they both taught together. We have learned a woman who says to an agent, Receive my get from me requires two sets of witnesses, two to say in our presence, she told him, and two to say in our presence, he received and tore it. Why so cannot we take the word of the depository? Does he produce the get that we should take his word? This explains why witnesses are required for the telling, why are they required for the receiving? Rabbi replied, Who is the authority for this? R. who held that the witnesses to the delivery of the get. Make it effective. Why must he tear it? Arjuna answered in the name of Rab. This was taught in the time of the persecution. Rabbi said, Arhuna admits that if the wife says the depository told me that he gave it to him to divorce with her word is to be taken, how can this be? Is there any statement which we would not accept from the depository himself, and yet we would accept from her on his behalf what it should be as if she said in my presence he gave it to him to divorce me with her word is taken because if she liked she could have said that he gave it to her direct. If the husband says that he gave it to the depository to divorce with and the depository says it was given to divorce with and the wife says he gave it to me but it has been lost. Arjuna and says this is a statement bearing on forbidden relationships and a statement bearing on a forbidden relationship must be substantiated by not less than two witnesses. But why so? Why not believe the depository is he able to produce? Forget that we should believe him, then let us believe the husband in accordance with what our high Abin said in the name of our Yohanan. If the husband says, I have divorced my wife, his word can be taken. Does he here say, I have divorced her? Then let us say that the presumption is that the agent carries out his commission. Since our Isaac has said, if a man says to his agent, Go and betroth for me any woman you please, and the agent dies, the man is forbidden to marry any woman in the world because the presumption is that the agent carries out his commission. Talmud, Mosque, and be that is so where it has the effect of making the law more stringent, but not where it makes it more lenient. Then let us believe the woman herself in accordance with our Hamdana. For our Hamdana said, If a woman says to her husband, You have divorced me, her word is taken, since the presumption is that a woman would not have the impudence to say this in the face of her husband if it were not true, that is so where she has no confirmation but where she has some confirmation she certainly would not shrink from doing so mission if a young girl is betrothed both she and her father may receive her get Arjuta however said that two different hands cannot take possession together her father alone may receive her get one who is not able to keep her get is not capable of being divorced tomorrow what is the difference in principle between the rabbis and Arjuta the rabbis held that the all-merciful conferred upon her an extra hand whereas Arjuta held that where her father can act her own hand counts as nothing one who is not able to keep her get etc our rabbis taught a child who knows how to keep her get can be divorced but if she does not know how to keep her get she cannot be divorced whom do we mean by a child who knows how to keep her get one who keeps her get and something else what is the meaning of this Arjuna and said it means one who keeps something else in place of her get Arjuna Bimano. Strongly demurred to the saying such a one is a mere idiot no said Arhuna Bimano quoting Araha the son of Araka it means one who can distinguish between her get and another object Rab Judah said in the name of Arasi a child which if offered a stone throws it away but if offered a nut takes it becomes possessor of anything given to itself but not of anything given to it to give to another if when given an article to play with it will return it after a time when asked it can become possessor either for itself or for others when I stated this in the presence of Samuel he said to me both cases are just the same what is the meaning of both cases are just the same Arhista replied in either case the child becomes possessor for itself but not for others are hidden the word on raised an objection how can all the residents become partners in an alleyway one of them places a jar of wine there saying this is for all the residents of the alleyway and he may confer possession Upon them through his grown-up son or daughter or through his Hebrew manservant or maidservant now how are we to understand this maidservant if she has grown two hairs what is she doing with him we must suppose therefore that she has not yet grown two hairs and yet we are told that she can take possession on behalf of others the case of partnership in an alleyway is different because the prohibition of taking things out there is only rabbinical Arhista said where Don was reduced to silence. What could he have answered he could have said that the rabbis gave to their regulations Talmud, Mosque and the force of rules of the Torah what could the other say to this that the rabbis gave to their regulations the force of rules of the Torah in matters which have some basis in the Torah but not in a matter which has no basis in the Torah are we raised an objection what device may be adopted to avoid paying an extra fifth for second tithe a man can say to his grown-up son and daughter or to his Hebrew manservant or maidservant take this money and redeem with it the second tithe now how are we to understand this maidservant if she has grown two hairs how comes she to be with him we must say therefore that she has not grown two hairs we are speaking here of tithe in the present epoch which is rabbinical but is the rule regarding a Hebrew maidservant in force in the present epoch has it not been taught the laws relating to a Hebrew servant are in force only when it jubilee is observed we must therefore say that it refers to tithe from a pot which has no hole at the bottom the rule regarding which is rabbinical Rabbi said there are three grades in a child if on being given a stone he throws it away but on being given a nut he takes it he can take possession for himself but not for others a girl of corresponding age can be betrothed so effectively as not to be released on becoming of age without definitely repudiating the betrothal P.E. of can by and sell movables with legal effect and a girl of the corresponding age can be divorced from a betrothal contracted by her father when they reach the age at which vows are tested their vows and their sanctifications are effective and a girl of corresponding age performs illicit the landed property of his deceased father however he cannot sell till he is 20 mission if a young girl says to an agent receive my get for me it is no get till it reaches her hand consequently if it husband wishes to retract he is still then at liberty to retract since a minor cannot appoint an agent if her father said to him go and receive my daughter's divorce for her the husband after giving it to him i is not at liberty to retract if a man says give this get to my wife in such and such a place and he gives it to her in another place the get is invalid if he says she is in such and such a place and he gives it to her in another place it is valid if a woman says receive my get in such and such a place and he receives it for her in another place it is invalid our Eliezer however declares it valid if he says bring me my get from such and such a place and he brings it from somewhere else it is valid tomorrow why does our Eliezer make a distinction between the first ruling which he does not dispute and the second ruling which he does dispute the husband who divorces of his
Husband, the statement was required for the case where she said to him, Go to the east because he is in the east, and he went to the west. You might argue in that case that as he is certainly not in the west, she should be permitted to eat the terima. We are therefore told that while going in that direction, he may still come across him, and he may give him the get if a man said to his agent, Make me an Arab with dates, and the other made an Arab with figs, or if he told him to make with figs. And he made with dates one berry that taught that the Arab is effective, while another taught that it is not effective. Rabbi said this need cause no difficulty. The one berry that follows the rabbis, and the other follows our Eliezer. The one follows the rabbis who said in the case of the get that the wife is particular, the other follows our Eliezer who said that she merely gives him a direction. Our Joseph, however, said both berries follow the rabbis, the one who says that the Arab is effective. Means when the fruit is his own, the other when it is someone else's said, Abbe to him, but what will you make of the following that has been taught if a man says to his agent, Make me an Arab in the tower, and he made one in the dukkot, or if he told him to make in the dukkot, and he made it in the tower in regard to which it was taught by one berry that his Arab is effective, and by another that it is not in that case, what difference does it make whether it is his own or his neighbor's? There too there is a difference between the fruit of the tower and the fruit of the dukkot mission. If a man says, Write a get and give it to my wife, divorce her, write a letter and give her, then those so instructed should write and give her. If he said, Release her, provide for her, do the customary thing for her, do the proper thing for her, his words are of no effect. Tomorrow our rabbis taught, if he said, Send her away, let her go, drive her out, then they should write and give her, if he said, Release. Her provide for her, do the customary thing for her, do the proper thing for her. His words are of no effect. It has been taught. Our Nathan said, if he said Padruha, his words take effect. If he said Petruha, his words are of no effect. Rabbi said, our Nathan, being a Babylonian, distinguishes between Petruha and Padruha, but Artana, being from Eretz Israel, does not distinguish. The question was raised. If he said put her out, what is the law? If he said his boa, what is the law? If he said Hadruha, what is the law? If he said let her be, what is the law? If he said confer a benefit under, what is the law? If he said do to her according to the law, what is the law? One of these questions may at any rate be answered, since it has been taught. If a man says do to her according to the law, do to her the proper customary thing, do to her the proper thing. His words are of no effect. Mission originally they laid down that if a man was being led out to execution and said write a get for my wife, they may write and give. I teach her later they added also if he were leaving for a sea voyage or for a caravan journey our Simeon Chizuri said also if he were dangerously ill Gamar Jenaba was being led out to execution on his way out he said give 400 Zeus to Rabbi Abana of the wine which I have of Niharpin I said our Zerah Talmud, Moskid and Abana put his pack on his shoulder and go off to Arhunah his teacher since Arhunah had laid down that a man's get is on the same footing as his gift just as if he recovers he can withdraw his gift so if he recovers he can withdraw his gift similarly we may argue just as in the case of his get even though he did not express himself clearly if he says right even though he does not say also give it is sufficient so with his gift since he has said give even though no token was given it is sufficient our Abba strongly demurred to the stigma of Arhunah saying shall I argue on this principle that just as a gift may take effect after death so a gift may Take effect after death. Is there any comparison? A gift can take effect after death, but is there such a thing as a get after death? No, Arab's real difficulty was this Jenaba's gift was a gift made by one about to die a part of his property, and a gift made by one about to die a part of his property needs to be confirmed by a token gift. This would seem to show that according to Arhuna, it does not need to be confirmed by a token gift, and yet we know for a fact that it does require a token. If there is a special reason here because he was giving his last dispositions, this again would show that in Arab's opinion, even where one gives his last dispositions, there must be a token gift, and we know for a fact that this is not the case. No, the real difficulty of Arab is this he did not say give wine, nor did he say give the money value of wine. What he said was of the wine, what does the other Arzera make of this? He says that he used the expression of the wine to make his Title more secure they sent from their Palestine to say of the wine makes his title more secure mission if a man had been thrown into a pit and cried out that whoever heard his voice should write a get for his wife the get should be written and presented to her Gemara but is there not a possibility that it may be a demon Rab Judah said we assume that he can be seen to have the appearance of a man but the demons also can look like men we assume that they see a shadow but they also have a shadow we assume they see a shadow of a shadow but perhaps they also have a shadow of a shadow our Hannah said Jonathan my son has taught me that they have a shadow but not a shadow of a shadow but perhaps it is her rival Atana of the school of our Ishmael taught in time of danger we can write and give a get even if we do not know him mission if a man in health says write a get for my wife his intention is merely to play with her it once happened with a man in good health who said write a Get for my wife and then went up onto a roof and fell down from it and died. And Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel said that if he had thrown himself down, this was a get, but if the wind had blown him over, it was no get. Gamar, the instance of this disproves the rule, does it not? There is a lacuna and the mission should run thus. If his subsequent conduct reveals his intention to kill himself, the get is valid. It once happened with a man in good health who said, Right, a get for my wife and then went up to a roof and fell down from it and died. And Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel said if he had thrown himself down, this was a get. But if the wind had blown him over, it was no get. A certain man went into the synagogue and found a teacher of children and his son sitting there and a third man sitting by them. He said to them, I want two of you to write a get for my wife before the get was given. The teacher died. The question arose, do people usually make a son their agent in the place of his father or not? Are Naman said people do not make a son the agent in the place of his father while our poppy said that people do make a son their agent in the place of his father Rabbi said the law is that people do make a son the agent in place of the father Mishnah if a man said to two persons give a get to my wife Talmud, Mosque and B or to three persons write a get and give it to my wife they should write and give it if he said to three persons give a get to my wife they may tell others to write because he has made them a beth in this is the view of our Meir and this is the halacha which our Hannah a man of Ono brought from our Akiba in prison I have it from my teachers that if a man says to three persons give a get to my wife they may tell others to write it because he has constituted them a beth in our Jose said we said to the messenger we also have it on tradition from our teachers that even if he said to the great beth in Jerusalem give a get to my wife they should learn and write and give it if a man says to ten persons write a get and deliver it to my wife one writes and two sign as witnesses if he said all of you write one writes and all sign consequently if one of them dies the get is invalid Gemara our Jeremiah B. Abba said an inquiry was sent from the school of Rab to Samuel would our teacher inform us if a man said to two persons write and deliver a get to my wife and they told the scribe and he wrote it and they themselves signed it what is the law he sent back where she must leave her second husband but the matter requires further study what did he mean by saying that the matter requires further study shall we say it is because only a verbal instruction was given to them and Samuel is in doubt whether a verbal instruction can be passed on to another agent or not has not Samuel said in the name of Rabbi that the Halacha follows our Jose who said that verbal instructions cannot be passed on to another agent no what Samuel wanted to know was this when the husband Said to the men, right? Did he mean their signatures or the get? Cannot this be determined from the mission? If a man said to two persons, give a get to my wife, or if he said to three, write a get and give it to my wife, they should write and deliver it here too. He was in doubt whether right meant their signatures or the actual get. Surely it is obvious that it must be the get from what we read in the later clause. Our Jose said, we said to the messenger, we too have it on tradition from our teachers that even if he said to the great Beth in Jerusalem, give a get to my wife, they should learn and write and give to her. Now, if you say that the writing of the get is meant, this creates no difficulty. But if you say it is the writing of the signatures, surely there is no Beth in the members of which do not know how to sign their names. Yes, this might happen in a new Beth in. Now, if we adopt the opinion that right means write your signatures, but as to the actual get, it is in order, even if. Written by others, how can this be seen that Samuel said in the name of Rabbi that the Halachah is in accordance with our Jose who said that verbal instructions cannot be passed on to another agent? We might reply that if we adopt the opinion that
You sign and they will go and in order not to offend the scribe let the scribe sign along with one of them which is not what the husband said we say here also such a get is valid but this should not be done in Israel this is a sufficient answer for one who holds that it is valid but should not be done but to one who holds that it is valid and may be done what are we to say the truth is that our Jose laid down two disqualifications and Samuel concurred with him in regard to one and differed. From him in regard to the other the text above states Samuel said in the name of Rabbi that the Halachah is in accordance with our Jose who said that verbal instructions cannot be passed on to an agent our Simeon son of Rabbi said to him seeing that our Hannah of Ono and our Meir take a different view from our Jose what was Rabbi's reason for saying that the Halachah follows our Jose he replied say nothing my son say nothing you have never seen our Jose had you seen him you would know that he always had good ground for his views for so it has been taught Isibi Judah used to specify the distinctive merits of the various sages our Meir he said was wise and describe our Judah was wise when he desired to be our Tarfan was a heap of nuts our Ishmael was a well stocked shop our Akiba was a storehouse with compartments our Yohan and Binary was a basket of fancy goods our Eliezer B. Ezra was a basket of spices the mission of our Eliezer B. Jacob the elder was little and good our Jose always had his reasons our Simeon used to grind much and let out little Atana explained this to mean that he used to forget little and what he let go from his mind was only the brand so too said our Simeon to his disciples my sons learn my rule since my rules are the cream of the cream of our Akiba's the text above states if a man said to two persons tell the scribe to write and so and so and so and so to sign our Huna said in the name of Rab that the get is valid but this should not be done in Israel said Ula to our Naman or According to others Arnaman said to Allah seeing that the get is valid why should this not be done in Israel he replied we are afraid lest she might suborn witnesses but do we entertain any such fear has it not been taught once the witnesses have signed to a deed of purchase of a field or the get of a woman the sages entertain no doubts about their reliability they would not do anything wrong but they might say something if a man said to two persons tell the scribe to write and do you sign R. Hista said that the get would be valid but this should not be done Rabbi Barhana said that it is valid and this may be done Arnaman said it is valid and this may not be done Arshis hate said it is valid and this may be done Rabbi said it is valid and this may not be done Ar Joseph said it is valid and this may be done Talmud Mosque and be some reverse the names in the last two statements if he said to ten persons write a get our rabbis taught if he says to ten persons write a get and Give it to my wife one writes on behalf of all of them if he says all of you write one writes in the presence of all of them if he says to ten take a get to my wife one takes it on behalf of all of them if he says all of you take it one takes it in the company of the rest the question was raised if he enumerated them one by one what is the law or who not said enumeration is not the same as saying all of you are Yohanan said in the name of our Eliezer from Ruma that enumeration is the same as saying all of you are Papa said they are not in conflict the one speaks of where he enumerated all of them and the other of where he enumerated only some of them some explain this in one way and some explain it in the opposite way Rab Judah made a regulation that in again which the husband had ordered with the word all of you they should insert the words he said to us write either all of you or any one of you sign either all of you or any two of you convey all of you or any one of you Rabbah. Said sometimes a man cuts his word short and says all of you without adding any one of you and he can afterwards come and declare the get invalid Rabbah therefore said that they should insert the words right any one of you sign any two of you convey any one of you C-H-A-P-T-E-R-V-I-I mission if a man is seized with a cordicos and says write a get for my wife his words are of no effect if he says write a get for my wife and is then seized with a cordicos and then says do not write it his later words are of no effect if he is struck dumb and when they say to him shall we write a get for your wife he nods his head he is tested with three questions if he signifies no and yes properly each time then the get should be written and given for him tomorrow what is cordicos Samuel said being overcome by new wine from the vet then why does it not say if one is overcome by new wine the mode of expression teaches us that the spirit which causes the dizziness is called cordicos of what? Uses this knowledge for a charm. What is the remedy for it? Red meat broiled on the coals and wine highly diluted. Abbe said, My mother's told me that for a sunstroke fever, the remedy is on the first day to take a jug of water. If it lasts two days to let blood, if three days to take red meat broiled on the coals and highly diluted wine for a chronic heat stroke, he should bring a black hand and tear it lengthwise and crosswise and shave the middle of his head and put the bird on it and leave it there till it sticks fast. And then he should go down to the river and stand in water up to his neck till he is quite faint. And then he should swim out and sit down. If he cannot do this, he should eat leeks and go down and stand in water up to his neck till he is faint. And then swim out and sit down for sunstroke. One should eat red meat broiled on the coals with wine much diluted for a chill. One should eat fat meat broiled on the coals with undiluted wine when the household of it. Exilarch wanted to annoy our room the pious they made him lie down in the snow on the next day they said what would your honor like us to bring you he knew that whatever he told them they would do the reverse so he said to them lean meat broiled on the coals and wine much diluted they brought him fat meat broiled on the coals and undiluted wine Yalfa heard and took him into the bath and they kept him there till the water turned to the color of blood and his flesh was covered with bright spots our Joseph used to cure the shivers by working at the mill our she's hate by carrying heavy beams he said work is a splendid thing to make one warm the Exilarch once said to our she's hate why will your honor not dine with us he replied because your servants are not reliable being suspected of taking a limb from a living animal you don't say so said the Exilarch he replied I will just show you he then told his attendant to steal a leg from an animal and bring it when he brought it to him he said to the servants of the eggs, a large place the pieces of the animal before me. They brought three legs and placed them before him. He said to them, This must have been a three legged animal. They then cut a leg off an animal and brought it. He then said to his attendant, Now, producers, he did so. And he then said to them, This must have been a five legged animal. The eggs, a large said to him, That being the case, let them prepare the food in your presence and then you can eat it very good. He replied, They brought up a table and placed meat before him and set in front of him a portion with a dangerous bone. He felt it and took and wrapped it in his scarf. When he had finished, they said to him, Talmud, Mosque and a silver cup has been stolen from us in the course of their search for it. They found the meat wrapped in his scarf, whereupon they said to the eggs, a large sea, sir, that he does not want to eat but only to vex us. He said, I did eat, but I found in it the taste of the boil. They said to him, No. Animal with a boil has been prepared for us today. He said to them, Examine the place where my portion came from. Since Arhista has said that a white spot on black skin or a black spot on white skin is a mark of disease, they examined and found that it was so. When he was about to depart, they dug a pit and threw a mat over it and said to him, Come, sir, and recline Arhista snorted behind him. And he said to a boy, Tell me the last verse you have learned. The boy said, Turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left. He said to his attendant, What can you see? He replied, A mat thrown across the path. He said, Turn aside from it. When he got out, Arhista said to him, How did you know, sir? He replied, For one thing, because you, sir, snorted behind me. And again, from the verse which the boy quoted, and also because the servants are suspect of playing tricks, I get me Sharim and Jeroth and the delights of the sons of men. Shida and Shido Sharim and Jeroth means diverse kinds of music, the delights of it. Sons of men are ornamental pools and baths and here in Babylon they translate as male and female demons in the West Palestine they say it means carriages or Yohanan said there were 300 kinds of demons in Shine but what a is I do not know the master said here they translate male and female demons for what did Solomon want them as indicated in the verse and the house when it was in building was made of stone made ready at the quarry there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building he said to the rabbis how shall I manage without iron tools they replied there is the shamir which Moses brought for the stones of the ephod he asked them where is it to be found they replied bring a male and a female demon and tie them together perhaps they know and will tell you so he brought a male and a female demon and tied them together they said to him we do not know but perhaps Ashmite, the prince of it. Demons knows he said to them where is he they answered he is in such and such a mountain he has dug a pit there which he fills with water and covers with a stone which he then seals with his seal
was bringing him along he came to a palm tree and rubbed against it and down it came he came to a house and knocked it down he came to the hut of a certain widow she came out Talmud, Mosque and B and besought him and he bent down so as not to touch it there by breaking a bone he said that bears out the verse a soft tongue break the bone he saw a blind man straying from his way and he put him on the right path he saw a drunken man losing his way and he put him on his path he saw a wedding procession making its way merrily and he wept he heard a man say to a shoemaker make me a pair of shoes that will last seven years and he laughed he saw a divine practicing divinations and he laughed when they reached Jerusalem he was not taken to see Solomon for three days on the first day he asked why does the king not want to see me they replied because he has overdrunk himself so he took a brick and placed it on top of another when they reported this to Solomon he said to them what he meant to tell you was give him more to drink on the next day he said to them why does the king not want to see me they replied because he has overeaten himself he thereupon took one brick from off the other and placed it on the ground when they reported this to Solomon he said he meant to tell you to keep food away from me after three days he went in to see him he took a reed and measured four cubits and threw it in front of him saying see now when you die you will have no more than four Cubits in this world now however you have subdued the whole world yet you are not satisfied till you subdue me too he replied I want nothing of you what I want is to build the temple and I require the shamir he said it is not in my hands it is in the hands of the prince of the sea who gives it only to the woodpecker to whom he trusts it on oath what does the bird do with it he takes it to a mountain where there is no cultivation and puts it on the edge of the rock which thereupon splits and he then takes seeds from trees and brings them and throws them into the opening and things grow there this is what the targum means by Nagarjura so they found out a woodpecker's nest with young in it and covered it over with white glass when the bird came and wanted to get in but could not so it went and brought the shamir and placed it on the glass Baneahu thereupon gave a shout and it dropped the shamir and he took it and the bird went and committed suicide on account of its oath Baneahu. Said to Ashmite, why when you saw that blind man going out of his way did you put him right? He replied, it has been proclaimed of him in heaven that he is a holy righteous man and that whoever does him a kindness will be worthy of the future world. And why when you saw the drunken man going out of his way did you put him right? He replied, they have proclaimed concerning him in heaven that he is holy wicked and I conferred a boon on him in order that he may consume here his share in the future. Why when you saw the wedding procession did you weep? He said the husband will die within thirty days and she will have to wait for the brother-in-law who is still a child of thirteen years. Why when you heard a man say to the shoemaker, make me shoes to last seven years, did you laugh? He replied, that man has not seven days to live and he wants shoes for seven years. Why when you saw that divine divining, did you laugh? He said he was sitting on a royal treasure, he should have divined what? Was beneath him Solomon kept him with him until he had built the temple one day when he was alone with him he said it is written he had as it were to a vote and Riam and we explained that to a vote means the ministering angels and Riam means the demons what is your superiority over us he said to him take the chain off me and give me your ring and I will show you so he took the chain off him and gave him the ring he then swallowed him and placing one wing on the earth and one on the sky he hurled him four hundred parasangs in reference to that incident Solomon said what profit is there to a man in all his labor wherein he laboreth under the sun and this was my portion from all my labor what is referred to by this rab and Samuel gave different answers one saying that it meant his staff and the other that it meant his apron he used to go around begging saying wherever he went I could was king over Israel in Jerusalem when he came to the Sanhedrin the rabbi said let us see a madman does not stick to one thing only what is the meaning of this they asked who does the king send for you he replied no they sent to the queen saying does the king visit you they sent back word yes he does they then sent to them to say examine his leg they sent back to say he comes in stockings and he visits them in the time of their separation and he also calls for Bathsheba his mother they then sent for Solomon and gave him the chain and the ring on which the name was engraved when he went in Ashmite on catching sight of him flew away but he remained in fear of him therefore is it written behold it is a litter of Solomon three score mighty men are about it of the mighty men of Israel they all handle the sword and are expert in war every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night rab and Samuel differed about Solomon one said that Solomon was first a king and then a commoner and the other that he was first a king and then a commoner and then a king again for blood rushing to the head the remedy is to take sherbina and willow and moist myrtle and olive leaves and poplar and rosemary and yablat and boil them all together the sufferer should then place 300 cups on one side of his head and 300 on the other otherwise he should take white roses with all the leaves on one side and boil them and pour 60 cups over each side of his head for migraine one should take a woodcock and cut its throat with a white zeus over the side of his head on which he has pain taking care that the blood does not blind him and he should hang a bird on his doorpost so that he should rub against it when he goes in and out talmud mosque it in for a cataract he should take a scorpion with stripes of seven colors and dry it out of the sun and mix it with stibium in the proportion of one to two and drop three paint brushfuls into each eye not more lest he should put out his eye for night blindness he should take a string made of white hair and with it tie one of his own legs to the leg of a dog and children should rattle pots herds behind him saying old dog stupid cock he should also take seven pieces of raw meat from seven houses and put them on the doorpost and let the dog eat them on the ash pit of the town after that he should untie the string and they should say blindness of a son of the woman be leave a son of the woman be and they should blow into the dog's eye for day blindness he should take seven milts from the insides of animals and roast them in the shard of a blood letter and while he sits inside the house another man should sit outside and the blind man should say to him give me to eat and the other the seeing man should answer take and eat and after he has eaten he should break the shard as otherwise the blindness may come back to stop bleeding at the nose he should bring a cohen whose name is Levi and write Levi backwards or else bring any man and write I poppy Sheila Barsumpi backwards or else write thus Time Delibum Kesaf Time Delibimi Pegam, or else he can take root of clover and the rope of an old bed and papyrus and saffron and the red part of a palm branch and burn them all together and then take a fleece of wool and weave two threads and steep them in vinegar and roll them in the ashes and put them in his nostrils, or he can look for a watercourse running from east to west and stand astride over it and pick up some clay with his right hand from under his left leg and with his left hand from under his right leg and twine two threads of wool and rub them in the clay and put them in his nostrils, or else he can sit under a gutter pipe while they bring water and pour over him, saying, As these waters stop, so may the blood of a son of the woman be stopped to stop blood coming from the mouth. He should first be tested with a wheat straw if the blood sticks, it comes from the lungs and can be cured, but if not, it comes from the liver and cannot be cured, said RMI to our ashy, but we. Have learned the opposite the animal is trephot if the liver has been removed and nothing of it is left or if the lung is pierced or defective he replied since it comes away from his mouth we assume that the liver has been entirely dissolved in the lung the master just said if it comes from the lung there is a remedy for it what is the remedy let him take seven handfuls of hash beets and seven handfuls of mash leeks and seven handfuls of jujuberry and three handfuls of lentils and a handful of camon and a handful of flax and a quantity equal to all these of the ilium of the firstborn animal and let him cook the mixture and eat it washing it down with strong beer made in the month of Tebeth for toothache rabbi bar huna says that he should take the top of the garlic with one stalk only and grind it with oil and salt and put it on his thumbnail on the side where the tooth aches and put a rim of dough around it taking care that it does not touch his flesh as it may cause Leprosy for swollen glands are Yohanan said that pelitri leaves are as good as mamru and the root of pelitri better than mamru and he should put them in his mouth this is to prevent it from spreading to soften it he should take bread that came to the top of the seed and lentils with the earth still on them and clover and hemlock flour and the bud of cuscuta and he should put about the size of a nut in his mouth to make it burst someone should blow into his throat seeds of unripe dates through a wheat straw to make the flesh close he should bring dust from the shadow of a privy and knead it with honey and eat this is effective for guitar he should take about the size of a pistachio of gum ammoniac and about the size of a nut of sweet galbanum and a spoonful of white honey and a mahusin nettle of clear wine and boil them up together when the gum ammoniac
an end pack of wine with bay leaves for white intestinal worms he should take erica seed and tie it in a piece of cloth and soak it in water and drink it taking care not to swallow the pips since they may pierce his bowels for looseness of the bowels moist polio in water for constipation dry polio in water the mnemonic is dry twigs stop the stream for swelling of the spleen let him take seven leeches and dry them in the shade and every day drink two or three in wine alternatively he may take the Spleen of a she-goat which has not yet had young and stick it inside the oven and stand by it and say as the spleen dries so let the spleen of so-and-so son of so-and-so dry up or again he may dry it between the rows of bricks in a house and repeat these words or again he may look out for the corpse of a man who has died on Sabbath and take his hand and put it on the spleen and say as his hand is withered so let the spleen of so-and-so son of so-and-so wither or again he can take a fish and fry it in a smithy and eat it in the water of the smithy and wash it down with the water of the smithy a certain goat which drank from the water of the smithy was found on being killed to have no spleen another remedy is to open a barrel of wine expressly for him said Araha the son of Rabba to Arashi if he has a barrel of wine he will not come to consult your honor no what you should say is that he should take regularly by early in the morning as this is good for the whole body for anal. Worms he should take acacia and aloe juice and white leaf and silver dross and an amulet full of pillion and the excrement of doves and tie it all up in linen rags in the summer or in cotton rags in the winter alternatively let him drink strong wine while diluted for hip disease let him take a pot of fish brine and rub it sixty times round one hip and sixty times round the other for stone in the bladder let him take three drops of tar and three drops of leek juice and three drops of clear wine and pour it on the membrane of a man or on the corresponding place in a woman alternatively he can take the ear of a bottle and hang it on the membrane of a man or on the breast of a woman or again he can take a purple thread which has been spun by a woman of ill repute or the daughter of a woman of ill repute and hang it on the membrane of a man or the breast of a woman or again he can take a lust from a man and a woman and hang it on the membrane of a man and the corresponding place in a Woman and when he makes water he should do so on dry thorns near the socket of the door and he should preserve the stone that issues as it is good for all fevers for external fever he should take three sacks of date stones and three sacks of atra leaves and boil each separately while sitting between them and put them in two basins and bring a table and set them on it and bend first over one and then over the other until he becomes thoroughly warmed and then he should bathe himself in them and in drinking thereof afterwards he should drink only of the water of the atra leaves but not of the date stones as they cause barrenness for internal fever he should take seven handfuls of beef from seven beds and boil them with their earth and eat them and drink atra leaves in beer talmud mosque or grapes from a vine trailed on a palm tree in water for light and he should take seven arzanian wheat stalks and roast them over a new hoe and smear himself with the juice that exudes from them are Shimei B. Ashi used this remedy for a heathen for something else and it cured him. Samuel said if a man has been wounded by a Persian lance there is no hope for him all the same however he should be given fat roast meat and strong wine as this may keep him alive long enough to enable him to give his last instructions. Or E.D.B. Avin said if a man has swallowed a wasp there is no hope for him it is as well however to give him a rabiat of shamgaz vinegar to drink as this may keep him alive long enough to enable him to give his last instructions. Or Joshua B. Levi said if a man eats beef with turnips and sleeps in the moon on the nights of the 14th and 15th of the month in the cycle of Tammuz he is liable to a halu to this a gloss was added if one gorges himself with anything he is liable to a halu. Our Papa said this applies even to dates is not this obvious not so for you might argue thus seeing that a master has said dates fill and warm and promote digestion and strengthen and do not spoil the taste. I might think that dates are not included. Hence, we are told that they are what is a hilu. Our Eliezer said, a burning in the bones. What is meant by burning of bones? Abbe replied, a burning in the bones. What is the remedy for it? Abbe said, I have been told by my mother that all medicines are to be taken either three days or seven or twelve. But with this, he must go until he is cured. All other medicines must be taken on an empty stomach. This one, however, is different. After he has eaten and drunk and relieved himself and washed his hands, they must bring him a handful of shatiba with lentils and a handful of old wine and mix them together. And he must then eat it and wrap himself in his cloak and sleep. And he must not be disturbed till he wakes of himself. When he wakes, he must remove his cloak. Otherwise, the illness will return. Elijah once said to our Nathan, Eat and drink ether and leave ether for when you get angry and then you will have had your. Phil Arhaya taught if a man wants to avoid stomach trouble he should take to bowl regularly summer and winter in a meal which you enjoy indulge not too freely and do not wait too long to consult nature Marakba said if a man drinks white tilia he will be subject to debilite Arhis said there are 60 kinds of wine the best of all is red fragrant wine the worst is white tilia Rab Judah said if a man sits by the fire on the mornings of Nisan and rubs himself with oil and then goes out and sits in the sun he will be liable to debilite Our Rabbis taught if a man lets blood and then has marital intercourse his children born therefrom will be weaklings if both man and wife let blood before intercourse their children will be liable to our aid and our Papa said this is the case only if they did not take anything to eat in between but if they took something to eat there is no harm Rabbi Barhuna said if a man immediately on returning from a journey has marital intercourse his children Will be weaklings the rabbis taught on coming from a privy a man should not have sexual intercourse till he has waited long enough to walk half a mill because the demon of the privy is with him for that time if he does his children will be epileptic the rabbis taught if a man has sexual intercourse standing he will be liable to convulsions if sitting to spasms if she is above and he below he will be subject to delirium diarrhea what is delirium our Joshua B. Levi says the cure for diarrhea is tartar what is tartar Abbe said the crocus of thorns our papa used to crunch it in his teeth and swallow it our papa used to crunch it and spit it out Abbe said one who is not conversant with the way of the world should take three kafazi of safflower and grind it and boil it in wine and drink it or Yohanan said this is just what restored me to my youthful vigor three things weaken a man's strength namely anxiety traveling and sin anxiety as it is written my heart fluttereth my strength Faileth me traveling as it is written, he weakened my strength at the way sin as it is written, my strength faileth because of mine iniquity. Three things enfeeble a man's body, namely to eat standing, to drink standing, and to have marital intercourse standing. Five are nearer to death than to life, namely one who eats and rises immediately, or who drinks and rises immediately, or who lets blood and rises immediately, or who rises immediately on waking, or after marital intercourse if one does it. Following six things together, he will die immediately if he comes weary from a journey, lets blood and has a bath and drinks himself drunk and lies down to sleep on the floor and has marital intercourse. Or Yohanan said that is if he does them in this order, Abbe said if he does them in this order, he will die. If not in this order, he will fall ill. Is that so? Did not a certain me or a two, three of these things to her slave and he died? He was a weakling. There are eight things which enlarge. Quantities are harmful, but in small quantities are beneficial, namely traveling the way of the world, wealth, work, wine, sleep, hot baths, and bloodletting. Eight things cause a diminution of seed, namely salt, hunger, calls weeping, sleeping on the ground, lotus, cucumbers, out of season, and bloodletting below, which is as bad as any two. Eight had it taught as it is as bad as any two below, so it is as good as any two above. Our Papa said Talmud, Mosque, and be below means below the middle, and above means above. The middle in regard to cucumbers, out of season, a gloss was added as they are bad out of season, so they are good in season. Our Papa said in season means Tammuz, out of season means to bathe round about Nissan and Tishri, they are neither good nor bad. If he says write a get for my wife and is then seized with the cord, goes and then says do not write his last words are of no effect. Our Simeon B. Lakish said the get may be written immediately. Our Yohanan, however, said that it is not to be written till he comes. To himself again what is the reason of Rush Lakish because it is stated his last words are of no effect to this or Yohanan replies that the words his last words are of no effect mean that when he recovers the scribe need not consult him again but all the same the get is not written until he comes round in what do they differ in principle Rush Lakish puts the man on a PAR with one who is asleep and or Yohanan with a madman why should not or Yohanan put him on the same footing as a sleeper eh?
troubled him or that he hastened his own death what difference does it make which reason we adopt there is a difference where he killed him in a marble room and he struggled or where he killed him outside and he did not struggle if he is struck dumb and they say to him shall we write a gift for your wife etc but is there not a possibility that he was seized just then with an involuntary nodding of the head in a negative or a positive sense our joseph b menumi said in the name of our nominee suppose that we question him at intervals but perhaps the involuntary nodding seized him at the same intervals we suppose that we ask him two questions requiring a negative answer and one requiring an affirmative answer or two requiring an affirmative and one a negative answer in the school of our ishmael it was taught they talked to him about the requirements of the summer season and the rainy season and of the rainy season in the summer season what is referred to here shall we say Winter coat and summer coat, perhaps just then he was seized with a shiver or a perspiration. Talmud, mosque, and the proper way is to ask him about fruit. Arkahana said in the name of Rabbi, the deaf mute can signify his meaning by writing a get may be written and given to his wife. Said our Joseph, what does this tell us that we do not know already? We have learned if a man is struck dumb and when they say to him, Shall we write a get for your wife? He nods his head, he is tested with three questions. If he signifies no and yes properly each time, then the get should be written and given for him. Or Zara replied to him, You have quoted a statement about an ilum mute, and ilum is different as it has been taught. One who can speak but not hear is called harish, and one who can hear but not speak is called ilum, and both are considered to be in possession of their faculties for all purposes. What is your warrant for saying that one who can speak but not hear is called harish, and one who can hear? But not speak is called ilum because it is written. But I am as a deaf man, harish. I hear not, and I am as a dumb man, ilum that openeth not his mouth. Or if you like, I can say that we know it from the colloquial description of a dumb man as ish tekel mali. Arzera said, if I do find any difficulty in Arkahana's remark, it is this that it has been taught. If he do not utter it, this excludes a mute who cannot utter. Now, why should this be seen that according to Arkahana he can signify by writing? I may reply to him. You are speaking of testimony, and testimony comes under a different rule because the All Merciful has said that it must be from their mouths and not from their writing. The following was raised in objection to Abay's statement in the same way as he is tested in connection with the get. So he is tested in connection with business transactions with testimony and with bequest. Now testimony is mentioned here. Our Joseph B. Menumi said in the name of Arshis, hate this. Applies only to testimony regarding the status of a woman with which the rabbis were not so strict, but it also says bequests are about said it refers to the inheritance of his eldest son, but it also says in connection with business transactions, and this presumably means anyone's no, it refers only to his own. The following was then raised in objection the directions of a deaf mute given by gestures by lip movements and by writing are to be followed only in regard to the transfer of movables. But not to get there is in truth a difference of opinion on this point between Tanaim as it has been taught. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel says this is the case only with one who was a deaf mute from the outset, but one who was originally whole and became a deaf mute after marriage can write a get for himself which others can sign, but cannot one who was originally a deaf mute give a get as he married her by gesture, cannot he also divorce her by gesture if we were speaking of his wife this would. Indeed be the case, but in fact we are dealing with his sister-in-law, his sister-in-law from whom are we to say one who fell to his law from his deceased brother who was also a deaf mute in that case just as she was married by gesture so she can be put away by gesture. No, it is one who fell to his law from a brother in possession of his faculties. Alternatively I may say that she did fall to his law from a brother who was a deaf mute and we forbid the wife of a deaf mute to be divorced by gesture so as not to set a precedent for the wife of one who was sound. If that is the case should we not forbid him to divorce his wife also a sister-in-law can be confused with a sister-in-law but not with a wife but do we indeed forbid a deaf mute because of a sound one Talmud, Moskid and B have we not learned if two brothers deaf mutes were married to two sisters who were not deaf mutes or to two sisters who were deaf mutes or to two sisters one of whom was a deaf mute and the other. Not and similarly if two sisters who were deaf mutes were married to two brothers who were not deaf mutes or to two brothers who were deaf mutes or to two brothers one of whom was a deaf mute and the other not these sisters are free from the obligation of Eliza or Levi rape marriage if however the women were not related to one another they must contract the marriage and if the second husband desires to put her away he may do so the truth is that the first answer is the best our Yohanan said R. Simeon B. Gamaliel's colleagues differed from him Abbe said we have also learned to the same effect if the wife became insane he cannot put her away if he became deaf and dumb or insane he can never put her away what is meant by never surely it means even if he can signify his intention in writing our Papa said but for the statement of our Yohanan I would have said that our Simeon B. Gamaliel intended only to explain the statement of the previous tana and that never means even though we see that he is intelligent or I might have said the word never indicates the lesson taught by our Isaac for our Isaac said according to the rule of the written Torah an insane wife can be divorced being on the same footing as a sound woman who is divorced without her own consent why then did the rabbis lay down that she should not be divorced in order that she should not be used for immoral purposes Mishnah if they said to him shall we write a gift for your wife and he said to them write and if they then told a scribe and he wrote and witnesses and they signed even though they have already written and signed it and given it to him and he in turn has given it to her the get is void unless he himself has said to the scribe write and to the witnesses sign tomorrow the reason why it is invalid is because he did not say give instead of write we presume therefore that if he said give they may tell others to write and give whose view is this are who said that verbal instructions can be entrusted to an agent read now the later clause unless he has said to the scribe right and to the witnesses sign this brings us round to the view of our Jose who said that verbal instructions cannot be entrusted to an agent are we to say then that the first clause follows our mayor and the second our Jose yes the first follows our mayor and the second our Jose Abe however said the whole follows our mayor and we are dealing here in the last clause with the case where he did not say give if that is the case it should say he must say give in fact the case here is one in which he did not tell three persons if that is the case it should say he must tell three hence the whole follows our Jose and the case here is one in which he did not say tell if that is the case it should say he must say tell and besides does our Jose admit that the get is valid where he says tell have we not learned if a scribe wrote and a witness signed it is valid and our Jeremiah explained that what is meant is that the scribe also Signed and Arhista said whom does this mission follow Talmud, Mosque and A.R. Jose who said that instructions are not transmitted to a messenger now if you should assume that our Jose admits that the get is valid where he said tell then serious results may sometimes ensue for it may happen that he says to two persons tell the scribe to write and so and so and so and so to sign and they in order not to offend the scribe let him sign and this is not what the husband said the best view therefore is that the first clause follows our mayor and the later one our Jose Arashi said the whole follows our Jose and the last clause forms a climax not only where he omitted to say give is the get invalid but even where he said give and not only where he did not tell three persons but even where he told three persons and not only where he did not say tell but even where he said tell the get is invalid till he says to the scribe etc it has been taught in accord with Arashi in the case where the scribe wrote and the witnesses signed for her name though they had written and signed it and given it to him and he had given it to her the get is void unless they had heard him saying with his own voice to the scribe right and to the witnesses signed the word here excludes the opinion mentioned above that our Jose admits that the get is valid where the husband said tell his voice excludes the statement made by Arkahana in the name of Rab Mishnah if a man says this is your get if I die this is your get if I die from this illness this is your get after my death his words are of no effect if he says from today if I die from now if I die the get is valid if he says from today and after my death it is both a get and no get and if he dies without issue she must give Elizabeth she cannot marry the husband's brother if he said this is your get from today if I die from this illness and he then got up and went about and fell sick and died we must estimate the probable cause of his Death if he died from the first illness the get is valid but otherwise not Gamara if he said this is your get if I die etc this would indicate that the formula if I die is equivalent to after my death yet in the next clause we are told that the get is valid if he says from today if I die from now if I die which would indicate that it is not equivalent to after
Abu Awazil Arhuna and Arnaman went to visit him and Arhuna said to Arnaman ask Rabbi Abu whether the Halacha follows Arhuzay or not and Arnaman answered I do not know Arhuzay's reason and how can I ask him the Halacha whereupon Arhuna said you ask him the Halacha and I will tell you the reason he therefore asked him and he replied thus said Rabbi Halacha is according to Arhuzay when he came out he Arhuna said to him the reason of Arhuzay is this he held that the date of it. Document is sufficient indication this then cannot be Arhuna's reason we must suppose therefore that he was uncertain Talmud, Mosque it and be whether Arhuzay meant his ruling to apply to a verbal declaration or not but was he uncertain have we not learned if a man said this is your get if I do not return within 12 months from now and he died within the 12 months the get is not valid and in this connection it was taught our rabbis allowed her to marry and we stated in the Beth Hamid Rash. Who are our rabbis and Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Beth in which permitted oil and they took the same view as Arhuzay we must therefore say that Arhuna's uncertainty was as to whether the Halacha follows Arhuzay where the declaration was made by word of mouth or not but can he have been in doubt about this seeing that Rabbi has said if a man says this is I get if I die or supposing I die the get is valid but if he said when I die or after my death the get is not valid now how? Are we to understand this? Are we to suppose that he also said from today and that Rabbi adopted the view of the rabbis? Surely there is no need to tell us the seeing that we have learned if he said from today if I die the get is valid. We must therefore suppose that he does not say to her from today and that Rabbi adopted the view of Arhuzay which shows that the Halacha is in accordance with Arhuzay. Does it not? Rabbi was quite sure on the point Arhuna was uncertain. Alternatively, I may suppose Rabbi to have meant that the man does say from today and that he was giving the view of the rabbis and that his purpose was to explain in regard to these various expressions that supposing I die is equivalent to if I die and when I die to after my death. Some connect Arhuna's remark with the latter clause of the mission. Thus, if a man says this is your get after my death, his words are of no effect. Arhuna said, if we accept the view of Arhuzay, she must give Eliza. Surely this is. Obvious since in the later case the ruling of the rabbis requires her to give Eliza in the earlier case also the ruling of Arhuzay must require her to give Eliza you might think that in this case Arhuzay concurs with rabbi who said that it is an unexceptionable get and that she would not require to give Eliza either Arhuna therefore tells us that neither did rabbi concur with Arhuzay nor Arhuzay with rabbi rabbi did not concur with Arhuzay because he stated expressly a get like this is valid to exclude one allowed by Arhuzay Arhuzay did not concur with rabbi because he stated expressly a get like this is valid to exclude one allowed by rabbi in what connection did rabbi use these words as it has been taught if a man says from today and after my death this is a get and no get so the rabbis but rabbi says a get like this is valid in what connection did Arhuzay use these words as we have learned if a man says right and give a get to my wife if I do not come within twelve Months from now, if then they wrote it within the twelve months and gave it after the twelve, it is no get. Arhuze, however, said a get like this is valid if he says this is your get from today. If I die and he gets up and goes about, etc. Arhuna said his get is on the same footing as his gift. Just as if he gets up, he can withdraw his gift. So if he gets up, he can withdraw his get. And just as his get, even though he does not express his intention precisely, is valid once he says right, even though he does not add gift. So his gift is valid as soon as he says give, even though no token gift is made. We have learned if he says this is your get from today. If I die from this illness and he then got up and went about and fell sick and died, we must estimate the probable cause of his death. If he died from the first illness, the get is valid, but otherwise not. Now, if you say that if he gets up, he can retract. Why do I require an estimate? We see that he has got up. Mar the son of our Joseph said in the name of. Rabbi, we suppose he has passed from one illness into another, but it says that he gets up, he gets up from one illness and falls into another, but it says he goes about it means that he goes with a crushed Talmud, Mosque and A, and this is to show us that it is when he goes on a crush that an estimate must be made, but that in the other case we do not even require to estimate. Are we to understand from this that the gift of a sick person who passes from one illness to another and dies is valid? Yes, since our Eliezer has said in the name of Rabbi, the gift of a sick person who passes from one illness into another is valid. Rabbi and Rabbi did not concur in this opinion of Arhuna as they were afraid it might lead people to think that a get could be given after death, but is it possible that where a get is invalid according to the Torah we should for fear of misleading people declare it effective for making a married woman marriageable? Yes, whoever betrothes a woman does so on the conditions. Laid down by the rabbis and the rabbis have nullified the betrothal of such a one said Rabbi to Arashi this can well be where he betrothed by means of a money gift but if he betrothed by means of intercourse what can we say he replied the rabbis declared his intercourse to be fornication or rabbis taught if he says this is I get from today if I die from this illness and the house fell on him or a serpent bit him it is no get if he said if I do not get up from this illness and the house fell on him or a serpent bit him it is a get why is the rule different in the first case and in the second they sent from there to say in answer to an inquiry if a lion consumed him we cannot consider it to get a certain man sold a field to his neighbor guaranteeing him against any accident that might happen to it eventually they, the government turned a river through it he consulted Rabbi who said to him you must go and clear it for him since you have guaranteed him against any accident which may happen to it thereupon our Ahabi Tehilafar remarked to Rabbin it is an exceptional kind of accident various opinions were taken and the matter was at last laid before Rabbah who said it is an exceptional kind of accident Rabbin raised the following objection against Rabbah where he said if I do not get up from this illness and the house fell on him or a serpent bit him this is a get Rabbah replied why do you not quote the earlier clause where it says it is no get said Araha from 52 Rabbin because the first clause conflicts with the second may we not raise an objection from the letter he replied that is so since the first clause conflicts with the second the letter was not discussed in the Beth Hamid Rash and it is not authentic you must therefore follow your own reason our Papa and Arhuna the son of our Joshua bought some sesame on the bank of Nihar Malka and they hired some boatmen to bring it across with a guarantee against any accident that might happen to it after a Time the Nihar Malka Canal was stopped up, they said to them, Hire asses and deliver the stuff to us since you have guaranteed us against any accident. They appealed to Rabbah who said to them, White ducks who want to strip men of their clothes, it is an exceptional kind of accident. Mishnah, she should not consort with him save in the presence of witnesses, though a slave or a bondwoman is sufficient, not however her own bondwoman, since she can take liberties with her own handmaid. What is her status? During those days, our Judah says that Talmud, Mosque and B, she is regarded as a married woman in every respect. Our Jose says that she is both divorced and not divorced. Gemara, our rabbis taught if people have observed that she consorted with him in the dark or slept with him under the foot of the bed, they do not suspect them of having engaged in something else, but they do suspect them of loose conduct and they do not suspect that he has betrothed her. Our Jose, son of our Judah, however, says they also. Suspect him of having betrothed her. What is the meaning of this? Arnaman said in the name of Rabbi Abu The meaning is this: If they saw him have intercourse with her, they suspect he has done so as a method of betrothing her. If he afterwards gave her money, they suspect that it was on account of fornication, as we say that he gave it her for her hire. But we do not suspect it was for betrothal. Our Jose, son of Arjuda, however, says that in this case also we have to suspect that it may have been for betrothal. On which of these views can we justify the statement made by Rabbi Barhan in the name of Arjuna? And the difference arises only in the case where they saw her have intercourse. But if they did not see her have intercourse, both sides agree that she does not require from him a second get. On which view can this be justified? On both views, Abay strongly demurred to the explanation given by Arnaman is the giving of money. He said, mentioned no said Abay. The meaning is this: If they saw her have intercourse, they suspect her of fornication, but do not suspect it was for betrothal. Our Jose, son of our Judah, says we also suspect that it may have been for betrothal. On which of these views can we justify the statement made by Rabbi Barhan in the name of our Yohanan? The difference arises only in the case where they saw her have intercourse, but if they did not see her have intercourse, both sides agree that she does not require from
The horse provided only that he dies. How would the difference between Armadir and Arhose work out in practice? Our Yohanan says in respect of a guilt offering brought out of doubt according to Armadir, the man does not bring a guilt offering out of doubt according to Arhose. He does the sages say that she is divorced and not divorced. The sages say the same thing as Arhose do they not a practical difference arises in the application of the rule laid down by Arzera for Arzera said in the name of Rabbah. Be Jeremiah who had it from Samuel wherever the sages have said that a woman is divorced and not divorced the husband is under obligation to maintain her mission if a man says this is your get on condition that you give me 200 ZUZ she is divorced thereby and she has to give him the money if he says on condition that you give it to me within 30 days from now if she gives him within 30 days she is divorced but if not she is not divorced Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel said it. Happened in Sidon that a man said to his wife this is your get on condition that you give me back my robe and his robe was lost and the sages said that she should give him its value in money tomorrow what precisely is meant by the words and she has to give him Arhuna says it means and she shall thereafter give him Rab Judah says it means when she gives him what difference does it make in practice which view we adopt it makes a difference if the get is torn or lost before the money is given. According to Arhuna who said it means that she is thereafter to give she does not require from him a second get according to Rab Judah who said that it means when she gives she requires from him a second get in connection with betrothals also we have an analogous statement as we have learned if a man says to a woman behold thou art betrothed to me on condition that I give thee two hundred zoos she is betrothed to him and he is to give her the money and in the discussion thereon it was said what is meant by he is to give and Arhuna said it means he shall thereafter give while Rab Judah said it means when he gives what practical difference does it make which view we adopt the difference arises if she puts forth her hand and receives betrothal money from another according to Arhuna who said that it means he shall thereafter give the giving is a mere condition and he has only to fulfill his condition whereas according to Rab Judah who said that it means when he gives the betrothal takes. Effect only when he gives, but at the time it is no betrothal, and both cases required to be stated. For if the rule had been stated only in regard to betrothal, I might have thought that in that case Arhuna said that it means and he is to give because his intention is to bring her nearer to himself. But in the case of divorce, where his intention is to put her away from himself, I might have thought that he accepts the view of Rab Judah. If again it had been stated in regard only to divorce, I might have thought that in that case Arhuna said it means he shall thereafter give because he would not be shy to ask her. But in the case of betrothal, where she might be diffident to ask him, I might have thought that he would accept the view of Rab Judah. Again, if the rule had been stated in connection only with betrothal, I might have thought that Rab Judah said that in that case it means when she gives because she is diffident to ask him. But in the case of divorce, where he would not be shy to. Ask her I might have thought that he accepts the view of Arhuna and if the rule had been stated only in connection with divorce I might have thought that in that case Rab Judah says it means when she gives because his intention is to put her away from him but in the case of betrothal where his intention is to bring her nearer to him I might have thought that he accepts the view of Arhuna therefore both statements were necessary and objection was raised if a man says this is your get on condition that you give me 200 zoos even though the get is torn or lost she is divorced though she cannot marry any other man until she gives him the money further it has been taught if a man says this is your get on condition that you give me 200 zoos and he dies if she has already given before he dies she is not in any way tied to the brother-in-law but if she has not yet given she is tied to the brother-in-law Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says she can give the money to his Father or his brother or to one of the relatives. Now the two authorities here differ only to this extent that one holds that give me means to me but not to my ears and the other holds that it means to me or even to my ears but both hold that it is a mere condition. This would seem to be a refutation of Rab Judah. Rab Judah, however, may answer who is the authority for this view. It is Rabbi since Arhuna has said in the name of Rabbi the formula on condition is equivalent to from now but the rabbis join issue with him and I follow the rabbis. Arzera said when we were in Babylon we used to state that the ruling which Arhuna said in the name of Rabbi that the formula on condition is equivalent to from now is disputed by the rabbis. When I went up to Eretz Yisrael I found R.C. sitting and saying in the name of Arhuna and all agree that the formula on condition is equivalent to from now. A difference of opinion arose only with regard to the formula from today and after my death. Talmud, Moskid and B as it has been taught if he says from today and after my death it is a get and no get this is the opinion of the sages rabbi says one like this is a get now if Rab Judah is right in saying that they differ as to the effect of on condition instead of joining issue in the Beritha on the question of from now and after my death let them join issue on on condition this is to show you how far rabbi is prepared to go but let them differ about on condition to show how far the rabbis are prepared to go the Tana of the Beritha prefer to make the stronger instance one of permission on condition that you give me within 30 days from now surely this is obvious you might think that he is really not particular and that he only wants to urge her on we are told therefore that this is not so Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel said it happened inside and etc of what statement is this given as an illustration there is a lacuna and we should read thus if he said to her on condition that you give me my robe and his robe was lost we rule that he meant his particular robe and nothing else Rabban Gamaliel says that she can give him the money value and in confirmation R. Simeon B. Gamaliel further said that a case happened in Sidon where a man said to his wife this is your get on condition that you give me my robe and his robe was lost and the sages said that she should give him the money value of it R.C. inquired of R. Yohanan if a man said this is your get on condition that you give me 200 zoos and he then changed his mind and said you can keep the money what is the law this is equally a problem whether we adopt the view of the rabbis or whether we adopt that of Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel from the standpoint of the rabbis it is a problem because we may hold that the rabbis only ruled as they did in the other case of the robe because he did not forego his claim but here we see that he tells her that she can keep the money or we may also hold that Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel ruled as he did only because she made it good for him with a money payment but where she pays him nothing at all he would not say that she is divorced he replied she is not divorced ERC therefore raised the following objection if a man says to another conum be whatever benefit you have of me unless you give my son a core of wheat and two barrels of wine Armadir says he is forbidden to have any benefit of him until he gives but the sages say that such a man also may release himself from his own vow without consulting a wise man by saying to himself I regard myself as having received them on his behalf are these two cases parallel in that case his intention is to give her trouble and he has not done so but in this case he was trying to obtain some positive advantage and found he could do without it a certain man said to his medieval the general rule is that a medieval irrigates the land three times a year and takes a fourth of it Produce as his chair I want you to irrigate four times and take a third before he had finished irrigating the rain came our Joseph said he has not actually irrigated the fourth time Rabbi said there was no need for a fourth irrigation may we say that our Joseph adopted the point of view of the rabbis and Rabbi that of Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel can you really maintain the seeing that it is a fixed rule with us that the law follows Rabbi and in this matter the halacha does not follow. Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel no there can be no question that the law is as determined by the rabbis our Joseph follows the rabbis without question while Rabbi can say to you my view can be justified even from the standpoint of the rabbis for the reason why the rabbis ruled as they did in that case was only because his intention was to give her trouble but here he was after some advantage and he found that he could do without it we have learned in another place at first a man who had bought a house. From another in a walled city used to hide himself on the last day of the twelve-month period so that the house should become his forever Hillel the elder therefore ordained that he the owner should throw his money into a certain chamber and that having done so he should be at liberty to break the door open and enter and the other whenever he liked should come and take his money robber remarked upon this from this regulation of Hillel we may learn that if a man said this is your get on condition that you give me two hundred zoos and she gave it to him if he accepted the money willingly she is divorced but if she had to force it on him she is not divorced for since Hillel found it necessary to ordain in this instance that a gift forced on the donee should be accounted a gift Talmud, Moskid and we conclude that in general a gift forced on the donee is not accounted a gift our papa or as
Ruling in our Mishnah, the Halacha follows him save in the matters of the Arab of Sidon and of the later proof. Our rabbis taught if a man says this is your get on condition that the paper belongs to me, she is not divorced. If he says on condition that you return me the paper, she is divorced. Why this difference between the two cases are historical. Replied the authority followed here is Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel who said in an analogous case that she should give the money value. So here too it is possible for her to make it right for him with a money payment. Have they strongly demurred to the saying? I grant you that Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel meant this ruling to apply where the object for which compensation is given cannot be produced, but would he have said the same where it can be produced? No said Abbe, the authority followed here is our mayor who said that a condition to be binding must be duplicated, and here he has not duplicated his condition. Rabbi strongly objected to the saying. Reason according to you is that he did not duplicate the condition so that if he had duplicated the condition it would not have been a get let us see now whence do we derive the rule governing conditions from the condition of the children of Gad and the children of Reuben therefore just as there the condition was mentioned before the act conditional audit so in all cases the condition should be mentioned before the act and that excludes the present case where the act is mentioned before the condition no said Rabbah the reason is that the act is mentioned before the condition are a to be Ahabah strongly objected to the saying the reason according to you is that the act was mentioned before the condition so that if the condition were mentioned before the act it would not be a divorce let us see now whence do we derive the rule of conditions from that of the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben therefore just as there the condition relates to one thing and the act to another so it should be in all cases to exclude such a one as this Talmud, Moskid and B where both the condition and the act relate to the same thing no said R.A. to B.A. but the reason why she is divorced is because the condition and the act relate to the same thing R.A. she however said the authority followed here is Rabbi for Arhuna has said in the name of Rabbi the formula on condition is equivalent to from now Samuel laid down that a get given by a man on a sick bed should run if I do not die this will not be a get and if I die it will be a get why not rather say if I die it will be a get and if I do not die it will not be a get a man does not like to commence with a mention of evil for himself but why should he not say this will not be a get if I do not die the condition must be mentioned before the act Rabbi strongly questioned Samuel's dictum let us see he said once do we derive the rule for conditions from the condition of the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben therefore just as there the affirmative comes before the negative so it should be in all cases which would exclude this one where the negative comes before the affirmative no said Rabbi the get should run as follows if I do not die it will not be a get if I die it will be a get if I do not die it will not be a get we write if I do not die it will not be a get so as to avoid his commencing with a mention of evil for himself then we say if I die it will be a get if I do not die it will not be a get so that the affirmative may precede the negative mission if a man says here is your get on condition that you look after my father on condition that you give suck to my child how long is she to give it suck two years or Judah says 18 months if the child dies or the father dies the get is valid if he says this is your get on condition that you look after my father for two years on condition that you give suck to my child for two years then if the child dies or if the father says I don't want you to Look after me even though she has given no cause for complaint the get is not valid Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel however says that a get like this is valid Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel laid it down as a general rule that wherever the obstacle does not arise from her side the get is valid Gamara do we require so long a period as two years the following seems to contradict this if she waited on him one day or gave the child suck one day the get is valid our histor replied there is no contradiction one statement gives the view of the rabbis the other that of Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel our mission gives the view of Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel and the very that of the rabbis but since the later clause in our mission states the view of Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel it follows does it not that the earlier clause states the view which is not that of Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel we must say therefore that the very that gives the view of Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel who insists only on a minimum fulfillment of Conditions while the mission gives the view of the rabbis Rabbi said there is no contradiction in the one case the mission we suppose he mentions no time limit in the other case he mentions a definite time limit upon which Arashi remarked wherever no time limit is mentioned that it is the same as mentioning a limit of one day we have learned how long is she to give it suck two years Rabbi Judah says 18 months if we accept the view of Rabbi this creates no difficulty but if we accept that of our Ashi why should we require two years or 18 months one day should be enough what it means is this one day in the next two years to exclude the period after two years one day in the next 18 months to exclude the period after 18 months an objection was raised against this from the following if he says this is your get on condition that you look after my father for two years on condition that you suckle my child for two years then if the child dies or the father says I don't Want you to look after me even though she gave no cause for complaint the get is not valid Talmud, Moss get into this creates no difficulty for Rabbi who may say that the previous clause speaks of the case where he does not mention any time limit and this where he does but on our Ashi's view why should the ruling be different in the first case from that in the second this is indeed a difficulty our rabbis taught if a man says this is your get on condition that you look after my father for two years or on condition that you suckle my child for two years even though the condition is not fulfilled the get is valid because he did not say to her first if you look after and then if you do not look after if you suckle and if you do not suckle this is the view of our mayor the sages however say that if the condition is fulfilled it is a get and if not it is no get Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says there is no condition in the scriptures which is not duplicated according to one explanation he Addressed this remark to our mayor and according to another he addressed it to the sages according to one view he addressed his remark to our mayor and what he meant was this there is no condition in the scriptures which is not duplicated hence in this connection we have two texts from which the same inference may be drawn and wherever we have two texts from which the same inference may be drawn we do not base a rule upon them according to another explanation he addressed his remark to the rabbis and what he meant was this there is no condition in the scripture which is not duplicated and we base our rules upon them a contradiction was raised from the following if a man said this is your get on condition that you look after my father for two years on condition that you suckle my child for two years then if the father or the child dies the get is not valid this is the view of our mayor the sages however say that although the condition has not been fulfilled the get is valid since she can Say to him produce your father and I will wait on him produce your child and I will suckle it now our mayor would seem to be in contradiction with himself and the rabbis would also seem to be in contradiction with themselves between the two statements of our mayor there is no contradiction the former speaks of where the man did not double his condition the latter of where he did double it between the two statements of the rabbis there is also no contradiction for by the sages here mentioned we understand Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel who said that wherever the obstacle does not arise from her side the get is valid our rabbis taught if a man said to his wife in the presence of two witnesses here is your get on condition that you look after my father for two years and he subsequently said to her in the presence of two witnesses here is your get on condition that you give me 200 zoos the second statement does not nullify the first and she has the option of either waiting on the father or giving a husband the 200 zoos if however he said to her in the presence of two witnesses here is your get on condition that you give me 200 zoos and he subsequently said to her in the presence of two witnesses here is your get on condition that you give me 300 zoos the second statement nullifies the first nor can one of the first two witnesses and one of the second combine to form appear to which ruling does this last statement belong it cannot be the second one because the first condition there is nullified rather it is the first one but in this case it is self-evident you might think that all the witnesses who can help to establish that there was a condition can be joined together we are therefore told that this is not so mission if a man says this is your get if I do not return within 30 days and he was on the point of going from Judea to Galilee if he got as far as Antipas and then turned back his condition is broken if he says here is your get on condition that I do not return within 30 days and he was on the point of going from Galilee to Judea if he got as far as Kfarathna and then turned back the condition is broken if he said here is your get on condition that I do not return within 30 days and he was on the point of going into foreign parts if he got as far as Akko Acre and turned back his condition is broken if he said here is your get so soon as I shall have kept away from your presence 30 days. Even
took leave of one another they did so in Akko because it is forbidden for those who live in Eretz Yisrael to go out of it. Abbe replied he made two conditions with her thus if I reach foreign parts this will be a get at once and if I remain on the road and do not return within 30 days it will be a get if he got as far as Akko and returned so that he neither reached foreign parts nor remained on the road 30 days his condition is broken here is your get so soon as I shall keep away etc. But he does not keep away Aruna replied what is meant by presence here marital intercourse and why is it called presence a polite expression is used are Yohanan however said the word presence is to be taken literally for it does not say that if he comes and goes she is divorced but the get is valid that is to say it does not become an old get and when 30 days have passed without his seeing her it is a valid get it has been taught in accordance with Aruhanan if he says here is your get so soon as I shall keep away from your presence 30 days even though he was constantly coming and going so long as he was not closeted with her the get is valid and we have no fear of its being an old get since he was not closeted with her but is there not the possibility that he made it up with her Rabbi son of Aruna replied thus said my father my teacher in the name of Rabbi this rule applies where he gives an undertaking that he will accept her word if she says he did not come to her sub attached the statement to the mission thus if a man says this is your get from now if I do not return within 12 months and he died within the 12 months the get is valid but is there not the possibility that he made it up with her Rabbi son of Aruna replied thus said my father my teacher in the name of Rabbi the rule applies where he gives an undertaking that he will accept her word if she says that he did not come to her those who attach the statement to the mission would without question attach it to the Beritha also but those who attach it to the Beritha might hesitate to attach it to the mission because as far as we know he has not come to see her mission if a man says this is your get if I do not return within 12 months and he dies within 12 months it is no get if he says this is your get from now if I do not return within 12 months and he dies within 12 months it is a get if he says if I do not come within 12 months write a get and give it to my wife and they wrote a get before 12 months had passed and gave it after it is no get if he said write a get and give it to my wife if I do not come within 12 months and they wrote it before the 12 months had passed and gave it after it is no get our Jose however says that a get like that is valid if they wrote it after 12 months and delivered it after 12 months and he died if the delivery of the get preceded his death the get is valid but if his death preceded the delivery of the get it is not valid if it is not known which was first the woman is in the condition known as divorce and not divorce Gemara 8 had a taught our rabbis allowed her to marry who are meant by our rabbis Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Beth in which permitted the oil of heathens they concurred with our Jose who said that the date of the document is sufficient indication our Abba the son of our high bar Abba said in the name of our Yohanan our Judah the prince Son of Rabban Gamaliel, the son of Rabbi, gave his ruling, but none of his colleagues Sayyid, who agreed with him, or as others report, his ruling did not find acceptance during the whole of his life. Shayyid or Eliezer asked a certain elder who had been present there when you permitted her to marry, did you permit her to do so at once, or after twelve months, did you permit it at once, since there is no chance of his coming again, or did you permit it only after twelve months when his condition would be fulfilled? But should not this question be attached to the Mishnah if he says this is your get from now? If I do not come within twelve months and he died within twelve months, this is a get, would it be a get at once, seeing that he will not come again, or only after twelve months when his condition will have been fulfilled? Indeed, it might have been, but it was put in this way because he, the old man asked, had been present on that occasion. Abbe said, all are agreed that if he says when it Sun issues from its sheet Talmud, Moskid and he means that the get is to take effect only when the sun does come out and if he dies in the night it would be a get after death if again he says on condition that the sun issues from its sheet he means it to take effect as from now since Arunah has said in the name of Rabbi the formula on condition is equivalent to as from now where opinions differ is when he says if it shall issue one authority adopts the view of our Jose who said that the date of the document is sufficient indication so that his words are analogous to from today if I die from now if I die while the other did not accept the view of our Jose and his words are analogous to the bear if I die right a get and give it to my wife if I do not come within 12 months if they wrote etc said our Yamar to our Ashi may we conclude from this that in our Jose's opinion if one writes a get subject to a certain condition even if the condition is not fulfilled the document is a valid one no I may still hold that it is not valid and our Jose has a special reason here because he ought to have said if I do not come right and deliver and he actually said right and deliver if I do not come and we presume him therefore to have meant right from now and deliver if I do not come the rabbis however do not differentiate between the two forms our rabbis taught if he says this is your get if I do not return till after the septenate we wait an extra year till after a year we wait a month till after a month we wait a week if he says till after the sabbath what do we do when our zero was once sitting before our C or as others report when our C was sitting before our Yohanan he said the first day of the week and the second and third are called after the sabbath the fourth and fifth days and the eve of sabbath are called before the sabbath it has been taught if he says till after the festival we wait thirty days our high went forth and preached this in the name of Rabbi and he was commended for doing so he then preached it in the name of the majority and was not commended this shows that the law is not as laid down by him chapterbii mission if a man throws a get to his wife while she is in her house or in her courtyard she is there by divorce if he throws it to her into his house or into his courtyard even though he is with her on the same bed she is not there by divorce if he throws it into her lap or into her work basket she is there by divorce Gemara what is the scriptural warrant for this rule as our rabbis taught and give it in her hand this only tells me that the get may be placed in her hand once do I learn that it may also be placed on her roof or in her courtyard or enclosure the text says significantly and he shall give which means in any manner it has been taught in a similar manner regarding a thief his hand this tells me on why that he is liable if the theft is found in his hand once do I learn that he is equally Liable if it is found on his roof or in his courtyard or his enclosure from the significant words if it be found at all which means under all circumstances and both expositions are necessary for had I only the one regarding the get else should have said that the reason is because she is divorced against her will but that this rule does not apply to a thief who cannot become such against his will and had I been given the rule in regard to the thief only I should have said that it applied to him because the all merciful imposed a fine upon him but not to a get hence both were necessary it says her courtyard how can this be seeing that whatever a woman acquires belongs to her husband our Eliezer said we presume him to have given her a written statement that he has no claim on her property but suppose he did do so what difference does it make seeing that it has been taught if a man says to another partner I have no claim on this field I have no concern in it I entirely Dissociate myself from it. His words are of no effect. The school of Arjani explained we suppose him to have given her this written statement while she was still betrothed, and we adopt at the same time the maxim of our Kahana. For our Kahana said that a man may stipulate beforehand that he will not take up a prospective inheritance from an outside source. This too is based on a ruling of Rabbah who said if one says Talmud, Moskid and B, I do not care to avail myself of the regulation of the sages in a case like this, he is allowed to have his way. What did he mean by in a case like this? He was referring to the case mentioned by Arunah in the name of Rab. For Arunah said in the name of Rab, a woman is at liberty to say to her husband, You need not maintain me and I will not work for you. Rabbah said, Does not her hand also belong to her husband? The fact is that her hand and her get become her simultaneously, so also her courtyard and her get become her simultaneously, said Rabbah to Arashikin Rabbah. Have found any difficulty about the woman's hand granted that the husband owns the labor of her hands does he own the hand itself he replied Rob's difficulty was really with the hand of a slave for on the view of the authority who holds that a slave may acquire his freedom by means of a document which he receives himself we may ask how can this be seeing that the hand of the slave is like that of the master only we must suppose that his hand and his deed of emancipation become his simultaneously so here her get and her courtyard become her simultaneously a certain man who was lying very ill wrote a get for his wife on the eve of the sabbath and had not time to give it to her before sabbath on the next day his condition became critical Rob was consulted and he said go and tell him to make over to her the place where the get is and let her go and close and open the door there and so take formal possession of it as we
that the courtyard is being kept for her with her knowledge and consent and therefore she is divorced may we say that the point at issue between them is this that the one authority Allah holds that the rule about a courtyard is derived from her hand and the other from its being regarded as analogous to her agent no both are agreed that the rule about a courtyard is derived from her hand one however interprets the analogy thus just as her hand is close to her so her courtyard must be close to her and the other he will rejoin since her hand is attached to her has her courtyard also to be attached to her but you must say it is like her hand in the sense just as her hand is kept for her with her knowledge so her courtyard must be kept for her with her knowledge and what we exclude therefore is a courtyard which is kept for her even without her knowledge a certain man threw a gift to his wife as she was standing in a courtyard and it went and fell on a block of wood are Joseph thereupon said we have to see if the block was four cubits by four it forms a separate domain but if not it is one with the courtyard what case are we dealing with are we to say that the courtyard is hers if so what does it matter if the block is four cubits by four is the courtyard his then if it is not four by four what does it matter our Joseph's ruling applies where he lent her the place since men will usually lend one place but not two places further we do not say that it is one with the court save only if it is not ten hand breadths high but if it is ten hand breadths high we do not say so even if it is not four cubits by four nor even so do we say that it is included save only if it has no Talmud, mosque and individual name but if it has a special name it is not included even though it is not ten hand breadths high and is not four cubits by four even though he is with her on the same bed Rabbi said this applies only if the bed is his but if it is her bed she is divorced it has been taught to the same effect our Eliezer says if it is on his bed she is not divorced but if it is on her bed she is divorced and if it is on her bed is she divorced is it not a case of the vessels of the purchaser in the domain of the vendor this shows does it not that if the article purchased is placed in the vessels of the purchaser standing in the domain of the vendor the purchaser requires possession this however is not conclusive as we may suppose the bed to be ten and breadth high but there is the place of the legs men are not particular about the place of the legs if he throws it into her lap or into her work basket she is there by divorce why so this is a case of the vessels of the purchaser in the domain of the vendor Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel we suppose for instance that her work basket was hanging from her so too our Eliezer said in the name of our Ashai we suppose for instance that her work basket was hanging from her our Simeon be Lakish. Said that it would be sufficient if it was tied to her even without hanging from her. Our Adabi Ahabah said, if for instance her work basket was between her legs, our measure she is son of Ardimi said, if her husband was a seller of handbags, our Yohanan said, the place occupied by the folds of her dress is acquired by her, and the place occupied by her work basket is acquired by her. Rabbah said, what is our Yohanan's reason? Because a man is not particular about the place occupied by the folds of her dress, or the place occupied by her work basket, if has also been taught to the same effect, if he threw her to get into her lap or into her work basket, or into anything like her work basket, she is there by divorce. What is added by anything like her work basket, it adds a dish from which she eats dates Mishnah. If he said to her, take that bond, or if she found it behind him and read it, and it turned out to be her get, it is no get until he says to her, there is your get if he put it into her hand while. She was asleep and when she woke up she read it and found it was her get it is no get until he says to her that is your get tomorrow and suppose he says to her that is your get what does it matter it is the same as if he said pick up your get from the floor and Rabbah has laid down that if a man says pick up your get from the floor his words are of no effect we must suppose that she pulls it out from behind him and suppose even that she pulls it out do we not require that he give it into her hand and this condition is not fulfilled the rule would apply where he jerked his side towards her and she pulled it out it has been taught to the same effect if he said to her take this bond and she did so or if she pulled it out from behind him and on reading it found it was her get it is no get until he says to her that is your get this is the ruling of Rabbi Arsimian B. Eliezer says it does not become a get until he takes it from her and gives it to her again saying that is your get if he Puts it into her hand while she is asleep and when she wakes she reads it and finds it is her get it is no get until he says to her that is your get so Rabbi Arsimian B. Eliezer says it is no get until he takes it from her and gives it to her again saying that is your get both cases required to be stated for if only the former had been stated I might say that Rabbi ruled as he did there because she was at the time capable of being divorced but where he put it into her hand while she was asleep seeing that she was not at the time capable of being divorced I might think that he accepts the view of Arsimian B. Eliezer if again only the latter case had been stated I might have thought that Arsimian B. Eliezer meant his ruling to apply to that case only but in the other he accepts the view of Rabbi hence both statements were necessary Rabbi said if he wrote a get for her and put it in the hand of her slave while he was asleep and she was watching him it is a get but if he is awake it is no get but why should this be seeing that he is a moving courtyard and a moving courtyard does not confer ownership and should you reply that the fact of his being asleep makes a difference as not Rabbah said that which does not confer ownership when moving about does not confer ownership when standing still or sitting the law is as stated by Rabbah when the slave is bound Mishnah if she was standing on public ground and he threw it to her if it lands nearer to her she is divorced but if it lands nearer to him she is not divorced if it lands midway she is divorced and not divorced similarly with betrothals and similarly with the debt if a man says to his debtor throw me my debt in public ground and he throws it if it lands nearer to the lender it becomes the property of the lender if it lands nearer to the borrower he still owes the money if it lands midway they divide tomorrow how are we to understand nearer to him and how are we to understand nearer to her Rab said within four Cubits of her is nearer to her within four cubits of him is nearer to him how are we to understand midway our Samuel son of our Isaac replied if for instance they were both within four cubits of the get in that case let us see which was their first and should you retort that perhaps both came together it is impossible that they should come exactly at the same moment our Kahana therefore said we suppose here that they are exactly eight cubits from each other Talmud, Mosque and B and the get extends from the four cubit space nearer to him into the four cubit space nearer to her but then it is still partly attached to him therefore Rabbi and our Joseph gave a different reply both saying that we are dealing here with a case where there are two groups of witnesses one of which says that it was nearer to her and the other that it was nearer to him or Yohanan said the words of our text are nearer to her which can include even a hundred cubits away and nearer to him which can Include even a hundred cubits away how are we to understand midway our shaman B. Abba said it was explained to me by our Yohanan that where he is able to look after it but she is not able to look after it this is nearer to him where she is able to look after it but he is not this is nearer to her if both of them are able to look after it or neither of them is able separately to look after it this is midway the rabbis repeated this explanation before our Yohanan as having been given by our Jonathan. He thereupon remarked to our colleagues in Babylon also know how to give this explanation it has been taught to the same effect our Eliezer says even though it is nearer to her than to him and a dog came and ran off with it she is not divorced she is not divorced you say how long is she to go on keeping it no what he means to say is this if it is nearer to her than to him yet so placed that if a dog came and tried to make off with it he could save it but she could not she is not divorced Samuel. Said to Rab Judah Shinan, it must be so near that she can stoop down and pick it up, but do you not actually declare it valid until it comes into her hand? Our Mordecai said to our Ashi, there was an actual case of this kind, and she was compelled to give Eliza so too in regard to betrothals. Our Asi said in the name of our Yohanan, this rule was made with reference to bills of divorce and not to anything else. Our Abba thereupon pointed out to our Asi the statement so too in regard to betrothals. He replied, there is a special reason for that because it is written, she may go forth and be another man's wife. He raised an objection similarly with the debt. If the lender says to the borrower, throw me my debt, and he throws it, if it lands nearer to the lender, it becomes the property of the lender. If it lands nearer to the borrower, he still owes the money. If it lands midway, they divide the case we are dealing with here is when he says, throw me what you owe me and be quit if that is all he Rejoined what need was there to state it. it is necessary to state it when he says throw me my debt in the same way as a get still what need is there to state even this you might think that he can say to him I was only making fun of you therefore we are told that this is no plea his
was burnt, she is divorced Gemara as soon as it reaches the airspace of the roof, etc. But it is not yet in safekeeping. Rav Judah said in the name of Samuel, we speak of a roof which has a parapetal of Bimina. She said in the name of Abami, the reference here is to the airspace within three handbreadths of the roof, since any space less than three handbreadths from the roof is reckoned as the roof if he was above, etc. But it is not yet in safekeeping. Rav Judah said in the name of Samuel, the rule applies if, for instance, the lower partitions overtop the upper ones, so too are Eliezer said in the name of Arashai, if, for instance, the lower partitions overtop the upper ones, and so too Allah said in the name of Aryohanan, if, for instance, the lower partitions overtop the upper ones, said Arabatullah, with whose view does this accord with that of Rabbi who said that being embraced by the airspace is equivalent to coming to rest upon the ground, he replied, you can even say that it has. The authority of the rabbis since the rabbis might differ from rabbi only in the case of Sabbath but here the deciding factor is whether it is in safekeeping and in fact it is in safekeeping so too when R.C. said in the name of our Yohanan for instance if the lower partitions overtop the higher Arzara said to R.C. with whose view does this accord with that of rabbi who said that being embraced by the airspace is equivalent to coming to rest on the ground and he replied you can even say that it has the authority of the rabbis since the rabbis might differ from rabbi only in the case of the Sabbath but here the deciding factor is whether it is in safekeeping and in fact it is in safekeeping though the writing was effaced Arnaman said in the name of Rabbi Abu this applies only if it was effaced while the gate was falling but if it was effaced while the gate was ascending it is not so why because from the outset it was not destined to come to rest in that way or it was burnt Arnaman said in the name of Rabbi Abu Abba, this applies only if the gate was thrown before the fire was started but if the fire was started first it is not so why is this because from the outset it was destined to be burnt Arhista said spaces marked off from one another remain distinct for purposes of bills of divorce said Rami Bihamad Rabba whence does the old man derive this idea he replied it is from our mission if she was standing on the roof and he threw it to her as soon as the gate reaches the airspace of the roof she is divorced now with what circumstances are we dealing are we to say that the roof is hers and the courtyard is hers if so why do I require even the airspace of the roof what then is roof and his courtyard in that case even if it reaches the airspace of the roof what of it obviously therefore we must suppose the roof to be hers and the courtyard to be his now let us look at the next clause if he was above and she below and he threw it to her so Soon as it left the space of the roof, even though the writing was effaced or it was burnt, she is divorced now. If the roof is hers and the courtyard is why is she divorced? It must be therefore that the roof is his and the courtyard hers. Now can it be that the first clause speaks of where the roof is hers and the courtyard is, and the second of where the roof is his and the courtyard hers? Hardly so, and it must be that he lends her a place, and this shows that men will lend one place but not two places. He replied, Is this conclusive? Perhaps each case stands on its own footing. The first clause speaking of where the roof is hers and the courtyard is, and the second of where the roof is his and the courtyard hers. Rabbi said there are three cases in which a get forms an exception to a general rule. One is the rule laid down by Rabbi that being embraced by the airspace is equivalent to coming to rest on the ground regarding which the rabbis joined issue with him. They only differed with. Regard to Sabbath, but here in the case of a get, the decisive factor is whether it is in safekeeping, and in fact it is in safekeeping. The second is the rule laid down by our of a man stuck in private ground, the pole on the top of which was a basket, and he threw up something, and it came to rest on it, even if it is a hundred cubits high, he is liable because private ground extends upwards to the sky. This applies only to Sabbath, but here the decisive factor is whether it is in safekeeping, and in fact it is not in safekeeping. Talmud, Mosque, and be the third is the rule laid down by Rab Judah in the name of Samuel. A man should not stand on one roof and gather rainwater from his neighbor's roof, because just as dwellings are distinct below, so they are distinct above. This applies to Sabbath, but in regard to a get, the decisive factor is whether the owner is particular, and to this extent men are not particular. Abay said if there are two courtyards, one within the other, the inner one. Belonging to her and the outer one to him and the outer partitions are higher than the inner ones if he throws it to her as soon as it reaches the airspace of the partitions of the outer one she is divorced the reason being that the inner one itself is protected by the partitions of the outer one the same however does not hold good with baskets if there were two baskets one inside the other the inner one belonging to her and the outer one to him and he threw the get to her even if it came into the airspace of the inner one she is not divorced the reason being that it has not come to rest and supposing even that it comes to rest what of it, it is a case of the vessels of the purchaser in the domain of the vendor we are speaking here of a basket which has no bottom mission of Shem I say that a man may divorce his wife with an old get but Bethel forbid this what is meant by an old get one after the writing of which he was closeted with her tomorrow what is the ground of there Difference Bethshem I hold that we are not to prohibit her to marry again out of fear that people may afterwards say that her get came before her child whereas Beth hold that we do prohibit her for fear people will say her get came before her child Arabah said in the name of Samuel if she married on the strength of such a get she need not leave the second husband according to another report Arabah said in the name of Samuel if she was divorced with such a get she has full liberty to marry again Mishnah if the get was dated by rain which ought not to count by the empire of media by the empire of Greece by the building of the temple or by the destruction of the temple or if being in the east the writer dated it from the west or being in the west he dated it from the east the woman who marries again on the strength of it must leave both husbands and requires a get from both and has no claim either for a ketubah or for increment or for maintenance or for warn. Clothes from either of them, if she takes these from either of them, she must return them. A child born to her from either of them is a mom's or neither of them. If a priest has to defile himself for her, neither of them has a right to her fines or to the product of her labor, and neither can all her vows. If she is the daughter of a lay Israelite, she is disqualified for marrying a priest Talmud, Moskid, and if she is the daughter of a Levite, she becomes disqualified for eating tithe, and if it daughter of a priest for eating terah, mothers, neither of the one husband nor the other inherit her ketuba, and if they die brothers of both one and the other of them, if necessary, take Elizabeth, neither can marry her if his name or her name or the name of his town or the name of her town was wrongly given, she must leave both husbands and all the above penalties apply to her if any of the near relatives concerning whom it is laid down that their rivals are permitted to marry without. Giving Eliza went and married, and it was then found that this one was incapable of bearing the one who married must leave both husbands, and all these penalties apply to her if a man marries his sister in law and her rival then went and married another man, and it was found that the first one was incapable of bearing the other must leave both husbands, and all these penalties apply to her if a scribe wrote a get for the husband and a receipt for the wife, and by mistake gave the get to the wife. And the receipt to the husband and the two exchanged them, and after a time the get was produced by the man and the receipt by the woman, she must leave both husbands, and all these penalties apply to her. Our Eliezer said if IT is produced and once it is no get, but if IT is produced after a time it is a get, it is not in the power of the first to render void the right of the second tomorrow. What is meant by rain which ought not to count the empire of the Romans, why is it called a rain which Ought not to count because it has neither a script nor a language of its own. Allah said, Why was it laid down that the year of the rain should be stated in a get for the sake of keeping on good terms with the government and for the sake of keeping on good terms with the government is the woman to leave her husband and the child to be a mom's or yes, Armadir? And this is quite consistent since our Hamdana said in the name of Allah Armadir used to say, If any alteration is made in the form which the sages fixed for bills of divorce, the child is a mom's or by the empire of Greece. All these years had to be mentioned, for if I had been told only the rain which ought not to count, I might have thought that the objection to it is that it bears sway now, but in regard to the empire of media and Greece, I might think that what is past is past, and if I had been told the empires of media and Greece, I might have thought that the objection is that they were once empires, but as regards the building of it. Temple what is past is past and if I had been told the building of the temple I might have thought that the objection is because they might say that the Jews are recalling their former glory but this does not apply to the mention of the destruction of the temple which recalls their sorrow hence all were necessary
The child is legitimate. The sages, however, agree with our mayor that if his name or her name or the name of his town or her town was wrongly given, the child is a monster. Our Ashi said we find this also implied in our mission. If his name or her name or the name of his town or her town was wrongly given, she must leave both husbands and all these penalties apply to her now who is the authority for the statement. Shall I say our mayor? If so, the two rulings might have been run into one. We conclude therefore that it was the rabbis if any of the near relatives concerning whom etc. They are penalized if they marry which implies but not if they misconduct themselves. May we take this as a refutation of our Hamana who said that if a woman while waiting for her brother-in-law misconducted herself she is forbidden to her brother-in-law. No it means if they marry and the same is the rule if they misconduct themselves and the reason why the word marry was used was as a polite expression some report it. Discussion thus they are penalized if they marry and the same rule we should say applies if they misconduct themselves. May we presume then that the mission supports our Hamana who said that if a woman while waiting for her brother-in-law misconducted herself she is forbidden to her brother-in-law. No the rule applies only where they actually marry because in that case they may be confused with a woman whose husband went abroad if a man marries his sister-in-law etc. Both cases required to be stated for had I only the first one I might say the reason why she is penalized is because the precept of Levi right marriage has not been carried out but here where this precept has been carried out I might say that the rule does not apply if again I had been told only in this case I might have said that the reason is because she was put at his disposal but in the other case where she is not put at his disposal I might say that she should not be penalized hence both statements were necessary if the scribe wrote and by mistake gave the get to the wife and the receipt to the husband our Eliezer says if IT was produced at once etc how do we define at once and how do we define after a time Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the whole of the time during which they are sitting and dealing with that matter is called at once once they have risen it is called after a time our Adabi Ahaba however said so long as she has not married it is called at once but once she has Married it is called after a time we have learned it is not in the power of the first to render void the right of the second now if we take the view of our Adabi Ahab it is quite correct to mention here the second but on Samuel's view what are we to make of second Talmud, Mosque it means the prospective right of the second mission if a man wrote a get with which to divorce his wife and then changed his mind Beth Sham I say that he has thereby disqualified her for marrying a priest Beth. Hillel however say that even though he gave it to her on a certain condition if the condition was not fulfilled he has not disqualified her for marrying a priest Amara our Joseph the son of Armanasa Abdul sent an inquiry to Samuel saying would our master instruct us with regard to the following problem if a rumor spread that so and so a priest has written a get for his wife but she still lives with him and looks after him what are we to do he sent back a reply she must leave him but First the case must be examined what are we to understand by this shall we say that we examine whether we can put a stop to the rumor or not this cannot be because Samuel lived in Nihardia and in Nihardia it was not the rule of the Beth Din to put a stop to rumors but we do examine whether people speak of giving also as writing but granted that they call giving writing do they not also call writing itself writing that is so and the reason why she has to leave him is because if it is found that giving is called writing perhaps the people when they say he has written mean that he has given her the get and still must she leave him as not our Ashi said we pay no regard to any rumor that is spread after the marriage when it says she must leave it means she must leave the second husband if that is so you cast a slur on the children of the first since it is from the second that we separate her and we do not separate her from the first people will say that he divorced her. Just before his death, Rabbi Barhana reported our Yohanan as saying in the name of Rabbi Judah Bialai what a difference we can observe between the earlier generations and the later by the earlier generations. He means Beth Shammai and by the later Ardosa, for it has been taught a woman who has been carried away captive may still eat terima according to the ruling of Ardosa said Ardosa what after all has this Arab done to her because he squeezed her breasts as he disqualified her for. Marrying a priest Rabbi Barhana further quoted our Yohanan as saying in the name of Rabbi Judah Bialai what a difference we can observe between the earlier generations and the later the earlier generations used to bring in their produce by way of the kitchen garden so as to make it liable to tithe whereas the later generations bring in their produce over roofs and through enclosures so as not to make it liable for tithe. Arjani laid down that people is not liable for tithe until it has come. In front of the house, since it says I have put away the hallowed things out of mine house, our Yohanan, however, says that even a courtyard imposes a liability as it says that they may eat within the gates and be filled. Mishnah, if a man has divorced his wife and then stays with her overnight, and in Beth Sham I say that she does not require from him a second get, but Beth Hillel say that she does require a second get from him. This, however, is only when the divorce is one after marriage for Beth. Hillel agree that if the divorce is one after betrothal, she does not require a second get from him because he would not yet take liberties with her. Gemara Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan, the difference of opinion recorded here relates only to the case where she was seen to have intercourse. Talmud, Mosque, and be Beth Shammai holding that a man in such a case will not scruple to commit fornication, whereas Beth Hillel hold that a man will scruple to commit fornication where. However, she was not seen to have intercourse. Both agree that she does not require a second get from him. We learn Beth Hillel agree that if the divorce is one after betrothal, she does not require a second get from him because he would not take liberties with her. Now, if a second get is required where she was seen to have intercourse, what difference does it make whether it was after betrothal or after marriage? We must suppose, therefore, that the Mishnah speaks of a case where she was not seen to have intercourse and that our Yohanan was giving the view of the following ten as it has been taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel were of accord that where she was not seen to have intercourse, she does not require from him a second get where they differed was when she was seen to have intercourse. Beth Shammai holding that a man would not scruple in such a case to commit fornication and Beth Hillel holding that a man would scruple to commit fornication, but according to the mission which we have explained to refer to the case where she was not seen to have intercourse what are we to say is the ground of difference between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel we must suppose there were witnesses to their being alone together but no witnesses to the intercourse in which case Beth Shammai hold that we do not regard the witnesses to their being alone together as being if so facto witnesses to their intercourse whereas Beth Hillel hold that we do regard the witnesses to their being alone together as being if so facto witnesses to their intercourse Beth Hillel admit however that if the divorce is one after betrothal she does not require a second get from him because since he would not take liberties with her we do not regard them as being if so facto witnesses to intercourse but did our Yohanan say this did not our Yohanan say that the Halacha follows the anonymous mission and we have explained the mission to be referring to the case where she was not Seem to have intercourse different Amram report our Yohanan's opinion differently mission if a man marries a divorced woman on the strength of a bald get she must leave both husbands and all the above mentioned penalties apply to her a bald get may be completed by anyone's signature this is the view of Ben Nanos but our Akiva says that it may be completed only by relatives who are qualified to testify elsewhere what is a bald get one which has more folds than signatures Gamara what is it? Reason for invalidating a bald get as a precaution in case he said all of you write a bald get may be completed by anyone's signature why does our Akiva not permit a slave to sign because this might lead people to say that he is competent to bear witness in general but in the same way they might be led to say that a near relative is competent to bear witness the fact is that the reason why he does not allow a slave is because people might be led to think him of Israelite parentage. According to this, a robber who could prove his Israelitish descent should be competent. Why then do we learn here? Our Akiva says it may be completed only by relatives who are qualified to testify elsewhere, which would imply that a relative may testify, but not a robber. We must say, therefore, that the reason in the case of a slave is that people might be led to say that he has been emancipated, and similarly, in the case of a robber, people might be led to say that he has reformed himself. But as to a relative, what objections can be raised? Everyone knows that a relative is a relative. Arzara said in the name of Rabbi Bishilta, who had it from our Hamman, the elder who had it from our Adabi Ahab, if a bald get has seven folds and six witnesses, or six folds and five witnesses, or five folds and four witnesses, or four
witness instead of relative but in the very day it says relative or papa said read a competent witness or you had and said only one relative has been declared eligible to sign as witness on it but not two for fear lest it should be confirmed on the strength of the signatures of two relatives and one competent witness said Arashi this is indicated in the very day also Talmud, mosque given by the fact that it goes by steps from one number to the next which shows that it is as or you had and said Abbe. Said it also shows that the relative may sign where he pleases at the beginning or in the middle or at the end. We gather this from the fact that no fixed place is assigned to him. It also shows that the get can be confirmed on the strength of any three signatures, and we do not require three next to one another. For if you should suppose that we do require them to be together, a place could be assigned to the relative before or between or after every two competent ones and several relatives. Should be allowed when a party came before RMI. She said, Go and complete it with the signature of a slave from the street. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-X mission. If a man on divorcing his wife says to her, You are hereby free to marry any man, but so and so our Eliza permits her to marry on the strength of this get, but the rabbis forbid her. What must he do? He must take it back from her and give it to her again, saying, You are hereby free to marry any man if you wrote it in the get, even though he subsequently. Erased it, it is invalid. Demar, the question was raised as a word, but here the force of except or of on condition shall we say it means except, and it is where he said except so and so that the rabbis differ from our Eliezer on the ground that he has left an omission in the get, but that where he says on condition that you do not marry so and so they agree with our Eliezer placing this condition on a PAR with any other, or should we say perhaps that but here means on condition, and it is where he says on condition that our Eliezer differs from the rabbis, but where he says except he agrees with them on the ground that he has left an omission in the get, Rabbin replied, Come and here all houses are defiled by strokes of leprosy, but those of heathen now, if you say that it means on condition, are we to understand that it is only on condition that the houses of heathens are not defiled, that the houses of Israelites are defiled, which would imply that if the houses of heathens are defiled, it Houses of Israelites are not defiled, and besides, can the houses of heathens be defiled, seeing that it has been taught? And I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession. This implies that the land of your possession is defiled by plague of leprosy. But houses of heathens are not defiled by plague of leprosy. We must understand, therefore, that but means except, and this may be taken as proof. The mission is not in agreement with the ten of the following passage, where it is taught. Our Jose said in the name of our Judah, our Eliezer, and the rabbis were agreed that if a man on divorcing his wife said to her, "You are hereby permitted to any man except so and so," she is not divorced. Where they differed was if a man on divorcing his wife said to her, "You are hereby permitted to marry any man on condition that you do not marry so and so." Talmud, Mosque, and B. In which case, our Eliezer allowed her to marry anyone except that man, and the rabbis forbade her to marry at all on it. Strength of that get what is our Eliezer's reason he puts the condition on the same footing as any other condition and the rabbis they say that any other condition does not involve an omission in the get but this one involves an omission in the get and in the mission whereas we have decided he means except what is the reason of our Eliezer Arjana answered in the name of a certain elder because the text says she shall depart from his house and go and be another man's wife which implies that if he permitted her to marry only one other man she is divorced and the rabbis the word man here means any other man or Yohanan however says that our Eliezer derived his reason from this verse neither shall they the priests take a woman put away from her husband this shows that even though she is only divorced from her husband without being permitted to any other man she is disqualified from the privileges of priesthood which shows that the get is valid and the rabbis the prohibition of Priestly privileges is on a different footing. Our Abba raised the question what is the rule if a man uses these words in betrothing? The answer is not self evident whether we adopt the view of our Eliezer or that of the rabbis. If we adopt our Eliezer's view, are we to say that our Eliezer ruled as he did here in the case of divorce only because this is indicated in the scripture? But in the case of betrothal, we require an effective acquisition, or shall we say that our Eliezer applies the principle of she shall depart and be married again? If we adopt the view of the rabbis, are we to say that the rabbis ruled as they did here in the case of divorce only because we require a cutting off? But in the other case, any kind of acquisition is sufficient, or shall we say that they apply the analogy of she shall depart and be after stating the problem he himself solved it, saying whether we adopt the view of our Eliezer or that of the rabbis, we require that the analogy of she shall depart and be should. Hold good Abbe said if we can assume that the answer of our Abba was sound and if Reuben came and betrothed the woman with a reservation in favor of his brother Simeon and then Simeon came and betrothed her with a reservation in favor of Reuben and both of them died she contracts a Levi rate marriage with Levi the third brother and I do not call her the wife of two dead the reason being that the betrothal of Reuben was effective but the betrothal of Simeon was not effective and in what circumstances would she be the wife of two dead if for instance Reuben came and betrothed her with a reservation in favor of Simeon and then Simeon came and betrothed her without any reservation in which case the betrothal of Reuben availed to make her forbidden to all other men and the betrothal of Simeon to make her forbidden to Reuben Abbe raised the question if he said to her you are hereby permitted to any man except Reuben and Simeon and then said to Reuben and Simeon what is to be Done do we say that by these words he permits what he had forbidden or are we to say that he both permits what he had forbidden and forbids what he had permitted and assuming the answer to be Talmud, Moss given that he permits what he had forbidden if he says only to Reuben what is to be done do we take the words to Reuben to apply also to Simeon presuming that why he now says Reuben is because he had been mentioned first or does he mean Reuben and Reuben only and assuming that he means Reuben only if he says to Simeon what is to be done do we take the words to Simeon to apply to Reuben also presuming that why he now says Simeon is because he had just mentioned him or does he mean Simeon and Simeon only are Ashi asked if he said also to Simeon what are we to do do we take also to mean besides Reuben or besides everyone else but not Reuben these questions are left undecided our rabbis taught after the demise of our Eliezer four elders came together to confute his opinion they were our Jose the Galilean our Tarfan our Eliezer B. Ezra and our Akiva our Tarfan argued as follows suppose this woman went and married the brother of the man to whom she had been forbidden and he died without children would not the first be found to have uprooted an injunction from the Torah hence you may conclude that this is no cutting off our Jose the Galilean then argued as follows where do we find the same thing should be forbidden to one and permitted to another what is forbidden is forbidden to all alike and what is permitted is permitted to all alike hence we may conclude that this is no cutting off our Eliezer B. Ezra then argued as follows cutting off means something which completely cuts him off from her hence you may conclude that this is no cutting off our Akiva then argued as follows suppose this woman went and married some other man and had children from him and was then widowed or divorced from him and she afterwards went and married this man to whom she had been forbidden would not her original get have to be declared void and consequently her children bastards from this we conclude that this is no cutting off or alternatively I may argue suppose the man to whom she was forbidden was a priest and the man who divorced her died then in respect of the priest she would be a widow and in respect of all other men a divorcee there then follows an argument before she or I seeing that she would have been forbidden to the priest quad or say though this involves but a minor transgression should she not all the more as a married woman which is a much more serious affair be forbidden to all men from this we may conclude that this is no cutting off our Joshua said to them you should not seek to confute the lion after he is dead Rabbi said all these objections can be countered except that of our Eliezer B. Ezra in which there is no flaw it has been taught to the same effect our Jose said I consider the argument of our Eliezer B. Ezra superior to all the others the master Said above, Artarfan argued, thus suppose she went and married the brother of the man to whom she was forbidden and he died without children, would not the first be found to have uprooted an injunction from the Torah? Uprooting, you say he uprooted, you should read, he stipulates to uproot an injunction from the Torah, he stipulates, is there any word about it? Can she not do without marrying the brother of that man? You should read, he may possibly cause an injunction to be uprooted from the Torah, but in that case, a man should be forbidden to marry his brother's daughter, since perhaps he will die without children and he will thus cause an injunction to be uprooted from the Torah. This is the flaw in the argument. In what case then
had children from him and was then widowed or divorced and she went and married the man to whom she had been forbidden would not her original get have to be declared void and her children bastards if that is so then wherever there is a condition in the get she should not marry for fear lest she should not fulfill the condition and the get would prove to be void and her children bastards this is a flaw in the argument in what case then does our Akiva suppose our Eliza to differ from the rabbis? It cannot be where he says except because there our Eliza permits her as it has been taught our Eliza agrees that if a man divorced his wife saying to her you are hereby permitted to any man except so and so and she went and married some other man and became widowed or divorced she is permitted to the man to whom she was originally forbidden it must be therefore if he says on condition alternatively our Akiva argued suppose the man to whom she was forbidden was a priest and the man who divorced her died then she would be a widow in respect of the priest and a divorcee in respect of all other men there thus follows an argument before she or I seeing then that she would be forbidden to the priest qua divorcee though this involves but a minor transgression should she not all the more as a married woman which is a much more serious affair be forbidden to all men in what case then does our Akiva assume our Eliza to have differed from the rabbis is it where he says on condition Talmud Moskid and B in that case she is for purposes of fornication a divorcee in respect of him it must be therefore where he says except now if our Akiva thought that the difference is where he says except why did he not bring nearly the objection which applied to that case and if he thought that it was where he says on condition why does he not bring nearly the objection applying to that case our Akiva had heard one report according to which our Eliza said except and another according to which he said on condition for the version which gave except he had one objection and for the version which gave on condition he had another objection and what is the flaw in the second objection of our Akiva we cannot say it is that the prohibition of her marrying a priest is on a special footing because our Eliza also bases his ruling on the priestly prohibition Rabba follows the version which Arjani gave in the name of a certain elder our Joshua said to them you should not seek to confute. The line after he is dead this would imply that our Joshua concurred with him but how can this be seeing that he himself also brought an objection against him what he meant was this I also have objections to bring but whether for me or for you it is not fitting to seek to confute the line after he is dead what was the objection of our Joshua as it has been taught our Joshua said scripture compares her status before the second marriage to the one before the first marriage just as before the first marriage she must not be tied to any other man so before the second marriage she must not be tied to any other man to revert to the above text our Eliza agreed that if a man divorced his wife saying to her you are permitted any man except so and so and she went and married some other man and became widowed or divorced she is then permitted to marry the man to whom she was at first forbidden our Simeon B. Eliezer argued against our Eliza's view saying where do we find that what one man renders Forbidden can be made permissible by another, but are there no such cases? Is there not that of a sister in law who is rendered forbidden by the husband and permissible by the brother in law? In that case, it is really the brother in law who makes her forbidden, since as far as the husband is concerned, she is permitted. But what of vows where the one who makes a vow forbids and the wise man permits? This is not really so, as our Yohanan has said that the wise man does not release except where there is a change of mind, but there is the husband's power of disallowing since the wife vows, but the husband disallows. The answer to that is provided by what Arfinia said in the name of Rabba. For Arfinia said in the name of Rabba, a woman who makes a vow always does so subject to the consent of her husband. Our Eliezer B. As Rai argued as follows Cutting off means something that cuts him off from her. From this, we conclude that this is not cutting off. What do the other rabbis make of this? Cutting off the require it for the ruling contained in the following as had been taught if a man says this is your get on condition that you never drink wine on condition that you never go to your father's house this is not cutting off if he says for 30 days this is cutting off and the other are we can learn this he says from the use of the form kiratath in place of kareth and the rabbis they do not stress the difference between kareth and kiratath rabbis said if a man said this is your get on condition that you do not drink wine all the days of my life this is no cutting off but if he said all the days of so and so's life this is cutting off why this difference if you say that where he says the life of so and so it is possible that he may die and she may fulfill the condition I may rejoin that where he says my life there is also a possibility that he may die and she may fulfill the condition we should read therefore if he says all the days of your like this is no cutting off but if he says all the days of my life or of so and so's life this is cutting off Rabba put the following question to our nom and if he says today you are not my wife but tomorrow you will be my wife what is to be done the answer is not clear whether we accept the view of our Eliza or that of the rabbis we ask if we adopt the view of our Eliza are we to say that in that case our Eliza ruled as he did because as he permitted her she is permitted in perpetuity but here he would not do so or are we to say that he makes no difference and we ask if we adopt the view of the rabbis are we to say that in that case the rabbis ruled as they did because she is not entirely separated from him but here they would say that once she is separated she is separated having asked the question he himself answered it Talmud, Moskid, and it is reasonable to suppose that whether we adopt the view of our Eliza or of the rabbis we should decide that once she is separated from him she is separated our rabbis taught if a man says this is your get on condition that you marry so and so she should not marry but if she does marry she need not leave the second husband what does this mean our nom and said what it means is that she must not marry that man for fear that people should say that men may make presents of their wives if however she marries anyone else she need not leave him and do we not as a precaution make her part from him and are we not afraid that we may be permitting a married woman to another our nom and thereupon said what is meant is that she must not marry that man for fear people should say that men can make presents of their wives but if she does marry him she need not part from him since we do not separate them merely as a precaution said Robert to him according to you it is that man whom she must not marry which implies that she may marry another but how can this be seeing that she has to carry out his condition and should you say that it is possible for her to marry another today and be divorced tomorrow and so fulfill the condition comparing this case to that in regard to which you joined issue with Rab Judah as it has been stated if a man says I forbid myself to sleep today if El shall sleep tomorrow Rab Judah says that he should not sleep today lest perhaps he should sleep tomorrow whereas Arnam and says that he may sleep today and we disregard the possibility of his sleeping tomorrow but how can you compare the two cases in that case of the sleeper the matter lies in the man's own hands since if he likes he can keep himself from sleeping by pricking himself with thorns but in this case does it lie with her whether she is divorced or not no said Rabba what we must say is that she must not marry either that man or any other she must not marry him for fear people should say that men may make presents of their wives nor must she marry another since she has to fulfill the condition if however she marries that man she need not part from him since we do not separate them merely out of precaution whereas if she marries another she must leave him since she is required to fulfill the condition it has been taught in accordance with Rabba this woman must not marry either that man or any other if however she has married him she need not part from him but if she marries another she must part from him our rabbis taught if a man says this is your get on condition that you go up to the sky on condition that you go down to the abyss on condition that you swallow a reed four cubits long on condition that you bring me a reed of a hundred cubits on condition that you cross the great sea on foot this is no get our Judah Bitima however says that one like this is a get and our Judah Bitima laid it down as a general principle that if any condition impossible at any time of fulfillment was laid down by him at the outset he must be regarded as merely trying to put her off and the get is valid Arnaman. Said in the name of Rab that the Halacha follows the view of our Judah B. Tima Arnam and B. Isaac said this is indicated by the language of the Mishnah since it says wherever a condition possible at any time of fulfillment is laid down at the outset it is a valid condition this implies that if it is impossible of fulfillment it is void and so we may conclude the question was raised if a man says here is your get on condition that you eat swine's flesh what is the law of a reply that is exactly a case in point Rabba however replied it is possible for her to eat and be scourged Abbe stresses the words general principle used by our Judah B. Tima so as to cover the eating of swine's flesh Rabba stresses the words one like this is a get to exclude the eating of swine's flesh objection was raised against Rabba from the following if a man says here is your get on condition that you have intercourse with so and so if the condition has been fulfilled this is a get otherwise not. If he says on condition
Exclude the case of swine's flesh Talmud, Moss Gittin B. While according to a general principle covers swine's flesh and one like this excludes so and so an objection was brought from the following if he says here is your get on condition that you eat swine's flesh or supposing she was a laywoman on condition that you eat terima or supposing she was a Nazi right on condition that you drink wine then if the condition has been fulfilled this is a get and if not it is not a get this is consistent with the view of Rabba but conflicts with that of Abbe does it not Abbe may reply to you do you imagine that this ruling represents a unanimous opinion this represents the view of the rabbis but could he Abbe not base his view on the ground that such a get contains a stipulation to break an injunction laid down in the Torah and wherever a stipulation is made to break an injunction laid down in the Torah the condition is void are at the son of R.I.K. replied when we say that where a stipulation is made to break an injunction laid down in the Torah, the condition is void. We refer, for instance, to a stipulation to withhold the food raiment and marriage duty of a married woman, where it is a man who nullifies the injunction, but here it is she who nullifies it. Rubin is strongly demurred to the saying is not her whole purpose in nullifying only to carry out his condition, so that in point of fact it is he who nullifies no said Rubin. When we say that wherever a stipulation is made to break an injunction laid down in the Torah, the condition is void. We mean, for instance, a stipulation to withhold her food raiment and marriage duty, where he is unquestionably nullifying the injunction, but in this case, will anyone tell her that she is absolutely bound to eat? She need not eat and will not be divorced. What must he do? He must take it from her, etc. Who is the authority for this ruling? Has he said it is Arsimian B. Eliezer, as it has been taught Arsimian B. Eliezer says it is no get until he takes it from her and again gives it to her saying here is your get or Yohanan said you may even hold that it is Rabbi your colleague has suggested that there is a special reason here since she has already become possessed of it to the extent of being disqualified in regard to the priesthood if he wrote it in the get or Safra said the words here are if he wrote it in the get surely this is self-evident it says if he wrote it in the get you might think that this is the case only if he inserts them after the substantive part of the get has been written but where he made the reservation before the substantive part has been written and even if he made it orally the get should be invalid therefore our Safra tells us that this is not so Rabbi on the other hand held that the rule applies only if he made the reservation after the substantive part was written but if before the substantive part was written and even if made orally the Get is invalid. Rabba was quite consistent in this as he used to say to the scribes who wrote bills of divorce silence the husband till you have written the substantive part of the get. Our rabbis taught all conditions written in a get make it invalid. This is a view of rabbi. The sages, however, say that a condition which would render it invalid if stated orally makes it invalid if written, but one which does not invalidate it if stated orally does not invalidate it if written. Hence the word. Except which invalidates it if expressed orally also invalidates it if inserted in writing, whereas on condition which does not invalidate it if expressed orally does not invalidate it if inserted in writing. Our Zara said they disagree only where the reservation is inserted after the substantive part was written. Rabbi holding that we disallow on condition in virtue of having disallowed, except while the rabbis considered that we need not disallow on condition in virtue of having. Disallowed except if however the reservation is inserted after the substantive part has been written Talmud, Mosque and both sides agree that the get is still valid as for the Mishnah which says if he has written IT and which we have explained as referring to except so that on condition would not invalidate the get if you like I can say that it is assuming it to be inserted before the substantive part has been written so that it concurs with the rabbis or if you like I can say that it is assuming it to be inserted after the substantive part has been written so that it concurs with both authorities Rabbi however said that the rabbi and the rabbis disagree in the case where the reservation is inserted after the substantive part has been written Rabbi holding that we disallow the insertion in this case in virtue of having disallowed it before the substantive part has been written while the rabbis considered that we need not disallow one in virtue of the other. But if it is inserted before the writing of the substantive part, both sides agree that the get is invalid as for the Mishnah which says if he has written IT and which we have explained as referring to except so that on condition would not invalidate the get it is assuming it to be inserted after the writing of the substantive part and it follows the rabbis the father of Arabin recited before Arzara if he wrote the get with the insertion of a condition the unanimous ruling is that it is invalid he said to him the unanimous ruling is that it is invalid how can this be seeing that there is a dispute on the subject what you must say is the unanimous ruling is that it is valid and in what circumstances if the words are inserted after the writing of the substantive part why did not Arzara say to him say this is invalid the ruling and being according to Rabbi Arzara reasoned that the Tana had been taught to say the unanimous ruling is and that he might confuse valid and invalid but that he would not confuse this is with the unanimous ruling is Mishnah if he said you are hereby permitted to any man rod my father and your father my brother and your brother a slave a heathen or anyone to whom she is incapable of being betrothed the get is valid if he says you are hereby permitted to anyone but a high priest supposing she was a widow or supposing she was a divorcee or a halyas an ordinary priest or supposing she was a bastard or a nethin a lay Israelite or supposing she was of Israeli dish birth a bastard or a nathan or anyone who is capable of betrothing her albeit in transgression of the law the get is invalid Gemara the general statement in the first clause brings under the rule all other persons who become liable to Karath by having intercourse with her the general statement in the second clause brings under the rule all other persons who are forbidden to marry her only in virtue of a negative command such as for instance an Ammonite. Moabite and Nathan an Egyptian and an Edomite Rabbah inquired of Arnaman if he says you may marry anyone except that you may not be betrothed to a minor what is the law do we emphasize the fact that at the present at any rate he is not capable of betrothing her or rather the fact that he will one day be capable he replied we have a teaching a girl underage can be divorced after her father's death even though her betrothal was contracted by her father now why should this be seeing that we require that her separation should be on the same footing as her union the reason must be because she will one day be capable of betrothal so here we say that he will one day be capable of betrothal suppose he says you may marry anyone except those still to be born what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that as yet at any rate they are not born or on the fact that one day they will be born he replied we have the answer in our mission if he said any man but a slave a heathen it is Valid now if we suppose that this constitutes a reservation in the get then the accepting of a slave and a heathen also should constitute a reservation in the get since it is possible for them to become proselytes dash to this robber rejoin those are not bound to become proselytes in the ordinary course of things these will be born in the ordinary course of things if he said she may marry anyone except the husband of her sister what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that now at any rate she is not eligible for him or rather perhaps on the fact that possibly her sister will die and she will become eligible for him he replied we have the answer in our mission any man but a slave a heathen now the accepting of a slave and heathen also should constitute a reservation since they can become proselytes he rejoined conversion is not a usual occurrence death is if he said you may marry accepting you commit fornication what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that he left no reservation in the sphere of marriage or on the fact that he did leave a reservation in the sphere of intercourse he replied we have the answer in our mission any man but my father and your father now to what does the exception apply shall I say to marriage but are his father and her father capable of marrying her it must be then to fornication and when he accepts his father and her father this is no reservation which shows that when he accepts anyone else it is counted as a reservation he rejoined perhaps the exception refers after all to marriage since he may transgress the law and marry her if he says accepting unnatural intercourse what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that he made no reservation in the sphere of natural intercourse or on the fact that the text says as with a woman if he says except that I reserve to myself the right of annulling your vows what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that he has left no reservation in the sphere of marriage or rather perhaps on the text her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void if he says except that you may not eat terima what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that he has left no reservation in the sphere of marriage or on the fact that it is written the purchase of his money shall eat of it suppose he said accepting that I shall inherit you what is the law do we lay stress on the fact that he has left no reservation in the sphere of marriage or that the text says to his kinsman and he shall inherit it if he says except for
Words are of no effect if he said to his wife, Behold, you belong to yourself. What are we to say? Does he mean you belong to yourself entirely or only as far as your work is concerned? Rubin has said to our Ashi, Come and here, since we have learned the essence of a deed of emancipation, is the words, Behold, you are hereby a free woman, behold, you belong to yourself. Now, seeing that a slave whose body belongs to his master becomes his own owner when he says to him, Behold, you belong to yourself, how much more? So, with a wife whose body does not belong to him, Rubin asked Arashi if a man said to his slave, I have no concern with you, what are we to say? Arhanin said to Arashi, or according to another report, Arhanin of Huzna said to Arashi, Come and here, as it has been taught, if a man sells his slave to a heathen, he thereby becomes emancipated, but he requires a deed of emancipation from his first master, Rubin Simeon Begum Eliel said, This is the case only if he did not write out an O and I for him, but if he wrote out an O and I for him, this is his deed of emancipation, what is an O and I? Arshi's hate said, If he gave him a written statement saying, If you escape from him, I have no concern with you, Rabbi Judah says, He must add, and this shall be to you from me a writ of divorce and a letter of release, what is the ground of the difference between the rabbis and Arjuda? The rabbis held that an indication which is not definite can still count as an indication, and so though he did not insert the words and this the circumstances show that he was divorcing her with this get Arjuda on the other hand held that an indication not definite does not count as an indication and the reason why the get is valid is because he has inserted the words and this which show that he was divorcing her with this get but if he did not insert these words people will say that he divorced her by word of mouth and the document is merely a corroboration Abbe said the one who writes out the get should not spell Isu which might be read we didn't and it is just but Isu he should not spell RDHT which might be read Igratha but RDT he should not write LBNHK which might be read Lima from this nor should he spell LJNK which might be understood as a joke the words and Hobbies and Hims should have each three yards at the end as two might be read to Tihujan that they may be and Tisabjan whom they may like the Bob of the words if her hand should be lengthened as otherwise. The words might be read Tarek and those who are divorced and Shabbat and those that are released the Bob of USF should also be lengthened so as not to read HSF which means in vain he should not write TCXBHTK which might be read La Yuknasi but she shall not be married but TCXBBK the question was raised are the words and is required or not come and here Rabba laid down the formula of the get thus we are witnesses how so and so son of so and so dismissed and divorced his wife from this day. And for all time we see that he does not mention and this but if we are to go by this we might ask did he mention all the rest of the get nevertheless we require the rest and so we require this also the words from this day are to rule out the view of our Jose who said that the date of the document is sufficient indication the words for all time Talmud, Mosque and are to rule out the formula about which Rabba questioned our nom and he said today you are not my wife but tomorrow you will. Be my wife the essence of a deed of emancipation is the words behold you are hereby a free woman behold you belong to yourself Rab Judah laid down the following formula for the deed of sale of a slave the slave is legally adjudicated to bondage and is absolved and dissociated from all freedom and claims and demands of the king and the queen and there is no mark of any other man upon him and he is clear of all blemishes and from any boil that may come out within two years whether new or old. What is the remedy for such a boil? Abbe said a mixture of ginger and silver dross and sulfur and vinegar of wine and olive oil and white napta laid on with a goose's quill mission of the following three bills of divorce are invalid but if a woman marries on the strength of them the child born of such marriage is legitimate one if the husband wrote it with his own hand but it was attested by no witnesses a second if there are witnesses to it but no data if it has a date but the signature of only one witness these three bills of divorce are invalid but if she marries the child is legitimate our Eliezer however says that even though it was not attested by witnesses at all so long as he gave it to her in the presence of witnesses it is valid and on the strength of it she may recover her catugal from mortgage property since signatures of witnesses are required on the get only as a safeguard Gemara are these all is there not also the old get with an old get she need not part from her second husband with one of these she must this is a good answer for one who holds that with one of these she must part but to one who holds that she need not part what can we reply with an old get her marriage is permitted in the first instance with one of these only retrospectively but there is a bald get with such a get the child born is a bastard but here the child is legitimate this answer is satisfactory if we adopt the view of our mayor who said that wherever any Alteration is made in the form prescribed by the sages for bills of divorce. The child is a bastard, but if we accept the view of the rabbis, what reply can be made with the ball? Get she must part from the second husband. Here she need not. This is a satisfactory answer. If we accept the view that here she need not part, but if we adopt the view that here also she must part, what reply can be given? The mission is not dealing with a folded get, but there is a get with an improper rein inserted. There she must leave the husband. Here she need not leave him. This is a good enough reason for one who holds that here she need not part, but to one who holds that she must part. What answer can be made there? The child is a bastard. Here the child is legitimate. This accords well enough with the view of our mayor, but if we adopt the view of the rabbis, what can be said? We must suppose that the mission follows our mayor, so that there the child is a bastard, but here it is legitimate. Which kinds of get? Are excluded by the specific number mentioned at the beginning of the ruling, and which by the specific number mentioned at the end, the first number excludes those we have mentioned. The second number excludes the one regarding which it has been taught. If a man brings a get from abroad and gives it to the wife without saying, "In my presence it was written," and in my presence it was signed, the second husband must put her away, and the child is a bastard. This is the opinion of our mayor, the sages. However, say that the child is not a bastard. What should the man do? He should take it from her and give it to her again in the presence of two witnesses, and say, "In my presence it was written," and in my presence it was signed. If the husband wrote with his own hand, but it was attested by no witnesses, Rab said it is definitely stated here with his own hand. To what was Rab referring? Shall I say to the first clause of the ruling? Then what has he told us? It says distinctly with his own hand. Shall I? Say to the middle clause in this case it can hardly matter since it is attested by witnesses he must refer then to the last clause if it has a date but the signature of only one witness Talmud, Moskit and Birab tells us that in this case the child is legitimate only if the get is written with his own hand but if the scribe has written it and there is only one witness the child is not legitimate Samuel however said that even if the scribe had written it and there was a signature of only one witness the child is legitimate since we have learned if the scribe wrote and there was a signature of a witness the get is valid and Rab he might rejoin is there any comparison there her marriage is permitted in the first instance but here only retrospectively and Samuel he can rejoin there is no difficulty there we assume that the scribe is fully competent here that he is not so competent so too are Yohanan said the mission definitely stated with his own hand said R. Eliezer. To him, but it is attested by the signature of witnesses. He replied, I refer to the last clause. Rab sometimes ruled in such cases that the woman should leave the second husband, and sometimes that she need not leave him. How was this? If she had children, he ruled that she need not leave. If she had no children, she must leave. Marzit Rabbi Tobi raised an objection from the following: If any of these had been doubtfully betrothed or doubtfully divorced, they must give Elizabeth, cannot marry. The brother-in-law, what is meant by doubtfully betrothed? If, for instance, he had thrown to her the betrothal token, and it was doubtful whether it landed nearer to him or nearer to her, this is a doubtful betrothal. A doubtful divorce is where he wrote the get with his own hand, but it was not attested with the signature of witnesses, or if it was attested but had no date, or if it had a date but the signature of only one witness, this is a doubtful divorce. Now, if you say that a woman so divorced. Should not leave her second husband and her co-wife on the strength of such a one might come to marry the brother-in-law. He replied, "Let her marry him. It is of no consequence since the only danger is of breaking a rule of the rabbis." Levi said, "In neither case need she leave the second husband." So too said Aryohan. In neither case need she leave the second husband. So too Aryohan said to the sons of Arhilaft of Hunava, "Said your father, in neither case need she leave." And the Kartai in the stack corn does not spoil the water of purification. What is a Kartai? Abbe explained, "The large fly found among the stacks are Daniel, the son of Arkatan, raised an objection against this. From the following, all birds spoil the water of
Name of Resh Lakish the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce. Are Yohanan, however, said that such a document has not even a tincture of a get. Are we to say that our Yohanan does not accept the ruling of our Eliezer? What he meant was according to the rabbi, such a document has not even a tincture of a get. Our Abu Bizab the sent to Mari Bimar saying, Inquire of Arhuna whether the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce or not before he could do so. Arhuna died. But Rabbi Hassan said to him, Thus said my father in the name of Rabbi Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce. Moreover, our teachers who are well versed in the Halacha said in the name of our master, the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce. Since our Hamabi Giria said in the name of Rabbi Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce, according to another version, and our colleagues that are well versed in the Halacha and it. Disciples of our teacher Rab said that the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce for our Hista said in the name of our Hamabigiri in the name of Rab that the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce so too when Rabin came from Palestine he said our Eliezer says that the Halacha follows our Eliezer in the matter of bills of divorce mission if two men sent to their wives two bills of divorce with the same names and they became mixed up the bearer must give both of them to each of the women consequently if one of them was lost the other becomes void if five men wrote jointly in the same document so and so divorces so and so and so and so so and so and if the witnesses duly signed below all are valid and the get is to be given to each of the women if the scribe wrote out the formula for each one and the witnesses signed below the one to which the signatures are attached is alone valid Gemara who is the authority for this rule are Jeremiah Said it is not our Eliezer for if we were to follow our Eliezer since he holds that it is the witnesses to delivery that make the get effective they could not do so in this case since they do not know with which get either of the women is divorced Abbe said it is possible to ascribe this ruling to our Eliezer also since I may say granting that our Eliezer requires the get to be written in the name of that particular woman does he also require it to be given in the name of that particular woman. If I wrote jointly etc what is meant by jointly and what is meant by formula are Yohanan said if there is one day for all it is a joint get if there is a separate day for each it is a formula get Reshlakish however said Talmud, Moskid and even if there is one day for all it is still called a formula get and a joint get is where he writes we so and so and so and so have divorced our wives so and so and so and so are Abbe strongly demurred to this if we accept the view of our. Yohanan he said that a joint get is one where there is the same day for all have we not to consider the possibility that when the witnesses sign they are attesting only the last has it not been taught if witnesses subscribe to an expression of kind regards in a get the get is invalid since we apprehend that they may have attested the expression of kind regards has it not been stated in connection with this our Abab said it was explained to me by our Yohanan that if it is written they gave him reading it is invalid but if and they gave it is valid so here we suppose that what is written is so and so and so and so and so and so moreover if we accept the view of our Yohanan that a formula get is one where there is a separate date for each why should it be invalidated as being a formula get why not rather as being one which is written by day and signed by night Mark Ashisa, the son of Arhista said to our Ashi we state as follows in the name of our Yohanan that this rule applies where it is written with each one on the first day of the week on the first day of the week Robin has said to our Ashi on the view of Rush Lakish that a formula get is also one in which there is one day for all and that a joint get is one in which it is written thus we so and so and so and so have divorced our wives so and so and so and so it follows that two women would be divorced with the same get and the Torah has laid down that he must write for her which implies for her and not for her. And her neighbor we must suppose that he further writes so and so divorced so and so and so and so divorced so and so Robin and thereupon said to our Ashi how does this differ from a case regarding which it has been taught if a man makes over all his property in writing to two of his slaves they acquire possession and emancipate one another he replied have we not explained this to apply only where he writes two deeds it has been taught in agreement with our Yohanan and it has been taught in Agreement with Resh Lakish it has been taught in agreement with our Yohanan if five men wrote in the same get so and so divorces so and so and so and so so and so and so and so and so and one date is written for all of them and the witnesses are subscribed below all are valid and the document must be given to each woman if there is a separate date for each one and the witnesses are subscribed at the bottom the one to which the signatures are attached is alone valid are due to be but there assess that if there is a space between them it is invalid but if not it is valid since the date does not constitute a division it has been taught in agreement with Resh Lakish if five persons wrote jointly in the same get we so and so and so and so have divorced our wives so and so and so and so and so divorcing so and so and so and so divorcing so and so and there is one date for all and the witnesses are signed below all are valid and the document must be given to each one if there is a Separate date for each one or space between one and another and the witnesses are signed at the bottom the one to which the signatures are attached is valid our mayor says that even if there is no space between them it is invalid since the date makes a division but on the view of Resh Lakish why is it required here that there be a separate date for each one seeing that he has said that even if there is one date for all it is still a formula get that is the case only where they were not lumped together at the beginning but here where they were lumped together at the beginning if the various parts are separated by dates there is a division but otherwise not mission if two bills of divorce are written on the same sheet side by side and the signatures of two witnesses in Hebrew run from under one to under the other and the signatures of two witnesses in Greek run from under one to under the other the one to which the two first signatures are attached is alone valid if there is one signature in Hebrew and one in Greek and then again one in Hebrew and one in Greek running from under one get to under the other both are invalid tomorrow why should not one be rendered valid by the signature Reuben under it and the other by the signature son of Jacob witness under it seeing that we have learned the signature son of so and so witness renders a document valid we suppose that he writes Reuben son of under the first get and Jacob witness under the second but cannot the first be rendered valid by Reuben son of and the second by Jacob witness since we have learned the subscription so and so witness renders the document valid we suppose he did not add witness or alternatively I may say that he does add witness but we know that this is not the signature of Jacob Talmud Moss and B but perhaps he signed the name of his father a man would not omit his own name and sign the name of his father but perhaps he uses it as a mark did not wrap for his Signature draw fish are Hanan upon branch are his die Samak are Hashay and Ayan and Rabbi son of Arhana amassed a man would not take the liberty of using his father's name as a mark but cannot the one get be rendered valid by two Hebrew signatures and the other by two Greek signatures since we have learned a get written in Hebrew and signed in Greek or written in Greek and signed in Hebrew is valid and should you object that since the second get is separated from its signatures by two lines it is not valid has not Hezekiah said if he filled up the space with the signatures of relatives it is still valid Zeiri has in fact taught that both of them are valid what then is the reason of Artana he thinks perhaps the Greek signatures are reversed so that all are subscribed to the one get one signature in Hebrew and one in Greek but cannot one get be rendered valid by one Hebrew signature and one Greek and the other also by one Hebrew signature and one Greek since we have learned that if there is one Hebrew signature and one Greek the document is valid Zeiri has in fact taught that both are valid what then is the reason of Artana he thinks that perhaps one of the signatures is reversed so that there are three signatures to one get and only one to the other mission if some of the get was left over from the first sheet and is written on the next sheet and the witnesses signed below the get is valid if the witnesses have signed at the top of it sheet or at the side or on the back of an unfolded get it is invalid if the top of one get is fastened to the top of another and the witnesses signatures are between the two both of them are invalid if the two are attached end to end and the witnesses signatures are between the one on which the witnesses signatures follow directly is valid if the top of one is attached to the bottom of the other and the witnesses signatures are in the middle the one in which the signatures come at the end is Valid a get of which the text is in Hebrew and the signatures in Greek or the text in Greek and the signatures in Hebrew or which has one Hebrew signature and one Greek or which was written by a scribe and signed by one witness is valid if a man signs so and so witness it is valid if he signs son of so and so witness it
the witnesses have signed at the top of the sheet, etc. Is that so? Did not wrap sign at the side. It is all right if the top of the signature is towards the text. In that case, why does it state if the top of one is fastened to the top of the other and the signatures are between both of them are invalid? Cannot we see which signature is turned towards the text and declare that get valid? We suppose there that the signatures run from one to the other like a crossbar. Then what about the next clause? If the top of one is attached to the bottom of the other and the witnesses' signatures are in the middle, the one in which the signatures come at the end is valid if they run from one to the other like a bar. They are read neither with one nor with the other. The fact is that Rab only signed us on letters a get of which the text is in Hebrew and the signatures in Greek or which was written by a scribe and signed by one witness is valid. Our Jeremiah said what we have learned in explanation of this. Is if the scribe signed Arhista said who is the authority for this ruling Arhose a certain marriage cathedral was brought before Arvau in which the handwriting of the text and the signature of one witness could be identified he thought of declaring it valid but our Jeremiah said to him what we have learned is that the scribe signed if he wrote his family name and her family name it is valid our rabbis taught the family name of ancestors allowed in bills of divorce is one which has been in use at any time in the past ten generations our Simeon B. Eliezer says if it has been in use within three generations it is valid but if only beyond that the get is invalid whose authority is followed in the dictum of our Hanan an ancestral family name which has been in use within three generations may be inserted in bills of divorce the authority of our Simeon B. Eliezer Arhuna said where do we find this in the scripture in the verse when thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have been long in the land our Joshua B. Levi said the land of Israel was not laid waste until seven courts of justice had sanctioned idolatry namely those of Jeroboam son of Nebat, Bashi son of Ahab son of Amri, Jehu son of Nushi, Pekah son of Remalia, Menahem son of Gedi and Hashia son of Elias it says she that hath borne seven languages she hath given up the ghost her son is gone down while it was yet day she hath been ashamed and confounded R.M. I said where is this intimated in the Torah in the verse when thou shalt beget children and children's children are Kahana and R.C. said to Rabbi it is written of Hashia son of Elias and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord yet not as the kings of Israel and it is also written against him came up Shulmanezer king of Assyria etc. he replied to them Jeroboam had stationed guards on the roads to prevent the Israelites from going up to Jerusalem for the festivals and Hashia disbanded them and for all that they Israelites did not go up to the festivals thereupon God decreed that for those years during which the Israelites had not gone up to the festival they should go a corresponding number into captivity Arhista said in the name of Marah, but or according to others Arhista said in the name of our Jeremiah Mirmar discoursed as follows what is the point of the words therefore hath the Lord watched over the evil and brought it upon us for the Lord our God is sodic righteous because the Lord is righteous does he therefore watch over the evil and bring it upon us the truth is that God did a kindness Zedakah with Israel by driving forth the captivity of Zedekiah while the captivity of Janiah was still intact for it is written of the captivity of Janiah and the Harish craftsmen and the master smiths a thousand they were called Harish dumb because when they opened their mouths all became as it were dumb and they were called master closer because if they once closed a Discussion no one would reopen it. How many were the 8,000? Ullah said the righteousness consisted in anticipating by two years the numerical value of Wunashantam and Yedro Old Talmud, Mosque and Bir Ahabi Jacob said this shows that the word soon used by the master of the universe means 852 years. Mishnah get given under compulsion exercised by an Israelite court is valid, but by a heathen court is invalid. A heathen court, however, may flog a man and say to him, Do what the Israelite authorities command you, and it is valid. Gemara Arnaman said in the name of Samuel, a get given under compulsion exercised by an Israelite court with good legal ground is valid, but if without sufficient legal ground it is invalid, but it still disqualifies the woman for a priest if enforced by a heathen court on good legal grounds it is invalid, but disqualifies if without sufficient legal ground there is no tincture of a get about it. How can you have it? Both ways if the heathens are competent to apply compulsion then it should actually be valid if they are not competent to apply compulsion it should not disqualify our measure she explained according to the strict rule of the Torah get enforced by a heathen court is valid and the reason why the rabbis declared it invalid was to prevent any Jewish woman from attaching herself to a heathen and so releasing herself from her husband if that is so why did Samuel say that if it is enforced by a heathen court without sufficient legal ground it has not even the tincture of a get let it at least be on a PAR with the similar get exacted by an Israelite court and disqualify the woman for a priest the truth is that our measure explanation is erroneous and what is the reason a get enforced by a heathen court on legal grounds is liable to be confused with a get enforced by an Israelite court on legal grounds but a get enforced by a heathen court without proper grounds Will not be confused with a get enforced by a Jewish court with legal grounds. Abbe once found our Joseph sitting in court and compelling certain men to give a bill of divorce. He said to him, Surely we are only laymen, and it has been taught our Tarfan used to say, In any place where you find even law courts, even though their law is the same as the Israelite law, you must not resort to them, since it says these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them, that is to say, before them and not before heathens. Another explanation, however, is that it means before them and not before laymen. He replied, We are carrying out their commission just as in the case of admissions and transaction of loans. If that is the case, he rejoined, We should do the same with robberies and injuries. We carry out their commission in matters which are of frequent occurrence, but not in matters which occur infrequently. Mission of common report in the town declares a woman to be betrothed, she is regarded by the Beth Din is betrothed if to be divorced she is regarded as divorced this however is only the case provided the report has no qualification what is meant by a qualification if the report is so and so divorced his wife conditionally he threw her the betrothal money but it is uncertain whether it landed nearer to her or nearer to him this is a qualification Gemara and do we on the strength of such a report declare her prohibited to her husband has not or as she said that we take no notice of report spread after marriage what the mission means is this if common report declares her to be betrothed we regard her as betrothed if it declares her to have been betrothed and then divorced Talmud, Mosque and she is regarded as divorced on what ground because the report is accompanied by its own neutralization Rabbi said if she was reported in the town to have misconducted herself we take no notice as we can put it down to mere looseness of behavior which has been observed in her the same difference of opinion is found between Tanaim if she ate in the street, if she quaffed in the street, if she suckled in the street. In every case, our Meir says that she must leave her husband. Our Akiba says she must do so as soon as gossips who spin in the moon begin to talk about her. Our Yohanan Binuri thereupon said to him, If you go so far, you will not leave our father Abraham a single daughter who can stay with her husband. Whereas the Torah says, If he find in her some unseemly thing, and it further says, At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall a thing be established. And just as there the thing must be clearly ascertained, so here it must be clearly ascertained. Our rabbis taught if the report is that she was lame with, we take no notice of it. If that she is a married woman, we take no notice. If that she is a betrothed woman, we take no notice. If the name of the man is not mentioned, we take no notice of it. If the report is that she has been. Betrothed in another town, we take no notice if that she is a bastard, we take no notice if that she is a bondwoman, we take no notice if there is report that so and so sanctified his possessions or declared them common property, we take no notice. Ola said it is not sufficient that a mere rumor should have been heard, we take notice only if lights have been seen burning and couches spread and people entering and leaving, and then they said so and so is being betrothed today, being betrothed, you say perhaps even so she was not betrothed, you should say people say that so and so was betrothed today. So Levi also taught it is not enough that a mere rumor should be spread, we only take notice if lights have been seen burning and couches spread and women spinning by lamplight and congratulating her and saying to one another so and so is being betrothed today, being betrothed, do you say perhaps after all she was not betrothed, our papa said you must say and what they say. Is so and so has been betrothed today. Rabbi Bibar had said in the name of our Yohanan, it is not enough that there should be a mere rumor if, however, lights have been seen burning and couches spread and people entering and leaving. Then, if they
has said that the Ba'ath Din takes no notice till they hear it from reliable persons we may infer that we do suppress a report on the contrary he rejoined since Arshiz hate has said that even if spread only by women it is a report to be considered we may infer that we do not suppress a report he replied it depends on the place in Surah they suppress a report in Nihardia they do not suppress a report a certain woman was reported to have become engaged to a rabbinical student Arhamah sent for her father and said to him tell me the facts of the case he replied he finds her conditionally on condition that is that he would not go to be Jose and he went there he thereupon said since at the time when the report was first spread there was no qualification it is not in your power to add one now a certain woman was reported to have been affianced with the flesh sticking to date stones by the well of Ishifai Redb Abin sent to inquire of Abe what was to be done in such a case he replied even those authorities who say that as a rule we should not suppress a report would here advise that it should be suppressed because people will then say that the rabbis examined her engagement gift and found that it did not contain the value of a pair a certain woman was reported to have become engaged Talmud mosque and be to one of the sons of a certain man robber thereupon said even those authorities who hold that we should not as a rule suppress a report would advise that here we should suppress it as people will only say that the rabbis examined her engagement and found that it was contracted by a minor a certain woman was reported to have become engaged to a minor who looked like an adult in connection with this our Mordecai said to Arashi in a similar case which occurred they said that he had not yet attained to the divisions of Reuben referring to the verse among the divisions of Reuben there were great searchings of heart provided the report has no qualification Rabbi Arhuna said the qualification they had in mind might be made ten days later Arzibit said if there is room for a qualification we suspect the qualification our papa raised to Arzibit an objection from the following provided the report has no qualification he replied it means provided there is no room for a qualification said Arkahana to our papa do you not concur with the seeing that we have learned if a woman who heard from one witness that her husband had died became betrothed and then her husband turned up she is allowed to return to him now is not the reason for disregarding the report because we say that the second betrothed her conditionally there is a special reason there namely that the husband challenges the betrothal if that is the case then why cannot she return to him even if she married the second by marrying she committed an offense and therefore the rabbis penalized her but in becoming betrothed she committed no offense and therefore the rabbis did not Penalize her Arashi said a report which has not been confirmed in the Beth Din is no report Arashi further said we pay no heed to reports spread after marriage this implies that we do pay heed to reports spread after betrothal Our Habibah said we pay no attention to reports spread after betrothal either the law is that we pay no heed to such reports are Jeremiah B. Abba said the disciples of Rab sent to Samuel saying would our master be so good as to instruct us if a woman was reported to have been engaged to one man and then another came and betrothed her with full formality what is to be done he sent back reply she must leave him but I want you to ascertain the facts and inform me what did he mean by saying I want you to ascertain the facts shall I say his object was that if it turned out that the first betrothal was not a valid one the report should be suppressed how can this be seeing that Samuel was located in Nihardia and in Nihardia it was not the custom to suppress a report his Object must therefore have been that if it turned out that the first betrothal was a valid one she would not require a gift from the second in this he joined issue with Arhuna who said that if a married woman put out her hand and took the betrothal money from another she thereby became engaged this again is based on the dictum of Arhamana who said if a woman says to her husband you have divorced me her word is to be accepted since the presumption is that a woman would not be so brazen as to say this in front of her husband if it was not true and the other Samuel he can reply Arhamana would maintain this only where she speaks in the presence of the husband but if he is not present she would certainly be impudent enough to say this suppose they could not ascertain the truth of the matter what was to happen Arhuna said the first would have to divorce her and the second could then marry her but it would not be right for the second to divorce her and the first to marry her. What is the reason because people might say that here is a man who is taking back a woman who has been betrothed to him and divorced Arshinina the son of Aridi however said that it is allowable also for the second to divorce her and the first to marry her because people would merely say that the rabbis had examined the betrothal of the second and found it invalid suppose she was reported to have become betrothed to both one and the other what is to be done our papa said in this case also. The first must divorce her and the second can then marry her Amimar however said that she is allowed to marry either Talmud, Mosque and A and the law is that she is allowed to marry either Mishnah Beth Shammai say a man should not divorce his wife unless he has found her guilty of some unseemly conduct as it says because he hath found some unseemly thing in her Beth Hillel however say that he may divorce her even if she has merely spoiled his food since it says because he hath found some. Unseemly thing in her Arakiba says he may divorce her even if he finds another woman more beautiful than she is as it says it cometh to pass if she find no favor in his eyes Gemara it has been taught Beth Hillel said to Beth Shammai does not the text distinctly say thing Beth Shammai rejoined and does it not distinctly say unseemliness Beth Hillel replied had it said only unseemliness without thing I should have concluded that she should be sent away on account of unseemliness but not of any lesser thing therefore thing is specified again had it said only thing without unseemliness I should have concluded that if divorced on account of a thing she should be permitted to marry again but if on account of unseemliness she should not be permitted to remarry therefore unseemliness is also specified and what do Beth Shammai make of this word thing they use it for the following lesson it says here thing and it says in another place thing is in the text by the mouth of two. Witnesses or by the mouth of three witnesses a thing shall be established just as their two witnesses are required so here two witnesses are required and Beth Hillel they can retort is it written unseemliness in a thing and Beth Shammai is it written either unseemliness or a thing and Beth Hillel for this reason it is written unseemliness of a thing which can be taken either way our Akiva says even if he found another what is the ground of the difference here between the various rulings. It is indicated in the dictum of Resh Lakish who said that he has four meanings if perhaps but because Beth Shammai held that we translate here it cometh to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some unseemly thing in her while our Akiva held that we translate or if again he hath found some unseemly thing in her our Papa asked Rabba if he has found in her neither unseemliness nor any lesser thing and still divorces her what are we to do according to Beth Hillel he Replied since in the case of a man who has committed a rape the all merciful has specifically laid down that he may not put her away all his days which implies that if he does so all his days he is under obligation to take her back in that case only has the all merciful made this the rule but here what is done is done our measure she has said to Rabbi if a man has made up his mind to divorce his wife but she still lives with him and waits on him what are we to do with him he replied we apply to him the first devise not evil against thy neighbor seeing he dwelleth securely by thee it has been taught our mayor used to say as men differ in their treatment of their food so they differ in their treatment of their wives some men if a fly falls into their cup will put it aside and not drink it this corresponds to the way of Papus B. Judah who used when he went out to lock his wife indoors another man if a fly falls into his cup will throw away the fly and then drink the cup this corresponds to the way of most men who do not mind their wives talking with their brothers and relatives another man again if a fly falls into his soup will squash it and eat it this corresponds to the way of a bad man who sees his wife go out with her hair unfastened and spin cloth in the street Talmud, mosque it and be with her armpits uncovered and bathe with the men bathe with the men you say it should be bathed in the same place as the men such a one it is a religious duty to divorce as it says because he hath found some unseemly thing in her and he sent her out of his house and she goeth and becometh another man's wife the text calls him another implying that he is not the fellow of the first the one expelled a bad woman from his house and the other took a bad woman into his house if the second is lucky he will also send her away as it says and the latter husband hates her and if not she will bury him as it says or if the latter husband die he deserves to die since the one expelled a Wicked woman from his house and the other took her into his house for a hateful one put away our Judah said this means that if you hate her you should put her away our Yohanan says it means he that sends his wife away is hated there is really no conflict between the two since the one speaks of the first marriage and the other of the second as our Eliezer said if a man divorces his first wife even the altar sheds tears as it says and this further Yaduya covered the altar of the